Talmud, Masbirak of A-C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I Mishnah from what time may one recite the Shema in the evening from the time that the priests enter their houses in order to eat their terimah until the end of the first watch. These are the words of our Eliezer the sages say until midnight our Gamaliel says until the dawn comes up once it happened that his sons came home late from a wedding feast and they said to him we have not yet recited the evening Shema he said to them if the dawn has not yet come. Up you are still bound to recite and not in respect to this alone did they so decide but wherever the sages say until midnight the precept may be performed until the dawn comes up the precept of burning the fat and the sacrificial pieces too may be performed till the dawn comes up similarly all the offerings that are to be eaten within one day may lawfully be consumed till the coming up of the dawn why then did the sages say until midnight in order to keep a man far from transgression. Gemara on what does the Tana base himself that he commences from what time furthermore why does he deal first with the evening Shema let him begin with the morning Shema the Tana bases himself on the scripture where it is written and thou shalt recite them when thou liest down and when thou risest up and he states the oral law thus when does the time of the recital of the Shema of lying down begin when the priests enter to eat their terima and if you like I can answer he learns. The precedence of the evening from the account of the creation of the world where it is written and there was evening and there was morning one day why then does he teach in the sequel the morning Shema is preceded by two benedictines and followed by one the evening Shema is preceded by two benedictines and followed by two let him there to mention the evening Shema first the Tana commences with the evening Shema and proceeds into the morning Shema while dealing with the morning. Shema he expounds all the matters relating to it and then he returns again to the matters relating to the evening Shema the master said from the time that the priests enter to eat their terima when do the priests eat terima from the time of the appearance of the stars let him then say from the time of the appearance of the stars this very thing he wants to teach us in passing that the priests may eat terima from the time of the appearance of the stars and he also wants to teach us that the expiatory offering is not indispensable as it has been taught and when the sun sets we hear the setting of the sun is indispensable as a condition of his fitness to eat terima but the expiatory offering is not indispensable to enable him to eat terima but how do you know that these words and the sun sets mean the setting of the sun and this we hear means that the day clears away Talmud Masbirak of B it means perhaps and when the sun of the next morning appears and we hear means the man becomes clean. Rabbi son of Arshila explains in that case the text would have to read we either what is the meaning of we here the day clears away conformably to the common expression the sun has set and the day has cleared away. This explanation of Rabbi son of Arshila was unknown in the West and they raised the question this and the sun sets does it mean the real setting of the sun and we here means the day clears away or does it perhaps mean the appearance of the sun and we here means the man becomes clean. They solved it from a very that it being stated in a very the sign of the thing is the appearance of the stars. Hence you learn that it is the setting of the sun which makes him clean and the meaning of we here is the clearing away of the day. The master said from the time that the priests enter to eat their terima they pointed to a contradiction from the following from what time may one recite the shema in the evening from the time that the poor man comes. Home to eat his bread with salt till he rises from his meal. The last clause certainly contradicts the mission. Does the first clause also contradict the mission? No, the poor man and the priest have one and the same time they pointed to a contradiction from the following from what time may one begin to recite the Shema in the evening from the time that the people come home to eat their meal on a Sabbath eve. These are the words of our Mayor, but the sages say from the time that the priests are entitled to eat their terimah. A sign for the matter is the appearance of the stars, and though there is no real proof of it, there is a hint for it, for it is written so we wrought in the work and half of them held the spears from the rise of the dawn till the appearance of the stars, and it says further that in the night they may be a guard to us and may labor in the day. Why the second citation, if you object and say that the night really begins with the setting of the sun, but that they left. Late and came early, I shall reply. Come and hear the other verse that in the night they may be a guard to us and may labor in the day. Now it is assumed that the poor man and the people have the same time for their evening meal. And if you say that the poor man and the priest also have the same time, then the sages would be saying the same thing as our Mayor. Hence, you must conclude that the poor man has one time and the priest has another time. No, the poor man and the priest have the same time. But the poor man and the people have not the same time, but have the poor man and the priest really the same time. They pointed to a contradiction from the following from what time may one begin to recite the Shema in the evening from the time that the Sabbath day becomes hallowed on the Sabbath eve. These are the words of our Eliezer. Our Joshua says from the time that the priests are ritually clean to eat their terima. Our Mayor says from the time that the priests take their ritual bath in order to. Eat their terima said Arjuna to him when the priests take their ritual bath it is still daytime Arhanana says from the time that the poor man comes home to eat his bread with salt Araha some say Araha says from the time that most people come home to sit down to their meal now if you say that the poor man and the priest have the same time then Arhanana and Arjashua would be saying the same thing from this you must conclude must you not that the poor man has one time and the priest has another time draw indeed that conclusion which of them is later it is reasonable to conclude that the poor man is later for if you say that the poor man is earlier Arhanana would be saying the same thing as our Eliezer hence you must conclude that the poor man is later must you not draw indeed that conclusion the master said Arjuna said to him when the priests take their ritual bath it is still daytime the objection of Arjuna to our Mayor seems well founded our Mayor may reply as follows to you Think that I am referring to the twilight as defined by you. I am referring to the twilight as defined by our Jose. For our Jose says the twilight is like the twinkling of an eye that enters and that departs, and one cannot exactly fix it. Talmud, Mas Berakotha. There is a contradiction between our Mayor of one Beritha and our Mayor of the last Beritha. Yes, two Tanaim transmit different versions of our Mayor's opinion. There is a contradiction between our Eliezer of the last Beritha and our Eliezer of the Mishnah. Yes, two Tanaim transmit two different versions of our Eliezer's opinion. If you wish, I can say the first clause of the Mishnah is not our Eliezer's until the end of the first watch. What opinion does our Eliezer hold? If he holds that the night has three watches, let him say till four hours in the night. And if he holds that the night has four watches, let him say till three hours. He holds indeed that the night has three watches, but he wants to teach us that there are watches in heaven. As well as on earth, for it has been taught, our Eliezer says the night has three watches, and at each watch the Holy One blessed be he sits and roars like a lion, for it is written, The Lord does roar from on high and raise his voice from his holy habitation, roaring he doth roar because of his fold, and the sign of the thing is in the first watch the ass brays, in the second the dogs bark, in the third the child sucks from the breast of his mother, and the woman talks with her husband. What does our Eliezer understand by the word watch? Does he mean the beginning of the watches? The beginning of the first watch needs no sign, it is the twilight. Does he mean the end of the watches? The end of the last watch needs no sign, it is the dawn of the day. He therefore must think of the end of the first watch, of the beginning of the last watch, and of the midst of the middle watch. If you like, I can say he refers to the end of all the watches, and if you object that the last watch needs no sign, I reply that it may be of use for the recital of the Shema and for a man who sleeps in a dark room and does not know when the time of the recital arrives when the woman talks with her husband and the child sucks from the breast of the mother let him rise and recite our Isaac B. Samuel says in the name of Rab the night has three watches and at each watch the Holy One blessed be he sits and roars like a lion and says woe to the children on account of whose sins I destroyed my house and burned my temple and exiled them among the nations of the world it has been taught our Jose says I was once traveling on the road and I entered into one of the ruins of Jerusalem in order to pray Elijah a blessed memory appeared and waited for me at the door till I finished my prayer after I finished my prayer he said to me peace be with you my master and I replied peace be with you my master and teacher and he said to me my son why did you go into this ruin I replied to pray he said to me you ought to have prayed on it Road I replied I feared lest passers by might interrupt me he said to me you ought to have said an abbreviated prayer thus I then learned from him three things one must not go into a ruin one may say the prayer on the road and if one does say his prayer on the road he recites an abbreviated prayer he further said to me my son what sound did you hear in this ruin I replied I heard a divine voice cooing like a dove and
was situated in the fields in which case there is no suspicion for a woman would not be found in the fields but the danger of demons does exist our rabbis taught the night has four watches these are the words of rabbi our nathan says three one is the reason of our nathan it is written so gideon and the hundred men that were with him came into the outermost part of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch and one taught under middle is to be understood only something which is preceded by one and followed by one and rabbi the middle means one of the middle ones and our nathan not one of the middle ones is written but the middle is written what is rabbi's reason our zerik in the name of our joshua b levi says one verse reads at midnight do arise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous ordinances and another verse reads my eyes forestall the watches how is this this is possible only if the night has four watches and our nathan he is of the opinion of our joshua as we have Learned our Joshua says until the third hour for such is the custom of kings to rise in the third hour six hours of the night and two hours of the day amount to two watches. Our Ashi says one watch and a half are also spoken of as watches. Our Zerika further said in the name of our MI in the name of our Joshua believe I one may discuss in the presence of a dead body only things relating to the dead. Our Abu says this refers only to religious matters but as for worldly matter there is no harm in other. Version is our Abu says this refers even to religious matters how much more so to worldly matters but did David rise at midnight surely he rose with the evening dusk for it is written I rose with the Neshef and cried and how do you know that this word Neshef means the evening it is written in the Neshef in the evening of the day in the blackness of night and the darkness our Ashi in the name of our Ahar replies David said midnight never passed me by in my sleep our Zerika says till midnight. He used to slumber like a horse from Anton. He rose with the energy of a lion. Our Ashi says till midnight he studied the Torah from Anton. He recited songs and praises. But does Neshef mean the evening? Surely Neshef means the morning, for it is written, and David slew them from the Neshef to the evening Arab of the next day. And does not this mean from the morning dawn to the evening? No, it means from the one eventide to the next eventide. If so, let him write from Neshef to Neshef or from Arab to Arab. Rather said Rabbah, there are two kinds of Neshef. The morning Neshef when the evening disappears, Neshef, and the morning arrives, and the evening Neshef when the day disappears, Neshef, and the evening arrives. But did David know the exact time of midnight? Even our teacher Moses did not know it, for it is written about midnight. I will go out into the midst of Egypt. Why about midnight shall we say that the Holy One blessed be? He said to him about midnight, can there be any doubt in? The mind of God, hence we must say that God told him at midnight, and he came and said about midnight, hence he Moses was in doubt, can David then have known it? David had a sign for so said our Ahabibas in the name of our Simeon the pious a harp was hanging above David's bed. As soon as midnight arrived, the north wind came and blew upon it, and it played of itself. He arose immediately and studied the Torah till the break of dawn. After the break of dawn, the wise men of Israel came in to see him and said to him, Our Lord the King Israel, your people require sustenance. He said to them, Let them go out and make a living one from the other. They said to him, A handful cannot satisfy a lion, nor can a pit be filled up with its own clods. He said to them, Then go out in troops and attack the enemy for plunder. They at once took counsel with Ahithophel and consulted the Sanhedrin and questioned the Urim and Tumimar. Joseph says what verse may be cited in support of this, and after Ahithophel was. Jehoiada the son of Benai and Abiathar and the captain of the king's host was Job Ahithophel. This was the counselor, and so it is said now the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man inquired of the word of God Talmud. Masbirako the Benai the son of Jehoiada. This means the Sanhedrin and Abiathar. These are the Urim and Tumim, and so it says, and Benai the son of Jehoiada was over the Kareti and Pelathai. Why are they called Kareti and Pelathai Kareti? Because their words are decisive. Korath and Pelathai because they are distinguished Mufflim through their words. And then it comes the captain of the king's host Job. Our Isaac Biada says, some say our Isaac the son of Adi says, which verse awake my glory awakes altery and harp I will awake the dawn. Our Zerah says Moses certainly knew and David too knew the exact time of midnight since David knew why did he need the harp that he might wake from his sleep since Moses knew why did he say about. Midnight Moses thought that the astrologers of Pharaoh might make a mistake and then they would say that Moses was a liar for so a master said let thy tongue acquire the habit of saying I know not lest thou be led to falsehoods lying or as she says it was at midnight of the night of the thirteenth passing into the fourteenth of Nisan and thus said Moses to Israel the Holy One blessed be he said tomorrow at the hour like the midnight of tonight I will go out into the midst of Egypt a prayer of David keep my soul for I am pious Levi and our Isaac the one says thus spoke David before the Holy One blessed be he master of the world am I not pious all the kings of the east and the west sleep to the third hour of the day but I at midnight arise to give thanks unto thee the other one says thus spoke David before the Holy One blessed be he master of the world am I not pious all the kings of the east and the west sit with all their pomp among their company whereas my hands are soiled with the blood of menstruation, with the foetus and the placenta, in order to declare a woman clean for her husband, and what is more, in all that I do, I consult my teacher Mephibosheth, and I say to him, My teacher Mephibosheth, is my decision right? Did I correctly convict, correctly acquit, correctly declare clean, correctly declare unclean? And I am not ashamed to ask our Joshua the son of Ari. He says, Which verse may be cited in support, and I recite thy testimonies before kings, and am not ashamed. Eh? Tanda taught his name was not Mephibosheth, and why then was he called Mephibosheth? Because he humiliated David in the Halachah. Therefore, was David worthy of the privilege that Kilab should issue from him? Or Yohanan said his name was not Kilab, but Daniel. Why then was he called Kilab? Because he humiliated Machlam Mephibosheth in the Halachah. And concerning him, Solomon said in his wisdom, My son, if thy heart be wise, my heart will be glad. Even mine. And he said further, My son, be wise and make. My heart glad that I may answer him that taunteth me, but how could David call himself pious? It is not written, I am not sure, lo, to see the good reward of the Lord in the land of the living, and attended taught in the name of our Jose. Why are there dots upon the world? Lo, David spoke before the Holy One, blessed be he, master of the world. I am sure that you will pay a good reward to the righteous in the world to come, but I do not know whether I shall have a share in it. He was afraid that some sin might cause his exclusion. This conforms to the following saying of our Jacob Beatty, for our Jacob Beatty pointed to a contradiction. One verse reads, And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee whithersoever thou goest. And the other verse reads, And Jacob was greatly afraid. The answer is that he thought that some sin might cause God's promise not to be fulfilled. Similarly, it has been taught till that people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over that thou hast gotten till that people. Pass over, O Lord, this is the first entry into the land till the people pass over that thou hast gotten. This is the second entry. Hence the sages say the intention was to perform a miracle for Israel in the days of Ezra, even as it was performed for them in the days of Joshua ben Nun. But sin caused the miracle to be withheld. The sages say until midnight, whose view did the sages adopt? If it is our Eliezer's view, then let them express themselves in the same way as our Eliezer Talmud, Mosbiratoth. B. If it is our Gamaliel's view, let them express themselves in the same way as our Gamaliel. In reality, it is our Gamaliel's view that they adopted, and their reason for saying until midnight is to keep a man far from transgression. For so it has been taught the sages made offense for their words, so that a man on returning home from the field in the evening should not say, I shall go home, eat a little, drink a little, sleep a little, and then I shall recite the Shema and the Tefila, and meanwhile sleep me. Overpower him and as a result he will sleep the whole night. Rather should a man when returning home from the field in the evening go to the synagogue. If he is used to read the Bible, let him read the Bible, and if he is used to repeat the Mishnah, let him repeat the Mishnah, and then let him recite the Shema and say the Tefila, go home and eat his meal and say the grace, and whosoever transgresses the words of the sages deserves to die. Why this difference that in other cases they do not say he deserves to die, and here they do say he deserves to die. If you wish I can say because here there is danger of sleep overpowering him, or if you wish I can say because they want to exclude the opinion of those who say that the evening prayer is only voluntary, therefore they teach us that it is obligatory. The master said, Let him recite Shema and say
G. E. Olafur, if you do not admit that, how can he join in the morning scene that our Johannan says in the beginning of the Tefila? One has to say, O Lord, open down my lips, etc., and at the end, one has to say, Let the words of my mouth be acceptable. The only explanation there is that since the rabbis ordained that, O Lord, open down my lips, should be said, it is like a long Tefila here too, since the rabbis ordained that, let us rest, should be said, it is like a long G. E. Olafur, Elias, or B. Abena. Says whoever recites the psalm praise of David three times daily is sure to inherit the world to come. What is the reason? Shall I say it is because it has an alphabetical arrangement? Then let him recite happy are they that are upright in the way which has an eightfold alphabetical arrangement. Again, is it because it contains the verse thou openest thy hand and satisfies every living thing with favor? Then let him recite the great hell where it is written who giveth food to all flesh. Rather, the reason is because it contains both our Yohan and says, Why is there no none in Ashray? Because the fall of Israel's enemies begins with it, for it is written, Fallen is the virgin of Israel, she shall no more rise in the west. This verse is thus interpreted, she is fallen, but she shall no more fall, rise, O virgin of Israel. Our Naman B. Isaac says, Even so, David refers to it by inspiration and promises them an uplifting, for it is written, The Lord upholdeth all that fall, our Eliezer B. Abinus said. Furthermore, greater is the achievement ascribed to Michael than that ascribed to Gabriel, for of Michael it is written, Then flew unto me one of the seraphim, whereas of Gabriel it is written, The man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly in a flight, etc. How do you know that this word one of the seraphim means Michael or Yohan and says by an analogy from the words one one here it is written, Then flew unto me one of the seraphim, and in another place it is. Written below Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me attend a talk. Michael reaches his goal in one flight, Gabriel in two, Elijah in four, and the angel of death in eight in the time of plague. However, the angel of death two reaches his goal in one, our Joshua B. Levi says, Though a man has recited the Shema in the synagogue, it is a religious act to recite it again upon his bed. R.C. says, Which verse may be cited in support, tremble and sin, not commune with your own heart upon your bed, and be still sealer. Arnaman, however, says Talmud, Mosbirko, if he is a scholar, then it is not necessary. Abbe says, Even a scholar should recite one verse of supplication, as for instance, Into thy hand I commit my spirit, thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. Our Levi Bihama says, In the name of our Simeon, be like a man should always incite the good impulse in his soul to fight against the evil impulse, for it is written, Tremble and sin, not if he subdues it well and good, if not left. Him study the Torah for it is written commune with your own heart if he subdues it well and good if not let him recite the Shema for it is written upon your bed if he subdues it well and good if not let him remind himself of the day of death for it is written and be still seal our Levi Bihama says further in the name of our Simeon Belakish what is the meaning of the verse and I will give thee the tables of stone and the law and the commandment which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Tables of stone these are the ten commandments the law this is the Pentateuch the commandment this is the Mishnah which I have written these are the prophets and the hagiographer that thou mayest teach them this is the Gemara it teaches us that all these things were given to Moses on Sinai or Isaac says if one recites the Shema upon his bed it is as though he held a two-edged sword in his hand for it is said let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand how? Does it indicate this Marzitra? Some say Arashi says the lesson is from the preceding verse, for it is written, Let the saints exult in glory, let them sing for joy upon their beds, and then it is written, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. Our Isaac says further, If one recites the Shema upon his bed, the demons keep away from him, for it is said, And the sons of Reshef fly uf upward. The word uf refers only to the Torah as it is written, Will thou cause thine eyes to close hot if upon it, it is gone, and Reshef refers only to the demons as it is said, The wasting of hunger and the devouring of the Reshef fiery bolt and bitter destruction. Our Simeon Belakish says, If one studies the Torah, painful sufferings are kept away from him, for it is said, And the sons of Reshef fly upward. The word uf refers only to the Torah as it is written, Will thou cause thine eyes to close upon it, it is gone, and Reshef refers only to painful sufferings as it is said. The wasting of hunger and the devouring of the Reshef fiery bolt are Yohan and said to him this is known even to school children for it is said and he said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his eyes and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of the diseases upon thee which I have put upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that he left thee rather should you say if one has the opportunity to study the Torah and does not study it the Holy One blessed be he visits him with ugly and painful sufferings which stir him up for it is said I was done with silence I kept silence from the good thing and my pain was stirred up the good thing refers only to the Torah as it is said for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my teaching are zero some say our Hannah B. Papa says come and see how the way of human beings differs from the way of the Holy One blessed be he it is the way of human beings that when a man sells a valuable object to his fellow, the seller grieves and the buyer rejoices. The Holy One, blessed be he, however, is different. He gave the Torah to Israel and rejoiced, for it is said, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my teaching. Rabbi, some say, Our Hista says, If a man sees that painful sufferings visit him, let him examine his conduct, for it is said, Let us search and try our ways and return unto the Lord. If he examines and finds nothing objectionable, let him attribute it to the neglect of the study of the Torah, for it is said, Happy is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest out of thy law. If he did attribute it thus and still did not find this to be the cause, let him be sure that these are chastenings of love, for it is said, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth Rabbah in the name of our Sarah, in the name of our Huna says, If the Holy One, blessed be he, is pleased with a man, he crushes him with painful sufferings, for it is said, and the Lord was pleased. With him hence he crushed him by disease. Now you might think that this is so even if he did not accept them with love. Therefore it is said to see if his soul would offer itself in restitution even as a trespass offering must be brought by consent. So also the sufferings must be endured with consent. And if he did accept them what is his reward he will see his seed prolong his days. And more than that his knowledge of the Torah will endure with him. For it is said the purpose of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Our Jacob B.E.D. and our Ahabi had in a different with regard to the following. The one says chastenings of love are such as do not involve the intermission of study of the Torah. For it is said happy is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest out of thy law. And the other one says chastenings of love are such as do not involve the intermission of prayer. For it is said blessed be God who hath not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. Or Abba, the son of our high B. Abba said. To them thus said our high Abba in the name of our Yohan and both of them are chastenings of love for it is said for whom the Lord loveth he correcteth why then does it say and teachest him out of thy law do not read to lament and you thou teachest him but to lament and thou teachest us thou teachest us this thing out of thy law is a conclusion of fortiori from the law concerning tooth and I tooth and I are only one limb of the man and still if they are the slave obtains thereby his freedom. How much more so with painful sufferings which torment the whole body of a man and this agrees with the saying of our Simeon Belakish for our Simeon Belakish said the word covenant is mentioned in connection with salt and the word covenant is mentioned in connection with sufferings the word covenant is mentioned in connection with salt as it is written neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking and the word covenant is mentioned in connection with sufferings as it is. Written these are the words of the covenant even as in the covenant mentioned in connection with salt the salt lends a sweet taste to the meat so also in the covenant mentioned in connection with sufferings the sufferings wash away all the sins of a man it has been taught our Simeon Beo he says the Holy One blessed be he gave Israel three precious gifts and all of them were given only through sufferings these are the Torah of the land of Israel and the world to come whence do we know this of it? Torah because it is said happy is the man whom thou chastenest O Lord and teachest him out of the law whence of the land of Israel because it is written as a man chasteneth his son so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee and after that it is written for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land whence of the world to come because it is written for the commandment is a lamp
Chastisement of love, how is this to be understood? Shall I say that he had children and they died? Did not our Yohanan himself say this is a bone of my tenth son? Rather say then that the former saying refers to one who never had children, the latter to one who had children and lost them. Our high B. Abufelil and our Yohanan went in to visit him. He said to him, Are your sufferings welcome to you? He replied, Neither they nor their reward. He said to him, Give me your hand. He gave him his hand and he raised him. Our Yohanan once fell ill and our Hanada went in to visit him. He said to him, Are your sufferings welcome to you? He replied, Neither they nor their reward. He said to him, Give me your hand. He gave him his hand and he raised him. Why could not our Yohanan raise himself? They replied, The prisoner cannot free himself from jail. Our Eliezer fell ill and our Yohanan went in to visit him. He noticed that he was lying in a dark room and he bared his arm and light radiated from it. Thereupon he noticed that. Our Eliezer was weeping and he said to him, Why do you weep? Is it because you did not study enough Torah? Surely we learned the one who sacrifices much and the one who sacrifices little have the same merit provided that the heart is directed to heaven. Is it perhaps lack of sustenance? Not everybody has the privilege to enjoy two tables. Is it perhaps because of the lack of children? This is the bone of my tenth son. He replied to him, I am weeping on account of this beauty that is going to rot in the earth. He said to him, On that account, you surely have a reason to weep. And they both wept in the meanwhile. He said to him, Are your sufferings welcome to you? He replied, Neither they nor their reward. He said to him, Give me your hand. And he gave him his hand and he raised him once four hundred jars of wine belonging to our who not turned sour Rab Judah, the brother of our Salah the pious and the other scholars. Some say are Adabi Ahabah and the other scholars went in to visit him and said to him, The master. Ought to examine his actions, he said to them, Am I suspect in your eyes? They replied, Is the Holy One blessed be he suspect of punishing without justice? He said to them, If somebody has heard of anything against me, let him speak out. They replied, We have heard that the master does not give his tenant his lawful share in the vine twigs. He replied, Does he leave me any? He steals them all. They said to him, That is exactly what the proverb says. If you steal from a thief, you also have a taste of it. He said to them, I pledge myself to give it to him in the future. Some report that thereupon the vinegar became wine again, others that the vinegar went up so high that it was sold for the same price as wine. It has been taught. Abba Benjamin says, All my life I took great pains about two things that my prayer should be before my bed, and that my bed should be placed north and south, that my prayer should be before my bed. What is the meaning of before my bed? Is it perhaps literally in front of my bed? Has not Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, some say in the name of our Joshua B. Levi, how do you know that when one prays there should be nothing interposing between him and the wall because it says then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed do not read before my bed but near my bed and that my bed should be placed north and south for our Hamabi, our Hanana said in the name of our Isaac whosoever places his bed north and south will have male children as it says and whose belly thou fillest with thy treasure who have sons in plenty are nominee Isaac says his wife also will not miscarry here it is written and whose belly thou fillest with thy treasure and elsewhere it is written and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled behold there were twins in her womb it has been taught Abba Benjamin says when two people enter a synagogue to pray and one of them finishes his prayer first and does not wait for the other but leaves his prayer is torn up before his face for it is written now. That tears thyself in thine anger shall the earth be forsaken for thee, and more than that he causes the divine presence to remove itself from Israel, for it says, Or shall the rock be removed out of its place, and rock is nothing else than the Holy One. Blessed be he, as it says of the rock that begot thee, thou wast unmindful, and if he does wait, what is his reward? Talmud, Mosbirakot, Ar Jose B. Ar Hanana says he is rewarded with the blessings enumerated in the following verse, so that thou wouldst hearken to my commandments, then would thy peace be as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea, thy seed also would be as the sand, and the offspring of thy body like the grains thereof, etc. It has been taught, Abba Benjamin says, If the eye had the power to see them, no creature could endure the demons of A says they are more numerous than we are, and they surround us like the ridge round a field. Arhuna says, Everyone among us has a thousand on his left hand and ten thousand on. His right hand Rabbah says the crushing in the cala lectures comes from them, fatigue in the knees comes from them, the wearing out of the clothes of the scholars is due to their rubbing against them, the bruising of the feet comes from them. If one wants to discover them, let him take sifted ashes and sprinkle around his bed, and in the morning he will see something like the footprints of the cock. If one wishes to see them, let him take the afterbirth of the black sheep, cut the offspring of the black sheep. Cut the firstborn of the firstborn, let him roast it in fire and grind it to powder, and then let him put some into his eye, and he will see them. Let him also pour it into an iron tube and seal it with an iron signet that they should not steal it from him. Let him also close his mouth lest he come to harm our BBB. Abbe did so saw them and came to harm the scholars, however, pray for him, and he recovered. It has been taught Abba Benjamin says a man's prayer is heard by God only in the synagogue. For it is said to hearken unto the song and to the prayer the prayer is to be recited where there is song Rabin B.R. Atta says in the name of our Isaac how do you know that the Holy One blessed be he is to be found in the synagogue for it is said God standeth in the congregation of God and how do you know that if ten people pray together the divine presence is with them for it is said God standeth in the congregation of God and how do you know that if three are sitting as a court of judges the divine presence is with them for it is said in the midst of the judges he judges and how do you know that if two are sitting and studying the Torah together the divine presence is with them for it is said and they that feared the Lord spoke one with another and the Lord hearkened and heard and the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name what does it mean and that thought upon his name are as he says if a man thought to fulfill a commandment and he did not do it because he was prevented by force or accident and the scripture credits it to him as if he had performed it and how do you know that even if one man sits and studies the Torah the divine presence is with him for it is said in every place where I cause my name to be mentioned I will come unto thee and bless thee now since the divine presence is even with one man why is it necessary to mention two the words of two are written down in the book of remembrance the words of one are not written down in the book of remembrance since this is the case with two why mention three I might think the dispensing of justice is only for making peace and the divine presence does not come to participate therefore he teaches us that justice also is Torah since it is the case with three why mention ten to a gathering of ten the divine presence comes first to three it comes only after they sit down our Abin son of Arada in the name of our Isaac says further how do you know that the Holy One blessed be he puts on Tefillin for it is said the Lord hath sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength by his right hand this is the Torah for it is said at his right hand was a fiery law unto them and by the arm of his strength this is the Tefillin as it is said the Lord will give strength unto his people and how do you know that the Tefillin are a strength to Israel for it is written and all the peoples of the earth shall see that the name of the Lord is called upon thee and they shall be afraid of thee and it has been taught our Eliezer the Great says this refers to the Tefillin of the head Arnam and B. Isaac said to our high B. Abin what is written in the Tefillin of the Lord of the universe he replied to him and who is like thy people Israel a nation one in the earth does then the Holy One blessed be he sing the praises of Israel yes for it is written thou hast avouched the Lord this day and the Lord hath avouched thee this day the Holy one blessed be he said to Israel you have made me a unique entity in the world and I shall make you a unique entity in the world you have made me a unique entity in the world as it is said here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one and I shall make you a unique entity in the world as it is said and who is like thy people Israel a nation one in the earth our Ahabi Rabbah said to our Ashi this accounts for one case what about the other cases he replied to him they contain the following verses for what great nation is there etc and what great nation is there etc happy art thou O Israel etc or hath God said etc and to make thee high above all nations if so there would be too many cases hence you must say for what great nation is there and, and what great nation is there which are similar are in one case happy art thou O Israel and who is like thy people in one case or hath God said in one case and to make thee high in one case Talmud Masbirak of B and all these verses are. Written on the Tefillin of his arm, Rabin, son of Arata, in the name of our Isaac says further, if a man is accustomed to attend
Shall roar like a lion. I also run our says the merit of attending a lecture lies in the running of a says the merit of attending the Kala sessions lies in the crush rabba says the merit of repeating a tradition lies in improving the understanding of it. Our papa says the merit of attending a house of mourning lies in the silence observed. Marzitra says the merit of a fast day lies in the charity dispensed. Arshis hate says the merit of a funeral oration lies in raising the voice. Our Ashi says the merit of attending a wedding lies in the words of congratulation addressed to the bride and bridegroom. Our Huna says whosoever prays at the rear of a synagogue is called wicked for it is said the wicked walk round about. Abay says this only applies where he does not turn his face towards the synagogue. But if he does turn his face towards the synagogue, there is no objection to it. There was once a man who prayed at the rear of a synagogue and did not turn his face towards the synagogue. Elijah. Passed by and appeared to him in the guise of an Arabian merchant, he said to him, Are you standing with your back to your master? And drew his sword and slew him. One of the scholars said to our BBB, Abbe, some say our BB said to our Naman B. Isaac, What is the meaning of when violence is exalted among the sons of men? He replied to him, These are the things of supreme importance which nevertheless people neglect. Our Yohanan and our Eliza both interpret as soon as a man needs the support of his fellow creatures. His face changes color like the Kiram as it is said, as the Kiram is to be reviled among the sons of men. What is the Kiram? When Ardimi came from Palestine, he said, There is a bird in the coast towns whose name is Kiram, and as soon as the sun shines upon it, it changes into several colors. RMI and RSC both say, When a man needs the support of his fellow beings, it is as if he were punished with two opposite punishments with fire and water, for it is said, When thou hast caused. Meant to ride over our heads, we went through fire and through water. Our helbo further said in the name of our Hunani man should always take special care about the afternoon prayer, for even Elijah was favorably heard only while offering this afternoon prayer, for it is said, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening offering that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, hear me, that the fire may descend from heaven and hear me, that they may not say it is the work of sorcery. Our Yohanan says, Special care should be taken also about the evening prayer, for it is said, Let my prayer be set forth as incense before thee, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Our Naman B. Isaac says, Special care should be taken also about the morning prayer, for it is said, O Lord, in the morning shalt thou hear my voice, in the morning will I order my prayer unto thee, and will look forward. Our helbo further said in the name of our Hunani, whosoever partakes of the wedding. Meal of the bridegroom and does not felicitate him does violence to the five voices mentioned in the verse the voice of joy and the voice of gladness the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride the voice of them that say give thanks to the Lord of hosts and if he does gladden him what is his reward our Joshua B. Levi said he is privileged to acquire the knowledge of the Torah which was given with five voices for it is said and it came to pass on the third day when it was morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a horn and when the voice of the horn waxed louder Moses spoke and God answered him by a voice this is not so for it is written and all the people perceived the thunderings these voices were before the revelation of the Torah our Abba says it is as if he had sacrificed a thanksgiving offering for it is said even of them that bring offerings of thanksgiving into the house of the Lord our Naman B. Isaac says it is as if he had restored one of the ruins of Jerusalem, for it is said, For I will cause the captivity of the land to return as at the first set. The Lord our Helbo further said in the name of our Hunan, If one is filled with the fear of God, his words are listened to, for it is said, The end of the matter, all having been heard, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole man. What means for this is the whole man? Our Eliezer says, The Holy One, blessed be he, says, The whole world was created. For his sake only, our Abba Bikahana says, He is equal in value to the whole world. Our Simeon Bizay says, Some say, Our Simon Bizoma says, The whole world was created as a satellite for him. Our Helbo further said in the name of our Hunan, If one knows that his friend is used to greet him, let him greet him first, for it is said, Seek peace and pursue it, and if his friend greets him and he does not return the greeting, he is called a robber, for it is said, It is yet that have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of it. Pour is in your house is Talmud, Masbirak Othay are Yohanan says in the name of our Jose how do we know that the Holy One blessed be he says prayers because it says even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer it is not said their prayer but my prayer hence you learn that the Holy One blessed be he says prayers what does he pray our Zitra be Tobi said in the name of Rab may it be my will that my mercy may suppress my anger and that my mercy may prevail over my other attributes so that I may deal with my children in the attribute of mercy and on their behalf stop short of the limit of strict justice it was taught our Ishmael be Elisha says I once entered into the innermost part of the sanctuary to offer incense and saw Akathrilia really the Lord of hosts seated upon a high and exalted throne he said to me Ishmael my son bless me El replied may it be thy will that thy mercy may suppress thy anger and thy mercy may prevail over thy other attributes so that thou mayest deal with thy children according to the attribute of mercy and mayest on their behalf stop short of the limit of strict justice and he nodded to me with his head here we learn incidentally that the blessing of an ordinary man must not be considered lightly in your eyes are you and further said in the name of our Jose how do you know that we must not try to placate a man in the time of his anger for it is written my face will go and I will give thee rest the holy one blessed be he said to Moses wait till my countenance of wrath shall have passed away and then I shall give thee rest but his anger then a mood of the holy one blessed be he yes for it has been taught a God that hath indignation every day and how long does this indignation last one moment and how long is one moment one fifty eight thousand eight hundred and eighty eighth part of an hour and no creature has ever been able to fix precisely this moment except the wicked Balaam of whom it is written he knoweth the knowledge of the Most High now he did not even know the mind of his animal how then could he know the mind of the Most High the meaning is therefore only that he knew how to fix precisely this moment in which the Holy One blessed be he is angry and this is just what the Prophet said to Israel O my people remember now what Balak king of Moab devised and what Balaam the son of Beer answered him that ye may know the righteous acts of the Lord what means that ye may know the righteous acts of the Lord our Eliezer says the Holy One blessed be he said to Israel see now how many righteous acts I performed for you in not being angry in the days of the wicked Balaam for had I been angry not one remnant would have been left of the enemies of Israel and this too is the meaning of what Balaam said to Balak how shall I curse whom God hath not cursed and how shall I execrate whom the Lord hath not execrated this teaches us that he was not angry all these days and how long does his anger Last one moment and how long is one moment Arab and some say Arab and it says as long as it takes to say Riga and how do you know that he is angry one moment for it is said for his anger is but for a moment Riga his favor is for a lifetime or if you prefer you may infer it from the following verse hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed and when is he angry Abbe says in one moment of those first three hours of the day when the comb of the cock is white and it stands on one foot why in each hour it stands thus on one foot in each other hour it has red streaks but in this moment it has no red streaks at all in the neighborhood of our Joshua B. Levi there was a Sadducee who used to annoy him very much with his interpretations of texts one day the rabbi took a cock placed it between the legs of his bed and watched it he thought when this moment arrives I shall curse him when the moment arrived he was dozing on waking up he said we learn from this that it is not proper to act in such a way it is written and his tender mercies are over all his works and it is further written neither is it good for the righteous to punish it was taught in the name of our Meir at the time when the sun rises and all the kings of the east and west put their crowns upon their heads and bow down to the sun the holy one blessed be he becomes at once angry our Yohan and further said in the name of our Jose better is one self reproach in the heart of a man than many stripes for it is said and she shall run after her lovers then shall she say I shall go and return to my first husband for then was it better with me than now our Simon B. Lakish says it is better than a hundred stripes for it is said a rebuke entereth deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred stripes into a fool our Yohan and further said in the name of our Jose three things did Moses ask of the holy one blessed be he and they were granted to him he asked that the divine presence should rest upon Israel
their fathers and the other verse with children who do not continue in the course of their fathers you must therefore say that the Lord said thus to Moses a righteous man who prospers is a perfectly righteous man a righteous man who is in adversity is not a perfectly righteous man a wicked man who prospers is not a perfectly wicked man a wicked man who is in adversity is a perfectly wicked man now the saying of our Yohanan is in opposition to the saying of our Meir for our Meir said only two requests were granted to him and one was not granted to him for it is said and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious although he may not deserve it and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy although he may not deserve it and he said thou canst not see my face Satan taught in the name of our Joshua be Korha the Holy One blessed be he spoke thus to Moses what I wanted you did not want to see my face now that you want I do not want this is in opposition to the interpretation of this verse by our Samuel be Namani in the name of our Jonathan for our Samuel be Namani said in the name of our Jonathan as a reward of three pious acts Moses was privileged to obtain three favors in reward of and Moses hid his face he obtained the brightness of his face in reward of for he was afraid he obtained the privilege that they were afraid to come nigh him in reward of to look upon God he obtained the similitude of the Lord doth he behold and I will take away my hand. And thou shalt see my back our Habibis and I said in the name of our Simon the pious this teaches us that the Holy One blessed be he showed Moses the knot of the Tefillin our Yohanan further said in the name of our Jose no word of blessing that issued from the mouth of the Holy One blessed be he even if based upon a condition was ever withdrawn by him how do we know this from our teacher Moses for it is said let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven and I will make of the nation mightier and greater than they though Moses prayed that this might be mercifully averted and it was cancelled the blessing was nevertheless fulfilled towards his children for it is said the sons of Moses Gershom and Elizur and the sons of Elizur were Rahabia the chief and the sons of Rahabia were very many and our Joseph learned they were more than sixty myriads this is to be learned from two occurrences of the term manifold here it is written were very many and Elsewhere it is written, and the children of Israel were very fruitful and increased abundantly and became very many Talmud. Mosbirakoth B. R. Yohanan said further in the name of our Simeon B. Yohei from the day that the Holy One blessed be he created the world, there was no man that called the Holy One blessed be he Lord until Abraham came and called him Lord for it is said, and he said, O Lord Adonai God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Rab said, Even Daniel was heard in his prayer. Only for the sake of Abraham, for it says, Now therefore, O our God, hearken unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake, he ought to have said for thy sake, but he means for the sake of Abraham who called thee Lord our Yohanan further said in the name of our Simeon B. Yohei, How do you know that we must not try to placate a man in the time of his anger because it is said, My face will go and I will give thee. Rest our Yohanan further said in the name of our Simeon Biohe from the day that the Holy One blessed be he created his world there was no man that praised the Holy One blessed be he until you came and praised him for it is said this time will I praise the Lord Reuben what is the meaning of Reuben our Eliezer said Leah said see the difference between my son and the son of my father-in-law the son of my father-in-law voluntarily sold his birthright for it is written and he sold his birthright unto Jacob and nonetheless behold it is written of him and he saw he to Jacob and it is also written and he said is not he rightly named Jacob for he had supplanted me these two times my son however although Joseph took his birthright from him against his will as it is written but for as much as he defiled his father's couch his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph was not jealous of him for it is written and Reuben heard it and delivered him out of their hand Ruth what is the meaning of Ruth our Yohanan said because she was privileged to be the aunt's stress of David who saturated the Holy One blessed be he with songs and hymns how do we know that the name of a person has an effect upon his life our Eliezer said scripture says come behold the works of the Lord who have made desolations in the earth read not Shamoth desolations but Shemoth names our Yohanan further said in the name of our Simeon Biohe a bad son in a man's house is worse than the war of Gog and Magog for it is said a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son and it is written after that Lord how many are mine adversaries become many are they that rise up against me but in regard to the war of Gog and Magog it is written why are the nations in an uproar and why do the peoples mutter in vain but it is not written how many are mine adversaries become a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son a psalm of David he ought to have said a lamentation of David our Simeon Biohe Shalom said a Parable to what is this to be compared to a man who has a bond outstanding against him until he pays it he worries but after he has paid it he rejoices so was it with David when the Holy One blessed be he said to him behold I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house he began worrying he thought it may be a slave or a bastard who will have no pity on me when he saw that it was Absalom he was glad and therefore he said a psalm Yohanan further said in the name of our Simeon Biohe it is permitted to contend with the wicked in this world for it is said they that forsake the law praise the wicked but such as keep the law contend with them it has been taught to the same effect our dust high son of our Matun says it is permitted to contend with the wicked in this world for it is said they that forsake the law praise the wicked etc should somebody whisper to you but is it not written contend not with evil doers neither be thou envious against them that work unrighteousness then you may tell him only one whose conscience smites him says so in fact contend not with evildoers means to be like them neither be thou envious against them that work unrighteousness means to be like them and so it is said let not thy heart envy sinners but be in the fear of the Lord all the day but this is not so for our eyes except if you see a wicked man upon whom fortune is smiling do not attack him for it is said his ways prosper at all times and more than that he is victorious in the court of judgment for it is said thy judgments are far above out of his sight and still more than that he sees the discomfiture of his enemies for it is said as for all his adversaries he puffeth at them there is no contradiction the one our Isaac speaks of his private affairs the other one are Yohanan of matters of religion if you wish I can say both speak of matters of religion and still there is no contradiction the one our Isaac speaks of a wicked man upon whom fortune is smiling the other one Speaks of a wicked man upon whom fortune is not smiling, or if you wish I can say both speak of a wicked man upon whom fortune is smiling, and still there is no contradiction. The one our Yohanan speaks of a perfectly righteous man, the other one of a man who is not perfectly righteous, for our Hunah said, What is the meaning of the verse? Wherefore lookest thou when they deal treacherously and holdest thy peace when the wicked swallow up the man that is more righteous than he can then the wicked? Swallow up the righteous, is it not written? The Lord will not leave him in his hand, and is it not written further? There shall no mischief befall the righteous. You must therefore say he swallows up the one who is only more righteous than he, but he cannot swallow up the perfectly righteous man. If you wish I can say it is different when fortune is smiling upon him, or Yohanan further said in the name of our Simeon Biohe, if a man has a fixed place for his prayer, his enemies to come to him for it. He said, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in their own place and be disquieted no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more. As at the first, are who not pointed to a contradiction here? It is written to afflict them and elsewhere to exterminate them. The answer is first to afflict them and then to exterminate them. Are Yohanan further said in the name of our Simeon Biohe, the service of the Torah is greater than the study. Thereof, for it is said here is Elisha the son of Shaphat who poured water on the hands of Elijah. It is not said who learned, but who poured water. This teaches that the service of the Torah is greater than the study thereof. Our Isaac said to our Naman, Why does the master not come to the synagogue in order to pray? He said to him, I cannot. He asked him, Let the master gather ten people and pray with them in his house. He answered, It is too much of a trouble for me. He then said, Let the master ask. The messenger of the congregation to inform him of the time when the congregation prays he answered why all this trouble he said to him for our Yohanan said in the name of our Simeon Biohe Talmud, Masbirakotha what is the meaning of the verse but as for me let my prayer be made unto the Lord in an acceptable time when is the time acceptable when the congregation prays our Jose B. Our Hananah says you learned it from here thus saith the Lord in an acceptable time have I answered the Araha son. Of our Hananah says you learned it from here behold God despiseth not the mighty
helps them even as our Joshua B. Levi said to his children come early to the synagogue and leave it late that you may live long our Ahasan of our Hananah says which verse may be quoted in support of this happy is the man that hearkeneth to me washing daily at my gates waiting at the post of my doors after which it is written for whoso findeth me findeth life our his says a man should always enter two doors into the synagogue what is the meaning of two doors say the distance of two doors and then Pray for this, let everyone that is godly pray unto thee in the time of finding our Hananah says in the time of finding refers to the finding of a wife for it is said whoso findeth a wife findeth a great good in the West they used to ask a man who married a wife thus Maza or Mos Maza for it is written whoso findeth Maza a wife findeth a great good Mos for it is written and I find Mos more bitter than death the woman our Nathan says in the time of finding refers to the finding of Torah for it is said for whoso findeth me findeth life etc our Naman B Isaac said in the time of finding refers to the finding of death for it is said the issues of death similarly it has been taught 903 species of death were created in this world for it is said the issues of death and the numerical value of Tozayath is so the worst of them is the group and the easiest of them is a kiss group is like a thorn in a ball of wool pulled out backwards some people say it is like pulling a rope through the loopholes of a ship death by a kiss is like drawing a hair out of milk. Our Yohanan said in the time of finding refers to the finding of a grave. Our Hananah said which verse may be quoted in support who rejoice unto exaltation and are glad when they can find the grave. Rabbi son of Arshila said hence the proverb a man should pray for peace even to the last clot of earth thrown upon his grave. Marzitra said in the time of finding refers to the finding of a privy day. Said in the West this interpretation of Marzitra is the best of all. Rabbi said to Raphram be Papa let the master please tell us some of those fine things that you said in the name of Arhista on matters relating to the synagogue. He replied thus said Arhista what is the meaning of the verse the Lord loveth the gates of Zion Z and more than all the dwellings of Jacob the Lord loves the gates that are distinguished Mizu and through Halacha more than the synagogues and houses of study and this conforms with the following saying of our high BMI in the name of Allah since the day that the temple was destroyed the Holy One blessed be he has nothing in this world but the four cubits of Halisha alone so said also Abbe at first I used to study in my house and pray in the synagogue since I heard the saying of our high BMI in the name of Allah since the day that the temple was destroyed the Holy One blessed be he has nothing in this world but the four cubits of Halisha alone I pray. Only in the place where I study RMI and RC though they had thirteen synagogues in Tiberias prayed only between the pillars where they used to study our high BMI further said in the name of Allah a man who lives from the labor of his hands is greater than the one who fears heaven for with regard to the one who fears heaven it is written happy is a man that feareth the Lord while with regard to the man who lives from his own work it is written when thou eatest the labor of thy hands. Happy shalt thou be and it shall be well with thee. Happy shalt thou be in this world and it shall be well with thee in the world to come. But of the man that fears heaven it is not written and it shall be well with thee. Or high be am I further said in the name of Allah a man should always live in the same town as his teacher for as long as Shimei the son of Pharaoh was alive Solomon did not marry the daughter of Pharaoh but it has been taught that he should not live in the same place there is no contradiction the former speaks of a disciple who is submissive to him the other of a disciple who is not submissive Arhuna be Judah in the name of Armenahum in the name of Arhamai said what is the meaning of the verse and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed this refers to people who leave the scroll of the law while it is being read from and go out from the synagogue Arab used to go out between one reader and the next our papa raised the question what of going out between Verse and verse it remains unanswered. Arshis had used to turn his face to another side and study. He said, We are busy with ours and they are busy with theirs. Arhunabi Judah says in the name of RMI, a man should always complete his parts hot together with the congregation, reading twice the Hebrew text and once the Aramaic Targum Talmud, Mosbirak Oth B, and even such verses as Adaroth and Dibin. For if one completes his parts hot together with the congregation, his days and years are prolonged. RBBB Abbe wanted to finish all the parts hot of the whole year on the eve of the Day of Atonement, but Hibi Rav of Dipti recited to him the following Beritha it is written, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month, and even now do we fast on the ninth, why we fast on the tenth, but this teaches you that if one eats and drinks on the ninth, scripture accounts it to him as if he fasted on the ninth and tenth, thereupon he wanted to finish them in advance, but a Certain elder recited to him a very the teaching however he should not read them in advance of nor later than the congregation even so did our Joshua believe I say to his children complete your parts hot together with the congregation twice the Hebrew text and once Targum be careful with the jugular veins to follow the teaching of our Judah as we have learned our Judah says he must cut through the jugular veins and be careful to respect an old man who has forgotten his knowledge through no fault of his own for it was said both the whole tables and the fragments of the tables were placed in the ark Rabba said to his children when you are cutting meat do not cut it upon your hand some people say on account of danger and some in order not to spoil the meal do not sit upon the bed of an Aramean woman and do not pass behind a synagogue when the congregation is praying do not sit upon the bed of an Aramean woman some say that this means do not go to bed before reciting the Shema some say it means do not marry a proselyte woman and some say it means literally the bed of an Aramean woman and this rule was laid down because of what happened to our papa for our papa once visited an Aramean woman she brought out a bed and said sit down he said to her I will not sit down until you raise the cover of the bed she raised the cover and they found their dead baby and said the scholars it is not permitted to sit down upon the bed of an Aramean woman and do not pass behind a synagogue when the congregation is praying this supports the teaching of our Joshua B. Levi for our Joshua B. Levi said it is not permitted for a man to pass behind a synagogue when the congregation is praying a base said this applies only when there is no other door but when there is another door there is no objection furthermore this applies only when there is no other synagogue but when there is another synagogue there is no objection and furthermore this applies only when he does not carry a burden and does not run and does not wear teflon but where one of these conditions is present there is no objection it has been taught our Akiva says for three things I like the meads when they cut meat they cut it only on the table when they kiss they kiss only the hand and when they hold counsel they do so only in the field our Adabi Akiva says which verse may be quoted in support of the last and Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock it has been taught our Gamaliel says for three things do I like the Persians they are temperate and they are eating modest in the privy and chaste in another matter I have commanded my consecrated ones our Joseph learned this refers to the Persians who are consecrated and destined for Gehenna our Gamaliel says until the dawn rises Rab Judah says in the name of Samuel the Halachah is as laid down by our Gamaliel it was taught our Simeon Bio he says sometimes a man may recite the Shema twice in the night once before the dawn breaks and once after the dawn breaks and thereby fulfill his duty once for the day and once for the night. Now this is self-contradictory. You say a man may sometimes recite the Shema twice in the night, which shows that it is still night after the dawn breaks, and then you say he thereby fulfills his duty once for the day and once for the night, which shows that it is daytime. No, it is in reality night, but he calls it day because some people rise at that time. Arahabi Hanan is said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi. Halachah is as stated by our Simeon Biohi. Some people refer the statement of Arahabi Hanan to the following lesson, which has been taught our Simeon Biohi says in the name of our Akiva. Sometimes a man may recite the Shema twice in the daytime, once before sunrise and once after sunrise, and thereby fulfill his duty once for the day and once for the night. Now this is self-contradictory. You say a man may sometimes recite the Shema twice in the daytime, which shows that before sunrise it is daytime. And then you state he thereby fulfills his duty once for the day and once for the night which shows that it is night Talmud, Masbirak Othan know it is in reality day but he calls it night because some people go to bed at that time Arahabi Hanan is said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi the Halachah is as stated by our Simeon who said in the name of our Akiva Arzara says however he must not say the prayer cause us to lie down when our Isaac B. Joseph came from Palestine he said this tradition of our Ahabi Hanan in the name of our Joshua B. Levi was
Contradiction with the following very the duty of the recital of the Shema in the evening and of the Hell on the night of the Passover and of the eating of the Passover sacrifice can be performed until the break of the dawn. Our Joseph says there is no contradiction. One statement the Mishnah conforms with the view of our Eliezer B. Ezra and the other with the view of our Akiva for it has been taught and they shall eat of the flesh in that night. Our Eliezer B. Ezra says here it is said in that night and further on it is said for I will go through the land of Egypt in that night just as the latter verse means until midnight so also here it means until midnight our Akiva said to him but it is also said you shall eat it in haste which means until the time of haste until the break of the dawn said our Eliezer to him if that is so why does it say in the night our Akiva answered because I might think that it may be eaten in the daytime like the sacrifices therefore it is said in the Night indicating that only in the night is it eaten and not in the day we can understand why according to our Eliezer B. Ezra whose opinion is based on the Gezerah the word that is necessary but according to our Akiva what is the purpose of this word that it is there to exclude another night for since the Passover sacrifice is a sacrifice of minor sanctity and peace offerings are sacrifices of minor sanctity I might think that just as the peace offerings are eaten for two days and one night so is also the Passover offering eaten for two nights instead of the two days and therefore it might be eaten for two nights and one day therefore it is said in that night and that night it is eaten but it is not eaten in another night and our Eliezer B. Ezra he deduces it from the verse and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning our Akiva if you deduced it from there I could say that morning refers to the second morning and our Eliezer he answers you morning generally means the first morning and the controversy of these Tanaim is like the controversy of the other Tanaim in the following Barry thither thou shalt sacrifice the Passover offering at even at the going down of the sun at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt our Eliezer says at even you sacrifice at sunset you eat and at the season that thou camest out of Egypt you must burn the remainder our Joshua says at even you sacrifice at sunset you eat a and how long do you continue to eat till the season that thou camest out of Egypt our Abba said all agree that when Israel was redeemed from Egypt they were redeemed in the evening for it is said the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night but they did not actually leave Egypt till the daytime for it is said on the morrow after the Passover the children of Israel went out with a high hand about what do they disagree about the time of the haste our Eliezer B. Ezra says what is meant by haste the haste of the Egyptians and are Akiba says it is the haste of Israel it has also been taught likewise the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night but did they leave in the night did not they in fact leave only in the morning as it says on the morrow after the Passover the children of Israel went out with a high hand but this teaches that the redemption had already begun in the evening speak now and a in the ears of the people etc in the school of Arjanae they said the word na means I pray the Holy One bless be. He said to Moses I pray of thee go and tell Israel I pray of you to borrow from the Egyptians vessels of silver and vessels of gold so that Talmud, Mosbirak oath be this righteous man Abraham may not say and they shall serve them and they shall afflict them he did fulfill for them but and afterward shall they come out with great substance he did not fulfill for them they said to him if only we could get out with our lives a parable they were like a man who was kept in prison and people told. Him tomorrow they will release you from the prison and give you plenty of money and he answered them I pray of you let me go free today and I shall ask nothing more and they let them have what they ask R M I says this teaches that they let them have it against their will some say against the will of the Egyptians and some say against the will of the Israelites those that say against the will of the Egyptians cite the verse and she that tarrieth at home divide the spoil those that say against the will of the Israelites say it was because of the burden of carrying it and they despoiled Egypt R M I says this teaches that they made it like a snare without corn rush said they made it like a pond without fish I am that I am the holy one blessed be he said to Moses go and say to Israel I was with you in the servitude and I shall be with you in the servitude of the other kingdoms he said to him Lord of the universe sufficient is the evil in the time thereof thereupon. The Holy One blessed be he said to him go and tell them I am has sent me unto you hear me O Lord hear me Arabah said why did Elijah say twice hear me this teaches that Elijah said before the Holy One blessed be he Lord of the universe hear me that the fire may descend from heaven and consume everything that is upon the altar and hear me that thou mayest turn their mind that they may not say that it was the work of sorcery for it is said for thou didst turn their heart backward mission from what time may one recite the Shema in the morning from the time that one can distinguish between blue and white our Elijah says between blue and green and he has time to finish until sunrise our Joshua says until the third hour of the day for such is the custom of kings to rise at the third hour if one recites the Shema later he loses nothing being like one who reads in the Torah tomorrow what is the meaning of between blue and white shall I say between a lump of white wool and a lump of blue wool this one may also distinguish in the night it means rather between the blue in it and the white in it it has been taught our mayor says the morning shima is read from the time that one can distinguish between a wolf and a dog our akiba says between an ass and a wild ass others say from the time that one can distinguish his friend at a distance of four cubits our huna says the halachah is as stated by the others abe says in regard to the tefillin the halachah is as stated by the others in regard to the recital of the shima is practiced by the wadakin for our yohan and said the wadakin used to finish at the recital of the shima with sunrise in order to join the jeela with the tefillah and say the tefillah in the daytime our zera says what text can be cited in support of this they shall fear thee with the sun and so long as the moon throughout all generations our jose belia can testify in the name of the holy community of jerusalem if one joins the jeela to the tefillah he will not meet with any mishap for the whole of the day said Arzara this is not so for I did join and did meet with a mishap they asked him what was your mishap that you had to carry a myrtle branch into the king's palace that was no mishap for in any case you would have had to pay something in order to see the king for our Yohan and said a man should always be eager to run to see the kings of Israel and not only to see the kings of Israel but also to see the kings of the Gentiles so that if he is found worthy he may be able to distinguish between the kings of Israel and the kings of the Gentiles Arella said to Allah when you go up there give my greeting to my brother Arbaran in the presence of the whole college for he is a great man and rejoices to perform a precept in the correct manner once he succeeded in joining Jeola with Tefila and a smile did not leave his lips the whole day how is it possible to join the two seeing that our Yohan has said at the beginning of the Tefila one has to say Lord open thou my lips and at the end he has to say let the words of my mouth be acceptable etc. Our Eliezer replied this must then refer to the Tefila of the evening but has not our Yohanan said who is it that is destined for the world to come one who joins the Jeola of the evening with the Tefila of the evening rather said our Eliezer this must then refer to the Tefila of the afternoon our Ashi said you may also say that it refers to all the Tefilas but since the rabbis instituted these words in the Tefila the whole is considered one long Tefila for if you do not admit this how can he join in the evening seeing that he has to say the benediction of let us rest you must say then that since the rabbis ordained the saying of let us rest it is considered one long Jeola so here since the rabbis instituted these words in the Tefila the whole is considered one long Tefila seeing that this verse let the words of my mouth be acceptable etc. is suitable for recital either at the end or the beginning of the Tefila why did the rabbis institute it at the end of the 18 benedictions let it be recited at the beginning our Judah the son of our Simeon because he said since David said it only after 18 chapters of the Psalms the rabbis too enacted that it should be said after 18 blessings but those 18 Psalms are really 19 happy is the man and why are the nations in an uproar form one chapter for our Judah the son of our Simeon because he said David composed 103 chapters of Psalms and he did not say hallelujah until he saw the downfall of the wicked as it says let sinners cease out of the earth and let the wicked be no more blessed the Lord oh my soul hallelujah now are these 103 are they not 104 you must assume therefore that happy is the man and why are the nations in an uproar form one chapter for our Samuel be he said in the name of our Yohan and Talmud Mosbirak oath every chapter that was particularly dear to David he commenced with happy and terminated with happy he began with happy as it is written happy is the man and he terminated with happy as it is written happy are all they that take refuge in him there were once some high women in
First and let him write it first you reply to him for you who do not derive interpretations from juxtaposition there is a difficulty but for us who do derive interpretations from juxtaposition there is no difficulty for our Yohanan said how do we know from the Torah that juxtaposition counts because it says they are joined forever and ever they are done in truth and uprightness why is the chapter of Absalom juxtaposed to the chapter of Gog and Magog so that if one should say to you is it possible that a slave should rebel against his master you can reply to him is it possible that a son should rebel against his father yet this happened and so this too will happen our Yohanan said in the name of our Simeon Biohe what is the meaning of the verse she opened at her mouth with wisdom and the law of kindness is on her tongue to whom was Solomon alluding in this verse he was alluding only to his father David who dwelt in five worlds and composed a psalm for each of them he abode in his mother's womb and broke into song as it says bless the Lord O my soul and all my inwards bless his holy name he came out into the open air and looked upon the stars and constellations and broke into song as it says bless the Lord ye angels of his mighty and strength that fulfill his word here canning unto the voice of his word bless the Lord all ye his hosts etc he sucked from his mother's bosom and looked on her breast and broke into song as it says bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits what means all his benefits are about said that he placed her breast at the source of understanding for what reason is this Rab Judah said so that he should not look upon the place of shame our Matina said so that he should not suck from a place that is foul he saw the downfall of the wicked and broke into song as it says let sinners cease out of the earth and let the wicked be no more bless the Lord O my soul hallelujah he looked upon the day of death and broke into song as it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God, thou art very great, thou art clothed with glory and majesty. How does this verse refer to the day of death? Rabbi, son of Arshila said, We learn it from the end of the passage where it is written, Thou hidest thy face, they vanish, thou withdrawest their breath, they perish, etc. Arshai, my Biak, father, Samar, was often in the company of our Simeon Pipazi, who used to arrange a gaddis and recite them before our Yohanan. He said to him, What is the meaning of the verse? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He replied, Come and observe how the capacity of human beings falls short of the capacity of the Holy One. Blessed be he, it is in the capacity of a human being to draw a figure on a wall, but he cannot invest it with breath and spirit bowels and intestines. But the Holy One, blessed be he, is not so he shapes one form in the midst of another and invests it with breath and spirit bowels and intestines, and that is what. Hannah said, There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any Zurag like our God. What means neither is there any Zur like our God? There is no artist, say ye are like our God. What means for there is none beside thee, Arjuna, be mean as I said, read not there is none Bilika, but there is none level of to consume thee, for the nature of flesh and blood is not like that of the Holy One. Blessed be he, it is the nature of flesh and blood to be outlived by its works. But the Holy One, blessed be he, outlives his works. He said to him, What I meant to tell you is this to whom did David refer in these five verses beginning with, Bless the Lord, O my soul, he was alluding only to the Holy One, blessed be he, and to the soul, just as the Holy One, blessed be he, fills the whole world, so the soul fills the body, just as the Holy One, blessed be he, sees but is not seen, so the soul sees but is not itself seen, just as the Holy One, blessed be he, feeds the whole world, so the soul. Feeds the whole body just as the Holy One, blessed be he is pure, so the soul is pure just as the Holy One, blessed be he abides in the innermost precincts, so the soul abides in the innermost precincts. Let that which has these five qualities come and praise him who has these five qualities are Hamdana said, What is the meaning of the verse who is as a wise man and who knoweth the interpretation Pesha of a thing who is like the Holy One, blessed be he who knew how to effect a reconciliation? Pesha Arab between two righteous men, Hezekiah and Isaiah, Hezekiah said, Let Isaiah come to me, for so we find that Elijah went to Ahab, as it says, and Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, Isaiah said, Let Hezekiah come to me, for so we find that Jehoram son of Ahab went to Elisha, what did the Holy One, blessed be he do? He brought sufferings upon Hezekiah and then said to Isaiah, Go visit the sick, for so it says in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet son of Amos came to him. And said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live, etc. What is the meaning of thou shalt die and not live, thou shalt die in this world and not live in the world to come? He said to him, Why so bad? He replied, Because you did not try to have children. He said, The reason was because I saw by the Holy Spirit that the children issuing from me would not be virtuous. He said to him, What have you to do with the secrets of the All-Merciful? You should have done what? You were commanded, and let the Holy One blessed be he do that which pleases him. He said to him, And give me now your daughter, perhaps through your merit and mine combined virtuous children will issue from me. He replied, The doom has already been decreed, said the other son of Amos, finish your prophecy and go this tradition I have from the house of my ancestor. Even if a sharp sword rests upon a man's neck, he should not desist from prayer. The saying is also recorded in the names of our Yohanan and our Eliezer, even if a sharp sword rests on a man's neck, he should not desist from prayer, as it says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Talmud, Mosbirakoth, be similarly our said, Even if the master of dreams says to a man that on the morrow he will die, he should not desist from prayer, for so it says, For in the multitude of dreams are vanities, and also many words, but fear thou God thereupon straightway, as he turned his face to the Kir wall and prayed unto the Lord, What is it? Meaning of Kir are Simeon Belakish said, He prayed from the innermost chambers, Kiroth of his heart, as it says, My bowels, my bowels, arrive in pain, Kiroth, the chambers of my heart, etc. Our Levi said, He prayed with reference to another Kir, he said, Before him, sovereign of the universe, the Shunammite woman made only one little chamber on the roof, and thou didst restore her son to life, how much more so than me, whose ancestor overlaid the temple with silver and gold, remember now, O Lord, I Beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a whole heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. What means I have done that which is good in thy sight? Rab Judah says in the name of Rab he joined the Geola with the Tefila. Our Levi said he hid away the book of cures. Our rabbis talking Hezekiah did six things of three of them. They the rabbis approved and of three they did not approve of three. They approved he hid away the book of cures and they approved of it. He broke into pieces the brazen serpent and they approved of it. And he dragged the bones of his father to the grave on a bed of ropes and they approved of it. Of three they did not approve. He stopped up the waters of Gin and they did not approve of it. He cut off the gold from the doors of the temple and sent it to the king of Assyria and they did not approve of it. And he intercalated the month of Nisan during Nisan and they did not approve of it. But did not Hezekiah accept the teaching this? Month shall be unto you the beginning of months. This means that this is Nissan and no other month shall be Nissan. He went wrong over the teaching enunciated by Samuel. For Samuel said the year must not be declared a prolonged year on the 30th of Adar since this day may possibly belong to Nissan. And he thought we do not pay heed to this possibility. Our Yohanan said in the name of our Jose Bizimra, if a man makes his petition depend on his own merit, heaven makes it depend on the merit of others. And if he makes it depend on the merit of others, heaven makes it depend on his own merit. Moses made his petition depend on the merit of others, as it says, Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, and scripture made it depend on his own merit, as it says, Therefore he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to turn back his wrath, lest he should destroy them. Hezekiah made his petition depend on his own merit, as it is written, Remember now, O Lord, I Beseech thee how I have walked before thee, and God made it depend on the merit of others, as it says, For I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And this agrees with our Joshua B. Levi, for our Joshua B. Levi said, What is the meaning of the verse? Behold, for my peace I had great bitterness, even when the Holy One blessed be he sent him the message of peace, it was bitter for him. Let us make, I pray thee, a little chamber on the roof, Rab and Samuel differ one. Says it was an open upper chamber, and they put a roof on it. The other says it was a large veranda, and they divided it into two for him who says that it was a veranda. There is a good reason why the text says Kir wall, but how does he who says that it was an upper chamber account for the word Kir
prays, but he should pray in a lowly place as it says out of the depths have I called the O Lord. It has been taught to the same effect a man should not stand on a chair or on a footstool or on a high place to pray, but he should pray in a lowly place since there is no elevation before God. And so it says out of the depths have I called the O Lord. And it also says a prayer of the afflicted when he fainteth are Jose son of Arhanan. also said in the name of our Elizabeth Jacob when one prays he should. Place his feet in proper position as it says, and their feet were straight feet. Our Jose, son of Arhan, also said in the name of our Elizabeth B. Jacob, what is the meaning of the verse? Ye shall not eat with the blood, do not eat before ye have prayed for your blood. Our Isaac said in the name of our Yohanan, who had it from our Jose, son of Arhan, in the name of our Elizabeth B. Jacob, if one eats and drinks and then says his prayers of him, the scripture says, and has cast me behind thy back, read not talk of thy back, but he that pride says, the Holy One, blessed be he, after this one has exalted himself, he comes and accepts the kingdom of heaven. Our Joshua says, until the third hour, Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel, the Hala Chagas, as stated by our Joshua, he who recites the Shema later loses nothing. Our Hista said in the name of Marak, provided he does not say the benediction of who formest the light and objection was raised from the statement, he who recites the Shema later loses nothing, he is like one. Reading in the Torah, but he says two blessings before it, and one after is not this a refutation of Arhista, it is indeed a refutation. Some there are who say Arhista said in the name of Marakba, what is the meaning of he loses nothing, he does not lose the benedictions, it has been taught to the same effect. He who says the Shema later loses nothing, being like one who reads from the Torah, but he says two blessings before, and one after Armani said he who recites the Shema in its proper time is greater than he who studies the Torah, for since it says he who says later loses nothing, being like a man who reads in the Torah, we may conclude that one who recites the Shema at its proper time is superior. Mishnah Beth Shammai say in the evening every man should recline and recite the Shema, and in the morning he should stand as it says, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, Beth Hillel, however, say that every man should recite in his own way as it says, and when thou walkest by the Way why then is it said and when thou liest down and when thou risest up this means at the time when people lie down and at the time when people rise up our Tarfan said I was once walking by the way and I reclined to recite the Shema in the manner prescribed by Beth Shammai and I incurred danger from robbers they said to him you deserve to come to harm because you acted against the opinion of Beth Hillel Talmud, Masbirah the Gemara Beth Hillel caused no difficulty they explain their own reason and the reason why they reject the opinion of Beth Shammai but why do not Beth Shammai accept the view of Beth Hillel Beth Shammai can reply if this is so let the text say in the morning and in the evening why does it say when thou liest down and when thou risest up to show that in the time of lying down there must be actual lying down and in the time of rising up there must be actual rising up and how do Beth Shammai explain the words and when thou walkest by the way they need it. For the following is has been taught when thou sittest in thy house this excludes a bridegroom and when thou walkest by the way this excludes one who is occupied with the performance of a religious duty hence they laid down that one who marries a virgin is free from the obligation to say the Shema in the evening while one who marries a widow is bound how is the lesson derived our Papa said the circumstances must be like a way as a way journey is optional so whatever is optional does not exempt from the obligation but does not the text treat also of one who is going to perform a religious duty and even so the all-merciful said that he should recite if that were so the all-merciful should have written simply while sitting and while walking what is the implication of when thou sittest and when thou walkest in the case of thy sitting and thy walking thou art under the obligation but in the case of performing a religious duty thou art exempt if that is so one who marries a Widow should also be exempt. The one is agitated, the other not. If a state of agitation is the ground, it would apply also to the case of his ship sinking at sea. And should you say quite so? Why did our Abba Bizab to say in the name of Rabbi Warner is under obligation to perform all the precepts laid down in the Torah except that of the Tefillin, because the term head tire is applied to them as it says, bind thy head tire upon thee. In that case, the agitation is over a religious duty. Here it is over an optional matter. And Beth Shammai they require it to exclude persons on a religious mission. And Beth Hillel they reply, incidentally, it tells you that one recites also by the way our rabbis taught. Beth Hillel say that one may recite the Shema standing, one may recite it sitting, one may recite it reclining, one may recite it walking on the road, one may recite it at one's work. Once our Ishmael and our Eliezer B.S. were dining at the same place, and our Ishmael was reclining while our Eliezer was. Standing upright when the time came for reciting the Shema, our Eliezer reclined and our Ishmael stood upright said, Our Eliezer be as right to our Ishmael, brother Ishmael, I will tell you a parable to what is this our conduct like it is like that of a man to whom people say you have a fine beard, and he replies, Let this go to meet the destroyer. So now with you, as long as I was upright, you were reclining, and now that I recline, you stand upright. He replied, I have acted according to the rule of Beth Hillel. And you have acted according to the rule of Beth Shammai, and what is more, I had to act thus lest the disciples should see and fix the halachah. So for future generations, what did he mean by what is more? He mentioned you argue that Beth Hillel also allow reclining. I reply that this is the case only where one was reclining from the first year. However, since at first you were upright and now you recline, they may say this shows that they both are of the opinion of Beth Shammai, and perhaps. The disciples will see and fix the halachah. So for future generations, our Ezekiel learned if one follows the rule of Beth Shammai, he does right. If one follows the rule of Beth Hillel, he does right. Our Joseph said if he follows the rule of Beth Shammai, his action is worthless. As we have learned, if a man has his head and the greater part of his body in the sukkah while the table is in the house, Beth Shammai declared his action void. While Beth Hillel declared it valid, said Beth Hillel to Beth Shammai once. The elders of Beth Shammai and the elders of Beth Hillel went to visit our Yohan and Biharanath, and they found him with his head and the greater part of his body in the sukkah while the table was in the house, and they made no objection. They replied, Do you bring a proof from this? The fact is that they also said to him, If such has been your regular custom, you have never performed the precept of the sukkah in your lifetime. Our Naman B. Isaac said, One who follows the rule of Beth Shammai makes his. Life forfeit as we have learned our Tarfan said I was once walking by the way and I reclined to recite the Shema in the manner prescribed by Beth Shammai and I incurred danger from robbers they said to him you deserve to come to harm because you acted against the opinion of Beth Hillel Mishnah in the morning two blessings are to be said before it and one after it in the evening two are said before it and two after it one long and one short where they the sages laid down that a long one should be said it is not permitted to say a short one where they ordained a short one a long one is not permitted a prayer which they ordered to be concluded with a benediction must not be left without such a conclusion one which they ordered to be left without such a conclusion must not be so concluded tomorrow what benedictions does one say in the morning our Jacob said in the name of our Ashai Talmud Masbirakoth be blessed art thou who formest light and createst darkness let him say rather who formest light and createst brightness, we keep the language of the scripture. If that is so, what of the next words in the text who makest peace and createst evil? Do we repeat them as they are written? It is written evil, and we say all things as a euphemism, and here too let us say brightness as a euphemism. In fact, replied Rabbah, it is in order to mention the distinctive feature of the day in the night time and the distinctive feature of the night in the daytime. It is correct that we mention the distinctive feature of the night in the daytime as we say who formest light and createst darkness. But where do you find the distinctive feature of the day mentioned in the night time? Abbe replied in the words thou rollest away the light from before the darkness and the darkness from before the light, which is the other benediction Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel with abounding love. So also did our Eliezer instruct his son our to say with abounding love it has been taught to. The same effect we do not say with everlasting love but with abounding love the rabbis however say that with everlasting love is said and so it is also said yeah I have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with affection I have drawn thee Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel if one rose early to study the Torah before he had recited the Shema he must say a benediction over the study but if he had already recited the Shema he need not say a benediction because he has already become quit by saying with abounding love Arhuna
said to them the priests say one benediction and they said the benediction and recited the Ten Commandments the Shema the section and it shall come to pass if ye hearken diligently and, and the Lord said and recited with the people three benedictions bestrew and firm the benediction of the Avodah and the priestly benediction on Sabbath they said an additional benediction for the outgoing wash which is the one benediction referred to above the following will show our Abba and our Jose came to a certain place the people of which asked them what was the one benediction referred to and they could not tell them they went and asked Armatina and he also did not know they then went and asked Rab Judah who said to them thus did Samuel say it means with the bounding love Arzeric in the name of Rmi who had it from Arsimian Belakish said it is who formest line when our Isaac B. Joseph came from Palestine he said the statement of Arzeric was not made explicitly by Arsimian Belakish but was inferred by him from another statement for Arzeric said in the name of Rmi who had it from Arsimian Belakish this shows that the recital of one blessing is not indispensable for that of the other now if you say that they used to recite who formest the light it is correct to infer that the recital of one blessing is not indispensable for that of the other since they did not say with the bounding love Talmud Mosbirakotha but if you say that they used to say with the bounding love how can you infer that one blessing is not indispensable for the recital of the other perhaps the reason why they did not say who formed the line was because the time for it had not yet arrived but when the time for it did arrive they used to say it and if the statement was made only as an inference what does it matter if it was made only as an inference I might refute it as follows in fact they said with abounding love and when the time came for who formed the light they said that too what then is the meaning of one blessing is not indispensable for the other the order of the blessings is not indispensable they recited the ten commandments the shema the sections and it shall come to pass if you diligently hearken and and the lord said true and from the abodah and the priestly benediction rab judah said in the name of samuel outside the temple also people wanted to do the same but they were stopped on account of the insinuations of the minim similarly it has been taught our nathan Says they sought to do the same outside the temple, but it had long been abolished on account of the insinuations of the minimum. Rabbi Barhana had an idea of instituting this in Surah, but Arhisda said to him it had long been abolished on account of the insinuations of the minimum. Umar had an idea of instituting it in Nihardia, but Arashi said to him it had long been abolished on account of the insinuations of the minimum. On Sabbath they said an additional blessing on account of the outgoing wash. What was this benediction? Arhelbo said the outgoing wash said to the incoming one, may he who has caused his name to dwell in this house cause to dwell among you love and brotherhood and peace and friendship where they ordained that a long benediction should be said. There is no question that where a man took up a cup of wine thinking that it was beer and commenced with the intention to say the benediction for beer, but finished with that of wine he has fulfilled his obligation for even had he. Said the benediction by whose word all things exist he would have fulfilled his duty as we have learned in the case of all of them if he says by whose word all things exist he has performed his obligation but where he took up a cup of beer thinking it was wine and began with the intention to say the benediction for wine and finished with the benediction for beer the question arises do we judge his benediction according to its beginning or according to its ending come and here in the morning. If one commenced with the intention to say who formest light and finished with who bringest on the evening twilight he has not performed his obligation if he commences with the intention to say who bringest on the evening twilight and finished with who formest the light he has performed his obligation in the evening if one commenced with the intention to say who bringest on the evening twilight and finished with who formest the light he has not performed his obligation if he Begins with the intention to say who formest the light and closes with who bringest on the evening twilight he has performed his obligation the principle is that the final form is decisive it is different there because at the end he says blessed art thou who formest the luminaries this would be a good argument for Rab who said that any blessing that does not contain the mention of God's name is no blessing but if we accept the view of our Yohanan who said that any blessing that does not contain a mention of the divine kingship is no blessing what can be said rather we must reply since Rabbi Biola has said so as to mention the distinctive quality of the day and the night time and the distinctive feature of the night and the daytime we may assume that when he said a blessing with the divine name and with the kingship in the beginning he refers to both of them come and hear from the concluding clause the principle is that the final form is decisive what further cases Included by the words the principle is is it not the one we have mentioned no it is to include bread and dates how are we to understand this shall I say that he ate bread thinking that he was eating dates and commenced with the intention of saying the benediction for dates and finished with the blessing for bread this is just the same thing no this is required for the case where he ate dates thinking that he was eating bread and he began with the intention to say the blessing for bread and finished with that of dates in this case he has fulfilled his obligation for even if he had concluded with the blessing for bread he would also have fulfilled it what is the reason because dates also give sustenance Rabbi behind of the elder said in the name of Rabbi if one omits to say true and firm in the morning and true and trustworthy in the evening he has not performed his obligation for it is said to declare thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness in the night Seasons Rabbi behind of the elder also said in the name of Rabbi saying the Tefilah when one bows one should bow at the word blessed and when returning to the upright position one should return at the mention of the divine name Samuel said what is Rab's reason for this because it is written the Lord raised up them that are bowed down an objection was raised from the verse and was bowed before my name is it written at my name it is written before my name Samuel said to high the son of Rabbi son of the Lachum, and I will tell you a fine saying enunciated by your father thus said your father when one bows one should bow at blessed and when returning to the upright position one should return at the mention of the divine name Talmud Mosbirakoth be hate when he bowed used to bend like a reed and when he raised himself used to raise himself like a serpent Rabbi behind of the elder also said in the name of Rab throughout the year one says in the Tefilah the holy God and King who loveth righteousness and judgment except during the ten days between New Year and the Day of Atonement when he says the Holy King and the King of Judgment are Eliezer says even during these days if he said the Holy God he has performed his obligation since it says but the Lord of Hosts is exalted through justice and the Holy God is sanctified through righteousness when is the Lord of Hosts exalted through justice in these ten days from New Year to the Day of Atonement and nonetheless it says the Holy God what do we decide our Joseph said the Holy God and the King who loves righteousness and judgment Rabbi said the Holy King and the King of Judgment the law is as laid down by Rabbi Rabbi behind of the elder said further in the name of Rabbi if one is in a position to pray on behalf of his fellow and does not do so he is called a sinner as it says moreover as for me far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you Rabbi said if his fellow is a Scholar, he must pray for him even to the point of making himself ill. What is the ground for this? Shall I say because it is written, There is none of you that is sick for me or disclosed unto me. Perhaps the case of a king is different. It is in fact derived from here. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I afflicted my soul with fasting. Rabbi behind of the elder further said in the name of Rabbi, if one commits a sin and is ashamed of it, all his sins are forgiven him, as it says. That thou mayest remember and be confounded and never open thy mouth any more because of thy shame. When I have forgiven thee all that thou hast done, saith the Lord God, perhaps with the whole congregation the case is different. Rather, we derive it from here. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams, therefore. I call thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do, but he does not mention the Urim and Thummim because he had killed all the people of Nob, the city of the priests, and how do we know that heaven had forgiven him? Because it says, And Samuel said, Tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me, and our Yohanan said with me means in my compartment in paradise. The rabbis say, We learn it from here, we will hang them up unto the Lord in Jabia of Saul, the chosen of the Lord, a divine. Voice came forth and proclaimed the chosen of the Lord, Arabab Bezi, truth I said in the name of our Judah Bezi, but they wanted to include the section of Balak in the Shema, but they did not do so because it would have meant too great a burden for the congregation. Why did they want to insert it? Because it contains the words God who brought them forth out of Egypt. Then let us say the section of usury or of weights in which the going forth from Egypt is mentioned,
is to be mentioned in the Shema at night time said R. Eliezer B. Ezra I behold I am about 70 years old and I have never been worthy to find a reason why the Exodus from Egypt should be mentioned at night time until Ben Zoma expounded it for it says that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life had the text said the days of thy life it would have meant only the days but all the days of thy life includes the nights as well. The sages however say the days of thy life refers to this world all the days of thy life is to add the days of the Messiah Gemara it has been taught Ben Zoma said to the sages will the Exodus from Egypt be mentioned in the days of the Messiah was it not long ago said therefore behold the days come saith the Lord that they shall no more say as the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt but as the Lord liveth that brought up and that led the seed of the house. Of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I had driven them, they replied, This does not mean that the mention of the Exodus from Egypt shall be obliterated, but that the deliverance from subjection to the other kingdoms shall take the first place, and the Exodus from Egypt shall become secondary. Similarly, you read thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name Talmud. Mosbirakotha, this does not mean that the name Jacob shall be obliterated, but that Israel shall be the principal name and Jacob a secondary one, and so it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, remember ye not the former things. This refers to the subject ions to the other nations, neither consider the things of old. This refers to the Exodus from Egypt. Behold, I shall do a new thing, now shall it spring forth. Our Joseph learned this refers to the war of Gog and Magog, a parable to what is this like to a man who was traveling on. The road when he encountered a wolf and escaped from it and he went along relating the affair of the wolf he then encountered a lion and escaped from it and went along relating the affair of the lion he then encountered a snake and escaped from it whereupon he forgot the two previous incidents and went along relating the affair of the snake so with Israel the later troubles make them forget the earlier ones Abram the same as Abraham at first he became a father to Aram of Aram only but in the and he became a father to the whole world similarly Sarai is the same as Sarah at first she became a princess to her own people but later she became a princess to all the world Barkabur taught whoever calls Abraham Abram transgresses a positive precept since it says the name shall be Abraham our Eliezer says he transgresses a negative command since it says neither shall the name any more be called Abram but if that is so then the same should apply to one who calls Sarah Sarai in her case. The Holy One blessed be he said to Abraham as for Sarai thy wife thou shalt not call her Sarai but Sarah shall her name be but if that is so the same should apply to one who calls Jacob Jacob there is a difference in his case because scripture restored it the name Jacob to him as it is written and God spoke unto Israel in the visions of the night and said Jacob Jacob are Hosea B. Abin or as some say are Hosea B. Z. but decided in objection the following thou art the Lord the God who didst choose Abram. The answer was given there the prophet is recounting the noble deeds of the all merciful and relates that that was the case originally C H A P T E R I mission if one was reading in the Torah the section of the Shema when the time for its recital arrived if he had the intention he has performed his obligation in the breaks one may give greeting out of respect and return greeting in the middle of a section one may give greeting out of fear and return it so our Rabbi Judah says in the Middle one may give greeting out of fear and return it out of respect in the breaks one may give greeting out of respect and return greeting to anyone the breaks are as follows between the first blessing and the second between the second and here between here and, and it shall come to pass between and it shall come to pass and, and the Lord said and between and the Lord said and true and from Rabbi Judah says between and the Lord said and true and from one should not interrupt our Joshua Bikorha. Said why was the section of your place before that of and it shall come to pass so that one should first accept upon himself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven and then take upon himself the yoke of the commandments why does the section of and it shall come to pass come before that of and the Lord said because the section and it shall come to pass is applicable both to the day and to the night whereas the section and the Lord said is applicable only to the day tomorrow this proves that Precepts must be performed with intent. No, perhaps what if he had the intention means as if it was his intention to read the scripture to read, but surely he is reading the Mishnah may refer to one who is reading a scroll in order to revise it. Our rabbis taught the Shema must be recited as it is written. So rabbi the sages, however, say that it may be recited in any language what is rabbi's reason scripture says, and they shall be implying as they are, they shall remain what is the reason of. The rabbi's scripture says here implying in any language that you understand, rabbi also must see that here is written, he requires it for the lesson, make your ear hear what your mouth utters. The rabbis, however, concur with the authority who says that even if he did not say it audibly, he has performed his obligation. The rabbis too must see that and they shall be as written, they require this to teach that he must not say the words out of order. Whence does rabbi derive the rule that he must not? Say the words out of order he derives it from the fact that the text says Hadabarim the words when it might have said simply Debarim words and the rabbis they derive no lesson from the substitution of Hadabarim for Debarim may we assume that rabbi was of opinion that the whole Torah is allowed to be read in any language since if you assume that it is allowed to be read only in the holy tongue why the end they shall be written by the all merciful this was necessary because here is written may we assume that the rabbis were of opinion that the whole Torah is allowed to be read only in the holy tongue since if you assume that it is allowed to be read only in any language why they are written by the all merciful it is necessary because and they shall be as written are rabbis taught and they shall be this teaches that they must not be read backwards these words upon thy heart am I to say that the whole first section requires Kawana therefore the text says these of two. This point Kawana is necessary from this point Kawana is not necessary so our Eliezer said our Akiba to him behold it says Talmud, Masbirakoth be which I command thee this day upon thy heart from this you learn that the whole section requires to be said with Kawana Rabbi Bihana said in the name of our Yohanan the Halachah is as laid down by our Akiba some refer the statement to the following as it has been taught one who reads the Shema must pay proper attention to what he says our Aha said in the name of our Judah if he has paid proper attention to the first section he need not do so for the rest Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan the Halachah is as stated by our Aha in the name of our Judah another bury the taught and they shall be this teaches that they must not be said backwards upon thy heart our Zutra says up to this point extends the command of Kawana from this point only the command of reciting applies our Josiah says up to this point extends the command of reciting. From this point the command of Kawana applies why this difference in the application from this point of the command of reciting presumably because it is written to speak of them here too in the first also it is written and thou shalt speak of them what he means is this up to this point applies the command both of Kawana and reciting from this point onwards applies the command of reciting even without Kawana and why this difference in the application up to the point of the command both of reciting and Kawana presumably because it is written upon thy heart and thou shalt speak of them in the second section there too it is written upon thy hearts to speak of them that text was required for the lesson enunciated by our Isaac who said ye shall put these my words upon your hearts it is requisite that the placing of the tefillin should be opposite the heart the master stated above our Josiah said up to this point extends the command of reciting from this point onwards Command of Kawana applies why this difference in the application from this point onward of the command of Kawana presumably because it is written upon your heart there too in the first section also it is written upon thy heart what he meant is this up to this point applies the command of reciting and Kawana from this point onwards applies that of Kawana even without reciting why this difference in the application up to this point of the command of reciting and Kawana presumably because it is written upon thy heart and thou shalt speak of them there too in the second section also it is written upon your heart to speak of them these words have reference to words of Torah and what the all merciful meant is this teach your children Torah so that they may be fluent in them our rabbis taught here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one up to this point concentration is required so says our Meir said the Halachah is as stated by our Meir it has been taught Simicus. Says whoever prolongs the word Ehad one has his days and years prolonged. Our Ahabi Jacob said he must dwell on the Dalet. Our Ashi said provided he does not slur over the hate. Our Jeremiah was once sitting before our high Abba and the latter saw that he was prolonging the word Ehad very much. He said to him once you have declared him
Afterwards, there is a good reason why Rabbi always is anxious to take a lesson in which there is mention of the Exodus from Egypt, but on your view that he does finish it afterwards, why is he anxious to take such a lesson so as to mention the going forth from Egypt at the proper time? Rl, the son of our Samuel B. Martha said in the name of Rabbi, if one said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and was then overpowered by sleep, he has performed his obligation. Arnam and said to his slave, Derek, for the first verse, prod me, but do not prod me for any more. Our Joseph said to our Joseph, the son of Rabbi, how did your father used to do? He replied, For the first verse, he used to take pains to keep awake, for the rest, he did not use to take pains. Our Joseph said, A man lying on his back should not recite the Shema. This implies that he may not read the Shema lying on his back, but there is no objection to his sleeping in this posture. But did not our Joshua believe I curse anyone who slept lying on? His back in reply it was said to sleeping thus if he turns over a little on his side there is no objection but to read the Shema thus is forbidden even if he turns over somewhat but our Yohanan turned over a little and read the scripture our Yohanan was an exception because he was very corpulent in the breaks he may give greeting etc for what may he return greeting shall I say out of respect but seeing that he may give greeting is there any question that he may return it rather what I must say is he gives greeting out of respect and returns greeting to anyone but then read the next clause in the middle he gives greeting out of fear and returns it he returns it for what reason shall I say out of fear but seeing that he may give greeting is there any question that he may return it rather what we must say is out of respect but then this is the view of our Judah as we learn our Judah says in the middle he gives greeting out of fear and returns it out of respect and in the breaks he gives Greeting out of respect and returns greeting to anyone there is a lacuna and our mission should read as follows in the breaks he gives greeting out of respect and needless to say he may return it and in the middle he gives greeting out of fear and needless to say he may return it so our Mahir Arjuna says in the middle he gives greeting out of fear and returns it out of respect Talmud, Masbira Kothay and in the breaks he gives greeting out of respect and returns it to anyone it has been. Taught similarly if one was reciting the Shema and his teacher or superior meets him in the breaks he may give greeting out of respect and needless to say he may return it and in the middle he may give greeting out of fear and needless to say he may return it so our Mahir Arjuna said in the middle he may give greeting out of fear and return it out of respect and in the breaks he may give greeting out of respect and return it to anyone Ahi the ten of the school of our high put a question to our. Hi, what of interrupting to give reading during the recital of Hallel and the reading of the Megillah? Do we argue a fortiori that if he may interrupt during the recital of the Shema, which is a biblical precept, there is no question that he may do so during the recital of Hallel, which is a rabbinical precept, or do we say that the proclaiming of the miracle is more important? He replied, He may interrupt, and there is no objection, Rabbi said, on the days on which the individual says the complete Hallel, he may interrupt between one section and another, but not in the middle of a section on the days on which the individual does not say the complete Hallel, he may interrupt even in the middle of a section, but that is not so for surely Rabbi Shabba once happened to visit Rabbi on one of the days on which the individual does not say the complete Hallel, and he Rabbi did not break off to greet him. It is different with Rabbi Shabba because Rabbi had no great respect for him, Ashian. The Tana of the school of RMI inquired of RMI may one who is keeping a voluntary fast take a taste has he undertaken to abstain from eating and drinking and this is really not such or has he undertaken not to have any enjoyment and this he obtains he replied he may taste and there is no objection it has been taught similarly a mere taste does not require a blessing and one who is keeping a voluntary fast may take a taste and there is no objection how much may he taste RMI and R. As he used to taste as much as a Rabbi Rab said if one gives greeting to his fellow before he has said his prayers it is as if he made him a high place as it says Cecilia from man in whose nostrils is a breath for how little is he to be accounted read not Bama how little but Bama high place Samuel interpreted how come you to esteem this man and not God Arshis hate raised an objection in the breaks he gives greeting out of respect and returns it Rab explains the dictum to refer to. One who rises early to visit another Arjuna said in the name of Arzera if a man does his own business before he says his prayers it is as if he had built a high place he said to him a high place do you say no he replied I only mean that it is forbidden R.E.D.B. Abin said in the name of R. Isaac B. Ashian it is forbidden to a man to do his own business before he says his prayers as it says righteousness shall go before him and then he shall set his steps on his own way Arjuna further said in the name of Arzera whoever goes seven days without a dream is called evil as it says and he that hath it shall abide satisfied he shall not be visited with evil read not to be satisfied but Sheba seven Araha the son of Arhai B. Abba said to him thus said Arhai in the name of Arjuna and whoever sates himself with words of Torah before he retires will receive no evil tidings as it says and if he abides sated he shall not be visited with evil the breaks are as follows etc. Arabab said in the Name of Aryohanan the Halacha follows Arjuda who says that one should not interrupt between your God and true and from Arabab said in the name of Aryohanan what is Arjuda's reason because we find in scripture the words Talmud, Masbirakoth be the Lord God is truth does he repeat the word true or does he not repeat the word true Arabab said in the name of Aryohanan he repeats the word true Rabbi says he does not repeat the word true a certain man went down to act as reader before. Rabbi and Rabbi heard him say truth truth twice whereupon he remarked the whole of truth has got hold of this man Arjuda said how fine was the statement which was brought by our Samuel B. Judah when he reported that in the West Palestine they say in the evening speak unto the children of Israel and thou shalt say unto them I am the Lord your God true said Abbe to him what is there so fine about it seeing that our Kahana has said in the name of Rabbi in the evening one need not begin this. Third section of the Shema, but if he does begin, he should go through with it. And should you say that the words and thou shalt say unto them do not constitute a beginning, has not our Samuel B. Isaac said in the name of Rab, speak unto the children of Israel is no beginning, but and thou shalt say unto them is a beginning. Our Papa said in the West, they hold that and thou shalt say unto them also is no beginning until one says and they shall make unto themselves fringes. Have they said therefore we in Babylon begin the section because they begin it in the West, and since we begin, we go through with it because our Kahana has said in the name of Rab, one need not begin, but if he begins, he should go through with it. Hi, Rab said if one has said in the evening, I am the Lord your God, he must say also true, etc. If he has not said, I am the Lord your God, he need not say true, but one has to mention the going forth from Egypt, he can say thus we give thanks to the O Lord our God that thou hast. Brought us forth from the land of Egypt and redeemed us from the house of servitude and wrought for us miracles and mighty deeds by the Red Sea and we did sing unto the Ar Joshua B. Korha said why is the section of here said before etc. It has been taught our Simeon B.O. He says it is right that here should come before and it shall come to pass because the former prescribes learning and the latter teaching and that and it shall come to pass should precede and the Lord said because the former prescribes teaching and the latter performance but does then here speak only of learning and not also of teaching and doing is it not written therein and thou shalt teach diligently and thou shalt find them and thou shalt write them also does and it shall come to pass speak only of teaching and not also of performance is it not written therein and ye shall find and ye shall write rather this is what he means to say it is right that here should precede and it shall come to pass because it Former mentions both learning teaching and doing and that and it shall come to pass should precede and the Lord said because the former mentions both teaching and doing whereas the latter mentions doing only but is not the reason given by our Joshua B. Korha sufficient he or Simeon B. O. He gave an additional reason one is that he should first accept upon himself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven and then accept the yoke of the commandments a further reason is that if the first section has these other features Rab once washed his hands and recited the Shema and put on Tefillin and said to Tefillah but how could he act in this way seeing that it has been taught one who digs a niche in a grave for a corpse is exempt from reciting Shema and Tefillah and from Tefillin and from all the commandments prescribed in the Torah when the hour for reciting the Shema arrives he goes up and washes his hands and puts on Tefillin and recites the Shema and says the Tefillah now the statement Itself contains a contradiction. First, it says that he is ex
Drink offering are you had and also said if one desires to accept upon himself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven in the most complete manner Talmud, Mas Birakotha he should consult nature and wash his hands and put on tefillin and recite the Shema and say the Tefillah this is the complete acknowledgement of the kingdom of heaven Arhai Biyabba said in the name of our Yohanan if one consults nature and washes his hands and puts on tefillin and recites the Shema and says the Tefillah scripture. Accounts it to him as if he had built an altar and offered a sacrifice upon it as it is written I will wash my hands in innocency and I will compass thy altar O Lord said Rabbah to him does not your honor think that it is as if he had bathed himself since it is written I will wash in purity and it is not written I will wash my hands Rabbah said to Rabbah sir pray look at the student who has come from the west Palestine and who says if one has no water for washing his hands he can rub his hands with earth or with a pebble or with sawdust he replied he is quite correct is it written I will wash in water it is written in cleanliness with anything which cleans for our stock curse anyone who went looking for water at the time of prayer this applies to the recital of the Shema but for the Tefala one may go looking how far as far as a par saying this is the case in front of him but in the rear he may not go back even a mill from which is to be deduced a mill he may not go back but Less than a mil he may go back mission if one recites the Shema without hearing what he says he has performed his obligation R. Jose says he has not performed his obligation if he recites it without pronouncing the letters correctly R. Jose says that he has performed his obligation R. Judah says that he has not performed his obligation if he recites it backward he has not performed his obligation if he recites it and makes a mistake he goes back to the place where he made the mistake tomorrow what is R. Jose's reason because it is written here which implies let your ear hear what you utter with your mouth the first tana however maintains that here means in any language that you understand but R. Jose derives both lessons from the word we have learned elsewhere a deaf person who can speak but not hear should not set aside terima if however he does set aside his action is valid who is it that teaches that the action of a deaf man who can speak but not hear in setting aside terima is valid if done but should not be done in the first instance said Arhista it is Arhose as we have learned if one recites the Shema without hearing what he says he has performed his obligation Arhose says he has not performed his obligation now Arhose holds that he has not performed his obligation only in the case of the recital of the Shema which is scriptural but the setting aside of Teramah is forbidden only on account of the blessing and blessings are an ordinance of the rabbis and the validity of the act does not depend upon the blessing but why should you say that this is Arhose's opinion perhaps it is Arjuna's opinion and he holds that in the case of the recital of the Shema also it is valid only if the act is done but it should not be done in the first instance and the proof of this is that he states if one recites which implies if done it is done but it should not be done in the first instance the answer is the reason why it says if one recites is to show you how far Arhose is prepared to go since he says that even if it is done it is not valid for as to our Judah he holds that even if he does it in the first instance he has performed his obligation now what is your conclusion that it is the opinion of our Jose what then of this which we have learned a man should not say the grace after meals mentally but if he does so he has performed his obligation whose opinion is this it is neither our Jose's nor our Judas for it cannot be our Judas since he said that even if he does so in the first instance he has performed his obligation nor can it be our Jose since he says that even if done it is not valid what must we say then that it is our Judas opinion and he holds that it is valid only if done but it should not be done in the first instance but what of this which was taught by our Judah the son of our Simeon because he a deaf man who can speak but not hear may set aside Teramah in the first instance whose view does this follow it can be neither our Judas nor our Jose's for as for our Judah he says that it is valid only if done but it should not be done in the first instance while our Jose says that even if done it is not valid in fact it follows our Judah's view and he holds that it may be done even in the first instance and there is no contradiction between the two views attributed to him one being his own and the other that of his teacher as we have learned our Judah said in the name of our Eliezer B. Ezra when one recites the Shema he must let himself hear what he says. As it says here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one said Armahir to him behold it says which I command thee this day upon thy heart on the intention of the heart depends the validity of the words if you come so far you may even say that our Judah agreed with his teacher and there is no contradiction one statement gives Armahir's view the other our Judah's we have learned elsewhere all are qualified to read the Megillah except a deaf mute and imbecile and a minor our Judah declares a minor qualified. Who is it that declares the act of a deaf mute even if done to be invalid? Our Matina says it is our Jose as we have learned if one recites the Shema without hearing what he says he has performed his obligation so our Judah our Jose says he has not performed his obligation but why should we say that the above statement regarding a deaf mute follows our Jose and that the act even if done is invalid Talmud, Mas Birakoth be perhaps it follows our Judah and while the act may not be done only in the first instance yet if done it is valid do not imagine such a thing for the statement puts a deaf mute on the same level as an imbecile and a minor implying that just as in the case of an imbecile and a minor the act if done is not valid so in the case of a deaf mute the act if done is not valid but perhaps each case has its own rule but even if so can you construe the statement as following our Judah since the later clause says that our Judah declares it valid may we not conclude that the earlier Clause does not follow our Judah, perhaps the whole statement follows our Judah, and two kinds of minor are referred to, and there is a lacuna, and the whole should read thus all are qualified to read the Megillah except a deaf mute and imbecile and a minor. This applies only to one who is not old enough to be trained in the performance of the precepts, but one who is old enough to be trained may perform the act even in the first instance. This is the ruling of our Judah, for our Judah declares a minor. Qualified, how have you construed the statement as following our Judah, and that the act is valid only if done but should not be done in the first instance, but then what of that which our Judah, the son of our Simeon, because he taught that a deaf person who can speak but not hear may set aside Teramah in the first instance, which authority does this follow? It is neither our Judah nor our Jose, for if it is our Judah, he says that the act is valid only if done, but it may not be done in the first instance, and if our Jose he says that even if done it is not valid what then do you say that the authority is our Judah and that the act may be done even in the first instance what then of this which has been taught a man should not say the grace after meals mentally but if he does so he has performed his obligation whose opinion is this it can be neither our Judah's nor our Jose's for as to our Judah he has said that it may be done even in the first instance and as to our Jose he has said that even if done it is not valid. In truth it is the opinion of our Judah and the act may be done even in the first instance and there is no contradiction between his two statements in one case he is giving his own view and the other that of his teacher as it has been taught our Judah said in the name of our Eliezer B. Ezra one who recites the Shema must let his ear hear what he says as it says here O Israel said our to him which I command thee to stay upon thy heart indicating that the words derive their validity from it. Attention of the heart now that you have come so far you may even say that Arjuna was of the same opinion as his teacher and still there is no contradiction one statement gives a view of Arjuna the other that of Armahir Arhista said in the name of Arshila the Halachagas is laid down by Arjuna in the name of Arliazer B. Ezra and the Halachagas is laid down by Arjuna both these statements are necessary for if we had been told only that the Halachagas as stated by Arjuna I might have thought that the act may be done even in the first instance we are therefore informed that the Halachagas is laid down by Arjuna in the name of Arliazer B. Ezra and if we had been told that the Halachagas is laid down by Arjuna in the name of Arliazer B. Ezra I might have thought that the act must be performed thus and if not there is no remedy we are therefore informed that the Halachagas as stated by Arjuna Arjuna said the difference of opinion relates only to the recital of the Shema, but in the case of other religious acts, all agree that he has not performed his obligation if he says the formula inaudibly as it is written. Attend and hear, O Israel, an objection was raised. A man should not say grace after meals mentally, but if he does, he has performed his obligation. Rather, if the statement was made, it was as follows. Our Joseph said the difference of opinion relates only to the Shema, since it is written here, O Israel. But in regard to all the other religious acts, all are agreed that he performs his obligation. But it is written, Attend and hear, O Israel. The text applies only to words of Torah. If one recited
Written curses which implies curses he is to write but not commands it was still necessary you might have thought that we should draw an analogy between the writing mentioned here and the writing mentioned there and that just as there he writes curses but not commands so here he should not write commands therefore the all merciful wrote and thou shalt write them implying commands also are Obadiah recited in the presence of Rabbah and ye shall teach them as much as to say thy teaching must be faultless by making a pause between the joints for instance said Rabbah supplementing his words al lebabika upon thy heart al lebabika upon your heart bek al lebabika with all thy heart bek al lebabika with all your heart as of besodic grass in thy field wa abadita mehera and ye shall perish speedily hakanaf basil the corner of thread ethkamir as you from the land are have a behanna said if one in reciting the shima pronounces the letters distinctly hell is cool for him as it says when the Almighty scattereth kings therein it's know it in Zalman read not be fears when he scattereth but be fairish when one pronounces distinctly and read not be Zalman in Zalman but be Zalmod in the shadow of death or have a behind a further said why are tents mentioned Talmud, Mos Birakotha alongside of streams as it says how goodly are thy tents O Jacob as streams stretched out as gardens by the riverside as aloes planted etc to tell you that just as streams bring a man up from a state of uncleanness to one of cleanness so tents bring a man up from a scale of guilt to the scale of merit if one recites it backward he has not performed his obligation etc RMI and RSC were once decorating the bridal chamber for our Eliezer he said to them in the meantime I will go and pick up something from the house of study and come back and tell you he went and found a tanner reciting before our Yohan and if reciting the Shema one recollects that he made a mistake but does not know where if he is in the middle of a section he should go back to the beginning if he is in doubt which section he has said he should go back to the first break if he is in doubt which writing he is on he goes back to the first one said are you hand to him this rule applies only where he has not yet got to in order that your days may be prolonged but if he has got to in order that your days may be prolonged then he can assume that force of habit has kept him right he came and told the men they said to him if we had come only to hear this it would have been worth our while mission workmen may recite the shima on the top of a tree or the top of a scaffolding a thing they are not allowed to do in the case of the tefila a bridegroom is exempt from the recital of the shima from the first night until the end of the sabbath if he has not consummated the marriage it happened with our Gamaliel that when he married he recited the shima on the first night so his disciples said to him our master you have taught us that a bridegroom is exempt from the recital of the Shema he replied to them I will not listen to you to remove from myself the kingship of heaven even for a moment tomorrow our rabbis taught workmen may recite the Shema on the top of a tree or on the top of a scaffolding and they may say the tefillah on the top of an olive tree and the top of a fig tree but from all other trees they must come down to the ground before saying the tefillah and the employer must in any case come down before saying the tefillah the reason in all cases being that their mind is not clear our Mari the son of the daughter of Samuel pointed out to rabbi contradiction we have learned he said workmen may recite the Shema on the top of a tree or the top of a scaffolding which would show that the recital does not require can one contrast with this when one recites the Shema it is incumbent that he should concentrate his attention on it since it says here O Israel and in Another place it says pay attention and hear O Israel showing that just as in the latter hearing must be accompanied by attention so here it must be accompanied by attention he gave no reply then he said to him have you heard any statement on this point he replied thus said our she's hate this is the case only if they stop from their work to recite but it has been taught Bethilel say that they may go on with their work while reciting there is no contradiction the former statement refers to the first section the latter to the second section of the Shema our rabbis taught laborers working for an employer recite the Shema and say blessings before it and after it and eat their crust and say blessings before it and after it and say the tefillah of eighteen benedictions but they do not go down before the ark nor do they raise their hands to give the priestly benediction but it has been taught they say a resume of the eighteen benedictions said our she's hate there is no contradiction one statement gives the view of our Gamaliel, the other of our Joshua, but if our Joshua is the authority, why does it say laborers? The same applies to anyone. In fact, both statements represent the view of our Gamaliel, and still there is no contradiction. One refers to laborers working for a wage, and the other to those working for their keep, and so it has been taught laborers working for an employer recite the Shema and say the Tefillah and eat their crust without saying a blessing before it, but they say two blessings after it. Namely, he says the first blessing right through, and the second blessing he begins with the blessing for the land, including who buildeth Jerusalem, and the blessing for the land. When does this hold good for those who work for a wage, but those who work for their keep or who eat in the company of the employer say the grace right through a bridegroom is exempt from reciting the Shema? Our rabbis taught when thou sittest in thy house, this excludes one engaged in it. Performance of a religious duty, and when thou walkest by the way, this excludes a bridegroom. Hence, they deduce the rule that one who marries a virgin is exempt, while one who marries a widow is not exempt. How is this derived? Our Papa said the sitting in the house is compared to the way, just as the way is optional. So here it must be optional. But are we not dealing in the words walkest by the way with one who goes to perform a religious duty? And even so, the All Merciful said that he should recite if that were so. The text should say in going what is meant by in thy going. This teaches that it is in thy going that thou art under obligation, and in the going for a religious duty thou art exempt. Talmud, Masbirko B. If that is the case, why does it say one who marries a virgin? The same would apply to one who marries a widow. In the former case, he is agitated. In the latter case, he is not agitated. If his agitation is the ground, and even if his ship has sunk in the sea, he should also. Be exempt, and if this is so, why then has our Abu Bizab said in the name of Rabbi Mourner is under obligation to perform all the precepts laid down in the Torah except that of Tefillin because they are called head tire as it says, I had tire bound upon thy head, etc. The reply is there, the agitation is over an optional matter here, it is over a religious duty. Mishnah Rabbi Gamaliel bathed on the first night after the death of his wife, his disciples said to him, You have taught you, sir, that a mourner is forbidden to bathe. He replied to them, I am not like other men, being very delicate. When Tabi, his slave, died, he accepted condolences for him. His disciples said to him, You have taught you, sir, that condolences are not accepted for slaves. He replied to them, My slave Tabi was not like other slaves, he was a good man. If a bridegroom desires to recite the Shema on the first night, he may do so. Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says, Not everyone who desires to pass as a scholar may do so. Gamara, how did? Rabbi Gamaliel justify his action. He held that the observance of any by night is only an ordinance of the rabbis, as it is written, and I will make it as the morning for an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. And where it concerns a delicate person, the rabbis did not mean their ordinance to apply when Tabi his slave died, etc. Our rabbis taught for male and female slaves no row of comforters is formed, nor is the blessing of mourners said, nor is condolence offered when the bond woman of our Eliezer died. His disciples went in to condole with him when he saw them. He went up to an upper chamber, but they went up after him. He then went into an anteroom and they followed him there. He then went into the dining hall and they followed him there. He said to them, I thought that you would be scalded with warm water. I see you are not scalded even with boiling hot water. Have I not taught you that a row of comforters is not made for male and female slaves, and that a blessing of Mourners is not said for them, nor is condolence offered for them. What then do they say for them? The same as they say to a man for his ox and his ass, may the Almighty replenish your loss. So for his male and female slave, they say to him, may the Almighty replenish your loss. It has been taught elsewhere for male and female slaves. No funeral oration is said. Our Jose said, if he was a good slave, they can say over him, alas, for a good and faithful man who worked for his living, they said to him, if you do. Then what do you leave for freeborn? Our rabbis taught the term patriarchs is applied only to three, and the term matriarchs only to four. What is the reason? Shall we say because we do not know if we are descended from Reuben or from Simeon, but neither do we know in the case of the matriarchs whether we are descended from Rachel or from Leah. Rather, the reason is because up to this point they were particularly esteemed. From this point they were not so particularly esteemed. It has been taught. Elsewhere male and female slaves are not called father so-and-so or mother so-and-so those of Rabban Gamaliel however were called father so-and-so and mother so-and-so the example cited contradicts your
graciousness and may the attribute of thy kindness and gentleness come before thee our Zerah on concluding his prayer added the following may it be thy will O Lord our God that we sin not nor bring upon ourselves shame or disgrace before our fathers are high on concluding his prayer added the following may it be thy will O Lord our God that our Torah may be our occupation and that our heart may not be sick nor our eyes darkened rab on concluding his prayer added the following may it be thy will O Lord our God to grant us long life a life of peace a life of good a life of blessing a life of sustenance a life of bodily vigor a life in which there is fear of sin a life free from shame and confusion a life of riches and honor a life in which we may be filled with the love of Torah and the fear of heaven a life in which thou shalt fulfill all the desires of our heart for good rabbi on concluding his prayer added the following may it be thy will O Lord our God and God of our fathers too Deliver us from the impudent and from impudence, from an evil man, from evil half, from the evil impulse, from an evil companion, from an evil neighbor, and from the destructive accuser, from a hard lawsuit, and from a hard opponent, whether he is a son of the covenant or not a son of the covenant. Thus did he pray, although guards were appointed to protect Rabbi our Saffron, concluding his prayer added the following May it be thy will, O Lord our God, to establish peace, Talmud, Mosbirakotha, among the celestial family and among the earthly family and among the disciples who occupy themselves with thy Torah, whether for its own sake or for other motives, and may it please thee that all who do so for other motives may come to study it for its own sake. Our Alexandria, on concluding his prayer added the following May it be thy will, O Lord our God, to station us in an illumined corner and do not station us in a darkened corner, and let not our heart be sick nor our eyes darkened according to some this. Was the prayer of our Hamna and our Alexandria on concluding his prayer used to add the following sovereign of the universe it is known full well to thee that our will is to perform thy will and what prevents us the yeast in the dough and the subjection to the foreign powers may it be thy will to deliver us from their hands so that we may return to perform the statutes of thy will with a perfect heart Rabbah on concluding his prayer added the following my God before I was formed I was not worthy to be formed and now that I have been formed I am as if I had not been formed I am dust in my lifetime all the more in my death behold I am before thee like a vessel full of shame and confusion may it be thy will O Lord my God that I sin no more and the sins I have committed before thee wipe out in thy great mercies but not through evil chastisements and diseases this was the confession of our Hamna on the day of atonement Mar the son of Rabbah on concluding his prayer added the following my God keep my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking guile may my soul be silent to them that curse me and may my soul be as the dust to all open down my heart and thy law and may my soul pursue thy commandments and deliver me from evil half from the evil impulse and from an evil woman and from all evils that threaten to come upon the world as for all that design evil against me speedily and all their counsel and frustrate their designs may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before thee O Lord my rock and my redeemer when our she's hate kept a fast on concluding his prayer he added the following sovereign of the universe thou knowest full well that in the time when the temple was standing if a man sent he used to bring a sacrifice and though all that was offered of it was its fat and blood atonement was made for him therewith now I have kept a fast and my fat and blood have diminished may it be thy will to account my fat and blood which have been Diminished as if I had offered them before thee on the altar, and do thou favor me when our Yohanan finished the book of Job. He used to say the following: The end of man is to die, and the end of a beast is to be slaughtered, and all are doomed to die. Happy he who was brought up in the Torah, and whose labor was in the Torah, and who has given pleasure to his Creator, and who grew up with a good name, and departed the world with a good name. And of him Solomon said, A good name is better than precious oil. And the day of death, and the day of one's birthday, favorite saying of our Meir was: Study with all thy heart, and with all thy soul to know my ways, and to watch at the doors of my law. Keep my law in thy heart, and let my fear be before thy eyes. Keep thy mouth from all sin, and purify and sanctify thyself from all trespass and iniquity. And I will be with thee in every place. A favorite saying of the rabbis of Jabna was: I am God's creature, and my fellow is God's creature. My work is in the town. And his work is in the country. Arise early for my work, and he rises early for his work. Just as he does not presume to do my work, so I do not presume to do his work. Will you say I do much, and he does little? We have learned one may do much, or one may do little. It is all one provided he directs his heart to heaven. A favorite saying of Abbe was a man should always be subtle in the fear of heaven. A soft answer turneth away wrath, and one should always strive to be on the best terms with his brethren and his relatives, and with all men, and even with the heathen in the street, in order that he may be beloved above and well liked below, and be acceptable to his fellow creatures. It was related of our Yohanan Bizakai that no man ever gave him greeting first, even a heathen in the street. A favorite saying of Rabba was the goal of wisdom is repentance and good deeds, so that a man should not study Torah and mission, and then despise his father and mother and teacher and his superior in wisdom. And rank as it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom a good understanding have all they that do thereafter it does not say that do but that do thereafter which implies that do them for their own sake and not for other motives if one does them for other motives it were better that he had not been created a favorite saying of Rab was the future world is not like this world in the future world there is no eating nor drinking nor propagation nor business nor jealousy nor hatred nor competition but the righteous sit with their crowns on their heads feasting on the brightness of the divine presence as it says and they beheld God and did eat and drink our rabbis taught greater is the promise made by the holy one blessed be he to the women and to the men for it says rise up ye women that are at easy a confident daughters give ear unto my speech Rab said to our high whereby do women earn merit by making their children go to the synagogue to learn scripture and there Husbands to the Beth Hamid Rash to learn mission and waiting for their husbands till they return from the Beth Hamid Rash when the rabbis took leave from the school of RMI. Some say of our Hannah, they said to him, May you see your requirements provided in your lifetime, and may your latter end be for the future world in your hope for many generations. May your heart meditate, understanding your mouth, speak wisdom, and your tongue indite song. May your eyelids look straight before you, may your eyes be enlightened by the light of the Torah, and your face shine like the brightness of the firmament. May your lips utter knowledge, your reins rejoice in uprightness, and your steps run to hear the words of the ancient of days when the rabbis took leave from the school of our Hista. Others say of our Samuel, Binamani, they said to him, We are instructed, we are well written, etc. We are instructed, we are well written, Rab and Samuel, according to others, are Yohanan and our Eliezer give different explanations of. This one says we are instructed in Torah and well in with precepts. The other says we are instructed in Torah and precepts. We are well in with chastisements. Talmud, Mosbirakoth, be there is no breach that is may our company not be like that of David from which issued Ahitophel and no going forth that is may our company not be like that of Saul from which issued Dog the Edomite and no outcry may our company not be like that of Elisha from which issued Gehazi in our broad places. May we produce no son or people who disgraces himself in public hearken unto me yes stout hearted who are far from righteousness Rab and Samuel according to others are Yohanan and our Eliezer interpret this differently one says the whole world is sustained by God's charity and they are sustained by their own force the other says all the world is sustained by their merit and they are not sustained even by their own merit this accords with the saying of Rab Judah in the name of Rab for Rab Judah. Said in the name of Rab, every day a divine voice goes forth from Mount Horeb and proclaims the whole world is sustained for the sake of my son Hannah, and Hannah my son has to subsist on a calf of carobs from one weekend to the next. This explanation conflicts with that of Rab Judah, for Rab Judah said, Who are the stout hearted, the stupid Gubains? Our Joseph said, The proof is that they have never produced a proselyte. Our Ashi said, The people of Madamahaj are stout hearted, for they see the glory of the Torah twice a year, and never has one of them been converted to bridegroom if he desires to recite, etc. May we conclude from this that Rab and Simeon be Gamaliel deprecates showing off, and the rabbis do not deprecate it, but do we not understand them to hold the opposite views as we have learned in places where people are accustomed to work in the month of they may work, and in places where it is accustomed not to work, they may not work, but in all places rabbinical students abstain from study are. Simeon B. Gamaliel says a man should always conduct himself as if he were a scholar. We have here a contradiction between two
Returned from the grave if they have time to begin and finish the Shema before forming a row they should begin but if not they should not begin as for those who stand in the row those on the inside are exempt but those on the outside are not exempt women slaves and minors are exempt from reciting the Shema and putting on Tefillin but are subject to the obligations of Tefillah Mezuzah and Grace after meals Gemara if the dead lies before him he is exempt implying if it does not lie. Before him he is not exempt this statement is contradicted by the following one whose dead lies before him eats in another room if he has not another room he eats in his fellow's room if he has no fellow to whose room he can go makes a partition and eats behind it if he has nothing with which to make a partition he turns his face away and eats he may not eat reclining nor may he eat flesh or drink wine he does not say a blessing over food nor grace after meals Talmud, Mas Birakote. Nor do others say a blessing for him nor is he invited to join in the grace he is exempt from reciting the Shema from saying the Tefillah from putting on Tefillin and from all the precepts laid down in the Torah on Sabbath however he may recline and eat meat and drink wine and he says a blessing and others may say the blessing for him and invite him to join in grace and he is subject to the obligation of reading the Shema and Tefillah and he is subject to all the precepts laid down in it. Torah our Simeon B. Gamaliel says since he is subject to these he is subject to all of them and our Yohanan said where do they differ in practice in regard to marital intercourse at any rate it states that he is exempt from the recital of the Shema and from saying the Tefillah and putting on Tefillin and all the precepts laid down in the Torah said our Papa explained this very as applying only to one who turns his face away and eats Arashi however said since the obligation of burial devolves on him it is as if the corpse was before him as it says and Abraham rose up from before his dead and it says that I may bury my dead out of my sight this implies that so long as the obligation to bury devolves upon him it is as if the corpse were lying before him I infer from our mission that this is the rule for a dead relative but not for one whom he is merely watching but it has been taught one who watches a dead body even if it is not his dead relative is exempt from reciting the Shema. And saying the Tefillah and putting on Tefillin and all the precepts laid down in the Torah we interpret therefore he who watches the dead even if it is not his dead relative is exempt and likewise in the case of his dead relative even if he is not watching it he is exempt but if he is walking in the cemetery he is not but it has been taught a man should not walk in a cemetery with Tefillin on his head or a scroll of the law in his arm and recite the Shema and if he does so he comes. Under the heading of he that mocketh the poor blasphemeth his maker in that case the act is forbidden within four cubits of the dead but beyond four cubits the obligation to say Shema etc. devolves for a master has said a dead body affects four cubits in respect of the recital of the Shema but in this case he is exempt even beyond four cubits to turn to the above text one who watches a dead body even though it is not his own dead relative is exempt from the recital of the Shema and from saying the Tefillah and from putting on Tefillin and from all the precepts laid down in the Torah if there were two watching one goes on watching while the other recites and then the other watches while this one recites Ben says if they were bringing it in a ship they put it in a corner and both say their prayers in another corner why this difference Rubin has said they differ on the question whether there is any fear of mice on board ship one held that there is a fear of mice and it other held that there is no fear of mice. Our rabbis taught a man who is carrying bones from place to place should not put them in a saddlebag and place them on his ass and sit on them because this is a disrespectful way of treating them. But if he was afraid of heathens and robbers, it is permitted. And the rule which they laid down for bones applies also to a scroll of the law. To what does this last statement refer? Shall I say to the first clause? This is self-evident. Is a scroll of the law inferior to bones? Rather, it refers to the second clause. Rehab is said in the name of Rab Judah. Whoever sees a corpse on the way to burial and does not accompany it comes under the head of he that mocketh the poor blasphemeth his maker. And if he accompanies it, what is his reward? Rc says to him, apply the text. He that is gracious unto the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and he that is gracious unto the needy. Hanu Rethim Arhai and Arjonathan were once walking about in a cemetery and the blue. Friend of our Jonathan was trailing on the ground said our high to him lifted up so that they, the dead should not say tomorrow they are coming to join us and now they are insulting us he said to him do they know so much is it not written but the dead know not anything he replied to him if you have read once you have not repeated if you have repeated you have not gone over a third time if you have gone over a third time you have not had it explained to you for the living know that they shall die. These are the righteous who in their death are called living as it says and Benai the son of Jehoiada the son of a living man from Kabzeel who had done mighty deeds he smote the two altar hearts of Moab he went down and also slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow Talmud, Mosbirakoth be the son of a living man are all other people than the sons of dead men rather the son of a living man means that even in his death he was called living from Kabzeel who had done mighty deeds. This indicates that he gathered Kibbeh numerous workers for the Torah. He smote two altar hearts of Moab. This indicates that he did not leave his like either in the first temple or in the second temple. He went down and also slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. Some say that this indicates that he broke blocks of ice and went down and bathed. Others say that he went through the Sifra of the school of Rab on a winter's day. But the dead know nothing. These are the wicked who in their lifetime are called dead as it says. And thou, a wicked one that art slain the prince of Israel. Or if you prefer, I can derive it from here at the mouth of two witnesses. Shall the dead be put to death? He is still alive. What it means is he is already counted as dead. The sons of Arhai went out to cultivate their property and they began to forget their learning. They tried very hard to recall it. Said one to the other, Does our father know of our trouble? How should he know? Replied the other. Seeing that it is written, his sons come to honor, and he know it did not said the other to him, but does he not know is it not written, but his flesh grieveth for him, and his soul mourneth over him. And our Isaac said, commenting on this, the worm is as painful to the dead as a needle in the flesh of the living. He replied, It is explained that they know their own pain, they do not know the pain of others. Is that so? Has it not been taught? It is related that a certain pious man gave a dinar to a poor man on the eve of New Year in the year of drought, and his wife scolded him, and he went and passed the night in the cemetery, and he heard two spirits conversing with one another, said one to her companion, My dear, come and let us wonder about the world, and let us hear from behind the curtain what suffering is coming on the world, said her companion to her, I am not able because I am buried in a matting of reeds, but do you go and whatever you hear, tell me so the other went and wondered about and Return said her companion to her, My dear, what have you heard from behind the curtain? She replied, I heard that whoever sows after the first rainfall will have his crop smitten by hail. So the man went and did not sow till after the second rainfall, with the result that everyone else's crop was smitten and his was not smitten. The next year he again went and passed the night in the cemetery and heard the two spirits conversing with one another, said one to her companion, Come and let us wonder about the world and hear from behind the curtain what punishment is coming upon the world. Said the other to her, My dear, did I not tell you that I am not able because I am buried in a matting of reeds? But do you go and whatever you hear, come and tell me. So the other one went and wondered about the world and returned. She said to her, My dear, what have you heard from behind the curtain? She replied, I heard that whoever sows after the later rain will have his crop smitten with blight. So the man went and so after the first rain with the result that everyone else's crop was blighted and his was not blighted said his wife to him how is it that last year everyone else's crop was smitten and yours was not smitten and this year everyone else's crop is blighted and yours is not blighted so he related to her all his experiences the story goes that shortly afterwards a quarrel broke out between the wife of that pious man and the mother of the child and the former said to the latter come and I will show you your daughter buried in a matting of reeds the next year the man again went and spent the night in the cemetery and heard those conversing together one said my dear come and let us wonder about the world and hear from behind the curtain what suffering is coming upon the world said the other my dear leave me alone our conversation has already been heard among the living this would prove that they know perhaps some other man after his decease went and told them come and hear for Z-E-I-R-I. Deposited some money with his landlady, and while he was away visiting Rab, she died. So he went after her to the cemetery and said to her, "Where is my money?" She replied to him, "Go and take it from under the ground in the hole of the doorpost in such and such a place, and tell my mother to
Perhaps Samuel was exceptional as he was esteemed they proclaimed beforehand make way for him our Jonathan also retracted his opinion for our Samuel Benamani said in the name of our Jonathan whence do we know that the dead converse with one another because it says and the Lord said unto him this is the land which I swore unto Abraham unto Isaac and unto Jacob saying what is the meaning of saying the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses say to Abraham Isaac and Jacob the oath which I swore to you I have already carried out for your descendants Talmud, Masbirakotha now if you maintain that the dead do not know what would be the use of his telling them you infer then that they do know in that case why should he need to tell them so that they might be grateful to Moses or Isaac said if one makes remarks about the dead it is like making remarks about a stone some say the reason is that they do not know others that they know but do not care can that be so has not our papa said a certain Man made derogatory remarks about Mar Samuel and a log fell from the roof and broke his skull. A rabbinical student is different because the Holy One blessed be he avenges his insult. Our Joshua B. Levi said, Whoever makes derogatory remarks about scholars after their death is cast into Gehenna, as it says, but as for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Israel, even at a time when there is peace upon Israel, the Lord will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. It was taught in the school of our Ishmael. If you see a scholar who has committed an offense by night, do not cavil at him by day, for perhaps he has done penance, perhaps say you nay, rather he has certainly done penance. This applies only to bodily sexual offenses, but if he has misappropriated money, he may be criticized until he restores it to its owner. Our Joshua B. Levi further said, In twenty-four places we find that the Beth inflicted. Excommunication for an insult to a teacher, and they are all recorded in the mission. Our Eliezer asked him where he replied, See if you can find them. He went and examined and found three cases one of a scholar who threw contempt on the bashing of the hands, another of one who made derogatory remarks about scholars after their death, and a third of one who made himself too familiar towards heaven. What is the case of making derogatory remarks about scholars after their death? As we have learned, he used to say the water of the soda is not administered either to a proselyte or to an emancipated woman. The sages, however, say that it is. They said to him, There is the case of Carcamith, an emancipated bondwoman in Jerusalem, to whom Shimea and Abtalion administered the water. He replied, They administered it to one like themselves. They thereupon excommunicated him, and he died in excommunication, and the Beth stoned his coffin. What is the case of treating with contempt the washing of the hands as? We have learned our Judah said far be it from us to think that Akibai B. Mahalalel was excommunicated for the doors of the temple hall did not close on any man in Israel the equal of Akibai B. Mahalalel in wisdom and purity and in fear of sin whom did they in fact excommunicate it was Eliezer Behadad who raised doubts about washing the hands and when he died the Beth sent and had a large stone placed on his coffin to teach you that if a man is excommunicated and dies in his excommunication they Beth stone his coffin what is the case of one behaving familiarly with heaven as we have learned Simeon Bishad sent to Honi Hamiel you deserve to be excommunicated and were you not Honi I would pronounce excommunication against you but what can I do seeing that you ingratiate yourself with the omnipresent and he performs your desires and you are like a son who ingratiates himself with his father and he performs his desires and to you applies the verse let thy father and thy mother be Glad and letter that for the rejoice, but are there no more instances of excommunication? Is not there the case learned by our Joseph Thaddeus, a man of Rome, accustomed the Roman Jews to eat kids roasted whole on the eve of Passover? Simeon Bishada sent to him and said, Were you not Thaddeus, I would pronounce sentence of excommunication on you because you make Israel appear to eat holy things outside the precincts we say in our mission, and this is in the very but is there no other in our mission? Is there not this one as we have learned if he cuts it up into rings and puts sand between the rings? Our Eliza declares that it is permanently clean, while the rabbis declare that it is unclean, and this is the stove of Akna'i. Why Akna'i Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel because they surrounded it with Halashah like a serpent Akna'i and declared it unclean, and it has been taught on that day they brought all the things that our Eliza had declared clean and burnt them before him and in the end they blessed him even so we do not find excommunication stated in our mission how then do you find the twenty-four places our Joshua B. Levi compares one thing to another our Eliezer does not compare one thing to another those who carry the beer and those who relieve them our rabbis taught a dead body is not taken out shortly before the time for the Shema but if they began to take it they do not desist is that so was not the body of our Joseph taken out shortly before the time for the Shema an exception can be made for a distinguished man before the beer and behind the beer our rabbis taught those who are occupied with the funeral speeches if the dead body is still before them slip out one by one and recite the Shema if the body is not before them they sit and recite it and he the mourner sits silent they stand up and say the Tefillah and he stands up and accepts God's judgment and says sovereign of the universe I have sinned much before thee and thou didst not punish me. One thousand part may it be thy will, O Lord our God, to close up our breaches and the breaches of all that people, the house of Israel, in mercy of a said a man should not speak thus since our Simeon Belaker said, and so it was taught in the name of our Hosea, a man should never speak in such a way as to give an opening to Satan. And our Joseph said, What text proves this? Because it says we were almost like Sodom. What did the prophet reply to them? Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom, when they have buried the dead body and returned, etc. I understand if they are able to begin and go through all of it, yes, but if they have only time for one section or one verse, no, the statement was contradicted by the following when they have buried the body and returned, if they are able to begin and complete even one section or one verse, they do so. That is just what he says, if they are able to begin and go through even one section or one verse before they form a row, they should begin, but otherwise. They should not begin Talmud, Masbirakoth be those who stand in a row etc. Our rabbis taught the row which can see inside is exempt but one which cannot see inside is not exempt. Our Judah said those who come on account of the mourner are exempt but those who come for their own purposes are not exempt. Our Judah said in the name of Rab if one finds mixed kinds in his garment he takes it off even in the street. What is the reason it says there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against it? Lord wherever a profanation of God's name is involved no respect is paid to a teacher an objection was raised if they have buried the body and are returning and there are two ways open to them one clean and the other unclean if the mourner goes by the clean one they go with him by the clean one and if he goes by the unclean one they go with him by the unclean one out of respect for him why so let us say there is no wisdom nor understanding against the Lord our Abba explained the statement too. Refer to a Beth Haperes which is declared unclean only by the rabbis for Rab Judah has said in the name of Samuel a man may blow in front of him in a Beth Haperes and proceed and Rab Judah B. Ashi also said in the name of Rab a Beth Haperes which has been well trodden is clean come and here for our Eliezer Bezotic said we used to leave over coffins containing bodies to see the Israelite kings nor did they mean this to apply only to Israelite kings but also to heathen kings so that if he should be privileged to live to the time of the Messiah he should be able to distinguish between the Israelite and the heathen kings why so let us say there is no wisdom and no understanding and no counsel before the Lord it is in accord with the dictum of Rabbah for Rabbah said it is a rule of the Torah that a tent which has a hollow space of a handbreadth forms a partition against uncleanness but if it has not a hollow space of a handbreadth it forms no partition against uncleanness now most coffins have a space of a handbreadth and the rabbis decreed that those which had such a space should form no partition for fear they should be confused with those which had no space but where respect to kings was involved they did not enforce the decree come and your greatest human dignity since it overrides a negative precept of the Torah why should it let us apply the rule there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord Rabbi Shava explained the dictum in the presence of our Kahana to refer to the negative precept of thou shalt not turn aside they laughed at him the negative precept of thou shalt not turn aside is also from the Torah said our Kahana if a great man makes a statement you should not laugh at him all the ordinances of the rabbis were based by them on the prohibition of thou shalt not turn aside but where the question of human dignity is concerned the rabbis allowed the act come and hear and hide thyself from them there are times when thou mayest hide thy
Different said our Papa Juebe, how is it that for the former generations miracles were performed and for us miracles are not performed it cannot be because of their superiority in study because in the years of Rab Judah the whole of their studies was confined to Nezikin and we study all six orders and when Rab Judah came in the tractate into the law of a woman presses vegetables in a pot or according to others olives pressed with their leaves are clean he used to say I see all the difficulties of Rab and Samuel here and we have thirteen versions of oxen and yet when Rab Judah drew off one shoe rain used to come whereas we torment ourselves and cry loudly and no notice is taken of us he replied the former generations used to be ready to sacrifice their lives for the sanctity of God's name we do not sacrifice our lives for the sanctity of God's name there was a case of our Adabi Agaba who saw a heathen woman wearing a red headdress in the street and thinking that she was an Israelite woman he rose and tore it from her it turned out that she was a heathen woman and they find him 400 zoos he said to her what is your name she replied Mathen Mathen he said to her that makes 400 zoos our giddle was accustomed to go and sit at the gates of the bathing place he used to say to the women who came to bathe bathe us or bathe us the rabbi said to him is not the master afraid lest his passion get the better of him he replied they look to me like so many white geese are Yohanan was accustomed to go and sit at the gates of the bathing place he said when the daughters of Israel come up from bathing they look at me and they have children as handsome as I am said the rabbis to him is not the master afraid of the evil eye he replied I come from the seed of Joseph over whom the evil eye has no power as it is written Joseph is a fruitful vine a fruitful vine above the eye and Arabah said with regard to this do not write a line but all. I and Arjuna, son of Arhanan, derived it from this text and let them multiply like fishes. We do in the midst of the earth, just as the fishes to Jim in the sea are covered by water, and the evil eye has no power over them. So the evil eye has no power over the seed of Joseph. Or if you prefer, I can say the evil eye has no power over the eye which refused to feed itself on what did not belong to it. Misha, women, slaves, and minors are exempt from reciting the Shema Talmud, Mosbirak of BN. From putting on Tefillin, but they are subject to the obligations of Tefillah and Mezuzah and Grace after meals. Gemara, that they are exempt from the Shema is self evident. It is a positive precept for which there is a fixed time. You might say that because it mentions the kingship of heaven, it is different. We are therefore told that this is not so. And from putting on the Tefillin, this also is self evident. You might say that because it is put on a level with the Mezuzah, therefore women should be. Subject to it, therefore, we are told that this is not so. They are subject to the obligation of Tefila because this is supplication for divine mercy. You might, however, think that because it is written in connection there with evening and morning and at noonday, therefore, it is like a positive precept for which there is a fixed time. Therefore, we are told that this is not so. And Mazuza, this is self-evident. You might say that because it is put on a level with the study of the Torah. Therefore, women are exempt. Therefore, it tells us that this is not so. And grace after meals, this is self-evident. You might think that because it is written when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full. Therefore, it is like a positive precept for which there is a definite time. Therefore, it tells us that this is not so. Our Adabi Agaba said women are under obligation to sanctify the Sabbath day by ordinance of the Torah. But why should this be? It is a Positive precept for which there is a definite time and women are exempt from all positive precepts for which there is a definite time. Abay said the obligation is only rabbinical said Rabbah to him but it says by an ordinance of the Torah and further on this ground we could subject them to all positive precepts by rabbinical authority rather said Rabbah the text says remember and observe whoever has to observe has to remember and since these women have to observe they also have to remember Rabbah. Said to Rabbah is the obligation of women to say grace after meals rabbinical or scriptural what difference does it make in practice which it is for deciding whether they can perform the duty on behalf of others if you say the obligation is scriptural then one who is bound by scripture can come and perform the duty on behalf of another who is bound by scripture but if you say the obligation is only rabbinical then a woman is not strictly bound to do this and whoever is not strictly bound to do a thing cannot perform the obligation on behalf of others. What do we decide? Come and hear in truth. They did say a son may say grace on behalf of his father, and a slave may say grace on behalf of his master, and a woman may say grace on behalf of her husband. But the sages said a curse light on the man whose wife or children have to say grace for him. If now you say that the obligation of these others is scriptural, then there is no difficulty. One who is bound by the scripture comes and performs the duty on behalf of one who is bound by the scripture. But if you say that the obligation is rabbinic, can one who is bound only rabbinically come and perform the duty on behalf of one who is bound scripturally? But even accepting your reasoning is a minor subject to obligation scripturally. Nay, with what case are we dealing here? If, for instance, he ate a quantity for which he is only rabbinically bound to say grace, in which case one who is rabbinically bound comes and performs it. Duty on behalf of one who is only rabbinically bound are our discourse sometimes in the name of RMI and sometimes in the name of RC as follows the ministering angel said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe it is written in thy law who regardeth not persons nor taketh reward and dost thou not regard the person of Israel as it is written the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee he replied to them and shall I not lift up my countenance for Israel seeing that I wrote for them in the Torah and thou shalt eat and be satisfied and bless the Lord thy God and they are particular to say the grace if the quantity is but an olive or an egg Mishnah Aba Al-Kari says the words of the Shema mentally without saying a blessing either before or after at meals he says the grace after but not the grace before Arjuna says he says the grace both before and after Gemara said Rabbana this would show that saying mentally is equivalent to actual saying for a few. Assume that it is not equivalent to actual saying why should he say mentally what then you say that saying mentally is equivalent to actual saying then let him utter the words with his lips we do as we find it was done at Sinai Arista said saying mentally is not equivalent to actual saying for if you assume that saying mentally is equivalent to actual saying then let him utter the words with his lips what then you say that saying mentally is not equivalent to actual saying why then should he say mentally our Eliezer replied so that he should not have to sit saying nothing while everyone else is engaged saying the Shema then let him read some other section our Adabi Agabah said he must attend to that with which the congregation is engaged Talmud, Mosbirakotha but what of Tefila which is a thing with which the congregation is engaged and yet we have learned if he was standing reciting the Tefila and he suddenly remembered that he was a B.A.L. carry he should not break off but he should shorten each blessing now the reason is that he had commenced but if he had not yet commenced he should not do so Tefila is different because it does not mention the kingdom of heaven but what of the grace after meals in which there is no mention of the sovereignty of heaven and yet we have learned at meals he says grace after but not the grace before rather the answer is that the recital of the Shema and grace after food are scriptural ordinances whereas Tefila is only a rabbinical ordinance Rab Judah said where do we find that the grace after meals is ordained in the Torah because it says and thou shalt eat and be satisfied and bless where do we find that a blessing before studying the Torah is ordained in the Torah because it says when I proclaim the name of the Lord ascribe your greatness to our God our Yohanan said we learn that a blessing should be said after studying the Torah by an argument before she arrive from grace after food and we learn that grace should be Said before food by an argument a for from the blessing over the Torah the blessing after the Torah is learned a for from the grace after food as follows seeing that food which requires no grace before it requires a grace after it does it not stand to reason that the study of the Torah which requires a grace before it should require one after it the blessing before food is learned a for from the blessing over the Torah as follows seeing that the Torah which requires no blessing after it requires one before it does it not stand to reason that food which requires one after it should require one before it a flock can be pointed out in both arguments how can you reason from food to the Torah seeing that from the former he derives physical benefit and how can you reason from the Torah to food seeing that from the former he obtains everlasting life further we have learned at meals he says the grace after but not the grace before this is a refutation Rab Judah said if a Man is in doubt whether he has recited the Shema he need not recite it again if he is in doubt whether he has said true and firm or not he should say it again what is the reason the recital of the
disciples who made a mistake and began the weekday benediction on the Sabbath whether they should finish it and he said to us that they should finish that blessing are these cases parallel in that case one is in reality under obligation and it is the rabbis who did not trouble him out of respect for the Sabbath but in this case he has already said the prayer of Judah further said in the name of Samuel if a man had already said the tefillah and went into a synagogue and found the congregation saying the tefillah if he can add something fresh he should say the tefillah again but otherwise he should not say it again and both these rulings are required for if I had been told only the first I should have said this applies only to a case where he said the tefillah alone and is repeating it alone Talmud, Masbirak of B or where he said it with a congregation and is repeating it with a congregation but when one who has prayed alone goes into a congregation it is as if he had not prayed at all hence we are told that this is not so and if we had been told only the second case I might think that this ruling applies only because he had not commenced but where he had commenced I might say that he should not break off therefore both are necessary are who not said if a man goes into a synagogue and finds the congregation saying the tefillah if he can commence and finish before the reader reaches we give thanks he may say the tefillah but otherwise he should not say it are Joshua B. Levi says if he can commence and finish before the reader reaches the sanctification he should say the tefillah but otherwise he should not say it what is the ground of their difference one authority held that a man praying by himself does say the sanctification while the other holds that he does not so too our Adabi Abaha said once do we know that a man praying by himself does not say the sanctification because it says I will be hallowed among the children of Israel for any manifestation of sanctification not less than ten are required how is this derived Rabbin the brother of our high B. Abba taught we draw an analogy between two occurrences of the word among it is written here I will be hallowed among the children of Israel and it is written elsewhere separate yourselves from among this congregation just as in that case ten are implied so here ten are implied both authorities however agree that he does not interrupt the tefillah the question was asked what is the rule about interrupting the tefillah to respond may his great name be blessed when Ardimi came from Palestine he said that our Judah and our Simeon the disciples of our Yohanan say that one interrupts for nothing except may his great name be blessed for even if he is engaged in studying the section of the work of the divine chariot he must interrupt to make this response but the law is not in accordance with their view our Judah says he says the grace both before and after this would imply that our Judah was of opinion that a Bal Kari is permitted to occupy himself with the words of the Torah but has not our Joshua B. Levi said how do we know that a Bal Kari is forbidden to study the Torah because it says make them known unto thy children and thy children's children and immediately afterwards the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb implying that just as on that occasion those who had a seminal issue were forbidden so here too those who have a seminal issue are forbidden and should you say that our Judah does not derive lessons from the juxtaposition of text this does not matter since our Joseph has said even those who do not derive lessons from the juxtaposition of text in all the rest of the Torah do so in Deuteronomy for our Judah does not derive such lessons in all the rest of the Torah and in Deuteronomy he does and how do we know that in all the rest of the Torah he does not derive such lessons as it has been taught Ben says thou shalt not suffer a sorceress to live and it says immediately afterwards whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death the two statements were juxtaposed to tell you that just as one that lieth with a beast is put to death by stoning so a sorceress also is put to death by stoning said our Judah to him because the two statements are juxtaposed are we to take this one out to be stoned rather we learn it as follows they that divine by a ghost or a familiar spirit come under the head of Sorceress why then were they mentioned separately to serve as a basis for comparison just as they that divine by a ghost or familiar spirit are to be stoned so a sorceress is to be stoned and how do we know that he derives lessons from juxtaposition in Deuteronomy as it has been taught our Elizer said a man may marry a woman who has been raped by his father or seduced by his father one who has been raped by his son or one who has been seduced by his son our Judah prohibits one who has been raped by his father or seduced by his father and our said with reference to this what is the reason of our Judah because it is written a man shall not take his father's wife and shall not uncover his father's skirt which implies he shall not uncover the skirt which his father saw and how do we know that the text is speaking of one raped by his father because just before it are the words then the man that lay with her shall give unto the father etc they replied yes in Deuteronomy he does draw such lessons, but this juxtaposition he requires for the other statement of our Joshua B. Levi. For our Joshua B. Levi said, If any man teaches his son Torah, the scripture accounts it to him as if he had received it from Mount Horeb, as it says, And thou shalt make them known unto thy children and thy children's children. And immediately afterwards it is written, The day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, we have learned to suffer from Gonorrhea, who had an admission in it, from whom semen has escaped, and a woman who became nida during sexual intercourse require ritual ablution. Our Judah, however, exempts them now. Our Judah's exemption extends only to a Gonorrhea person who had an admission, because ritual ablution in his first condition is useless for him, but an ordinary person who has an admission requires ritual ablution. And should you maintain that our Judah exempts an ordinary Bal carry also, and the reason why he and the rabbis joined issue over the Gonorrhea person was to show. How far the rabbis are prepared to go then look then at the next clause a woman who became nida during sexual intercourse requires a ritual ablution whose opinion is here stated shall I say it is the rabbis surely this is self evident seeing that a gonorrhea person who has an admission although a ritual ablution is useless in his first condition was yet required by the rabbis to take one how much more so a woman who becomes nida during sexual intercourse for whom in her first condition a ritual ablution was efficacious we must say therefore that it states the opinion of our Judah and he meant exemption to apply only to this case Talmud, Masbirak so that a woman who becomes nida during sexual intercourse does not require a ritual ablution but an ordinary Bal carry does require ritual ablution read in the mission not our Judah says he says the blessing but he says mentally but does our Judah in any case prescribe saying mentally has it not been taught Bal carry who has no water for a ritual ablution recites the Shema without saying a blessing either before or after and he eats bread and says a blessing after it he does not however say a blessing before it but says it mentally without uttering it with his lips so our Meir Arjuda says in either case he utters it with his lips said Arnam and B. Isaac Arjuda put it on the same footing as the Halachath of Derek Erez as it has been taught and thou shalt make them known to thy children and thy children's children. And it is written immediately afterwards the day on which thou didst stand before the Lord thy God in Horeb just as there it was in dread and fear and trembling and quaking so in this case too it must be in dread and fear and trembling and quaking on the basis of this they laid down that suffers from Gonorrhea lepers and those who had intercourse with Nidath are permitted to read the Torah of the Prophets and the Hagiographer and to study the Mishnah Midrash the Talmud Halachath and Hagadoth. But B. A. Al is forbidden. Our Jose said he may repeat those with which he is familiar so long as he does not expound the mission. Our Jonathan B. Joseph said he may expound the mission, but he must not expound the Talmud. Our Nathan B. Abishalom says he may expound the Talmud also, provided only he does not mention the divine names that occur in it. Our Yohanan the sandal maker, the disciple of our Akiva, said in the name of our Akiva, he should not enter upon the Midrash at all. Some read he should not enter the Beth Hamidrash at all. Our Judah says he may repeat the laws of Derek Erez. Once our Judah, after having had a seminal issue, was walking along a riverbank, and his disciple said to him, Master, repeat to us a section from the laws of Derek Erez. And he went down and bathed and then repeated to them. They said to him, Have you not taught us, Master? He may repeat the laws of Derek Erez. He replied, Although I make concessions to others, I am strict with myself. It has been taught our Judah, but there I used to say. Words of Torah are not susceptible of uncleanness. Once a certain disciple was mumbling over against our Judah, be there he said to him, My son, open thy mouth and let thy words be clear. For words of Torah are not susceptible to uncleanness, as it says, is not my word like as fire, just as fire is not susceptible of uncleanness. So words of Torah are not susceptible of uncleanness. The master said he may expound the mission, but he must not expound the Talmud. This supports our Eli for our Eli said in the name of our Ahabi Jacob, who gave
The one who reports they have abolished the washing of hands is in accord with our Hista who cursed anyone who went looking for water at the hour of prayer. Our rabbis taught of Bal Kariyad whom nine calves of water have been thrown is clean. Nahum, a man of Gims who whispered it to our Akiba and our Akiba whispered it to Ben Azay and Ben Azay went forth and repeated it to the disciples in public. Two Amram in the West differed in regard to this. Our Jose B. Aben and our Jose B. Z. But one stated he repeated it. And one taught he whispered it. The one who taught he repeated it held that the reason for the concession was to prevent neglect of the Torah and appropriation. The one who taught he whispered it thought that the reason was in order that scholars might not always be with their wives like Cox. Arjane said, I have heard of some who are lenient in this matter and I have heard of some who are strict in it. And if anyone is strict with himself in regard to it, his days and years are prolonged. Are. Joshua B. Levi said, What is the sense of those who bathe in the morning? He asks, What is the sense? Why it was he himself who said that a BAL carry is forbidden to occupy himself with the words of the Torah? What he meant is this, What is the sense of bathing in 40 SEAHS when one can make ship with nine calves? What is the sense of going right in when throwing the water over one is sufficient? Our Hannah said they put up a very valuable fence by this as it has been taught once a man enticed a woman to commit an offense and she said to him, Vagabond, have you 40 SEAHS to bathe in? And he at once desisted, said, Arhu, to the disciples, my masters, why do you make so light of this bathing? Is it because of the cold you can use the bath? Said Arhista to him, Can ablution be performed in hot baths? He replied, Our Abba is of the same opinion as yours. EIRA used to sit in a tub of water in the baths and say to his servant, Go and fetch nine calves and throw over me or high B. said to and why, sir, do you take this trouble seeing that you are sitting in that quantity of water? He replied, The nine calves must be like the 40 SEAHS, just as the 40 SEAHS are for immersion and not for throwing. So the nine calves are for throwing and not for immersion. Our nomin prepared and you were holding nine calves when our Dimi came. He reported that our Akiba and our Judah Glostera had said the rule was laid down only for a sick person who has an emission involuntarily, but for a sick person who has a voluntary emission. 40 SEAHS are required, said our Joseph. Our nomin's ewer was broken when Rabin came. He said the thing took place in Ishat Talmud, Mosbir B in the anteroom of Arashai. They came and asked RC, and he said to them, This rule was laid down only for a sick person whose emission is voluntary, but a sick person whose emission is involuntary requires nothing at all, said our Joseph. Our nomin's ewer has been repaired again. Let us see the dispute between all these ten amen. Amram is as to the ordinance of Ezra. Let us see then what Ezra did ordain. Abbe said Ezra ordained that a healthy man whose emission is voluntary must immerse in 40 SEAHS and a healthy man whose emission is involuntary must use nine calves. And the Amram came and differed over the sick person. One held that a sick person whose emission is voluntary is on the same footing as a healthy person whose emission is voluntary and a sick person whose emission is involuntary as a healthy person whose emission is involuntary. While the other held that a sick person whose emission is voluntary is on the same footing as a healthy person whose emission is involuntary and a sick person whose emission is involuntary requires nothing at all. Rabbi said granted that Ezra ordained immersion. Did he ordain throwing has not a master said Ezra ordained immersion for persons who have had a seminal emission. Rather said Rabbi Ezra ordained for a healthy person whose emission is voluntary 40 SEAHS and it. Rabbis after Ezra came and ordained for a healthy person whose emission is involuntary nine calves and the ten aim and Amram came and differed with regard to a sick person one holding that a sick person whose emission is voluntary is on the same footing as a healthy person whose emission is voluntary and a sick person whose emission is involuntary as a healthy person whose emission is involuntary while the other held that a healthy person whose emission is voluntary requires 40 SEAHS and a sick person whose emission is voluntary is on the same footing as a healthy person whose emission is involuntary and requires nine calves while a sick person whose emission is involuntary requires nothing at all Rabbis said the law is that a healthy person whose emission is voluntary and a sick person whose emission is voluntary require 40 SEAHS a healthy person whose emission is involuntary requires nine calves and a sick person whose emission is involuntary requires nothing at all are Rabbis taught a BAL carry over whom nine calves of water have been thrown is clean when is this the case when it is for himself but when it is for others he requires 40 SEAHS our Judah says 40 SEAHS in all cases are Yohanan and our Joshua B. Levi and our Eliezer and our Jose son of our Hanan made pronouncements one of the first peer and one of the second peer dealt with the first clause of the statement one said the statement of yours when is this the case when it is for himself but for others he requires 40 SEAHS was meant to apply only to a sick person whose emission is voluntary but for a sick person whose emission is involuntary nine calves are enough the other said wherever it is for others even if he is a sick person whose emission is involuntary there must be 40 SEAHS one of the first peer and one of the second peer differed as to the second clause of the statement one said when our Judah said that 40 SEAHS are required in all cases he was speaking only of water in the Ground but not in vessels the other said even in vessels on the view of the one who says even in vessels there is no difficulty that is why our Judah taught 40 SEAHS in all cases but on the view of the one who says in the ground yes in vessels no one is added by the words in all cases they had drawn water our papa and our Hunna, the son of our Joshua and Rabbi B. Samuel were taking a meal together said our papa to them allow me to say the grace on your behalf because nine calves of water have been thrown on me said Rabbi B. Samuel to them we have learned when is this the case when it is for himself but if it is for others 40 SEAHS are required rather let me say the grace since 40 SEAHS have been thrown on me said our Hunna, to them let me say the grace since I have had neither the one nor the other on me or have a bath on the eve of Passover in order that he might be qualified to do duty on behalf of the public but the law is not as stated by omission if a man was standing saying the Tefillah and he remembers that he is a B.A.L. carry he should not break off but he should shorten the Benedict Ions if he went down to immerse himself if he is able to come up and cover himself and recite the Shema before the rising of the sun he should go up and cover himself and recite but if not he should cover himself with the water and recite he should however not cover himself either with foul water or with water in which something has been steeped until he pours fresh water into it. How far should he remove himself from it and from excrement for cubits Gemara our rabbis taught if a man was standing saying the Tefillah and he remembered that he was a B.A.L. carry he should not break off but shorten the Benedictions if a man was reading the Torah and remembered that he was a B.A.L. carry he should not break off and leave it but should go on reading in a mumbling tone our mayor said a B.A.L. carry is not permitted to read more than three verses in the Torah another the taught. If a man was standing saying the Tefillah and he saw excrement in front of him he should go forward until he has it four cubits behind him but it has been taught he should move to the side there is no contradiction one statement speaks of where it is possible for him to go forward the other of where it is not possible if he was praying and he discovered some excrement where he was standing Rabbi says even though he has sent his prayers a valid one Rabbi demurred to the citing the text. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination no said Rabbi since he has sent although he said the Tefillah his prayer is an abomination our Rabbis taught if a man was standing saying the Tefillah and water drips over his knees he should break off until the water stops and then resume his Tefillah at what point should he resume our Hista and our Hamna gave different replies one said that he should go back to the beginning the other said to the place where he halted may we say that the ground of their difference is this Talmud, Mosbirakotha that one authority holds that if one stops long enough to finish the whole he goes back to the beginning while the other holds that he goes back in any event to the place where he stops said Arashi in that case the statement should distinguish between whether he stopped long enough or did not stop we must therefore say that both are agreed that if he stopped long enough to finish the whole of it he goes back to the beginning and here they differ in regard to the case where he did not stop so long one holding that the man was unfit to have commenced his prayers and hence his prayers no prayer while the other holds that the man was nevertheless in a fit state to pray and his prayers a valid one our rabbis taught if a man needs to consult nature he should not say the Tefillah and if he does his
Fools give do not be like the fools who sin and bring an offering and do not repent for they know not to do evil if that is the case they are righteous what it means is do not be like the fools who sin and bring an offering and do not know whether they bring it for a good action or a bad action says the holy one blessed be he they do not distinguish between good and evil and they bring an offering before me or ashi or as some say our hanabi papa said guard thy orifices at the time when thou art standing in prayer before me our rabbis taught one who is about to enter a privy should take off his tefillin at a distance of four cubits and then enter our ahasan of arhunah said in the name of our she's hate this was meant to apply only to a regular privy but if it is made for the occasion he takes them off and eases himself at once and when he comes out he goes a distance of four cubits and puts them on because he has now made it a regular privy the question was asked what is the rule about a Man going into a regular privy with his tefillin to make water rub and allowed it or Adabi Matina forbade it they went and asked Rabba and he said to them it is forbidden since we are afraid that he may ease himself in them or as some report lest he may break wind in them another very the top one who enters a regular privy takes off his tefillin at a distance of four cubits and puts them in the window on the side of the public way and enters and when he comes out he goes a distance of four cubits and puts them on so Beth Beth Hillel say he keeps them in his hand and enters or Akiba said he holds them in his garment and enters in his garment do you say sometimes they may slip out and fall say rather he holds them in his hand and in his garment and enters and he puts them in a hole on the side of the privy but he should not put them in a hole on the side of the public way lest they should be taken by passers by and he should render himself suspect for a certain student once left his tefillin in a hole adjoining the public way and a harlot passed by and took them and she came to the Beth Hamidrash and said see what so and so gave me for my hire and when the student heard it he went to the top of a roof and threw himself down and killed himself thereupon they ordained that a man should hold them in his garment and in his hand and then go in the rabbis taught originally they used to leave tefillin in holes on the side of the privy and mice used to come and take them they therefore ordained that they should be put in the windows on the side of the public way then passers by came and took them so they ordained that a man should hold them in his hand and enter Armeisha the son of our Joshua believe I said the halachah is that he should roll them up like a scroll and keep them in his right hand opposite his heart our Joseph Menuhi said in the name of our Naman he must see that not a handbreadth of strap hangs loose from his hand our Jacob Biaha said in the name of our Zara, this is the rule only if there is still time left in the day to put them on, but if there is no time left in the day, he makes a kind of bag for them of the size of a handbreadth and puts them there. Rabbi Barhana said in the name of Aryohan, and in the daytime when he enters a privy, he rolls them up like a scroll and keeps them in his hand opposite his heart, and for the night he makes a kind of bag for them of the size of a handbreadth and puts them there. Abbe said this rule was meant to apply only to a bag which is meant for them, but if the bag is not meant for them, even less than a handbreadth is sufficient. Marzitra, or as some say, Arashi said, the proof is that small vessels protect the contents from uncleanness in a tent of a dead. Rabbi Barhana further said, when we were following Aryohan as disciples, when he wanted to enter a privy, if he had a book of Agata, he used to give it to us to hold, but if he was wearing tefillin, he did not give them to us, saying, since the rabbis have permitted them Talmud, Masbirakot be they will protect me. Rabbi said when we were following our Naman if he had a book of Agata he used to give it to us but if he was wearing tefillin he did not give them to us saying since the rabbis have permitted them they will guard me. Our rabbis taught a man should not hold tefillin in his hand or a scroll of the law in his arm while saying the tefillin nor should he make water while wearing them nor sleep in them whether a regular sleep or a short snatch. Samuel says a knife money a dish and a loaf of bread are on the same footing as tefillin. Rabbi said in the name of our she's hate the law is not in accordance with this very since it expresses a view of Beth Shammai foreseeing that Beth Hillel declare it permissible in a regular privy to hold the tefillin is there any question that they would permit it in an ad hoc privy an objection was raised the things which I have permitted to you in the one place I have forbidden. To you and the other, presumably this refers to Tefillin. Now, if you say the Beritha quoted follows Beth Hillel, there is no difficulty. I have permitted it to you in the one place, the regular privy, and I have forbidden it to you in the other, the ad hoc privy. But if you say it is Beth Shammai, they do not permit anything. That statement refers to the bearing of the handbreadth and two handbreadths. As one Beritha taught, when a man eases himself, he may bear a handbreadth behind and two handbreadths in front, and another taught a handbreadth behind and in front. Not at all is it not the case that both statements refer to a man, and there is no contradiction. The former referring to easing and the latter to making water. But do you think so? If for making water, why a handbreadth behind? Rather, both refer to easing, and there is no contradiction. The one referring to a man and the other to a woman. If that is the case, what of the succeeding statement? This is an aforciori which cannot be. Rebutted what is the point of which cannot be rebutted this is merely the natural way we must say therefore the tefillin are referred to in the very and it is a refutation of what Rabbah said in the name of Arshis hate it is a refutation still a difficulty remains if it is permissible in a regular privy how much more so in an ad hoc privy what it means is this in a regular privy where there is no splashing it is permitted in an ad hoc privy where there is splashing it is forbidden if that is the case how can you say which cannot be rebutted there is an excellent refutation what it means is this this rule is based upon a reason and not upon an argument of Forshiori for if we were to employ here an argument of Forshiori it would be one which could not be rebutted our rabbis taught one who wishes to partake in company of a regular meal should walk four cubits ten times or ten cubits four times and ease himself and then go in our Isaac said one who wishes to partake of a regular meal should take off his tefillin and then go and he differs from our high for our high said he places them on his table and so it is becoming for him how long does he leave them there until the time for grace one very the taught a man may tie up his tefillin in his headgear along with his money while another teaches he should not so tie them there is no contradiction in the one case he sets it aside for this purpose in the other he does not set it aside for our his said if a man has mentally set aside a cloth to tie up tefillin in once he has tied up tefillin in it it is forbidden to tie up in it money if he has set it aside but not tied up the tefillin in it or if he has tied them up in it without setting it aside for the purpose he may tie up money in it according to Abbe however who says that mere setting aside is operative once he has set it aside even though he has not tied up tefillin in it it is forbidden to tie up money and if he has tied up tefillin in it if he has set it Aside it is forbidden to tie up money but if he has not set it aside it is not forbidden our Joseph the son of Arnihunya asked Rab Judah what is the rule about placing one's tefillin under one's pillow about putting them under the place of his feet I have no need to ask because that would be treating them contemptuously what I do want to know is what is the rule about putting them under his pillow he replied thus said Samuel it is permitted even if his wife is with him an objection was raised a man should not put his tefillin under the place of his feet because this is treating them contemptuously but he may place them under his pillow but if his wife is with him this is forbidden if however there is a place three handbreadths above his head or three handbreadths below he may put them there is not this a refutation of Samuel it is Rabbi said although it has been taught that this is a refutation of Samuel the law follows his opinion what is the reason Talmud Mosbirakot or whatever Conduces to their safekeeping is of more importance where should he put them or Jeremiah said between the coverlet and the pillow not opposite to his head but our high taught he puts them in a turban under his pillow it must be in such a way as to make the top of the turban project outside the pillow bar Kabra used to tie them in the bed curtain and make them project outside our she's hate the son of Aridi used to put them on a stool and spread a cloth over them our hand under the son of our Joseph said once when I was standing before Rabbah he said to me go and bring me my tefillin and I found them between the coverlet and the pillow not just opposite his head and I knew that it was a day of ablution for his wife and I perceived that he had sent me in order to impress upon me a practical lesson our Joseph the son of Arnihunya inquired of Rab Judah if two persons are sleeping in one bed how would it be for one to turn his face away and recite the Shema and for the other to turn his face Away and recite he replied thus said Samuel it is permitted even if his wife is with him or Joseph the to this you imply he said his wife and needless to say anyone else on the contrary we should
The buttocks is not sexual. May we say that it supports the following opinion of our who not a woman may sit and separate her hala naked because she can cover her nakedness in the ground, but not a man said our nam and be Isaac. It means if her nakedness was well covered by the ground, the master said if his children and the members of his household were minors, it is permitted up to what age are his da said a girl up to three years and one day, a boy up to nine years and one day. Some there are who say a girl up to eleven years and a day and a boy up to twelve years and a day with both of them. It is up to the time when thy breasts were fashioned and thy hair was grown, said our Kahana to our Ashi. In the other case, Rabbah said that although there was a refutation of Samuel, yet the law followed his ruling. What is the ruling here? He replied to him, Do we weave them all in the same web where it has been stated that the law follows him? It has been stated and where it has not been stated, it has not been. Stated Armari said to our papa, if a hair protrudes through a man's garment, what is the rule? He exclaimed his but a hair a hair our Isaac said a hand breadth exposed in a married woman constitutes sexual incitement in which way shall I say if one gazes at it but has not our she's hate already said why did scripture enumerate the ornaments worn outside the clothes with those worn inside to tell you that if one gazes at the little finger of a woman it is as if he gazed at her secret place no it means in one's own wife and when he recites the Shema Arhista said a woman's leg is a sexual incitement as it says uncover the leg pass through the rivers and it says afterwards thy nakedness shall be uncovered yet thy shame shall be seen Samuel said a woman's voice is a sexual incitement as it says for sweet is thy voice and thy countenance is comely our she's hate said a woman's hair is a sexual incitement as it says thy hair is as a flock of goats our Hannah said I saw Rabbi hang up his tefillin. An objection was raised if one hangs up his tefillin his life will be suspended the door she Hamuroth said and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee this refers to one who hangs up his tefillin this is no difficulty the one statement refers to hanging by the strap the other to hanging by the box or if you like I can say that in either case whether by the strap or by the box it is forbidden and when rabbi hung his up it was in a bag if so what does this tell us you might think that they must be resting on something like a scroll of the law therefore we are told that this is not necessary our Hannah also said I saw rabbi while saying the tefillin belch and yon and sneeze and spit talmud moss be and adjust his garment but he did not pull it over him and when he belched he would put his hand to his chin the following objection was cited one who says the tefillin so that it can be heard is of the small of faith he who raises his voice in praying is of the false prophet he who belches and yawns is of the arrogant if he sneezes during his prayer it is a bad sign for him some say it shows that he is a low fellow one who spits during his prayer is like one who spits before a king now in regard to belching and yawning there is no difficulty in the one case it was involuntary in the other case deliberate but the sneezing in rabbi's case does seem to contradict the sneezing in the other there is no contradiction between sneezing and sneezing either in the one case it is above in the other below for our zara said this dictum was casually imparted to me in the school of our hamna and it is worth all the rest of my learning if one sneezes in his prayer it is a good sign for him that as they give him relief below on earth so they give him relief above in heaven but there is surely a contradiction between the spitting in the one case and the other there is no contradiction between the two cases of spitting either since it can be done as suggested by Rab Judah. For Rab Judah said if a man is standing saying the tefillah and spittle collects in his mouth he covers it up in his robe or if it is a fine robe in his scarf Rabbanu was once standing behind Arashi and he wanted to spit so he spat out behind him said Arashi to him does not the master accept the dictum of Rab Judah that he covers it up in his scarf he replied I am rather squeamish one who says the tefillah so that it can be heard is of the small of faith Arhuna said this was meant to apply only if he is able to concentrate his attention when speaking in a whisper but if he cannot concentrate his attention when speaking in a whisper it is allowed and this is the case only when he is praying alone but if he is with the congregation he must not do so because he may disturb the congregation Arab kept away from Rab Judah because he wanted to go up to Eretz Israel for Rab Judah said whoever goes up from Babylon to Eretz Israel transgresses a positive precept since it says they shall be carried to Babylon and there shall they be until the day that I remember them said the Lord he said I will go and listen to what he is saying from outside the academy so he went and found the tanner residing in the presence of Rab Judah if a man was standing saying the tefillah and he broke wind he waits until the odor passes off and begins praying again some say if he was standing saying the tefillah and he wanted to break wind he steps back four cubits and breaks wind and waits till the wind passes off and resumes his prayer saying sovereign of the universe thou hast formed us with various hollows and various vents well dost thou know our shame and confusion and that our latter end is worms and maggots and he begins again from the place where he stopped he said had I come only to hear this it would have been worth my while our rabbis taught if a man is sleeping in his garment and cannot put out his head on account of the cold he folds his garment round his neck to make a partition and recites the Shema some say round his heart but how can the first Tana say thus his heart is surely inside of the sexual organ he was of opinion that if the heart is inside of the sexual organ it is still permissible to say the Shema Aruna said in the name of Aryohanan if a man is walking in a dirty alleyway he puts his hand over his mouth and recites the Shema said Aristotle to him by God had Aryohanan said this to me with his own mouth I would not have listened to him some report. Rabbi B. Barhana said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi if a man is walking in a dirty alleyway he puts his hand over his mouth and recites the Shema said Aristotle to him by God had our Joshua B. Levi said this to me with his own mouth I would not have listened to him but could Aruna have said the seeing that Aruna has said a scholar is forbidden to stand in a place of filth because he must not stand still without meditating on the Torah there is no contradiction one statement speaks of Standing the other up walking but could our Yohanan have said the scene that Rabbi Barhana has said in the name of our Yohanan in every place it is permitted to meditate on words of Torah except in the bath and in the privy and should you reply here also one statement speaks of standing and one of walking can that be so seeing that our was once walking behind our Yohanan and reciting the Shema and when he came to a dirty alleyway he stopped and when they emerged he said to our Yohanan where shall I commence again and he replied if you have stopped long enough to finish it go back to the beginning what he meant to say to him was this I do not hold that you need have stopped but taking your view that it was necessary if you have stopped long enough to finish it go back to the beginning there is a teaching in accordance with our and there is a teaching in accordance with our it has been taught in accordance with our if one was walking in a dirty alleyway he puts his hand over his mouth and recites the Shema. It has been taught in accordance with our Hista. If one was walking in a dirty alleyway, he should not recite the Shema. And what is more, if he was reciting and came to one, he should stop. Suppose he does not stop. What happens? Armeish, the grandson of our Joshua, believe I said of him, Scripture says, Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good and ordinances whereby they should not lie. Our said, Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity. Our Abbi Ahabah said, Because he hath despised the word of the Lord. And if he stops, what is his reward? Our Abbas said of him, Scripture says, Through this word, ye shall prolong your days. Our said, If a man's garment is girded round his waist, he may recite the Shema. It has been taught similarly. If his garment, whether of cloth or of leather or of sacking, is girded round his waist, he may recite the Shema Talmud, Mas Birakotha, but the Tefila he may not say until he covers his chest. Are Huna further said if a man forgot and entered a privy while wearing his tefillin he places his hand over them till he finishes till he finishes how can this be assumed rather it is as our and B. Isaac said until he finishes the first discharge but why should he not stop at once and get up on account of the dictum of our Simeon B. Gamaliel as it has been taught our Simeon B. Gamaliel says keeping back the faces brings on dropsy keeping back urine brings on jaundice it has been stated if there is some excrement on a man's flesh or if his hand is inside a privy our Huna says that he is permitted to say the Shema while our Hista says he is forbidden to say the Shema Rabbah said what is the reason of our Huna because it is written let everything that hath breath praise the Lord our Hista says that it is forbidden to say the Shema what is the reason of our Hista because it is written all my bones shall say Lord who is like unto thee it has been stated if there is an evil smell pro
Shima Walraba says it is forbidden to recite the Shima said Abe once do I derive my opinion because we have learned if an unclean person is standing under a tree and a clean one passes by he becomes unclean if a clean person is standing under a tree and an unclean one passes by he remains clean but if he the unclean person stands still he becomes unclean and similarly with a stone smitten with leprosy to which Rabba can reply in that case the deciding factor is the permanence as it is. Written he shall dwell alone without the camp shall his dwelling be but in this case the all-merciful has said therefore shall the camp be holy and this condition is not fulfilled our papa said the snout of a pig is like manure being carried past this is obviously required to be stated to show that it applies even if the animal is coming up from the river Rab Judah said if there is a doubt about the presence of excrement it is forbidden if there is a doubt about urine it is permitted some. There are who say Rab Judah said if there is a doubt about excrement in the house it is permitted in the dung heap it is forbidden if there is a doubt about urine it is permitted even in the dung heap he adopted the view of our Hamnana for our Hamnana said the Torah forbade the recital of the Shema only in face of the stream of urine and this is as taught by our Jonathan for our Jonathan contrasted two texts it is written thou shalt have a place also without the camp whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And it is also written, and thou shalt have a paddle, thou shalt cover that which cometh from thee. How are these two statements to be reconciled? The one speaks of easing the other of urine. This proves that urine was not forbidden by the Torah, save in face of the stream only. And once it has fallen to the ground, it is permitted. And it is the rabbis who imposed the further prohibition. And when they did so, it was only in a case of certainty, but not in a case of doubt. And in a case of certainty, how long is it forbidden? Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel, so long as it moistens the ground. And so said Rabbi Behan in the name of Aryohan. And so long as it moistens the ground, so too said Ula, so long as it moistens the ground. Ganabah said in the name of Rab, so long as the mark is discernible, said our Joseph. May Ganabah be forgiven by his master, seeing that even of excrement, Rab Judah has said in the name of Rab that as soon as it has dried on top, it is permitted. Is there any question? About urine said Abbe to him what reason have you for relying on this statement rely rather on this one which was made by Rabbi Barhan in the name of Rabbi even if excrement is as a pot's hurt it is forbidden to recite the Shema near it what is the test of its being as dry as a pot's hurt so long as one can throw it onto the ground and it does not break it is not so dry some say so long as one can roll it without breaking it Rabbi said I was once standing before Rabbi Judah of Dipti and he saw dung and said to me look if the top has dried or not some say that what he said to him was this look if it has formed cracks what is the ultimate decision it has been stated when dung is like a pot's hurt Amimar says it is forbidden and Marzutra says it is permitted to say the Shema near it Rabbi said the law is that if dung is as dry as a pot's hurt it is forbidden and in the case of urine as long as it is moistening the ground an objection was raised as long as urine is moistening the Ground it is forbidden if it has been absorbed in the ground or has dried up it is permitted now are we not to understand that absorption here is compared to drying and that just as after drying there is no mark left so after absorption there must be no mark left and that if there is still a mark it is forbidden even though it no longer moistens but adopting your line of argument let us see the first clause as long as urine is moistening the ground it is forbidden which implies that if there is a mark it is permitted the fact is from this very though we cannot infer either way shall we say that there is a difference of ten aim on this point for it was taught if urine has been poured out of a vessel it is forbidden to recite the shima in front of that vessel as for urine itself if it has been absorbed in the ground it is permitted if it has not been absorbed it is forbidden our Jose says so long as it moistens the ground now what is meant by the absorbed and not absorbed Mentioned by the first Tana shall I say that absorbed means that it does not moisten and that not absorbed means that it still moistens and our Jose came and said that so long as it moistens it is forbidden but if only the mark is discernible it is permitted this is the same as the first Tana says we must say then that absorbed means that the mark is not discernible and not absorbed means that the mark is discernible and our Jose came and said that so long as it moistens it is forbidden but if only the mark is discernible it is permitted no both agree that so long as it moistens it is forbidden and if only the mark is discernible it is permitted Talmud, Masbirak B and here the difference between them is whether it must be wet enough to moisten something else if he went down to immerse himself if he is able to come up etc may we say that the Mishnah teaches anonymously the same as our Eliezer who said that the Shema may be recited until the rising of the sun you may even say that it is the same as our Joshua and perhaps the Mishnah means this to apply to the Wavakin of whom our said the Wavakin used to finish the recital with the rising of the sun if not he should cover himself with water and recite but in this case his heart sees the sexual organs our Eliezer said or as some also say our Ahabi Abu Biyaha said in the name of our teacher they meant this to apply to turbid water which is like solid earth in order that his heart should not see his sexual organ. Our rabbis taught if the water is clear he may sit in it up to his neck and say the Shema some say he should stir it up with his foot on the ruling of the first Tana his heart sees his nakedness he held that if his heart sees the sexual organ it is permitted but his heel sees his nakedness he held that if his heel sees his nakedness it is permitted it has been stated if his heel sees his nakedness it is permitted to read the Shema if it touches Abbe says it is forbidden and Rabbi says it. Is permitted. This is the way in which Arzibid taught this passage. Arhin, the son of Ar Thus, if it touches, all agree that it is forbidden. If it sees, Abay says it is forbidden, and Rabbi says it is permitted. The Torah was not given to the ministering angels. The law is that if it touches, it is forbidden. But if it sees, it is permitted. Rabbi said, if one sees excrement through a glass, he may recite the Shema in face of it. If he sees nakedness through a glass, he must not recite the Shema in face of it. If he sees excrement through a glass, he may recite the Shema in face of it because the permission or otherwise in the case of excrement depends on whether it is covered. If he sees nakedness through a glass, it is forbidden to recite in face of it because the All Merciful said that he see no unseemly thing in the end. Here it is seen. Abay said a little excrement may be neutralized with spittle to which Rabbi added it must be thick spittle. Rabbi said if the excrement is in a hole, he may put. His shoe over it and recite the Shema Mar the son of Rabbin inquired what is the rule if there is some dung sticking to his shoe this was left unanswered Rab Judah said it is forbidden to recite the Shema in face of a naked heathen why do you say a heathen the same applies even to an Israelite in the case of an Israelite there is no question to him that it is forbidden but this had to be stated in the case of a heathen for you might have thought that since scripture says of them whose flesh is as the flesh of asses and whose issue is as the issue of horses therefore he is just like a mere ass hence we are told that their flesh also is called nakedness as it says and they saw not their father's nakedness he should not cover himself either with foul water or with water in which something has been steeped until he pours water into it how much water must he go on pouring what it means is this he must not cover himself with foul water or with water used for steeping at all nor may he Recite in face of urine until he pours water into it. Our rabbis taught how much water must he pour into it. A few drops are enough. Our Zakai says a rebuth Arnaman said where they differ is when the water is poured in last, but if the water was there first, a few drops are sufficient. Our Joseph, however, said where they differ is if the water was there first, but if the water was poured in afterwards, both agree that there must be a rebuth. Our Joseph once said to his attendant, Bring me a rebuth of water as prescribed by our Zakai. Our rabbis taught it is forbidden to recite the Shema in face of a chamber pot for excrement or urine, even if there is nothing in it, or in face of urine itself, if it is in another vessel until he pours water into it, how much must he pour a few drops? Our Zakai says a rebuth whether it is in front of the bed or behind the bed. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel says if it is behind the bed, he may recite the Shema. If it is in front of the bed, he may not recite, but he must remove. Four cubits and then recite our Simeon B. Eliezer says even if the room is a hundred cubits long he should not say the Shema in it until he takes it away or places it under the bed. The question was asked how did he or Simeon B. Gamaliel mean that if it is behind the bed he may recite at once and that if it is in front of the bed he must remove four cubits and then recite or did he perhaps mean it this way that if it is behind the bed he removes to a distance of four cubits but if
of our Isaac B. Samuel B. Marta he brought him into the bridal chamber but it was not a success he went in after him to look and saw a scroll of the Torah lying there he said to them had I not come now you would have endangered the life of my son for it has been taught it is forbidden to have marital intercourse in a room in which there is a scroll of the law or tefillin until they are taken out or placed in one receptacle inside of another Abbe said this rule applies only to a receptacle which is not meant for them but if the receptacles are specially meant for them ten are no better than one Rabbah said a covering Talmud, Masbirakotha over a chest is like a receptacle within a receptacle our Joshua B. Levi said for a scroll of the law it is necessary to make a partition of ten handbreadths Marzitra was visiting Arashi and he saw that in the place where Mar the son of Arashi slept there was a scroll of the law and a partition of ten handbreadths was made for it he said to him which authority are you following our Joshua B. Levi is it not I presume that our Joshua B. Levi meant this to apply only where one had not another room but your honor has another room he replied I had not thought of it how far should he remove from it and from excrement four cubits Rabbah said in the name of our seer reporting Rab this was meant only if he leaves it behind him but if he keeps it in front of him he must remove completely out of sight the same rule applies to Tefila is that so has not Raf Rambi Papa said in the name of our Histani man can stand facing a privy four cubits away and say the Tefila what is referred to here a privy in which there is no excrement is that so has not our Joseph B. Hanna said when they spoke of a privy they meant even if there is no excrement in it and when they spoke of a bath they meant even if there is no one in it but in fact what is referred to here a new one but surely this is the very thing about which Robin asked a question if a place has been set aside for a privy but not yet used what is the rule does setting aside count or does it not count what Robin wanted to know was whether one might stand in it to pray therein but as to facing it he was not in doubt Robin said these Persian privies although there is excrement in them are counted as closed in mission a Ganaroe person who has an emission and an from whom semen escapes and a woman who becomes knitted during intercourse require a ritual bath Arjuna however Exempts them. Gemara. The question was raised: What is Arjuna's opinion about a Bal Kari who has become Ganarobi? Are we to say that the case in which Arjuna exempted was that of a Ganarobi patient who had a seminal issue because his first condition precludes him from ablution, but he does not exempt a Bal Kari who becomes Ganarobi because in his first condition he does require ablution? Or are we to say that there is no difference? Come and here a woman who becomes nidda during intercourse requires a ritual bath. Arjuna, however, exempts her. Now a woman who becomes nidda during intercourse is on the same footing as a Bal Kari who becomes Ganarobi, and Arjuna exempts her. This proves that there is no difference. Our high taught expressly a Bal Kari who has become Ganarobi requires ablution. Arjuna, however, exempts him. Chapter four, Mishnah. The morning tefila can be said until midday. Arjuna says till the fourth hour of the afternoon prayer can be said till. Evening Arjuna says until the middle of the afternoon the evening prayer has no fixed limit the time for the additional prayers is the whole of the day Arjuna says till the seventh hour Gemara till midday this was contrasted with the following the proper time for it the Shema is at the rising of the sun so that Jehiola should be followed immediately by Tefila with the result that he would say the Tefila in the daytime that was taught in reference only to the Wavikin for our Yohanan. Said the Wavikin used to conclude it the Shema as the sun rose and may other people delay till midday but no longer has not Armari the son of Arhuna the son of our Jeremiah B. Abba said in the name of our Yohanan if a man heard and did not say the evening Tefila he says it twice in the morning if he heard in the morning he says it twice in the afternoon he may go on praying the whole day but up to midday he is given the reward of saying the Tefila in its proper time thereafter he is given. The reward of saying Tefila but not of saying Tefila in its proper time. The question was raised if a man heard and did not say the afternoon Tefila, should he say it twice in the evening? Should you argue from the fact that if he heard in the evening he prays twice in the morning? I may reply that this is because it is all one day as it is written and there was evening and there was morning one day, but in this case prayer being in the place of sacrifice since the day has passed it. Sacrifice lapses, or should we rather say that since prayer is supplication for mercy, a man may go on praying as long as he likes come and here for our Hunai Judah said in the name of our Isaac reporting our Yohanan if a man heard and did not say the afternoon Tefila, he says it twice in the evening, and we do not apply here the principle that if the day has passed the offering lapses an objection was raised that which is crooked cannot be made straight and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. This applies to one who omitted the Shema of the evening or the Shema of the morning or the Tefila of the evening or the Tefila of the morning, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. This applies to one whose comrades formed a group to perform a religious act and he was not included with them. Our Isaac said in the name of our Yohanan, with what case are we dealing here with one who omitted deliberately? Our Ashi said the proof of this is that it says omitted and it does not say or this proves it. Talmud, Masbirak of B. Our rabbis taught if a man heard and did not say the afternoon prayer on the eve of Sabbath, he says the Sabbath Tefila twice on the night of the Sabbath. If he heard and did not say the afternoon Tefila on Sabbath, he says the weekday Tefila twice on the outgoing of the Sabbath, he says Havdalah in the first but not in the second, and if he said Havdalah in the second and not in the first, the second is counted. To him the first is not counted to him this is equivalent is it not to saying that since he did not say Havdalah in the first it is as if he had not said the Tefila and we make him say it again to this was opposed the following if one forgot and did not mention the miracle of rain in the benediction for the resurrection of the dead and pray for rain in the benediction of the years he is turned back if he forgot Havdalah and who graciously grants knowledge he is not turned back because he can say it over one this is indeed a difficulty it has been stated our Jose son of our Hanan said the Tefilas were instituted by the patriarchs our Joshua B. Levi says the Tefilas were instituted to replace the daily sacrifices it has been taught in accordance with our Jose B. Hanan and it has been taught in accordance with our Joshua B. Levi it has been taught in accordance with our Jose B. Hanan Abraham instituted the morning Tefila as it says and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he had stood and standing means only prayer as it says and stood up Phineas and prayed Isaac instituted the afternoon Tefila as it says and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at eventide and meditation means only prayer as it says a prayer of the afflicted when he fainted and poured out his meditation before the Lord Jacob instituted the evening prayer as it says and he lighted W A Y upon the place and Pediyah means only prayer as it says therefore pray not thou for this people. Neither lift up prayer nor cry for them neither make intercession to Tifia me it has been taught also in accordance with our Joshua B. Levi why did they say that the morning Tefila could be said till midday because the regular morning sacrifice could be brought up to midday our Judah however says that it may be said up to the fourth hour because the regular morning sacrifice may be brought up to the fourth hour and why did they say that the afternoon Tefila can be said up to the evening? Because the regular afternoon offering can be brought up to the evening, Arjuna, however, says that it can be said only up to the middle of the afternoon because the evening offering could only be brought up to the middle of the afternoon. And why did they say that for the evening tefila there is no limit because the limbs and the fat which were not consumed on the altar by the evening could be brought for the whole of the night? And why did they say that the additional tefilas could be said during the whole of the day because the additional offering could be brought during the whole of the day? Arjuna, however, said that it can be said only up to the seventh hour because the additional offering can be brought up to the seventh hour, which is the greater afternoon from six hours and a half onwards, and which is the small afternoon from nine hours and onwards. The question was raised did Arjuna refer to the middle of the former afternoon tide or the middle of the latter afternoon tide? Come and here for it has been taught Arjuna said they refer to the middle of the latter afternoon tide which is 11 hours less a quarter shall we say that this is a refutation of our Jose Bihan and our Jose Bihan and can answer I can still maintain that the patriarchs instituted the tefilas but the rabbis found a basis for them in the offerings for if you do not assume this who according to our Jose Bihan instituted the additional tefila he must hold therefore that the patriarchs instituted the tefilas and the rabbis found a basis for them in the offerings Arjuna says till the fourth hour
Past what then you say that the point mentioned is included in the until then there is the aforementioned difficulty of the first clause what difference is there between Arjuna and the rabbis do you think that this middle of the afternoon mentioned by Arjuna means the second half it means the first half and what he meant is this when does the first half of the second part of the afternoon end and the second half begin at the end of 11 hours less a quarter are not and said we also have learned Arjuna Baba testified five things that they instruct a girl minor to refuse that a woman may remarry on the evidence of one witness that her husband is dead that a cock was stoned in Jerusalem because it killed a human being that wine forty days old was poured as a drink offering on the altar and that the morning daily offering was brought at four hours this proves does it not that the point mentioned is included in the until it does our Kahana said the Halacha follows our Jose. Because we have learned in the select tractate as taught by him and concerning the regular daily offering that it was brought at four hours who is the authority for what we have learned and as the sun waxed hot it melted this was at four hours you say at four hours or is it not so but at six hours when it says in the heat of the day here we have the expression for six hours what then am I to make of as the sun waxed hot it melted at four hours whose opinion does this represent apparently neither. Our Judas nor the rabbis for if we go by our Judah up to four hours also is still morning if we go by the rabbis up to six hours is also still morning if you like I can say it represents the opinion of our Judah and if you like of the rabbis if you like I can say it represents the opinion of the rabbis scripture says morning by morning thus dividing the morning into two if you like I can say our Judah this extra morning indicates that they began gathering an hour beforehand at any rate all agree. That as the sun waxed hot it melted refers to four hours how does the text imply this our Ahabi Jacob said the text says as the sun waxed hot it melted which is the hour when the sun is hot and the shade is cool you must say at four hours the afternoon tefila till evening Arhista said to our Isaac in the other case of the morning offering our Kahana said that the Halacha follows our Judah because we have learned in the select tractate as taught by him what is the decision in this case he was silent and gave him no answer at all said Arhista let us see for ourselves seeing that Rab says the Sabbath tefila on the eve of Sabbath while it is still day we conclude that the Halacha follows our Judah on the contrary from the fact that Arhuna and the Rabbis did not pray till night time we conclude that the Halacha does no follow our Judah seeing then that it has not been stated definitely that the law follows either one or the other if one follows the one he is right and if one follows the other he is right Rab was once at the house of Jenna and he said the Sabbath tefillah on the eve of Sabbath and our Jeremiah B. Abba was praying behind Rab and Rab finished but did not interrupt the prayer of our Jeremiah three things are to be learned from this one is that a man may say the Sabbath tefillah on the eve of Sabbath the second is that a disciple may pray behind his master the third is that it is forbidden to pass in front of one praying but is that so did not our MI and RC use to pass our MI and RC use to pass outside the four cubit limit but how could our Jeremiah act by seeing that Rab Judah has said in the name of Rab a man should never pray Talmud Mos be either next to this master or behind his master and it has been taught our Eliezer says one who prays behind his master and one who gives the ordinary greeting to his master and one who returns a greeting to his master and one who joins issue with the teaching of the academy of his master and one who says something which he has not heard from his master causes the divine presence to depart from Israel. Our Jeremiah B. Abba is different because he was a disciple colleague and that is why our Jeremiah B. Abba said to Rab have you laid aside and he replied yes I have and he did not say to him has the master laid aside but had he laid aside has not our Abba related that once Rab said the Sabbath tefillah on the eve of Sabbath and he went into the bath and came out and taught us our section while it was not yet dark Rabba said he went in merely to perspire and it was before the prohibition had been issued but still is this the rule did not Abba allow our Dimi beloved to fumigate some baskets in that case there was a mistake but can such a mistake be rectified has not Abba said once on Sabbath the sky became overcast with clouds and the congregation thought that it was night time and they went into the synagogue and said the prayers for the termination of Sabbath and then the clouds. Scattered and the sun came out and they came and asked Rabbi and he said to them since they prayed they have prayed a congregation is different since we avoid troubling them as far as possible our high B. Abin said Rab used to say the Sabbath tefillah on the eve of Sabbath our Josiah said the tefillah of the outgoing of Sabbath on Sabbath when Rab said the Sabbath tefillah on the eve of Sabbath did he say sanctification over one or not come and here for our Naman said in the name of Samuel a. Man may say the tefillah of Sabbath on the eve of Sabbath and say sanctification over one and the law is as stated by him our Josiah used to say the end of Sabbath tefillah while it was yet Sabbath did he say Habdallah over one or did he not say Habdallah over one come and here for Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel a. Man may say the end of Sabbath tefillah while it is yet Sabbath and say Habdallah over one our Zara said in the name of R.C. reporting our Eliezer who had it from our hand in the Name of Rab at the side of this pillar our Ishmael son of our Jose said the Sabbath tefillah on the eve of Sabbath when Ula came he reported that it was at the side of a palm tree and not at the side of a pillar and that it was not our Ishmael son of our Jose but our Eliezer son of our Jose and that it was not the Sabbath tefillah on the eve of Sabbath but the end of Sabbath tefillah on Sabbath the evening prayer has no fixed limit what is the meaning of has no fixed limit shall I say it means that if a man wants he can say the tefillah any time in the night then let it state the time for the evening tefillah is the whole night but what in fact is the meaning of has no fixed limit it is equivalent to saying the evening tefillah is optional for Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel with regard to the evening tefillah Rab and Gamaliel says it is compulsory whereas our Joshua says it is optional Abbe says the Halacha is as stated by the one who says it is compulsory Rabbi says the Halacha follows. The one who says it is optional it is related that a certain disciple came before our Joshua and asked him is the evening tefillah compulsory or optional he replied it is optional he then presented himself before Rabban Gamaliel and asked him is the evening tefillah compulsory or optional he replied it is compulsory but he said did not our Joshua tell me that it is optional he said wait till the champions enter the Beth Hamidrash when the champions came and someone rose and inquired is the evening tefillah compulsory or optional Rabban Gamaliel replied it is compulsory said Rabban Gamaliel to the sages is there anyone who disputes this our Joshua replied to him no he said to him did they not report you to me as saying that it is optional he then went on Joshua stand up and let them testify against you or Joshua stood up and said were I alive and he the witness dead the living could contradict the dead but now that he is alive and I am alive how can the living contradict the living Rabban? Gamaliel remained sitting and expounding and our Joshua remained standing until all the people there began to shout and say to husband the churchman stop and he stopped it and said how long is he rabbing Gamaliel to go on insulting him or Joshua on New Year last year he insulted him he insulted him in the matter of the firstborn in the affair of Arzada now he insults him again come let us depose him whom shall we appoint instead we can hardly appoint our Joshua because he is one of the parties involved we can hardly appoint our Akiba because perhaps rabbing Gamaliel will bring a curse on him because he has no ancestral merit let us then appoint our Eliezer B. Ezra who is wise and rich and the tenth in descent from Ezra he is wise so that if anyone puts a question to him he will be able to answer it he is rich so that if occasion arises for paying court to Caesar he will be able to do so he is tenth in descent from Ezra so that he has ancestral merit and he rabbing Gamaliel cannot bring. A curse on him they went and said to him will your honor consent to become head of the academy he replied I will go and consult the members of my family he went and consulted his wife she said to him Talmud, Mos Birakotha perhaps they will depose you later on he replied to her there is a proper let a man use a cup of honor for one day even if it be broken the next she said to him you have no white hair he was 18 years old that day and a miracle was wrought for him and 18 rows of hair on his beard turned white that is why our Eliezer B. Ezra said behold I am about 70 years old and he did not say simply 70 years old a tan taught on that day the doorkeeper was removed and permission was given to the disciples to enter for Rabban Gamaliel had issued a proclamation saying no disciple whose character does not correspond to his exterior may
captivity of the children of Ammon set the Lord so that they have already returned to which our Joshua replied and has it not been said and I will turn the captivity of my people Israel and they have not yet returned forth with they permitted him to enter the congregation Rabban Gamaliel thereupon said this being the case I will go and apologize to our Joshua when he reached his house he saw that the walls were black he said to him from the walls of your house it is apparent that you are a Charcoal burner, he replied, alas for the generation of which you are the leader, seeing that you know nothing of the troubles of the scholars, their struggles to support and sustain themselves. He said to him, I apologize, forgive me, he paid no attention to him, do it. He said, out of respect for my father, he then became reconciled to him. They said, who will go and tell the rabbis a certain fuller said to them, I will go. Our Joshua sent a message to the Beth Hamid Rash, saying, let him who is accustomed to wear the robe where it shall he who is not accustomed to wear the robe say to him who is accustomed to wear it, take off your robe and I will put it on set our Akiba to the rabbis lock the door so that the servants of Rabban Gamaliel should not come and upset the rabbis said our Joshua I had better get up and go to them. He came and knocked at the door, he said to them, let the sprinkler son of a sprinkler sprinkle shall he who is neither a sprinkler nor the son of a sprinkler say to a sprinkler son. Of a sprinkler your water is cave water and your ashes are of an ashes said our Akiba to him our Joshua you have received your apology have we done anything except out of regard for your honor tomorrow morning you and I will wait on him they said how shall we do shall we depose him or Eliezer B. Ezra we have a rule that we may raise an object to a higher grade of sanctity but must not degrade it to a lower if we let one master preach on one Sabbath and one on the next this will cause jealousy. Let therefore Rabban Gamaliel preach three Sabbaths and our Eliezer B. Ezra one Sabbath and it is in reference to this that a master said whose Sabbath was it it was the Sabbath of our Eliezer B. Ezra and that disciple was our Simeon Biohi the time for the additional prayer is the whole day our Yohanan said and he is nevertheless called the transgressor our rabbis taught if a man had two tefilas to say one for Minha and one for Musaf he says the one for Minha and afterwards he says the one. For Musaf because the one is daily and the other is not daily our Judah says he says the Musaf one first and then he says the Minha one the former is an obligation that will soon lapse while the other is an obligation that will not lapse our Yohanan said the Halachah is that he says the Minha Tefila first and then the Musaf one when our Zerah was tired from studying he used to go and sit by the door of the school of our Nathan B. Tobi he said to himself when the rabbis pass by I will rise before them. And earn a reward our Nathan B. Tobi came out he said to him who enunciated the Halachah in the Beth Hamidrash he replied thus said our Yohanan the Halachah does not follow our Judah who said that a man first says the Musaf Tefila and then the Minha one he said to him did our Yohanan say it he replied yes he repeated it after him forty times he said to him is this the one and only thing you have learned from him or it is a new thing to you he replied it is a new thing to me because I was not. Certain whether it was not the dictum of our Joshua be Levi, our Joshua be Levi said if one says the Musaf Tefila after seven hours then according to our Judah the scripture says of him I will gather them that are destroyed Mug because of the appointed season who are of the how do you know that the word Mug here implies destruction it is as rendered by our Joseph in his Targum destruction comes upon the enemies of Israel because they put off to late the times of the appointed seasons in Jerusalem our Eliezer said if one says the morning Tefila after four hours then according to our Judah the scripture says of him I will gather them that sorrow because of the appointed season who are of the how do we know that this word Mug implies sorrow because it is written my soul melteth away for heaviness to God our Naman B. Isaac said we learn it from here her virgins are afflicted Mugoth and she herself is in bitterness Talmud Mos Birakoth Bro was once ill and did not go to Hear the lecture of our Joseph on the next day when he came Abbe tried to appease our Joseph he said to him Aruwi why did your honor not come to the lecture yesterday he replied I felt weak and was not able he said to him why did you not take some food and come he replied does not your honor hold with the dictum of Aruna for Aruna said it is forbidden to a man to taste anything until he has said the muse of Tefila he said to him your honor ought to have said the muse of Tefila privately and taken something and come he replied does not your honor hold with what Aruhanan has laid down that it is forbidden for a man to say his Tefila before the congregation says it he said to him has it not been said in regard to this this refers to when he is with the congregation and the law is neither as stated by Aruna nor by our Joshua believe it is not as stated by Aruna namely in what we have just said it is not as stated by our Joshua believe namely in what our Joshua believe said when it Time for the Minha Tefila arrives it is forbidden to a man to taste anything until he has said the Minha Tefila mission our Nihunya Bihakana used to say a prayer as he entered the Beth Hamidrash and as he left it a short prayer they said to him what sort of prayer is this he replied when I enter I pray that no offense should occur through me and when I leave I express thanks for my luck Amara our rabbis taught on entering what does a man say may it be thy will O Lord my God that no offense may occur through me and that I may not err in a matter of halachah and that my colleagues may rejoice in me and that I may not call unclean clean or clean unclean and that my colleagues may not err in a matter of halachah and that I may rejoice in them on his leaving what does he say I give thanks to thee O Lord my God that thou hast set my portion with those who sit in the Beth Hamidrash and thou hast not set my portion with those who sit in street corners for I rise early and they Rise early, but I rise early for words of Torah, and they rise early for frivolous talk. I labor, and they labor, but I labor, and receive reward, and they labor, and do not receive reward. I run, and they run, but I run to the life of the future world, and they run to the pit of destruction. Our rabbis taught when our Eliezer fell ill, his disciples went in to visit him. They said to him, Master, teach us the paths of life, so that we may through them win the life of the future world. He said to them, Be solicitous for the honor of your colleagues, and keep your children from meditation, and set them between the knees of scholars. And when you pray, know before whom you are standing, and in this way you will win the future world. When Rabbi Yohanan and Ben Zakkai fell ill, his disciples went in to visit him. When he saw them, he began to weep. His disciples said to him, Lamp of Israel, pillar of the right hand, mighty hammer, wherefore weepest thou? He replied, If I were being taken today before a human king who is here today and tomorrow in the grave whose anger if he is angry with me does not last forever who if he imprisons me does not imprison me forever and who if he puts me to death does not put me to everlasting death and whom I can persuade with words and bribe with money even so I would weep now that I am being taken before the supreme king of kings the holy one blessed be he who lives and endures forever and ever whose anger if he is angry with me is an everlasting anger who if he imprisons me imprisons me forever who if he puts me to death puts me to death forever and whom I cannot persuade with words or bribe with money nay more when there are two ways before me one leading to paradise and the other to get him and I do not know by which I shall be taken shall I not weep they said to him master bless us he said to them may it be God's will that the fear of heaven shall be upon you like the fear of flesh and blood his disciples said to him is that all he said to them if only you can attain this you can see how important this is for when a man wants to commit a transgression he says I hope no man will see me at the moment of his departure he said to them remove the vessel so that they shall not become unclean and prepare a throne for Hezekiah the king of Judah who is coming Mishnah Rabban Gamaliel says every day a man should say the 18 Benedictines are Joshua says an abbreviated 18 our Akiva says if he knows it fluently he says the original 18 and if not an abbreviated 18 our Eliezer says if a man makes his prayers a fixed task it is not a genuine supplication our Joshua says if one is traveling in a dangerous place he says a short prayer saying save O Lord thy people the remnant of Israel in every time of crisis may their requirements not be lost sight of by the blessed art thou O Lord who hearkenest to prayer if he is riding on an ass he dismounts and prays if he is unable to dismount he should turn his face towards Jerusalem and if he cannot turn his face he should concentrate his thoughts on the Holy of Holies if he is traveling in a ship or on a raft he should concentrate his thoughts on the Holy of Holies Gemara to what do these 18 benedictions correspond our Hillel the son of Samuel be Naman he said to the 18 times that David mentioned the divine name in the psalm ascribe unto the Lord O yes sons of might our Joseph said to the 18 times the
Being a man Samuel the lesser is different because he composed it, but is there not a fear that he may have recanted? Abbe said we have a tradition that a good man does not become bad, but does he not? It is not written, but when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, such a man was originally wicked, but one who was originally righteous does not do so, but is that so? Have we not learned? Believe not in thyself until the day of thy death, for lo, Yohanan the high priest officiated as high priest for eighty years, and in the end he became a man. Abbe said Yohanan is the same as Janay. Rabbe said Yohanan and Janay are different. Janay was originally wicked, and Yohanan was originally righteous. On Abbe's view, there is no difficulty, but on Rabbe's view, there is a difficulty. Rabbe can reply for one who was originally righteous, it is also possible to become a renegade. If that is the case, why did they not remove him? Samuel the lesser is different because he had. Already commenced to say it, the benediction for Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, or as some say, our Joshua be Levi. This applies only if he has not commenced to say it, but if he has commenced, he is allowed to finish to what do the seven blessings said on Sabbath correspond. Our Haleph to be Saul said to the seven voices mentioned by David commencing with on the waters to what do the nine said on New Year Muse of Tephila correspond. Isaac from Cardin and said to the nine times that Hannah mentioned. The divine name in her prayer for a master has said on New Year Sarah Rachel and Hannah were visited to what do the twenty four said on the last day correspond. Our Helbo said to the twenty four times that Solomon used the expression prayer, etc. on the occasion when he brought the ark into the Holy of Holies. If that is so, then let us say them every day. When did Solomon say them on a day of supplication? We also say them on a day of supplication. Our Joshua says in abbreviated 18 what is meant by. An abbreviated 18 rap said an abbreviated form of each blessing Samuel said give us discernment O Lord to know thy ways and circumcise our heart to fear thee and forgive us so that we may be redeemed and keep us far from our sufferings and fatten us in the pastures of thy land and gather our dispersions from the four corners of the earth and let them who err from thy prescriptions be punished and lift up thy hand against the wicked and let the righteous rejoice in the building of thy city and the establishment of the temple and in the exalting of the horn of David thy servant and the preparation of a life for the son of Jesse thy Messiah before we call mayest thou answer blessed art thou O Lord who hear canest to prayer of a curse anyone who prayed give us discernment our said in the name of Samuel a man may say give us discernment any time of the year except on the outgoing of Sabbath and of festivals because he has to say Havdalah in that graciously giveth knowledge Rabbi B. Samuel demurred to this let him he said make a fourth blessing of it by itself have we not learned our Akiba says he says it as a fourth blessing by itself our Eliezer says he says it in the thanksgiving do we follow our Akiba all the year that we should follow him now why do we not follow our Akiba the rest of the year because 18 blessings were instituted not 19 here 2 7 were instituted not 8 Marzitra demurred to this let him he said include it and give us discernment by saying O Lord our God who distinguisheth between holy and profane this is indeed a difficulty our BBB Abbe said a man may say give us discernment any time in the year except in the rainy season because he requires to make a request in the benediction of the years Marzitra demurred to this let him include it by saying and fatten us in the pastures of thy land and give dew and rain he might become confused if so by saying Havdalah in that grantiest discernment he might Equally become confused, they replied in that case, since it comes near the beginning of the Tefila, he will not become confused here as it comes in the middle of the Tefila, he will become confused. Our Ashi demurred to this, let him say it in that here, to pray for our tandem said in the name of RC, if a man made a mistake and did not mention the miracle of rain in the benediction of the resurrection of the dead, we turn him back if he forgot the request for rain in the benediction of it. Years we do not turn him back because he can say it in that here, canist unto prayer, and if he forgot Havdalah in that grantiest knowledge, we do not turn him back because he can say it later over why a mistake is different. The text above said our tandem said in the name of RC, if one made a mistake and did not mention the miracle of rain in the benediction of the resurrection, he is turned back if he forgot the request in the benediction of the years, he is not turned back because he can. Say it in that here canest unto prayer if he forgot Havdalah in that grantiest knowledge he is not turned back because he can say it later over wine an objection was raised if one made a mistake and did not mention the miracle of rain in the benediction of the resurrection he is turned back if he forgot the request in the benediction of the years he is turned back if he forgot Havdalah in that grantiest knowledge he is not turned back because he can say it later over wine there is no contradiction the one case where he is turned back refers to where he is saying it by himself the other with the congregation what is the reason why he is not turned back when he says it with the congregation because he hears it from the reader is it not if so then instead of because he can say it in who here canest unto prayer we should have because he hears it from the reader in fact in both cases he is saying it by himself and still there is no contradiction the one case refers to where he Remembers before he comes to that here canest unto prayer Talmud, Mosbirakoth be the other case where he only remembers after that here canest unto prayer Artanum said in the name of R.C. quoting our Joshua be Levi if one made a mistake and did not mention the new moon in the Abodah benediction he goes back to the Abodah if he remembered in the thanksgiving he goes back to the Abodah if he remembers in grant peace he goes back to the Abodah if he has finished he goes back to the beginning R. Papa son of Arahab Eda said in saying that if he has finished he goes back to the beginning we mean only if he has moved his feet but if he has not yet moved his feet he goes back to the Abodah he said to him from where have you that he replied I have heard it from Abba and Abba Mary had it from Rab Arnam and B. Isaac said when we say that if he has moved his feet he goes back to the beginning we mean this to apply only to one who is not accustomed to say a supplication after his tefila, but if he is accustomed to say a supplication after his tefillah, he goes back to the Abodah. Some report Arnam and B. Isaac said when we say that if he has not moved his feet, he goes back to the Abodah. We mean this to apply only to one who is accustomed to say a supplication after his tefillah. But if he is not accustomed to say a supplication after his tefillah, he goes back to the beginning. Our Eliezer says he who makes his prayer a fixed task, etc. What is meant by a fixed task? Our Jacob B. E. D. said in the name of our Ashai, anyone whose prayer is like a heavy burden on him, the rabbis say whoever does not say it in the manner of supplication, Rabbi and our Joseph both say whoever is not able to insert something fresh in it. Our Zara said I can insert something fresh, but I am afraid to do so for fear I should become confused. Abbe B. Abin and our Hannah B. Abin both said whoever does not pray at the first and last appearance of the sun for our high B. Abba said in the name of our Yohanan, it is a religious duty. To pray with the first and last appearance of the sun, our Zara further said, What text confirms this? They shall fear thee with the sun and before the moon throughout all generations in the west. They curse anyone who prays Minha with the last appearance of the sun. Why so perhaps he will miss the time? Our Joshua says he who is walking in a dangerous place says a short prayer in every time of crisis. What is time of crisis? Ibar Arhista said in the name of Marakba, even at the time when thou art filled with wrath, Ibar against them like a pregnant woman. May all their need not be overlooked by thee. Some there are who say that Arhista said in the name of Marakba, even at the time when they transgress over in the words of the Torah. May all their requirements not be overlooked by thee. Our rabbis taught one who passes through a place infested with beasts or bands of robbers says a short tefila. What is a short tefila? Our Eliezer says, Do thy will in heaven above and grant relief to. Them that fear thee below and do that which is good in thine eyes. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who hearest prayer. Our Joshua says, Hear the supplication of thy people Israel and speedily fulfill their request. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who hearest prayer. Our Eliezer, son of Arzadik, says, Hear the cry of thy people Israel and speedily fulfill their request. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who hear canest unto prayer. Others say, The needs of thy people Israel are many and their wit is small. May it be thy will, O Lord our God, to give to each one his sustenance and to each body what it lacks. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who hear canest unto prayer. Our Hunas said, The Halasha follows the other said, Elijah to Rab Judah, the brother of our Salah, the pious fall not into a passion and thou wilt not sin, drink not to excess and thou wilt not sin. And when thou goest forth on a journey, seek counsel of thy ma
and when he returns home he need not say the tefala again the short prayer does not require to be accompanied either by the first or the last three blessings and when one returns home he must say the tefala the laws that grant us discernment must be said standing a short prayer may be said either standing or journeying if one was riding on an ass etc our rabbis taught if one was riding on an ass and the time arrived for saying tefala if he has someone to hold his ass he dismounts and Praise if not he sits where he is and praise rabbi says in either case he may sit where he is and pray because otherwise he will be worrying rabbi or as some say our Joshua will be Levi said the halacha follows rabbi or rabbis taught a blind man or one who cannot tell the cardinal points should direct his heart towards his father in heaven as it says and they pray unto the Lord if one is standing outside Palestine he should turn mentally towards Eretz Israel as it says and pray unto thee towards their land if he stands in Eretz Israel he should turn mentally towards Jerusalem as it says and they pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen if he is standing in Jerusalem he should turn mentally towards the sanctuary as it says if they pray toward this house if he is standing in the sanctuary he should turn mentally towards the holy of holies as it says if they pray toward this place if he was standing in the holy of holies he should turn mentally towards the mercy seat if he was standing behind the mercy seat he should imagine himself to be in front of the mercy seat consequently if he is in the east he should turn his face to the west if in the west he should turn his face to the east if in the south he should turn his face to the north if in the north he should turn his face to the south in this way all Israel will be turning their hearts towards one place our or as some say our Abin has said what text confirms this the neck is like the tower of David built it with turrets held off the elevation tell towards which all mouths Pahiyoth turned when Samuel's father and Levi were about to set out on a journey they said the Tefilah before dawn and when the time came to recite the Shema they said it whose authority did they follow that of the following ten as it has been taught if a man got up early to go on a journey they bring him before dawn a shofar and he blows a lulab and he shakes it a Megillah and he reads it and when the time arrives for Reciting the Shema he recites it if he rose early in order to take his place in a coach or in a ship he says the Tefillah and when the time arrives for reciting he Shema he recites it our Simeon B. Eliezer says in either case he recites the Shema and then says the Tefillah in order that he may say the Jeola next to the Tefillah what is the ground of the difference between the two authorities one held that it is more important to say the Tefillah standing the other that it is more important to say Jeola next to Tefillah Mirmar and Marzitra used to collect ten persons on the Sabbath before a festival and say the Tefillah and then they went out and delivered their lectures Arashi used to say the Tefillah while still with the congregation sitting and when he returned home he used to say it again standing the rabbi said to him why does not the master do as Mirmar and Marzitra did he replied that is a troublesome business then let the master do like the father of Samuel and Levi. He replied, I have not seen any of the rabbis who were my seniors doing thus mission. Our Eliezer B. Ezra says the music prayers are to be said only with the local congregation. The rabbis, however, say whether with or without the congregation, our Judah said in his name, wherever there is a congregation, an individual is exempt from saying the music prayer. Tomorrow, our Judah says the same thing as the first tanna. They differ on the case of an individual living in a place where there is no congregation. The first tanna holds that he is exempt, while our Judah holds that he is not exempt. Our Huna B. Hanan said in the name of our high B. Rabbi Halacha follows our Judah, citing our Eliezer B. Ezra said, Our high B. Abin to him, you are quite right, for Samuel said, All my life I have never said the music prayer alone. Talmud, Masbirko B. and Nihardia, except on that day when the king's forces came to the town and they disturbed the rabbis and they did not say the tefillah and I prayed by myself being an Individual where there was no congregation, our hand of the Bible teacher sat before our Janae and said the Halachah is as stated by our Judah in the name of our Eliezer B. Ezra. He said to him, Go and give your Bible reading outside the Halachah is not as stated by our Judah, citing our Eliezer B. Ezra. Our Yohanan said, I have seen our Janae pray privately and then pray again. Our Jeremiah said to our Zerah, Perhaps the first time he was not attending to what he said, and the second time he did attend, he said to him, See what a great man it is who testifies concerning him. Although there were thirteen synagogues in Tiberias, RMI and RC prayed only between the pillars, the place where they studied it has been stated. Our Isaac B. of Demi said in the name of our Master, the Halachah is as stated by our Judah in the name of our Eliezer B. Ezra. Our High B. Abba prayed once and then prayed again, said our Zerah to him, Why does the Master act thus? Shall I say it is because the Master was not attending, has not our Eliezer. Said a man should always take stock of himself if he can concentrate his attention he should say the tefillah but if not he should not say it or is it that the master did not remember that it is new moon but has it not been taught if a man forgot and did not mention the new moon in the evening tefillah he is not made to repeat because he can say it in the morning prayer if he forgot in the morning prayer he is not made to repeat because he can say it in the music if he forgot in music he is not made to repeat because he can say it in minha he said to him has not a gloss been added to this Aryohan and says this applies only to prayer said in a congregation what interval should be left between one tefillah and another Aruna and Arhista gave different answers one said long enough for him to fall into a suppliant frame of mind the other said long enough to fall into an interceding frame of mind the one who says a suppliant frame of mind quotes the text and I supplicated waf Hanan. The Lord, the one who says an interceding frame of mind, quotes the text, and Moses interceded W. A. L. R. A. and said in the name of Rab, if one forgot and made no mention of new moon in the evening prayer, he is not made to repeat because the Beth didn't sanctify the new moon only by day. Amimar said this rule of Rab seems right in a full month, but in a defective month he is made to repeat. Said Arashi to Amimar, let us see Rab gave a reason, so what does it matter whether it is full or defective? In fact, there is no difference. Chapter B. Mishnah 1 should not stand up to say Tefillah save in a reverent frame of mind. The pious men of old used to wait an hour before praying in order that they might concentrate their thoughts upon their father in heaven. Even if a king greets him while praying, he should not answer him. Even if a snake is wound around his heel, he should not break off. Amimar, what is the scriptural source of this rule? Our Eliezer said scripture says, and she was in bitterness of soul. But how can you learn from this? Perhaps Hannah was different because she was exceptionally bitter at heart. Rather said our Jose, son of our Hannah, we learn it from here. But as for me, in the abundance of thy loving kindness, will I come into thy house? I will bow down toward thy holy temple in the fear of thee. But how can we learn from this? Perhaps David was different because he was exceptionally self tormenting in prayer. Rather said our Joshua, be Levi, it is from here. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Read not Hadrath beauty, but heard of trembling. But how can you learn from here? Perhaps I can after all say that the word Hadrath is to be taken literally after the manner of Rab Judah, who used to dress himself up before he prayed. Rather said our Naman, be Isaac, we learn it from here. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. What is meant by rejoice with trembling? Our Adabi Matina said in the name of Rab, in the place where there is rejoicing, there should also be trembling. Abbe was sitting before Rabbi who observed that he seemed very merry he said it is written and rejoice with trembling he replied I am putting on tefillin our Jeremiah was sitting before our Zerah who saw that he seemed very merry he said to him it is written in all sorrow there is prophet he replied I am wearing tefillin Mar the son of Rabbi made a marriage feast for his son he saw that the rabbis were growing very merry Talmud Mos Birakotha so he brought a precious cup worth 400 Zeus and broke it before them and they became serious our Ashi made a marriage feast for his son he saw that the rabbis were growing very merry so he brought a cup of white crystal and broke it before them and they became serious the rabbis said to our Hamnon Azudi at the wedding of Mar the son of Rabbi please sing us something he said to them alas for us that we are to die they said to him what shall we respond after you he said to them where is the Torah and where is the Mizwa that will shield as our Yohanan said in the name of our Simeon Biohe, it is forbidden to a man to fill his mouth with laughter in this world because it says, Then will our mouth be filled with laughter and our tongue with singing? When will that be at the time when they shall say among the nations, The Lord hath done great things with these? It was related of Reshlakish that he never again filled his
Mari the grandson of Arhuna, the son of Arjeremi B. Abba learned before taking leave of his fellow a man should always finish with a matter of Halacha so that he should remember him thereby so we find that Arkahana escorted Arshimai B. Ashi from Pun to Bizinyath of Babylon and when he arrived there he said to him Sir do people really say that these palm trees of Babylon are from the time of Adam he replied you have reminded me of the saying of Arhose son of Arhanana for Arhose son of Arhanana. Said what is meant by the verse through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt if no one passed how could anyone dwell it is to teach you that any land which Adam decreed should be inhabited is inhabited and any land which Adam decreed should not be inhabited is not inhabited our Mordecai escorted our Shimai B. Abba from Hagronia to be Kfi or as some report to be Dura our rabbis taught when a man prays he should direct his heart to heaven Abbas all says a reminder of this is the text thou wilt direct their heart thou wilt cause thine ear to attend it has been taught such was the custom of our Akiba when he prayed with the congregation he used to cut it short and finish in order not to inconvenience the congregation but when he prayed by himself a man would leave him in one corner and find him later in another on account of his many genuflections and prostrations our high B. Abba said a man should always pray in a house with windows as it says now his windows were open I might say that a man should pray the whole day it has already been expressly stated by the hand of Daniel and three times etc but perhaps this practice began only when he went into captivity it is already said as he did aforetime I might say that a man may pray turning in any direction he wishes therefore the text states toward Jerusalem I might say that he may combine all three tefillahs in one it has already been clearly stated by David as is written evening and morning and at noonday I might say that he should let his voice be heard in praying it has already been clearly stated by Hannah as is said but her voice could not be heard I might say that a man should first ask for his own requirements and then say the tefillah it has been clearly stated by Solomon as is said to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer cry here means tefillah prayer means private request a private request is not made after true and firm but after the tefillah even the order of confession of the day of atonement may be said it has also been stated our high B. Ashi said in the name of Rab although it was laid down that a man asks for his requirements and that here canest unto prayer if he wants to say something after his prayer even something like the order of confession on the day of atonement he may do so our Hamdana said how many most important laws can be learned from these verses relating to Hannah now Hannah she spoke in her heart from this we learned that one who prays must direct his heart only her lips moved from this we learned that he who prays must frame the words distinctly with his lips but her voice could not be heard from this it is forbidden to raise one's voice in the tefillah therefore Eli thought she had been drunken from this that a drunken person is forbidden to say the tefillah and Eli said unto her how long wilt thou be drunken etc our Eliezer said from this we learned that one who sees in his neighbor Talmud Mosbirakoth be something unseemly must reprove him and Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, Ola, or as some say, our Jose B. Hannah said, She said to him, Thou art no lord in this matter, nor does the Holy Spirit rest on thee that thou suspectest me of this thing. Some say, She said to him, Thou art no lord, meaning the Shechanah and the Holy Spirit is not with you, and that you take the harsher and not the more lenient view of my conduct. Dost thou not know that I am a woman of sorrowful spirit? I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, our Eliezer said from. This we learn that one who is suspected wrongfully must clear himself. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. A man who says the Tefillah when drunk is like one who serves idols. It is written here, Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. And it is written elsewhere, Certain sons of Belial have gone forth from the midst of thee, just as there the term is used in connection with idolatry. So here then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, our Eliezer said from this we learn that one who suspects his neighbor of a fault which he has not committed must beg his pardon name or he must bless him as it says and the God of Israel grant thy petition and she vowed a vow and said O Lord of Zebaoth hosts our Eliezer said from the day that God created his world there was no man called the Holy One blessed be he Zebaoth host until Hannah came and called him Zebaoth said Hannah before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe of all the hosts and hosts that thou hast created in thy world is it so hard in thy eyes to give me one son a parable to what is this matter like to a king who made a feast for his servants and a poor man came and stood by the door and said to them give me a bite and no one took any notice of him so he forced his way into the presence of the king and said to him your majesty out of all the feast which thou hast made is it so hard in thine eyes to give me one bite if thou wilt indeed look our Eliezer said Hannah said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe if thou wilt look it is well and if thou wilt not look I will go and shut myself up with someone else in the knowledge of my husband Elkanah and as I shall have been alone they will make me drink the water of the suspected wife and thou canst not falsify thy law which says she shall be cleared and shall conceive seed now this would be effective on the view of him who says that if the woman was barren she is visited but on the view of him who says that if she bore with pain she bears with ease if she bore females she now bears males if she bore swarthy children she now bears fair ones if she bore short ones she now bears tall ones what can be said as it has been taught she shall be cleared at shall conceive seed this teaches that if she was barren she is visited so our Ishmael said Kay to him if that is so all barren women will go and shut themselves in with someone and she who has not misconducted herself will be visited no it teaches that if she Formerly bore with pain she now bears with ease if she bore short children she now bears tall ones if she bore swarthy ones she now bears fair ones if she was destined to bear one she will now bear two what then is the force of if thou wilt indeed look the Torah used an ordinary form of expression if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and not forget thy handmaid but will give unto thy handmaid etc our Jose son of our Hannah said why these three handmaids Hannah said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe thou hast created in woman three criteria bitka of death some say three armor joints tipka of death namely Nidahel and the kindling of the light on Sabbath have I transgressed in any of them but will give unto thy handmaid a man child what is meant by a man child Rab said a man among men Samuel said seed that will anoint two men namely Saul and David are Yohanan said seed that will be equal to two men namely Moses and Aaron is it Says Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among them that call upon his name the rabbis say see that will be merged among men when Ardimi came from Palestine he explained this to me neither too tall nor too short neither too thin nor too corpulent neither too pale nor too red neither over clever nor stupid I am the woman that stood by the ear our Joshua believe I said from this we learned that it is forbidden to sit within four cubits of one saying tefillah for this child I prayed are Eliezer said Samuel was guilty of giving a decision in the presence of his teacher for it says and when the bullock was slain the child was brought to Eli because the bullock was slain did they bring the child to Eli what it means is this Eli said to them call a priest and let him come and kill the animal when Samuel saw them looking for a priest to kill it he said to them why do you go looking for a priest to kill it the Shechita may be performed by a layman they brought him to Eli who Ask him how do you know this he replied is it written the priest shall kill it is written the priest shall present the blood the office of the priest begins with the receiving of the blood which shows that Shechita may be performed by a layman he said to him you have spoken very well but all the same you are guilty of giving a decision in the presence of your teacher and whoever gives a decision in the presence of his teacher is liable to the death penalty thereupon Hannah came and cried before him I am the woman that stood by the ear etc he said to her let me punish him and I will pray to God and he will give you a better one than this she then said to him for this child I prayed now Hannah she spoke in her heart our Eliezer said in the name of our Jose Bezimra she spoke concerning her heart she said before him sovereign of the universe among all the things that thou hast created in a woman thou hast not created one without a purpose eyes to see ears to hear a nose to smell a Mouth to speak, hands to do work, legs to walk with breasts to give suck. These breasts that thou hast put on my heart are they not to give suck? Give me a son so that I may suckle with them. Our Eliezer also said in the name of our Jose B. Zimmer, if one keeps a fast on Sabbath, a decree of seventy years standing against him is annulled. Yet all the same he is punished for neglecting to make the Sabbath a delight. What is his remedy? Our Naman B. Isaac said, let him keep another fast to atone for this one.
basket of straw but over a basket of flesh are said it is like the case of a man who had a lean but large limb cow he gave it lupins to eat and it commenced to kick him he said to it what led you to kick me except the lupins that I fed you with our high bee said it is like the case of a man who had a son he bathed him and anointed him and gave him plenty to eat and drink and hung a purse around his neck and set him down at the door of the body house how could the boy help sinning Araha? The son of Arunah said in the name of Arshis hate this bears out the popular saying a full stomach is a bad sort as it says when they were fed they became full they were filled and their heart was exalted therefore they have forgotten me Arunah and learned it from here then thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord the rabbis from here and they shall have eaten their fill and wax and fat and turned unto other gods or if you prefer I can say from here but Jeshurun wax fat and kicked our Samuel be. Namani said in the name of our Jonathan whence do we know that the Holy One blessed be he in the end gave Moses right because it says and multiplied unto her silver and gold which they used for Baal and the Lord spoke unto Moses go get thee down what is meant by go get thee down our Eliezer said the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses Moses descend from thy greatness have I at all given to thee greatness save for the sake of Israel and now Israel have sinned and why do I want thee straightway? Moses became powerless and he had no strength to speak when however God said let me alone that I may destroy them Moses said to himself this depends upon me and straightway he stood up and prayed vigorously and begged for mercy it was like the case of a king who became angry with his son and began beating him severely his friend was sitting before him but was afraid to say a word until the king said were it not for my friend here who is sitting before me I would kill you he said to himself this depends on me and immediately he stood up and rescued him now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation Arabah said were it not explicitly written it would be impossible to say such a thing as teaches that Moses took hold of the Holy One blessed be he like a man who seizes his fellow by his garment and said before him sovereign of the universe I will not let thee go until thou forgivest and pardonest them and I will make of thee a great nation etc our Eliezer said Moses said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe seeing that a stool with three legs cannot stand before thee in the hour of thy wrath how much less a stool with one leg and moreover I am ashamed before my ancestors who will now say see what a leader he has set over them he sought greatness for himself but he did not seek mercy for them and Moses besought W A L the Lord his God our Eliezer said this teaches that Moses stood in prayer before the Holy One blessed be he until he so to speak wearied him he Elon said until he remitted his vow for him it is written here W A L and it is written there in connection with vows he shall not break Yahel his word and a master has said he himself cannot break but others may break for him Samuel says it teaches that he risked his life for them as it says and if not blot me I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written said in it. Name of our Isaac it teaches that he caused the attribute of mercy to rest Hela on them the rabbi say it teaches that Moses said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe it is a profanation Holland for thee to do this thing and Moses besought the Lord it has been taught our Eliezer the great says this teaches that Moses stood praying before the Holy One blessed be he until an Ahilu seized him what is Ahilu our Eliezer says a fire in the bones what is a fire in the bones? Abbe said a kind of fever remember Abraham Isaac and Israel thy servants to whom thou didst swear by thyself what is the force of by thyself our Eliezer said Moses said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe hadst thou sworn to them by the heaven and the earth I would have said just as the heaven and earth can pass away so can thy oath pass away now however thou hast sworn to them by thy great name just as thy great name endures forever and ever so thy oath is established. Forever and ever, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of, etc., that I have spoken of, it should be that thou hast spoken of. Our Eliezer said, Up to this point, the text records the words of the disciple. From this point, the words of the master are Samuel B. Namani, however, said, Both are the words of the disciple. Only Moses spoke thus before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, the things which thou didst tell me to go. And tell Israel in thy name, I did go and tell them in thy name. Now, what am I to say to them? Because the Lord was not able, yet go, it should be a call. Our Eliezer said, Moses said, Before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, now the nations of the world will say, He has grown feeble like a female, and he is not able to deliver, said the Holy One, Blessed be he to Moses, have they not already seen the wonders and miracles I performed for them by the Red Sea? He replied, Sovereign of it. Universe they can still say he could stand up against one king he cannot stand up against thirty are Yohan and said how do we know that in the end the Holy One blessed be he gave Moses right because it says and the Lord said I have pardoned according to thy word it was taught in the school of our Ishmael according to thy word the nations of the world will one day say happy is the disciple to whom the master gives right but in very deed as I live Rabbi said in the name of our Isaac this teaches that the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses Moses you have revived me with your words are some expounded a man should always first recount the praise of the Holy One blessed be he and then pray once do we know this from Moses for it is written and I besought the Lord at that time and it goes on O Lord God thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy strong hand for what God is there in heaven and earth who can do according to thy works and according to thy mighty acts and afterwards is Written, let me go over, I pray thee, and see the good land, etc. And Imanic deeds, charity, offering, priest, fast, lock, iron, Talmud, Moss, Birakot, B. R. Eliezer said, Prayer is more efficacious even than good deeds, for there was no one greater in good deeds than Moses our master, and yet he was answered only after prayer, as it says, Speak no more unto me, and immediately afterwards get thee up into the top of Pisgah. R. Eliezer also said, Fasting is more efficacious than charity, what is the reason one is? Performed with a man's money, the other with his body. R. Eliezer also said, Prayer is more efficacious than offerings, as it says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? And this is followed by, And when yes, spread forth your hands, are your hand, and said, A priest who has committed manslaughter should not lift up his hands to say the priestly benediction, since it says in this context, Your hands are full of blood. R. Eliezer also said, From the day on which the temple was destroyed, it Gates of prayer have been closed, as it says, yet when I cry and call for help, he shut it out my prayer. But though the gates of prayer are closed, the gates of weeping are not closed, as it says, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Keep not silence at my tears. Rabbi did not order a fast on a cloudy day, because it says, Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud, so that no prayer can pass through. Our Eliezer also said, Since the day that the temple was destroyed, a wall of iron has intervened between Israel and their father in heaven, as it says, And take thou unto thee an iron griddle, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city. Our Hanin said in the name of our Hanan, If one prays long, his prayer does not pass unheeded. Whence do we know this from Moses, our master? For it says, And I prayed unto the Lord, and it is written afterwards, and the Lord hearkened unto me the time also. But is that so? Has not our high be said in the name of our Yohan, and if one prays long and looks for the fulfillment of his prayer in the end he will have vexation of heart as it says hope deferred make the heart sick what is his remedy let him study the Torah as it says but desire fulfilled is a tree of life and the tree of life is not but the Torah as it says she is a tree of life to them that lay hold under there is no contradiction one statement speaks of a man who prays long and looks for the fulfillment of his prayer the other of one who prays long without looking for the fulfillment of his prayer our son of our said if a man sees that he prays and is not answered he should pray again as it says wait for the Lord be strong and let thy heart take courage yet wait thou for the Lord our rabbis taught four things required to be done with energy namely study of the Torah good deeds praying and one's worldly occupation whence do we know this of Torah and good deeds because it says only be strong and very courageous to observe to do according to all the law be strong in Torah and be courageous in good deeds once of prayer because it says wait for the Lord be strong and let thy heart take courage and wait thou for the Lord once of worldly occupation because it says be of good courage and let us prove strong for our people but Zion said the Lord hath forsaken me and the Lord hath forgotten me is not forsaken the same as forgotten Rush Lakish said the community of Israel said before the Holy One
Kaf and yet the I will not forget thee. This refers to their conduct at Sinai. The pious men of old used to wait an hour on what is this based. Our Joshua B. Levi said on the text, Happy are they that dwell in thy house. Our Joshua B. Levi also said, One who says the Tefila should also wait an hour after his prayer, as it says, Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall sit in thy presence. It has been taught similarly, one who says the Tefila should wait an hour before his prayer, and an hour after his prayer. Whence do we know that he should wait before his prayer? Because it says, Happy are they that dwell in thy house. Whence after his prayer? Because it says, Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Our rabbis taught the pious men of old used to wait for an hour and pray for an hour and then wait again for an hour. But seeing that they spend nine hours a day over prayer, how is their knowledge of Torah preserved? And how is their work done? The answer is that because they are pious, their Torah is preserved and their work is blessed. Even if a king greets him, he should not answer him. Or Joseph said this was meant to apply only to Jewish kings, but for a king of another people, he may interrupt. An objection was raised if one was saying Tefila and he saw a robber coming towards him or a carriage coming towards him, he should not break off but curtail it and clear off. There is no contradiction where it is possible for him to curtail, he should curtail, otherwise he should break off. Our rabbis taught it is related that once when a certain pious man was praying by the roadside, an officer came by and greeted him and he did not return his greeting, so he waited for him till he had finished his prayer. When he had finished his prayer, he said to him, Fool, is it not written in your law? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, and it is also written, Take care therefore good heed unto your souls. When I greeted you, why did you not return my greeting? If I had cut off your head with my sword, who would have demanded satisfaction for your blood from me? He replied to him, Be patient, and I will explain to you. If he went on, you had been standing before an earthly king, and your friend had come and given you greeting, would you Talmud, Masbirko, have returned it? No, he replied, and if you had returned his greeting, what would they have done to you? They would have cut off my head with it. Sword, he replied, He then said to him, Have we not here then a fortiori argument? If you would have behaved in this way when standing before an earthly king who is here today and tomorrow in the grave, how much more so I when standing before the supreme king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he who endures for all eternity? Forthwith the officer accepted his explanation, and the pious man returned to his home in peace, even if a snake is wound around his foot, he should not break off our she's hate said. This applies only in the case of a serpent, but if it is a scorpion, he breaks off. An objection was raised if a man fell into a den of lions and was not seen again. One cannot testify concerning him that he is dead, but if he fell into a trench full of serpents or scorpions, one can testify concerning him that he is dead. The case there is different because on account of his crushing them and falling, they turn and bite him. Or Isaac said, if he sees oxen coming towards him, he may break off. For our Ashai taught one should remove from a tam ox fifty cubits and from a muad ox out of sight. It was taught in the name of our Mayor. If an ox's head is in a fodder basket, go up to a roof and kick the ladder away. Samuel said, this applies only to a black ox and in the month of Nisan, because then Satan is dancing between his horns. Our rabbis taught in a certain place there was once a lizard which used to injure people. They came and told our Hannah Bidosa. He said to them, show me its hole. They showed him. It's whole and he put his heel over the hole and the lizard came out and bit him and it died. He put it on his shoulder and brought it to the Beth Hamidrash and said to them, See my sons, it is not the lizard that kills, it is sin that kills. On that occasion they said, Woe to the man whom a lizard meets, but woe to the lizard which our hand of Abidosa meets. Mission of the miracle of the rainfall is mentioned in the benediction of the resurrection and the petition for rain in the benediction of the year's end. Havdalah in that graciously grant test knowledge our Akiba says he says it as a fourth blessing by itself. Our Eliezer says it is said in the thanksgiving benediction Gemara the miracle of the rainfall etc. What is the reason our Joseph said because it is put on a level with the resurrection of the dead therefore it was inserted in the benediction of the resurrection the petition for rain in the benediction of the years. What is the reason our Joseph said because the petition refers to sustenance. Therefore it was inserted in the benediction of sustenance Havdalah in that graciously grant test knowledge. What is the reason our Joseph said because it is a kind of wisdom it was inserted in the benediction of wisdom the rabbis however say because the reference is to a weekday therefore it was inserted in the weekday blessing RMI said great is knowledge since it was placed at the beginning of the weekday blessings RMI also said great is knowledge since it was placed between two names as it says for a god of knowledge is the Lord and if one has not knowledge it is forbidden to have mercy on him as it says for it is a people of no understanding therefore he that made them will have no compassion upon them our Eliezer said great is the sanctuary since it has been placed between two names as it says thou hast made O Lord the sanctuary O Lord our Eliezer also said whenever there is in a man knowledge it is as if the sanctuary had been built in his days for knowledge is set between two names and the sanctuary is set between two names are ahakarai not to this according to this he said great is vengeance since it has been set between two names as it says god of vengeance O Lord he replied that is so that is to say it is great in its proper sphere and this accords with what Ola said why two vengeance is here one for good and one for ill for good as it is written he shined forth from Mount Perrin for ill as it is written god of vengeance O Lord god of vengeance shine forth our Akiba says he says it is a fourth blessing etc. Our Shaman B. Abba said to our Yohanan let us see it was the men of the great synagogue who instituted for Israel blessings and prayer sanctifications and Havdalahs let us see where they inserted them. He replied at first they inserted it the Havdalah in the Tefila when the Israel became richer they instituted that it should be said over the cup of wine when they became poor again they again inserted it in the Tefila and they said that one who has said Havdalah in the Tefila must say it again over the cup of wine it has also been stated our high B. Abba said in the name of our Yohanan the men of the great synagogue instituted for Israel blessings and prayer sanctifications and Havdalahs at first they inserted the Havdalah in the Tefila when the Israel became richer they instituted that it should be said over the cup of wine when they became poor again they inserted it in the Tefila and they said that one who says Havdalah in the Tefila must also say it over the cup of wine. It has also been stated, Rabbi and our Joseph both say one who has said Havdalah in the Tefila must also say it over the cup of wine. Said Rabbi, we can bring an objection against this ruling from the following: If a man forgot and did not mention the miracle of the rain in the resurrection blessing or petition for rain in the blessing of the years, he is made to repeat the Tefila. If, however, he forgot Havdalah in that graciously granted knowledge, he is not made to repeat because he can say it over the cup of wine. Do not read because he can say it over the cup of wine, but read because he says it over the cup of wine. It has also been stated, our Benjamin B. Jephet said, our Jose asked, our Yohanan inside and some report, our Simeon B. Jacob from Tyre asked, our Yohanan. But I have heard that one who has said Havdalah in the Tefila says it over the cup of wine, or is it not so? He replied to him, he must say it over the. Cup of wine. The question was raised: If one has said Havdalah over the cup of wine, need he say it again in the Tefila or not? B. Isaac replied: We learn the answer of Forshiori from the case of Tefila. The essential place of the Havdalah is in the Tefila, and yet it was laid down that one who has said it in the Tefila must say it also over the cup of wine. Does it not then stand to reason that if he has said it over the cup of wine, which is not its essential place, he must say it again in the Tefila? Or a higher recited in the presence of our Hainan, he who says Havdalah in the Tefila is more praiseworthy than he who says it over the cup of wine. And if he says it in both, may blessings rest on his head. The statement contains a contradiction. It says that he who says Havdalah in the Tefila is more praiseworthy than he who says it over the cup of wine, which would show that to say it in Tefila alone is sufficient. And again, it teaches. And if he says it in both, may. Blessings rest on his head, but since he has said it in one, he is quit. The second is a blessing which is not necessary. And Rabbah, or as some say, Reshlakish, or again, as some say, both Reshlakish and Aryohanan have said, Whoever says a blessing which is not necessary transgresses the command of Thou shalt not take God's name in vain. Rather, read thus, if he has said Havdalah in one and not in the other, blessings shall rest upon his head. Are his dog inquired of Arshis hate if he
Agree with Arlizer R. Hibi Abba said this appears correct. Arzara said choose the statement of R. Hibi Abba for he is very accurate in repeating the statements of his teacher like Rehobab Pamadai the Rehobab said in the name of Rabbi Judah the Temple Mount was a double stoa stoa within a stoa. Arjosef said I know neither one nor the other but I only know that Rab and Samuel instituted for us a precious pearl in Babylon and thou didst make known unto us O Lord our God thy righteous judgments and didst teach us to do the statutes that thou hast willed and hast made us inherit seasons of gladness and festivals of free will offering and didst transmit to us the holiness of Sabbath and the glory of the appointed season and the celebration of the festival thou hast divided between the holiness of Sabbath and the holiness of the festival and hast sanctified the seventh day above the six working days thou hast separated and sanctified thy people Israel with thy holiness and thou Hast given us, etc. A mission, if one in praying says, May thy mercies extend to a bird's nest, be thy name mentioned for well doing, or we give thanks, we give thanks. He is silenced tomorrow, we understand why he is silenced. If he says, We give thanks, we give thanks, because he seems to be acknowledging two powers. Also, if he says, Be thy name mentioned for well doing, because this implies for the good only and not for the bad, and we have learned a man must bless God for the evil as he blesses him for the good. But what is the reason for silencing him if he says, Thy mercies extend to the bird's nest? Two Amram in the West are Jose B. Avin and are Jose B. Z. But to give different answers, one says it is because he creates jealousy among God's creatures, the other because he presents the measures taken by the Holy One. Blessed be he as springing from compassion, whereas they are but decrees a certain reader went down before the ark in the presence of Rabbah and said, Thou hast shown mercy to the bird's nest. Show thou pity and mercy to us, said Rabbah. How well the student knows how to placate his master, said Abbe to him. But we have learned he is silenced. Rabbah too acted thus only to test Abbe. A certain reader went down in the presence of Arhana and said, O God, the great, mighty, terrible, majestic, powerful, awful, strong, fearless, sure, and honored. He waited till he had finished, and when he had finished, he said to him, Have you concluded all the praise of your master? Why do we want all this even? With these three that we do say, had not Moses our master mentioned them in the law, and had not the men of the great synagogue come and inserted them in the Tefilah, we should not have been able to mention them. And you say all these and still go on. It is as if an earthly king had a million denarii of gold, and someone praised him as possessing silver ones. Would it not be an insult to him? Arhana further said, Everything is in the hand of heaven except the fear of heaven, as it says, and now Israel. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear is the fear of heaven such a little thing has not our Hananah said in the name our Simeon Behoi the Holy One blessed be he has in his treasury not except the store of the fear of heaven as it says the fear of the Lord is his treasury yes for Moses it was a small thing as our Hananah said to illustrate by a parable if a man is asked for a big article and he has it it seems like a small article to him if he is asked for a small article and he does not possess it it seems like a big article to him we give thanks we give thanks he is silenced Arzara said to say here here in the Shema is like saying we give thanks we give thanks an objection was raised he who recites the Shema and repeats it is reprehensible he is reprehensible but we do not silence him there is no contradiction in the one case he repeats each word as he says it in the other each sentence said our Papa to Abbe, but perhaps he does this because at first he was not Attending to what he said and the second time he does attend he replied Talmud, Mas Birakotha can one behave familiarly with heaven if he did not recite with attention at first we hit him with a smith's hammer until he does attend Mishnah if one says let the good blessed be this is a path of heresy if one was passing before the ark and made a mistake another should pass in his place and at such a moment one may not refuse where should he commence at the beginning of the benediction in which the other went wrong the reader should not respond amen after the benedictines of the priests because this might confuse him if there is no priest there except himself he should not raise his hands in priestly benediction but if he is confident that he can raise his hands and go back to his place in his prayer he is permitted to do so Gamar our rabbis taught if one is asked to pass before the ark he ought to refuse and if he does not refuse he resembles a dish without salt but if he Persists too much in refusing, he resembles a dish which is oversalted. How should he act? The first time he should refuse, the second time he should hesitate, the third time he should stretch out his legs and go down. Our rabbis taught there are three things of which one may easily have too much, while a little is good, namely yeast, salt, and refusal. Arhuna said, if one made a mistake in the first three of the Tefila blessings, he goes back to the beginning. If in the middle blessings, he goes back to thou graciously grantest knowledge. If in the last blessings, he goes back to the Abogar. See, however, says that in the middle ones the order need not be observed. Arshis hate sided in objection. Where should he commence at the beginning of the benediction in which the other went wrong? This is a refutation of Arhuna. Is it not Arhuna? Can reply the middle blessings are all one. Rab Judah said a man should never petition for his requirements either in the first three benedictions or in the last three. But in the middle ones for our Hannah said in the first ones he resembles a servant who is addressing a eulogy to his master in the middle ones he resembles a servant who is requesting the largest from his master in the last ones he resembles a servant who has received the largest from his master and takes his leave our rabbis taught once a certain disciple went down before the ark in the presence of our Eliezer and he spanned out the prayer to a great length his disciple said to him master how long winded this fellow is he replied to them is he drawing it out any more than our master Moses of whom it is written the forty days and the forty nights that I fell down another time it happened that a certain disciple went down before the ark in the presence of our Eliezer and he cut the prayer very short his disciple said to him how concise this fellow is he replied to them is he any more concise than our master Moses who prayed as it is written heal her now O God I beseech thee our Jacob Said in the name of Arhistah, if one prays on behalf of his fellow, he need not mention his name since it says, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And he did not mention the name of Miriam. Our rabbis taught these are the benedictions in saying which one bows in the Tefilah, the benediction of the patriarchs beginning and end, and the thanksgiving beginning and end. If one wants to bow down at the end of each benediction and at the beginning of each benediction, he is instructed not to do so, our Simeon. Peep as he said in the name of our Joshua, be by reporting Bar an ordinary person bows as we have mentioned Talmud, Mas be a high priest at the end of each benediction, a king at the beginning of each benediction, and at the end of each benediction, our Isaac be Naman, he said it was explained to me by our Joshua, be that an ordinary person does as we have mentioned, a high priest bows at the beginning of each blessing, and a king once he has knelt down does not rise again until the end of. The Tefila, as it says, and it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees, Kita bowing is upon the face, as it says, and Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground, carry on kneeling is upon the knees, as it says, from kneeling on his knees, prostration is spreading out of hands and feet, as it says, shall I and thy mother and thy brethren come to prostrate ourselves before thee on the ground, are high the son of Ar. Who not said, I have observed Abbe and Rabba bending to one side, one buried the taught to kneel in the thanksgiving benediction is praiseworthy, while another taught it is reprehensible, there is no contradiction, one speaks of the beginning, the other of the end, Rabba knelt in the thanksgiving at the beginning, and at the end, the rabbi said to him, Why does your honor act thus? He replied to them, I have seen Arnam kneeling, and I have seen Arshis hate doing thus, but it has been taught to kneel in the Thanksgiving is reprehensible that refers to the Thanksgiving in hell but it has been taught to kneel in the Thanksgiving and in the Thanksgiving of hell is reprehensible the former statement refers to the Thanksgiving in the grace after meals mission if one makes a mistake in his tefala it is a bad sign for him and if he is a reader of the congregation it is a bad sign for those who have commissioned him because a man's agent is equivalent to himself it was related of Arhan of Bendosa that he used to pray for the sick and say this one will die this one will live they said to him how do you know he replied if my prayer comes out fluently I know that he is accepted but if not then I know that he is rejected Gemara in which blessing is a mistake a bad sign our high said in the name of our Safra who had it from a member of the school of Rabbi in the blessing of the patriarch some attach the statement to the following when one says the tefala he must say all the blessings Attentively, and if he
Penitent stand even the holy righteous cannot stand as it says peace peace to him that was far and to him that is near to him that was far first and then to him that is near are you hand however said what is meant by far one who from the beginning was far from transgression and what is meant by near that he was once near to transgression and now has gone far from it what is the meaning of I have not seen our Joshua believe I said this is the one which has been preserved in its grapes from the six days of creation our Samuel Binamon he said this is Eden which has never been seen by the eye of any creature perhaps you will say where then was Adam he was in the garden perhaps you will say the garden and Eden are the same not so for the text says and a river went out of Eden to water the garden the garden is one thing and Eden is another our rabbis taught once the son of our Gamaliel fell ill he sent two scholars to our hand of Abidosa to ask him to pray for him when he saw them he went up to an upper chamber and prayed for him when he came down he said to them go the fever has left him they said to him are you a prophet he replied I am neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet but I learned this from experience if my prayer is fluent in my mouth I know that he is accepted but if not I know that he is rejected they sat down and made a note of the exact moment when they came to our Gamaliel he said to them by the temple service you have not been a moment too soon or too late but so it happened at that very moment the fever left him and he asked for water to drink on another occasion it happened that our Hanan Abidosa went to study Torah with our Yohanan ben Zakai the son of our Yohanan ben Zakai fell ill he said to him Hanan my son pray for him that he may live he put his head between his knees and prayed for him and he lived said our Yohanan ben Zakai if ben Zakai had stuck his head between his knees for the whole day no notice would have been taken of him said his wife too. Him is Hannah greater than you are he replied to her no but he is like a servant before the king and I am like a nobleman before a king our high be Abba said in the name of our Yohanan a man should not pray save in a room which has windows since it says now his windows were open in his upper chamber towards Jerusalem our Kahana said I consider a man impertinent who prays in a valley our Kahana also said I consider a man impertinent who openly recounts his sins since it is said happy is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered Talmud Mos Birakot A C H A P T E R V I Mishnah what blessings are said over fruit over fruit of the tree one says who create test the fruit of the tree except for wine over which one says who create test the fruit of the vine over that which grows from the ground one says who create test the fruit of the ground except over bread for which one says who bring just forth bread from the earth over vegetables one says who create test the fruit of the ground are Judah, however, says who create test divers kinds of herbs tomorrow whence is this derived as our rabbis have taught the fruit thereof shall be holy for giving praise unto the Lord. This teaches that they require a blessing both before and after partaking of them on the strength of this our said a man is forbidden to taste anything before saying a blessing over it, but is this the lesson to be learned from these words holy for giving praise? Surely they are required for these two lessons first to teach that the all merciful has declared redeem it and then eat it, and secondly that a thing which requires a song of praise requires redemption, but one that does not require a song of praise does not require redemption, as has been taught by our Samuel B. Namani in the name of our Jonathan. For our Samuel B. Namani said in the name of our Jonathan, whence do we know that a song of praise is sung only over wine because it says and the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man if it cheers man how does it cheer God from this we learn that a song of praise is sung only over one now this reasoning is valid for him who teaches the planting of the fourth year but for him who teaches the vineyard of the fourth year what can be said for it has been stated our high and our Simeon the son of rabbi taught differently one taught vineyard of the fourth year the other taught planting of the fourth year for him who teaches vineyard of the fourth year also there is no difficulty if he avails himself of a gazerish for it has been taught rabbi says it says there that it may yield unto you more richly the increase thereof and it says in another place the increase of the vineyard just as in the latter passage increase refers to the vineyard so here it refers to the vineyard thus one hillel is left over to indicate that a blessing is required but if he does not avail himself of a gazerish how can he derive this lesson and even if he does avail himself of a Shawa, while we are satisfied that a blessing is required after it once do we learn that it is required before partaking this is no difficulty we derive it by argument of forciori if he says a blessing when he is full how much more so ought he to do so when he is hungry we have found the proof for the case of the produce of the vineyard once do we find that a benediction is required for other species it can be learned from the vineyard just as the vineyard being something that is enjoyed requires a blessing so everything that is enjoyed requires a blessing but this may be refuted how can we learn from a vineyard seeing that it is subject to the obligation of the gleanings we may cite the instance of corn how can you cite the instance of corn seeing that it is subject to the obligation of hallow we may then cite the instance of the vineyard and the argument goes round in a circle the distinguishing feature of the first instance is not like that of the second and vice versa the Feature common to both is that being things which are enjoyed they require a blessing similarly everything which is enjoyed requires a blessing but this argument from a common feature is not conclusive because there is with them the common feature that they are offered on the altar we may then it is also the olive from the fact that it is offered on the altar but is the blessing over the olive derived from the fact that it is offered on the altar it is explicitly designated karam is it is written and he burnt up the shocks and the standing corn and also the olive yards karam our papa replied it is called an olive karam but not karam simply still the difficulty remains how can you learn other products from the argument of a common factor seeing that wine and corn have the common feature of being offered on the altar rather it is learned from the seven species just as the seven species are something which being enjoyed requires a blessing so everything which is enjoyed Requires a blessing how can you argue from the seven species seeing that they are subject to the obligation of first fruits and besides granted that we learn from them that a blessing is to be said after partaking how do we know it is to be said before this is no difficulty being learned to force if he says a blessing when he is full how much more should he do so when he is hungry now as for the one who reads planting of the fourth year we may grant he has proved his point with regard to anything planted but whence does he derive it in regard to things that are not planted such as meat eggs and fish the fact is that it is a reasonable supposition that it is forbidden to a man to enjoy anything of this world without saying a blessing our rabbis have taught it is forbidden to a man to enjoy anything of this world without a benediction and if anyone enjoys anything of this world without a benediction he commits sacrilege what is his remedy he should consult a wise man what will the wise man do for him he has already committed the offense said Rabbah what it means is that he should consult a wise man beforehand so that he should teach him blessings and he should not commit sacrilege Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel to enjoy anything of this world without a benediction is like making personal use of things consecrated to heaven since it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof are Levi contrasted two texts it is written the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and it is also written the heavens are the heavens of the Lord but the earth hath he given to the children of men there is no contradiction in the one case it is before a blessing has been said Talmud Mos Birakot B in the other case after our Hanan B Papa said to enjoy this world without a benediction is like robbing the Holy One blessed be he and the community of Israel as it says whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith it is no transgression the same as the Companion of a destroyer and father is none other but the Holy One. Blessed be he as it says is not he thy father that hath gotten thee and mother is none other than the community of Israel as it says here my son the instruction of thy father and forsake not the teaching of thy mother what is the meaning of he is the companion of a destroyer our Hanan of Papa answered he is the companion of Jeroboam son of Nebat who destroyed Israel's faith in their father in heaven our Hanan of Papa pointed out a contradiction it is written therefore will I take back my corn in the time thereof etc and it is elsewhere written and thou shalt gather in thy corn etc there is no difficulty the one text speaks of where Israel do the will of the omnipresent the other of where they do not perform the will of the omnipresent our rabbis taught and thou shalt gather in thy corn what is to be learned from these words since it says this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth I might think that this Injunction is to be taken literally therefore it says and thou shalt gather in thy corn which implies that you are to combine the study of them with a worldly occupation this is the view of our Ishmael our Simeon B.O. he says is that possible if a man plows in the plowing season and sows in the sowing season and reaps in
Ordinary work, their main concern and their study of the Torah subsidiary and neither prospered in their hands. Rabbi Barhana further said in the name of Aryohan and reporting Arjuda B. I observe the difference between the earlier and the later generations. The earlier generations used to bring in their produce by way of the kitchen garden purposely in order to make it liable to tithe, whereas the later generations bring in their produce by way of roofs or courtyards or enclosures in order to make it exempt from tithe. For Arjana has said untithed produce is not subject to tithing until it has come within sight of the house, since it says, I have put away the hallowed things out of my house. Aryohan and however says that even sight of a courtyard imposes the obligation as it says that they may eat within the gates and be satisfied except over wine. Why is a difference made for wine? Shall I say that because the raw material of it is improved, therefore the blessing is different, but in the case of oil also the raw material of it is improved yet the blessing is not different as Rab Judah has laid down in the name of Samuel and so our Isaac stated in the name of Aryohan and that the blessing said over olive oil is that creates the fruit of the tree the answer given is that in the case of oil it is not possible to change the blessing for what shall we say shall we say that creates the fruit of the olive the fruit itself is called olive but we can say over it that creates the fruit of the olive tree rather the real reason is said Marzitra that wine has food value but oil has no food value but has oil no food value have we not learned one who takes a vow to abstain from food is allowed to partake of water and salt and we are viewed from this as follows water and salt alone are not called food but all other stuffs are called food may we not say that this is a refutation of Rab and Samuel who say that the blessing who creates various kinds of food is said only over the five species of cereals and are who not solved the problem by saying that the mission refers to one who says I vow to abstain from anything that feeds which shows that oil has food value rather say the reason is that wine sustains and oil does not sustain but does wine sustain did not Rabbi used to drink wine on the eve of the Passover in order that he might get an appetite and eat much unleavened bread a large quantity gives an appetite a small quantity sustains but does it in fact give any sustenance is it not written and wine that makes glad the heart of man and bread that stayeth man's heart which shows that it is bread which sustains not wine the fact is that wine does both it sustains and makes glad whereas bread sustains but does not cheer if that is the case let us say three blessings after it people do not make it the basis of the meal Arnaman B. Isaac asked Rabbi suppose a man makes it the basis of his meal but then he replied when Elijah comes he will tell us whether it can really serve as a basis at present at any rate no man thinks of such a thing the text above stated Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel and so too said our Isaac in the name of our Yohanan that the blessing said over olive oil is that creates the fruit of the tree how are we to understand this are we to say that it is drunk if so it is injurious as it has been taught if one drinks oil of terimah he repays the bare value but does not add a fifth if one anoints himself with oil of terimah he repays the value and also a fifth in addition do we suppose then that he consumes it with bread in that case the bread would be the main ingredient and the oil subsidiary and we have learned this is the general rule if with one article of food another is taken as accessory a blessing is said over the main article and this suffices also for the accessory do we suppose then that he drinks it with Eleogaron Rabbi Samuel has stated Eleogaron is juice of beetroot Oxygaron is juice of Talmud, Moss, Birakoth, all other boiled vegetables in that case the Eleogaron would be the main thing and the oil subsidiary and we have learned this is the general rule if with one article of food another is taken as accessory a blessing is said over the main article and this suffices for the accessory what case have we here in mind the case of a man with a sore throat since it has been taught if one has a sore throat he should not ease it directly with oil on Sabbath but he should put plenty of oil into Eleogaron and swallow it this is obvious you might think that since he intends it as a medicine he should not say any blessing over it therefore we are told that since he has some enjoyment from it he has to say a blessing over wheat and flour Rab Judah says that the blessing is who creates the fruit of the ground while Arnaman says it is by whose word all things exist said Rabbi to Arnaman do not join issue with Rab Judah since Aryohanan and Samuel would concur with him. For Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel and likewise our Isaac said in the name of Aryohan and over olive oil the blessing said is that creates the fruit of the tree which shows that although it has been transformed it is fundamentally the same here too although it has been transformed it is fundamentally the same but are the two cases alike in that case of olive oil the article does not admit a further improvement in this case it does admit a further improvement by being made into bread and when it is still capable of further improvement we do not say over it the blessing that creates the fruit of the ground but by whose word all things exist but has not our Zara said in the name of our Matina reporting Samuel over raw cabbage and barley flour we say the blessing by whose word all things exist and may we not infer from this that over wheat flour we say who creates the fruit of the ground no over wheat flour also we say by whose word all things exist and let him state the rule. For wheat flour and it will apply to barley flour as a matter of course if he had stated the rule as applying to wheat flour I might have said that is the rule for wheat flour but over barley flour we need say no blessing at all therefore we are told that this is not so but is barley flour of less account than salt or brine of which we have learned over salt and brine one says by whose word all things exist it was necessary to lay down the rule for barley flour you might argue that a man often puts a dash of salt or brine into his mouth without harm but barley flour is harmful in creating tapeworms and therefore we need say no blessing over it we are therefore told that since one has some enjoyment from it he must say a blessing over it over the palm heart Rab Judah says that the blessing is that creates the fruit of the ground while Samuel says that it is by whose word all things exist Rab Judah says it is that creates the fruit of the ground regarding it as fruit whereas Samuel says that it is by whose word all things exist and subsequently it grows hard said Samuel to Rab Judah Shinina your opinion is the more probable since radish eventually hardens and over it we say who creates the fruit of the ground this however is no proof radishes are planted for the sake of the tuber but palms are not planted for the sake of the heart but is it the case that wherever one thing is not planted for the sake of another which it later becomes we do not say the blessing for that other one of the caper bush which is planted for the sake of the caper blossom and we have learned in regard to the various edible products of the caper bush over the leaves and the young shoots that creates the fruit of the ground is set and over the berries and buds that creates the fruit of the tree are and B. Isaac replied caper bushes are planted for the sake of the shoots but palms are not planted for the sake of the heart and although Samuel commended Rab Judah the Holocha is as laid down by Samuel Rab Judah said in the name of Rab in the case of an uncircumcised caper bush outside of Palestine one throws away the berries and may eat the buds this is to say that the berries are fruit but the buds are not fruit a contradiction was pointed out between this and the following in regard to the various edible articles produced by the caper bush over the leaves and the young shoots that creates the fruit of the ground is set over the buds and it berries that creates the fruit of the tree is said Rab Judah followed our Akiba as we have learned our Eliza says from the caper bush tithe is given from the berries and buds our Akiba however says that the berries alone are tithe because they are fruit let him then say that the Holocha is as laid down by our Akiba had he said that the Holocha is as laid down by our Akiba I should have thought that this was so even in the holy land he therefore informs us that if there is an authority who is more lenient in regard to uncircumcised products in the Holy Land, the Halacha follows him in respect of such products outside of the Holy Land, but not in the land itself. But let him then say that the Halacha is as laid down by our Akiba for outside the Holy Land, because if an authority is more lenient with regard to the land, the Halacha follows him in the case of outside the land. Had he said so, I should have argued that this applies to tie the fruit which in the Holy Land itself was ordained only by the rabbis, but that in the case of Orla, the law for which is stated in the Torah, we should extend it to outside the land. Therefore, he tells us that we do not do so. Rabbanu once found Marbi Arashi throwing away uncircumcised caper berries and eating the buds. He said to him, What is your view? Do you agree with our Akiba who is more lenient than follow Beth Shammai, who are more lenient still, as we have learned with regard to the caper bush? Beth Shammai say that it constitutes. Kilim in the vineyard, whereas Beth Hillel hold that it does not constitute Kilim in the vineyard, while both agree that it is subject to the law
is plucked in this case it protects while the fruit is attached but not after it is plucked Abbe raised an objection the top piece of the pomegranate is counted in with it but its blossom is not counted in now since it says that its blossom is not counted in with it this implies that it is not food and it was taught in connection with orla the skin of a pomegranate and its blossom the shells of nuts and their kernels are subject to the law of orla we must say then said Robert that we regard Something is a protection to the fruit only where it is so at the time when the fruit becomes fully ripe but this caper but falls off when the fruit ripens but is that so has not our nomen said in the name of Rabbi Abba the Kalasi surrounding dates in the state of Orla are forbidden since they are the protection to the fruit now when do they protect the fruit in the early stages of its growth only yet he calls them a protection to the fruit our nomen took the same view as our Jose as we have learned our Jose says the great but is forbidden because it is fruit but the rabbis differ from him our Shammai from Nihardia demur do the rabbis differ from him in respect of other trees have we not learned at what stage must we refrain from cutting trees in the seventh year Beth Shammai say in the case of all trees from the time they produce fruit Beth Hillel say in the case of carob trees from the time when they form chains of carobs in the case of vines from the time when they form Globules in the case of olive trees from the time when they blossom in the case of all other trees from the time when they produce fruit and R.C. said Bozer and Gera and the white bean are all one white bean do you say red instead the size of them is that of the white bean now which authority did you hear declaring that the Bozer is fruit but the great bud is not it is the rabbis and it is they who state that we must refrain from cutting down all other trees from the time when they produce fruit no said Rabba where do you say that something is the protection to the fruit where if you take it away the fruit dies here you can take it away and the fruit does not die in an actual case they once took away the blossom from a pomegranate and it withered they took away the flower from a caper and it survived the law is as indicated by Marbi Arashi when he threw away the caper berries and ate the buds and since for purposes of Orla the buds are not fruit for the purposes of benedictions also they are not fruit and we do not say over them who creates the fruit of the tree but who creates the fruit of the ground with regard to pepper Arshis hate says that the blessing is by whose word all things exist Rabbah says it requires no blessing at all Rabbah and this is consistent for Rabbah said if a man chews peppercorns on the day of atonement he is not liable to Karath if he chews ginger on the day of atonement he is not liable an objection was raised our says since the text says ye shall count the fruit thereof as forbidden do and not know that it is speaking of a tree for food why then does it say in the same context and shall have planted all manner of trees for food to include a tree of which the wood has the same taste as the fruit and which is this the pepper tree this teaches you that pepper is subject to the law of Orla and it also teaches you that the land of Israel lacks nothing as it says a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it there is no contradiction one statement refers to moist pepper the other to dry the rabbi said to Miramar one who chews ginger on the day of atonement is not liable to Karath but has not Rabbah said the preserved ginger which comes from India is permitted and we say over it the benediction who creates the fruit of the ground there is no contradiction one statement refers to moist ginger the other to dry with regard to have eyes boiled in a pot and also Pounded grain Rab Judah says the blessing is by whose word all things exist while Arkahana says that it is who creates various kinds of foods in the case of simple pounded grain all agree that the correct blessing is who creates various kinds of foods where they differ is in respect of pounded grain made like boiled have eyes Rab Judah says that the blessing for this is by whose word etc considering that the honey is the main ingredient Arkahana holds that the blessing is who creates all kinds of food considering the flour the main ingredient our Joseph said the view of Arkahana is the more probable because Rab and Samuel have both laid down that over anything containing an ingredient from the five species of cereals the blessing is who creates all kinds of foods the above text states Rab and Samuel both laid down that over anything containing an ingredient from the five species of cereals the blessing is who creates all kinds of foods it has also been stated Rab and Samuel both lay down that over anything made of the five species the blessing is who creates all kinds of foods now both statements are necessary for if I had only the statement anything made of etc I might say this is because the cereal is still distinguishable but if it is mixed with something else this is not the blessing Talmud, Mosbiragotha we are told therefore anything containing an ingredient etc if again I had only the statement anything containing an ingredient etc I might think that this applies to the five species of cereals but not to rice and millet when they are mixed with other things but when they are distinguishable the blessing even over rice and millet is who creates various kinds of foods so we are told that over anything which is made of the five species we say who creates various kinds of foods excluding rice and millet over which we do not say who creates various kinds of foods even when they are distinguishable and over rice and millet do we not say who Greatest various kinds of foods has it not been taught if one is served with rice bread or millet bread he says blessings before and after it is for a cooked dish of the five species and with regard to cooked dishes it has been taught he says before partaking who greatest various kinds of foods and after it he says one blessing which includes three it is on the par with cooked dishes in one way and not in another it resembles cooked dishes in requiring a benediction before and after and it differs from cooked dishes because the blessing before these is who greatest various kinds of foods and the blessing after is the one which includes three whereas in this case the blessing before is by whose word all things exist and the blessing after who greatest many living beings with their wants for all which he has created etc but is not rice a cooked dish has it not been taught the following count as cooked dishes spell groats wheat groats fine flour split grain barley groats and rice Whose opinion is this that of our Yohanan Binuri for it has been taught our Yohanan Binuri says rice is a kind of corn and when leavened it can entail the penalty of karath and it can be used to fulfill the obligation of eating unleavened bread on Passover the rabbis however do not admit this but do not the rabbis admit this has it not been taught if one chews wheat he says over it the benediction who creates the fruit of the ground if he grinds and bakes it and then soaks it in liquid so long. As the pieces are still whole he says before partaking the blessing who brings forth bread from the earth and after the grace of three blessings if the pieces are no longer whole he says before partaking that creates various kinds of foods and after it one blessing that includes three if one chews rice he says before partaking who creates the fruit of the ground if he grinds and bakes it and then soaks it even if the pieces are still whole he says before partaking who creates various kinds of foods and after it the one blessing which includes three now whose opinion is this shall I say it is our Yohan and Binuri's but he said that rice is a kind of corn and therefore according to him the blessing should be who bringeth forth food from the earth and the grace the one of three blessings it must therefore be the rabbis and this is a refutation of Rab and Samuel is it not it is a refutation the master said above if one chews wheat he says over it the blessing who creates the fruit of the ground but it has been taught who creates various kinds of seeds there is no contradiction one statement represents the view of our Judah the other that of the rabbis as we have learned over vegetables one says who creates the fruit of the ground our Judah however says who creates various kinds of herbs the master said above if one chews rice he says over it who creates the fruit of the ground if he grinds and bakes it and then soaks it even if the pieces are still whole he Says before it who creates the various kinds of foods and after it one blessing which includes three but it has been taught after it he need not say any blessing at all Arshis hate replied there is no contradiction the one statement expresses the view of our Gamaliel the other that of the rabbis as it has been taught this is the general rule after partaking of anything that belongs to the seven species our Gamaliel says that three blessings should be said while the rabbis say one that includes three once our Gamaliel and the elders were reclining in an upper chamber in Jericho and dates were brought in and they ate and our Gamaliel gave permission to our Akiva to say grace and our Akiva said quickly the one blessing which includes three said our Gamaliel to him Akiva how long will you poke your head into quarrels he replied master although you say this way and your colleagues say the other way you have taught us master that where an individual joins issue with the majority the Halachias. Determined by the majority, our Judah said in his Argamaliel's name after partaking of any food from the seven species Talmud, Mosbirakoth be not being a kind of corn or which belongs to one of the kinds of corn but has not been made into bread. Argamaliel says that three blessings are to be said while the sages say only one blessing which
Kinds of foods What is the reason the flour is the main ingredient over the rihata of the townspeople in which there is not so much flour the blessing said is by whose word all things exist what is the reason the main ingredient is the honey Rabbah however corrected himself and said over both the blessing is who created various kinds of foods for Rab and Samuel both laid down that over anything containing one of the five species as an ingredient the blessing to be said is who created various kinds of foods are Joseph said if in Ahab eyes there are pieces of bread as big as an olive the blessing said before it is who bringeth forth bread from the earth and after it a grace of three blessings is said if there are no pieces as big as an olive in it the blessing said before it is who created various kinds of foods and after it one blessing which includes three said are Joseph whence do I derive this because it has been taught if one is in the act of offering meal offerings in Jerusalem he Says blessed be he that hath kept us alive and preserved us and brought us to the season when he takes them up in order to eat them he says the blessing who bringeth forth bread from the earth and it was taught in this connection they are all broken into fragments of the size of an olive said Abbe to him if that is so then similarly according to the tana of the school of our Ishmael who says that he crushes them until he reduces them to flour he should not require to say who bringeth forth bread from the earth and should you reply that that is indeed the case has it not been taught if he scraped together as much as an olive from all of them and ate all of it if it is leavened he is punished with karath and if it is unleavened a man may perform his obligation with it on Passover with what case are we dealing here if he reneded the crumbs if so look at the next clause this is only if he ate them within the time which it takes to eat half a roll now if they are reneded. Instead of saying to eat them, it should say to eat it rather with what case are we here dealing when it comes from a large loaf? Now, what do we decide upon this matter? Our she's hate said if the crumbs of bread in Ahab's are even less than an olive, the benediction who bringeth forth bread from the earth is said over it. Rabbah added, This is only if they still have the appearance of bread. Trodden is subject to the law of Hallow. When Rabin came, he said in the name of our Yohanan, Trodden is not subject to the law of Hallow. What is Trodden? Abbe said, Dough baked in a cavity made in the ground. Abbe also said, Terada is exempt from the obligation of Hallow. What is Terada? Some say, Dough just lightly baked, others say, Bread baked on a spit, others again, Bread used for Kuda. Our high said, Bread used for Kuda is not liable to Hallow, but it has been taught that it is liable for Hallow. There, the reason is stated, Rab Judah says that the way it is made shows what it is if it is made Talmud, Moss. Pirico the like cakes it is liable for hell if like boards it is not liable Abbe said to our Joseph what blessing is said over dough baked in a cavity in the ground he replied do you think it is bread it is merely a thick mass and the blessing said over it is who created various kinds of foods Mars made it the basis of his meal and said over it the blessing who bringeth forth bread from the earth and three blessings after it Mars son of Arashi said the obligation of Passover can be fulfilled with it what is the reason we apply to it the term bread of affliction Mars son of Arashi also said over honey of the day palm we say by whose word all things exist what is the reason because it is merely moisture of the tree with whose teaching does this accord with that of the following ten as we have learned with regard to the honey of the day palm and cider and vinegar from stunted grapes and other fruit juices of Terra Eliza requires in case of sacrilege payment of the value and an additional fifth, but our Joshua exempts from the additional fifth. One of the rabbis asked Rabbah what is the law with regard to trimmer. Rabbah did not quite grasp what he said. Rabbah was sitting before Rabbah and said to the man, Do you mean of sesame or of saffron or of great kernels? Rabbah thereupon bethought himself and said, You certainly mean hashilta, and you have reminded me of something which R.C. said it is permissible to make trimmer of dates of terima, but forbidden to make meat of them. The law is that over dates which have been used to make into trimmer, we say the blessing who created the fruit of the tree. What is the reason they are still in their natural state with regard to shita? The rabbi said that the blessing is by whose word all things were made, while Samuel said that it is who created various kinds of food. Said Arhista, they do not really differ. The latter is said over the thick variety, the former over the thin. The thick is made for eating the thin for a Medicine our Joseph raised an objection to this both alike say that we may stir up a shatayva on Sabbath and drink Egyptian beer now if you think that he intends it as a remedy is a medicine permitted on Sabbath Abbe replied and do you hold that it is not have we not learned all foods may be eaten on Sabbath for medical purposes and all drinks may be drunk but what you must say is in these cases the man intends it for food here too the man intends it for food another version of this is but what you can say is that the man intends it for food and the healing effect comes of itself so here too the man intends it for food and the healing effect comes of itself and it was necessary to have the statement of Rab and Samuel for if I had only the other statement I might think that he says a blessing because he intends it for food and the healing effect comes of itself but in this case since his first intention is to use it for healing I might think that he should not say any blessing at all over it we are therefore told that since he derives some enjoyment from it he has to say a blessing for over bread is said who bringeth forth etc. Our rabbis taught what does he say who bringeth forth hamatzi bread from the earth our Nehemiah says bringing matzi forth bread from the earth both agree that the word matzi means who has brought forth since it is written God who brought them forth matzi and from Egypt where they disagree is as to the meaning of hamatzi the rabbis held that hamatzi means who has brought forth as it is written who brought thee forth hamatzi water out of the rock of flint whereas our Nehemiah held that hamatzi means who is bringing forth as it says who bringeth you out hamatzi from under the burden of the Egyptians the rabbis however say that those words spoken by the Holy One blessed be he to Israel were meant as follows what I shall bring you out I will do for you something which will show you that it is I who brought you forth from Egypt as it is. Written and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out. The rabbis used to speak highly to Arzera of the son of Arzebeth, the brother of Arsimian, son of Arzebeth, as being a great man and well versed in the benedictions. He said to them, When you get hold of him, bring him to me. Once he came to his house and they brought him a loaf over which he pronounced the blessing. Matzi said, Arzebeth, is this the man of whom they say that he is a great man and well versed in benedictions? Had he said, Hamatzi Talmud, Masbirakoth, he would have taught us the meaning of a text and he would have taught us that the Halachah is as stated by the rabbis. But when he says, Matzi, what does he teach us? In fact, he acted thus so as to keep clear of controversy and the laws that we say, Hamatzi bread from the earth, since we hold with the rabbis who say that it means who has brought forth over vegetables. One says, etc. Vegetables are placed by the mission on a PAR with bread just as over bread. Which has been transformed by fire, the same blessing is said, so the same blessing is said over vegetables when they have been changed by fire. Robin is said in the name of Abbe. This means to say that over boiled vegetables we say who creates the fruit of the ground. How because the mission puts vegetables on the PAR with bread are his dog expounded in the name of our teacher, and who is this rab over boiled vegetables? The blessing to be said is who creates the fruit of the ground, but teachers who came down from the land of Israel and who are these all in the name of our Yohanan said over boiled vegetables, the blessing to be said is by whose word all things exist. I say, however, that wherever we say over a thing in its raw state who creates the fruit of the ground, if it is boiled, we say by whose word all things exist, and wherever we say over it in the raw state by whose word all things exist, if it is boiled, we say who creates the fruit of the ground, we quite understand that where the Blessing over a thing in its raw state is by whose word all things were created. If it is boiled, we say who creates the fruit of the ground. You have examples in cabbage, beet, and pumpkin, but where can you find that a thing which in its raw state requires who creates the fruit of the ground should when boiled require by whose word all things exist? Arnaman B. Isaac replied, You have an instance in garlic and leek. Arnaman expounded in the name of our teacher and who is the Samuel over boiled vegetables. The blessing to be said is who creates the fruit of the ground, but our colleagues who came down from the land of Israel and who are these all in the name of our Yohanan say over boiled vegetables. The blessing to be said is by whose word all things exist. I personally say that authorities differ on the matter as it has been taught. One may satisfy the requirement of eating unleavened bread on Passover with a wafer which has been soaked or which has been boiled provided it has not been. Dissolved so our Meir Jose however says one fulfills the requirements with a wafer which has been soaked but not with one which has been boiled
Blessing to be said was who creates the fruit of the ground. Moreover, our high Abbasid, I have seen our Yohanan eat salted olives and say a blessing both before and after. Now, if you hold that boiled vegetables are still regarded as the same, we can understand this before eating. He said who creates the fruit of the tree and after it, a grace of one blessing which includes three. But if you hold that vegetables after being boiled are not regarded as the same, no doubt he could say before eating by whose word all things are created. But what could he say after? Perhaps he said who creates many living things and their requirements for all that he has created are Isaac. Peace Samuel raised an objection with regard to the herbs with which one may fulfill the requirement of eating bitter herbs on Passover. Both they and their stocks may serve this purpose, but not if they are pickled or cooked or boiled. Now, if you maintain that after boiling they are still regarded as the same, why may they not be? You spoil the case is different there because we require the taste of bitter herbs and this we do not find our Jeremiah asked our Zerah how could our Yohanan make a blessing over a salted olive since the stone had been removed Talmud, Moss Birakotha it was less than the minimum size he replied do you think the size we require is that of a large olive we require only that of a medium sized olive and that was therefore the one they set before our Yohanan was a large one so that even when its stone had been removed it was still of the requisite size for so we have learned the olive spoken of means neither a small nor a large one but a medium one this is the kind which is called a guri or a bab however said its name is not a guri but a guri or according to other samrasi and why is it called a guri because its oil is collected a guru within it may we say that this controversy about the blessing to be said over boiled vegetables is found between tanaim for once two disciples were sitting before Barkhapur and Cabbage Damascene plums and poultry were set before him Barkhapur gave permission to one of them to say a blessing and he at once said the blessing over the poultry the other laughed at him and Barkhapur was angry he said I am not angry with the one who said the blessing but with the one who laughed if your companion acts like one who has never tasted meat in his life is that any reason for you to laugh then he corrected himself and said I am not angry with the one who laughed but with the one who said the blessing if there is no wisdom here is there not old age here attended taught neither of them saw the year out now did not their difference lie in this that the one who said the blessing held that the benediction over both boiled vegetables and poultry is by whose word all things exist and therefore the dish he liked best had the preference while the one who laughed held that the blessing over boiled vegetables is who creates the fruit of the ground and that over poultry is by whose word all things were created and therefore the vegetables should have had the preference not so all agree that for both boiled vegetables and poultry the blessing is by whose word all things exist and their difference lies in this that one held that what is best liked should have the preference and the other held that the cabbage should have the preference because it is nourishing our Zara said when we were with our Huna he told us that with regard to the tops of turnips if they are cut into large pieces the blessing is who creates the fruit of the ground but if they are cut into small pieces by whose word all things exist but when we came to Rab Judah he told us that for both the blessing is who creates the fruit of the ground since the reason for their being cut into small pieces is to make them taste sweeter our Ashi said when we were with our Kahana he told us that over a broth of beet in which not much flour is put the blessing is who creates the Fruit of the ground, but for a broth of turnip in which much flour is put, the blessing is who creates all kinds of food. Subsequently, however, he said that the blessing for both is who creates the fruit of the ground, since the reason why much flour is put in it is only to make it cohere better. Our said a broth of beet is beneficial for the heart and good for the eyes, and needless to say for the bowel. Said Abe, this is only if it is left on the stove till it goes tuck tuck. Our papa said it is quite clear to me that beet water is on the same footing as beet and turnip water on the same footing as turnips, and the water of all vegetables on the same footing as the vegetables themselves. Our papa, however, inquired what about aniseed water is its main purpose to sweeten the taste to the dish or to remove the evil smell. Come and here once the aniseed has given a taste to the dish, the law of terima no longer applies to it, and it is not liable to the uncleanness of foods. This proves that. Its main purpose is to sweeten the dish, does it not? It does our high be as she said over a dry crust which has been put in a pot to soak the blessing is who bring get forth bread, etc. This view conflicts with that of our high for our high said the bread should be broken with the conclusion of the blessing. Robert to this what he said is the reason why Amos I should not be said in the case of dry crust because you say when the blessing is concluded it is concluded over a broken piece, but when it is said over a loaf it finishes over a broken piece. Talmud, Mosbirakoth be the fact is said Robert that the benediction is said first and then the loaf is broken. The Nihardians acted as prescribed by our high while the rabbis acted as prescribed by Robert. Robin said mother told me your father acted as prescribed by our high for our high said the bread should be broken with the conclusion of the blessing whereas the rabbis acted as prescribed by Robert. The law is as laid down by Robert that one. Says the blessing first and afterwards breaks the loaf. It has been stated if pieces and whole loaves are set before one. Our Huna says that the benediction can be set over the pieces and this serves also for the whole loaves. Whereas our Yohanan says that the religious duty is better performed if the blessing is set over the whole one. If however a broken piece of wheat bread and a whole loaf of barley bread are set before one, all agree that the benediction is set over the piece of wheaten bread. And this serves also for the whole loaf of barley bread. Our Jeremiah B. Abba said there is the same difference of opinion between Tanaim Teramah is given from a small whole onion but not from the half of a large onion. Our Judah says not so but also from the half of a large onion. Are we to say that the point in which they differ is this one authority holds that the fact of being worth more is more important while the other holds that the fact of being whole is more important where a priest is on. The spot all agree that the fact of being worth more is more important where they differ is when there is no priest on the spot since we have learned wherever a priest is on the spot teramah is given from the best of the produce where the priest is not on the spot teramah is set aside from that which will keep best our Judah said teramah is in all cases given from the best our and B. Isaac said a God-fearing man will seek to satisfy both who is such a one mar the son of Rubina for mar the son of Rubina used to put the broken piece under the whole loaf and then break the bread a tanner recited in the presence of our and B. Isaac one should place the broken piece under the whole loaf and then break and say the benediction he said to him what is your name shall man he replied he said to him thou art peace shalom and thy mission is faultless shalom before thou hast made peace between the scholars our papa said all admit that on Passover one puts the broken cake under the whole one and breaks them together what is the reason scripture speaks of bread of poverty our Abba said on Sabbath one should break bread from two loaves what is the reason scripture speaks of double bread our Ashi said I have observed our Kahana take two and break one our Zara used to break off a piece of bread sufficient for the whole meal on Sabbath said Rabbanu to our Ashi does not this look like greediness he replied since every other day he does not act thus and today he acts thus it does not look like greediness when our MI and RC happened to get hold of a loaf which had been used for an Arab they used to say over it the blessing who bringeth forth bread from the earth saying since one religious duty has been performed with it let us perform with it still another Talmud Masbirako the Rab said if the host says to his guests take the benediction has been said take the benediction has been said he the host need not say the benediction again if he said between the benediction and the eating Bring salt, bring relish, he must say the benediction again. Our Yohanan, however, said that even if he said bring salt, bring relish, the benediction need not be repeated. If he said mix fodder for the oxen, mix fodder for the oxen, he must repeat the blessing. Our Shizhi, however, said that even if he said mix fodder for the oxen, he need not repeat. For Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, a man is forbidden to eat before he gives food to his beast, since it says, And I will give grass in thy fields for thy cattle, and then thou shalt eat and be satisfied. Rabbi Samuel said in the name of our high, the one who is about to break the bread is not permitted to do so before salt or relish is placed before each one at table. Rabbi Samuel was once at the house of the Exilarch, and they brought him bread, and he broke it at once. They said to him, Has the master retraced his own teaching? He replied, This requires no condiment. Rabbi Samuel also said in the name of our high, and is never completely discharged. Except when sitting our Kahana said if over loose earth even when standing if there is no loose earth one should stand on a raised spot and discharge down a declivity Rabbi B.
suffer from heartburn. The following was cited in objection to this. Arsimian B. Gamaliel says black cumin is one of the sixty poisons, and if one sleeps on the east side of the place where it is stored, his blood will be on his own head. There is no contradiction. The latter statement speaks of its smell. The former of its taste. The mother of our Jeremiah used to bake bread for him and stick black cumin on it and then scrape it off. Our Judah says who create test divers kinds of herbs are zero or as some say. Our Hindu B. Papa said the halachah is not as stated by our Judah are zero or as some say. Our Hindu B. Papa further said what is our Judah's reason? Scripture says blessed be the Lord day by day. Are we then to bless him by day and not bless him by night? What it means to tell us is that every day we should give him the blessing appropriate to the day. So here for every species we should give him the appropriate blessing. Our zero or as some say. Our Hindu B. Papa further said observe how the character of it. Holy one blessed be he differs from that of flesh and blood a mortal can put something into an empty vessel but not into a full one but the holy one blessed be he is not so he puts more into a full vessel but not into an empty one for it says if you're kenning thou wilt hearken implying if thou hear kenest once thou wilt go on here kenning and if not thou wilt not hearken another explanation is if thou hear kenest to the old thou wilt hearken to the new but if thy heart turns away thou wilt not hear any more mission if one says over fruit of the tree the benediction who creates the fruit of the ground he has performed his obligation but if he said over produce of the ground who creates the fruit of the tree he has not performed his obligation if he says by whose word all things exist over any of them he has performed his obligation tomorrow what authority maintains that the essence of the tree is the ground Arnaman B. Isaac replied it is our Judah as we have learned if the spring has dried up or the tree has been cut down he brings the first fruits but does not make the declaration Arjuda however says that he both brings them and makes a declaration over fruit of the ground etc. This is obvious is it not Arnaman B. Isaac said it required to be stated in view of the opinion of Arjuda who maintains that wheat is a kind of tree for it has been taught Armadier holds that the tree of which Adam ate was a vine since the thing that most causes wailing to a man is wine as it says and he drank of the wine and was drunk and Arnaman says it was a fig tree so that they repaired their misdeed with the instrument of it as it says and they sowed fig leaves together Arjuda says it was wheat since a child does not know how to call father and mother until it has had a taste of corn now you might think that because Arjuda says that wheat is a kind of tree therefore we should say over it the benediction who creates the fruit of the tree therefore we are told that we say who Creates the fruit of the tree only in those cases where if you take away the fruit the stem still remains to produce fruit again Talmud, Mos Birakothi but in cases where if you take the fruit the stem does not remain to produce again the benediction is not who creates the fruit of the tree but who creates the fruit of the ground if he says by whose word all things exist etc it has been stated Arhuna said except over bread and wine are you hand and however said even over bread and wine may we say that the same difference of opinion is found between Tanaim for it was taught if a man sees a loaf of bread and says what a fine loaf this is blessed be the omnipresent that has created it he has performed his obligation if he sees a fig and says what a fine fig this is blessed be the omnipresent that has created it he has performed his obligation so Armadir our Jose says if one alters the formula laid down by the sages in benedictions he has not performed his obligation may we say that our who not concurs with our Jose and our Yohanan with Armadir or who not can reply to you I can claim even Armadir as a supporter of my view for Armadir went as far as he did in that case only because the bread is actually mentioned but where the bread is not actually mentioned even Armadir would admit that the obligation is not fulfilled and our Yohanan can reply to you I may claim our Jose also as a supporter of my view for our Jose only went as far as he did in that case because he made a benediction which was not instituted by the sages but if he says by whose word all things exist which has been instituted by the sages even our Jose would admit that he has performed his obligation Benjamin the shepherd made a sandwich and said blessed be the master of this bread and Rab said that he had performed his obligation but Rab has laid down that any benediction in which God's name is not mentioned is no benediction we must suppose he said blessed be the all merciful the master of this bread but we require Three blessings. What did Rab mean by saying that he had performed his obligation? He had performed the obligation of the first blessing. What does this tell us that we did not already know that he has performed his obligation? Even if he says it in a secular language, but we have already learned this. The following may be said in any language: the section of the unfaithful wife, the confession over tithe, the recital of the Shema, and the Tefillah and grace after food. It required to be stated for. You might have thought that this is the case only if one says the grace in a secular language in the same form as was instituted by the rabbis in the holy tongue. But if one does not say it in the secular language in the same form as was instituted by the rabbis in the holy tongue, he has not performed his obligation. We are therefore told that this is not so. It was stated above. Rab said that any benediction in which the divine name is not mentioned is no benediction. Are you hand and however said any. Benediction in which God's kingship is not mentioned is no benediction. Abay said the opinion of Rab is the more probable for it has been taught I have not transgressed any of thy commandments neither have I forgotten this means I have not transgressed so as not to bless thee neither have I forgotten to mention thy name therein of sovereignty however there is no mention here are Yohanan however reads neither have I forgotten to mention thy name and thy sovereignty therein mission over anything which does not grow from the earth one says by whose word all things exist over vinegar no bloat and locusts one says by whose word all things exist Arjuda says over anything to which a kind of curse attaches no benediction is said if one has several varieties before him Arjuda says that if there is among them something of the seven kinds he makes a blessing over that but the sages say that he may make the blessing over any kind that he pleases Gamara or Rabbis taught over anything which does not grow from the ground such as the flesh of cattle beasts and birds and fishes one says by whose word all things were created over milk eggs and cheese one says by whose word etc over bread which has become moldy and over wine on which a film has formed and cooked food which has become spoiled one says by whose word over salt and brine and morals and truffles one says by whose word this would imply that morals and truffles do not grow from the ground but has it not been taught if one vows to abstain from fruit of the ground he is forbidden to eat a fruit of the ground but is allowed to eat morals and truffles if he said I vow abstention from all that grows from the ground he is forbidden to eat morals and truffles also Abbe said they do indeed spring up from the earth but their sustenance is not derived from the earth but it says over anything which grows from the earth red over anything which draws sustenance from the earth over no bloat what are no bloat are zero and our Ellie gave different answers. One said fruit parched by the sun, the other said dates blown down by the wind. We have learned our Judah says over anything to which a kind of curse attaches, no blessing is said. This accords with the view of the one who says that no bloat are fruit parched by the sun, which can rightly be called something to which a curse attaches. But if we say they are dates blown down by the wind, what has a kind of curse to do with them? This expression relates to the other things. Mention some report as follows on the view of him who says that they are fruit parched by the sun. It is quite right that we should say by whose word, etc. But according to the one who says that they are dates blown down by the wind, we should say who creates the fruit of the tree. The fact is that all are agreed that no bloat in general are fruit parched by the sun. The difference arises over no bloat of the date palm since we have learned things in regard to which the law of Dima is not so. Strict are shit and rhyme and use written benotua benotua shik begotten in his and the nobloth of the day palm shit and according to rabbi barhana reporting are yohanan are a kind of fixed rhyme and are loki's written are crab apples benotua according to rabbi barhana reporting are yohanan are white fixed benotua shik according to rabbi barhana reporting are yohanan are sycamore fixed goblin are winter grapes nispa is a caper fruit nobloth of the day palm are explained differently by R. Zara and RLA one says that they are fruit parched by the sun the other that they are dates blown down by the wind now the view of him who says that they are fruit parched by the sun accords well with what it teaches concerning them things about which the law of Dima is not so strict and if there is a doubt about them they are free from the obligation of tithe which shows that if there is no doubt they are subject to it but on the view of him who says that they are dates blown down by the Wind must in case of certainty tithe be given from them they are hefker with what case are we dealing here where one made a store of them for our Isaac said in the
Because the olive is one of the seven species now would not our Judah accept the teaching which we have learned whenever with one article of food another is taken as subsidiary to it a blessing is said over the main article and this serves for the subsidiary one also and should you be disposed to maintain that in fact he does not accept it has it not been taught our Judah said if the olive is taken on account of the radish a blessing is said for the radish and this serves for the olive in fact we are dealing with a case where the radish is the main item and the difference of opinion between our Judah and the rabbis is really over a different matter and there is a lacuna in the text and it should read as follows if radish and olives are set before a person he says a benediction over the radish and this serves for the olive also when is this the case when the radish is the main item but if the radish is not the main item all agree that he says a blessing over one and then a blessing over the other if there are two varieties of food which have the same blessing he says it over whichever he prefers our Judah however says that he says the blessing over the olive since it is of the seven species R.M.I. and R. Isaac Napaha understood this differently one said that the difference between our Judah and the rabbis arises when the blessings over the two kinds of food are the same our Judah holding that the fact of belonging to the seven kinds is more important while the rabbis held that the fact of being better liked was more important but where the blessings are not the same both agreed that a blessing is first said over one kind and then over the other the other said that our Judah and the rabbis differ even when the blessings are not the same now accepting the view of him who says that the difference arises when the blessings are the same we find no difficulty but accepting the view that they differ also when the blessings are not the same we have to ask on what ground do they differ our Jeremiah replied they differ on the question of precedence for our Joseph or as some say our Isaac said whatever comes earlier in this verse has precedence in the matter of benediction is a land of wheat and barley and vine and fig trees and pomegranates a land of olive trees and honey in the exposition of this verse our Isaac differs from our Hanan for our Hanan said the whole purpose of the verse was to mention things which serve as standards of measurements wheat as we have learned if one Enters a house stricken with leprosy with his garments on his shoulder and his sandals and his rings in his hands both he and they become unclean immediately if he is wearing his garments and his sandals and has his rings on his fingers he is immediately unclean but they remain clean until he stays in the house long enough to eat a piece of wheat bread but not a barley bread reclining and taking with it a relish barley as we have learned a bone as large as a barley corn renders unclean by touch and carrying but it does not render a tent unclean by the measurement for a Nazi right is a fourth of a log of wine fig tree a dry fig is a measurement of what may be taken out of the house on Sabbath pomegranates as we have learned for utensils of a private person Talmud Mosbirko be the measurement is a pomegranate a land of olive trees our Jose son of our Hannah said a land in which the olive is the standard for all measurements all measurements do you say what of those we have just Mention say rather in which the olive is the standard for most measurements honey as much as a large date is the quantity which renders one liable for eating on the day of atonement what says the other to this are these standards laid down explicitly they were instituted by the rabbis and the text is only in his mecca are his and our were seated at a meal and dates and pomegranates were set before them our hamana took some dates and said a blessing over them said our to him does not the master agree with what our joseph or as some say our isaac said whatever is mentioned earlier in this verse has precedence in the matter of benediction he replied this the date comes second after the word land and this the pomegranate comes fifth he replied with that we had feet of iron so that we could always run and listen to you it has been stated if fix and grapes were set before them in the course of the meal our Huna says that they require a benediction before but they do not Require a blessing after and so said Arnam and they require a blessing before but they do not require a blessing after our she's hate however said they require a blessing both before and after since there is nothing requiring a blessing before which does not also require a blessing after say bread taken with the sweets this is at variance with our high for our high said a blessing said over bread suffices for all kinds of food taken in the meal and a blessing said over wine for all kinds of drink. Our Papa said the law is that things which form an integral part of the meal when taken in the course of the meal require no blessing either before or after things which do not form an integral part of the meal when taken in the course of the meal require a blessing before but not after and when taken after the meal require a blessing both before and after Benzoma was asked why was it laid down that things which form an integral part of the meal when taken in the course of a meal require no blessing either before or after he replied because the blessing over bread suffices for them if so they said let the blessing over bread suffice for wine also wine is different he replied Talmud, Mosbirakotha because it is itself a motive for benediction Arhuna ate thirteen rolls of three to a cab without saying a blessing after them said Arnaman to him this is what you call hunger Arnaman is consistent with his own view for Arnaman said anything which others make the mainstay of a meal requires a grace to be set after it Rab Judah gave a wedding feast for his son in the house of Arjuda Behabah they set before the guests bread such as is taken with dessert he came in and heard them saying the benediction Hamati he said to them what is this easy that I hear are you perhaps saying the blessing who bringeth forth bread from the earth they replied we are since it has been taught Armuna said in the name of Arjuda over bread which is taken with dessert it Benediction who bringeth forth bread is said and Samuel said that the Halachah is as stated by Armuna he said to them it has been stated that the Halachah is not as stated by Armuna they said to him is it not the master himself who has said in the name of Samuel that bread wafers may be used for an Arab and the blessing said over them is who bringeth forth bread he replied there we speak of a different case namely where they are made the basis of the meal but if they are not the basis of the meal this does not apply our Papa was once at the house of Arhuna the son of Arnathan after they had finished the meal eatables were set before them and our Papa took some and commenced to eat they said to him does not the master hold that after the meal is finished it is forbidden to eat he replied removed is the proper term Rabba and Arzara once visited the Exilarch after they had removed the tray from before them a gift of fruit was sent them from the Exilarch Rabba partook but Arzara did not partake said the latter to him does not the master hold that if the food has been removed it is forbidden to eat he replied we can rely on the tray of the eggs a large rap said if one is accustomed to rub his hands with oil after a meal he can wait for the oil or as she said when we were with our kahana he said to us i for instance who am accustomed to use oil can wait for the oil but the law is not as stated in all those dicta reported above but as thus stated by our high Ashi in the name of rap three things should follow immediately one on the other the killing of the sacrifice should follow immediately on the laying on of hands tefila should follow immediately on geola grace should follow immediately on the washing of hands abbe said we will add another case a blessing follows immediately on the entertaining of scholars since it says the lord hath blessed me for thy sake if you prefer i can learn it from here the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake Mission a blessing said over the wine taken before the meal serves also for the wine taken after the meal a blessing over the hors d'oeuvres taken before the meal serves for the sweets taken after the meal a blessing over bread serves for the sweets but a blessing over the hors d'oeuvres does not serve for the bread Beth Shammai say neither does it serve for a cooked dish if those at the table are sitting upright each one says grace for himself if they have reclined one says grace for all Talmud, Mosbirakoth b if wine is brought to them in the course of the meal each one says a benediction for himself if after the meal one says it for all the same one says a benediction over the perfume although the perfume is not brought until after the meal Gemara Rabbi Barhana said in the name of Aryohan and this was meant to apply only to Sabbaths and festivals because then a man makes wine an essential part of his meal on other days of the year however a blessing is said over each cup it has also been reported Rabbi Bimari said in the name of our Joshua Belevi this was meant to apply only to Sabbaths and festivals and to meals taken when a man leaves the bath or after bloodletting because on such occasions a man makes wine an essential part of the meal on other days of the year however a blessing is said over each cup Rabbi Bimari was once at the house of Rabbi on a weekday he saw him say a blessing over the wine taken before the meal and again after the meal he said to him well done and so said our Joshua Belevi our Isaac B. Joseph visited Abbe on a festival and saw him say a blessing over each cup he said to him does your honor not hold with the rule laid down by our Joshua Belevi he replied I have just changed my mind a question was asked if wine was brought round in the course of the meal but not before can a blessing over it
With regard to the first part of the statement or the second part, do we understand that the first Tana said that a blessing over bread serves for the sweets and a fortiori for cooked dishes and Bethshamai on the contrary maintained that not merely does a blessing over bread not suffice for the sweets but it does not serve even for the cooked dishes or are we perhaps to understand that they differ as to the second half of the statement that a blessing over the hors d'oeuvres does not serve for the bread which implies that it does not indeed serve for bread but it does serve for cooked dishes and Bethshamai on the contrary maintain that it does not serve even for cooked dishes this is left undecided if they are sitting upright each one etc if they are reclining he may if not he may not with this was contrasted the following if ten persons were traveling on the road even though all eat of one loaf each one says grace for himself but if they sat down to eat even though each one eats of his own loaf one may say grace on behalf of all it says here sat which implies although they did not recline our and b isaac replied this is the case if for instance they say let us go and eat bread in such and such a place when rab died his disciples followed his beer when they returned they said let us go and eat a meal by the river Danak. after they had eaten they sat and discussed the question when we learned reclining is it to be taken strictly as excluding sitting or perhaps when they say let us go and eat bread in such and such a place it is as good as reclining they could not find the answer our adabi ahab arose talmud mosbirko they and turned the rent in his garment from front to back and made another rent saying rab is dead and we have not learned the rules about grace after meals at length an old man came and pointed out the contradiction between the mishnah and the Beritha and solved it by saying once they have said let us go and eat bread in such and such a place it is as if they were reclining if they have reclined one says grace rab said the rule is that only bread requires reclining but wine does not require reclining our yohanan however says that wine also requires reclining some report thus rab said this applies only to bread for which reclining is of effect but for wine reclining is not of effect our yohanan however says that for wine also reclining is of effect the following was cited in objection to rab what is the procedure for reclining the guests enter and sit on stools and chairs till they are all assembled when water is brought each one washes one hand when wine is brought each one says a blessing for himself when they go up onto the couches and recline and water is brought to them although each one of them has already washed one hand he now again washes both hands when wine is brought to them although each one has said a blessing for himself one now says a blessing on behalf of all now according to the version which makes Rab say that this applies only to bread which requires reclining but wine does not require reclining there is a contradiction between this view and the first part of the statement guests are different since they intend to shift their place according to the version which makes Rab say that this applies only to bread for which reclining is of effect but for wine reclining is of no effect there is a contradiction with the second part the case is different there because since reclining is of effect for bread it is also of effect for wine Benzoma was asked why was it laid down that if wine is brought in the course of the meal each one says a blessing for himself but if after the meal one may say a blessing for all he replied because during meals the gullet is not empty the same one says a benediction over the perfume since it says the same one says a benediction over the perfume we may infer that there is present someone superior to him why then does he Say it because he washed his hands first after the meal. The supports Rab for our high B. Ashi said in the name of Rab, the one who first washes his hands after the meal can claim the right to say grace. Rab and our high were once sitting before Rabbi at dinner. Rabbi said to Rab, Get up and wash your hands. Your high saw him trembling. Said our high to him, Son of princes, he is telling you to think over the grace after meals. Our said in the name of Rabbi B. Jeremiah, When do they say the blessing? Over the perfume as soon as the smoke column ascends, said Arzara to Rabbi B. Jeremiah, but he has not yet smelled it. He replied, According to your reasoning, when one says who brings forth bread from the earth, he has not yet eaten, but he says it because it is his intention to eat. So here it is his intention to smell our high, the son of Abba He said in the name of our Hista, reporting Rab, according to others, our Hista said in the name of Zeiri, over all incense perfumes, the blessing is who greatest. Fragrant woods except over musk which comes from a living creature and the blessing is who creates various kinds of spices and objection was raised the benediction who creates fragrant woods is said only over the balsam trees of the household of rabbi and the balsam trees of Caesar's household and over myrtle everywhere this is a refutation our hista said to our Isaac what blessing is said over this balsam oil he replied thus said rab judah who creates the oil of our land he then said to him leaving out rab judah who dotes on the land of israel what do ordinary people say he replied thus said our yohanan who creates pleasant oil our adabi ahab said over costume the blessing is who creates fragrant woods but not over oil in which it is steeped arkahana however says even over oil in which it is steeped but not over oil in which it has been ground the nihardian say even over oil in which it has been ground talmud mosbirko b argil said in the name of rab over jasmine it. Blessing is who creates fragrant woods. Our Hanael said in the name of Rab over Sirush, the blessing is who creates fragrant woods. Said Marzitra, what scriptural verse confirms that she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of facts? Our Meshur, she said over garden Narcissus, the blessing is who creates fragrant woods. Over wild Narcissus, who creates fragrant herbs? Our hate said over violets, the blessing is who creates fragrant herbs? Marzitra said he who smells a citron. Or a quince should say, Blessed be he who has given a sweet odor to fruits. Rab Judah says if one goes abroad in the days of Nissan springtime and sees the trees sprouting, he should say, Blessed be he who hath not left his world lacking in anything and has created in it goodly creatures and goodly trees for the enjoyment of mankind. Our Zitra Betopia said in the name of Rab, once do we learn that a blessing should be said over sweet odors because it says, Let every soul praise the Lord what is. That which gives enjoyment to the soul and not to the body, you must say that this is fragrant smell. Marzitra Betopia further said in the name of Rab, the young men of Israel are destined to emit a sweet fragrance like Lebanon, as it says, his branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his fragrance as Lebanon. Arzitra Betopia further said in the name of Rab, what is the meaning of the verse? He hath made everything beautiful in its time, it teaches that the Holy One. Blessed be he made every man's trade seem fine in his own eyes. Our Papa said disagrees with the popular saying, hang the heart of a palm tree on a pig and it will do the usual thing with it. Arzitra Betopia further said in the name of Rab, a torch is as good as two persons and moonlight as good as three. The question was asked, is the torch as good as two counting the carrier or as good as two besides the carrier? Come and here, moonlight is as good as three if now you say including the carrier. There is no difficulty, but if you say besides the carrier, why do I want foreseeing that a master has said to one person an evil spirit may show itself and harm him to two, it may show itself, but without harming them to three, it will not even show itself. We must therefore say that a torch is equivalent to two, including the carrier, and this may be taken as proof. Our Zitra Betopia further said in the name of Rab, according to others, our Hanabi business said it in the name of our Simeon the pious and according to others again, our Yohanan said it in the name of our Simeon Biohe, it is better for a man that he should cast himself into a fiery furnace rather than that he should put his fellow to shame in public. Once do we know this from Tamar of whom it says when she was brought forth, etc. Our rabbis taught if oil and myrtle are brought before one Beth I say that he first says a benediction over the oil and then over the myrtle, while Beth say that he first says a benediction over. The myrtle and then over the oil said Rabban Gamaliel I will turn the scale of oil we have the benefit both for smelling and for anointing of myrtle we have the benefit for smelling but not for anointing our Yohan and said the Halacha follows the one who turned the scale our Papa was once visiting our Huna the son of our Ika oil and myrtle were brought before him and he took up the myrtle and said the blessing over it first and then he said the blessing over the oil said the other to him does not your honor hold that the Halacha follows the one who turned the scale he replied thus said Rabbi the Halacha follows Beth Hillel. this was not correct however he said so only to excuse himself our rabbis taught if oil and wine are brought before one Beth I say that he first takes the oil in his right hand and the wine in his left hand and says a blessing over the oil and then a blessing over the wine Beth Hillel. however say that he takes the wine in his right hand and the oil in his left hand says the blessing over the wine and then over the oil before going out he smears it on the head of the attendant and if the
of one patch on top of another and this applies only to the upper but if it is on the sole there is no objection on the upper two this applies only to the public way but in the house there is no objection further this is the case only in summer but in the rainy season there is no objection he should not converse with a woman in the street are his said even with his wife it has been taught similarly even with his wife even with his daughter even with his sister because not everyone knows who are his female relatives he should not take a set meal with ignorant persons what is the reason perhaps he will be drawn into their ways he should not be last to enter the Beth Hamidrash because he will be called a transgressor some add that he should not take long strides because a master has said long strides diminish a man's eyesight by a 500 part what is the remedy he can restore it with drinking the sanctification wine of Sabbath nor should he carry himself stiffly since a master has said if one walks with a stiff bearing even for four cubits it is as if he pushed against the heels of the divine presence since it is written the whole earth is full of his glory Talmud Masbiraco the Talmud Masbiraco the Mishnah if salted food is set before him and bread with it he says a blessing over the salted food and this serves for the bread since the bread is only subsidiary to it this is the general principle whenever with one kind of food another is taken as Subsidiary a benediction is said over the principal kind and this serves for the subsidiary Gemara but is it ever possible for salted food to be the principal item and bread subsidiary to it or aha the son of our Aura replied citing Arashi this rule applies to one who eats the fruit of Jnesareth Rabbi Barhana said when we went after our Yohanan to eat the fruit of Jnesareth when there were a hundred of us we used each to take him ten and when we were ten we used each to take him a hundred and a hundred could not be got into a basket holding three seahs and he used to eat them all and swear that he had not tasted food not tasted food do you say say rather that he had not had a meal Arabah used to eat of them so freely that a fly slipped off his forehead Rmi and Rc used to eat of them till their hair fell out Rsimi and Bilikish ate until his mind began to wander and our Yohanan told the household of the Nasi and Arjuna the prince sent a band of men for him and they brought him to his house when Ardini came from Palestine. He stated that King Janius had a city in the king's mountain where they used to take out sixty myriads of dishes of salted fish for the men cutting down fig trees from one weekend to the next. When Rabin came, he stated that King Janius used to have a tree on the king's mountain from which they used to take down forty seahs of young pigeons from three broods every month. When our Isaac came, he said there was a town in the land of Israel named Gophneth in which there were eighty pairs of brothers, all priests who were married to eighty pairs of sisters. Also, all a priestly family. The rabbi searched from Surah to Nehardia and could not find a similar case save the daughters of Arhista who were married to Rami Bihama and Tamarak Bihama. And while they were priestesses, their husbands were not priests. Rab said a meal without salt is no meal. Arhai Bihava said in the name of our Yohanan, a meal without gravy is no meal. Mishnah if one has eaten grapes figs or pomegranates he says a grace of three blessings after them so are Gamaliel the sages however say one blessing which includes three are says if one ate only boiled vegetables and that is his meal he says after it the grace of three blessings if one drinks water to quench his thirst he says a benediction by whose word all things exist are Tarfon says who create many living things and their requirements Gamara what is the reason of our Gamaliel because it is written the land of wheat and barley etc and it is also written the land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness and it is written and thou shalt eat and be satisfied and bless the Lord thy God the rabbis however hold that the word land makes a break in the context our Gamaliel also must admit that land makes a break in the context he requires that for excluding one who choose wheat from the necessity of saying grace our Jacob be said in the name of our Hanan over anything belonging to the five species of cereals before partaking the blessing who creates all kinds of food is said and after partaking one blessing which includes three rabbi bimari said in the name of our joshua believe over anything belonging to the seven kinds before partaking the blessing who creates the fruit of the tree is said and after it the grace of one blessing which includes three abay asked ardini what is the one blessing which includes three he replied over fruit of the tree he says for the tree and for the fruit of the tree and for the produce of the field and for a desirable goodly and extensive land which thou didst give our ancestors to inherit to eat of its fruit and to be satisfied with its goodness have mercy o lord our god on israel thy people and on jerusalem thy city and on thy sanctuary and on thy altar and build jerusalem thy holy city speedily in our days and bring us up into the midst thereof and rejoice us therein for thou art good and doest good to all over the five Species of cereals one says for the provision and the sustenance and the produce of the field etc. And he concludes for the land and for the sustenance. How does one conclude in the case of fruits when Ardini came? He said in the name of Rabban Numun one concludes blessed is he who sanctifies Israel and Numuns. What do we say in this case over fruit? Arhista said for the land and for its fruits are Yohanan said for the land and for the fruits are Amram said they are not at variance the one. Blessing is for us in Babylon and the other for them in Palestine are Nam and be Isaac demurred to the shall eat and we bless you must therefore reverse the names thus Arhista said for the land and for the fruits are Yohanan said for the land and for its fruits Talmud. Mosbirakot be our Isaac be of Dimi said in the name of our master over eggs and over all kinds of meat the blessing said before partaking is by whose word etc. And after partaking who creates many living creatures etc. Vegetables, however, require no blessing after our Isaac, however, says that even vegetables also require a blessing after, but not water. Our Papa says water also Mars attracted as prescribed by our Isaac B of Dimi and our Shimai B Ashi as prescribed by our Isaac to remember, which is which think of one acting as two and two as one. Our Ashi said, When I think of it, I do as prescribed by all of them. We have learned whatever requires a blessing to be said after it requires a blessing before it, but some things require a blessing before, but not after. Now, this is right on the view of our Isaac B of Dimi, since it is to exclude vegetables and on the view of our Isaac to exclude water, but on the view of our Papa, what does it exclude? It is to exclude the performance of religious duties, and according to the Palestinians who, after removing their tefillin, say, Blessed be thou who has sanctified us with thy commandments and commanded us to observe thy statutes, what does it exclude? It excludes sense or gene. Said in the name of Rabbi an egg is superior in food value to the same quantity of any other kind of food when Rabin came from Palestine he said a lightly roasted egg is superior to six casey of fine flour when Ardini came he said a lightly roasted egg is better than six casey a hard baked egg than four and a boiled egg is better than the same quantity of any other kind of boiled food except meat our Akiva says even if one ate boiled vegetables etc is there any kind of boiled vegetable of which one can make a meal our Ashi replied the rule applies to the stock of cabbage our rabbis taught milk is good for the teeth but bad for the bowels horse beans are bad for the teeth but good for the bowels all raw vegetables make the complexion pale and all things not fully grown retard growth living beings restore vitality and that which is near the vital organs restores vitality cabbage for sustenance and beef for healing woe to the house through which vegetables are always passing it. Master has said milk is good for the teeth and bad for the bowels what is the remedy to chew it well and then spit it out horse beans are bad for the teeth but good for the bowels what is the remedy to boil them well and swallow them all raw vegetables make the complexion pale our Isaac said that is in the first meal taken after bloodletting our Isaac also said if one eats vegetables before the fourth hour of the day it is forbidden to talk with him what is the reason because his breath smells. Our Isaac also said it is forbidden to a man to eat raw vegetables before the fourth hour Amimar and Marzitra and Arashi were once sitting together when raw vegetables were set before them before the fourth hour Amimar and Arashi ate but Marzitra would not eat they said to him what is your reason because our Isaac said that if one eats vegetables before the fourth hour it is forbidden to converse with him because his breath smells see we have been eating and you have been conversing with us he Replied I hold with that other saying of our Isaac where he said that it is forbidden to a man to eat raw vegetables before the fourth hour things not fully grown retard growth are his said even a kid worth a Zeus this however is the case only with that which has not attained a fourth of its full size but if it has attained a fourth there is no objection living being restore vitality our papa said even tiny fishes from the pools that which is near the vital organs restores vitality our Ahabi Jacob said
unless one neglects to drink beer after it but if one drinks beer after it there is no harm if one quen chees is thirst with water etc what does this exclude redb Avin said it excludes one talmud moss birakota who is choked by a piece of meat art arfan says who create many living things and their requirements rob the son of arhin and said to obey according to others to our joseph what is the law he replied go forth and see how the public are accustomed to act chapterbi mission if three persons have eaten together it is their duty to invite one another to say grace one who has eaten dime or first tithe from which terima has been removed or second tithe or food belonging to the sanctuary that has been redeemed or an attendant who has eaten as much as an olive or a kuti and may be included in the three one who has eaten tibal or first tithe from which the terima has not been removed or second tithe or sanctified food which has not been redeemed or an attendant who has eaten less than the quantity of an olive or a gentile may not be counted women children and slaves may not be counted in the three how much must one have eaten to count as much as an olive or Judah says as much as an egg tomorrow whence is this derived rc says because scripture says oh magnify yet the lord with me and let us exalt his name together our bad derives it from here when i want proclaim the name of the lord ascribe yet to greatness unto our god our hand and be abba said whence to we learn that he who answers amen should not raise his voice above the one who says the blessing because it says oh magnify yet the lord with me and let us exalt his name together our simeon because he said whence do we learn that the one who translates is not permitted to raise his voice above that of the reader because it says moses spoke and god answered him by voice the words by voice need not have been inserted what then does by voice mean it means by the voice of moses it has been taught Similarly, the translator is not permitted to raise his voice above that of the reader. If the translator is unable to speak as loud as the reader, the reader should moderate his voice and read it has been stated if two have eaten together Rab and are Yohan and differ as to the rule to be followed. One says that if they wish to invite one another to say grace, they may do so. The other says that even if they desire to invite one another, they may not do so. We have learned if three persons have eaten together, it is their duty to invite one another. That means to say three, but not to know there. In the case of three, it is a duty here. In the case of two, it is optional. Come and here. If three persons have eaten together, it is their duty to invite one another to say grace, and they are not permitted to separate. This means to say three, but not two. Does it not know there is a special reason there why they may not separate because from the outset of the meal they laid upon themselves a duty. To invite one another come and here if an attendant is waiting on two persons he may eat with them even without their giving him permission if he was waiting on three he may not eat with them unless they give him permission there is a special reason their Talmud, Mos be because we assume that it is with their approval since either by makes the Simeon obligatory on them come and here women by themselves invite one another and slaves by themselves invite one another but women slaves and children together even if they desire to invite one another may not do so now a hundred women are no better than two men and yet it says women by themselves invite one another and slaves by themselves invite one another there is a special reason there because each has a mind of her own if that is so look at the next clause women and slaves together even though they desire to invite one another may not do so why not each has a mind there is a special reason in that case because it might lead to immorality we may conclude that it was Rab who said even though they two desire to invite one another they may not do so because our Dimi Joseph said in the name of Rab if three persons ate together and one of them went out the others call to him and count him for Simeon the reason is is it not that they call him but if they did not call him they could not invite one another there is a special reason there that the obligation to invite one another devolved upon them from the outset rather you may conclude that it is our Yohanan who said that even though they desire to invite one another they may not do so for Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan if two persons eat together one of them is exempted by the benediction of his fellow and we were perplexed to know what it was that he tells us for we have learned if he heard without responding amen he has performed his obligation and our Zara explained that he tells us that they do not invite one another to say Grace, we may therefore draw this conclusion. Rabbi Arhu not said to Arhu not, but the rabbis who came from the west say that if they desire to invite one another, they may do so, and must they not have heard this from Arhu? And no, they heard it from Rab before he went down to Babylon. The above text stated, Ardimi B. Joseph said in the name of Rab, if three persons ate together and one of them went out into the street, they can call to him and count him. For Simeon Abbe says this is only when they call to him, and he responds, Marzitra said this applies only to three, but if it is for the purpose of completing ten, they must wait till he comes. Arashi demurred to this. We should rather he said, suppose the contrary for nine look like ten, but two do not look like three. The law, however, is as laid down by Marzitra. What is the reason since they ten have to mention God's name? It is not proper that there should be less than ten. Abbe said we have a tradition that if two persons have eaten. Together it is their duty to separate it has been taught similarly if two persons have eaten together it is their duty to separate when is this case when they are both educated men but if one is educated and the other illiterate the educated one says the benedictions and this exempts the illiterate one Rabbi said the following statement was made by me independently and a similar statement has been made in the name of our Zerah if three persons have been eating together one breaks off to oblige two but two do not break off to oblige one but do they not did not our papa break off for Abamar his son he and another with him our papa was different because he went out of his way to do so Judah be Mirmar and Marsan of Arashi and Araha from fifty took a meal with one another no one of them was superior to the other that he should have the privilege of saying grace they said where the Mishnah learned that if three persons have eaten together it is their duty to invite one another to say grace. This is only where one of them is superior to the others, but where they are all on a level, perhaps it is better that the blessings should be separate. They thus said the grace each one for himself. Thereupon they came before Mirmar and he said to them, You have performed the obligation of grace, but you have not performed the obligation of Simeon. Should you say, Let us start again with Simeon? Simeon cannot be set out of its place. If one came and found three persons saying grace, what does he say after them? Arzibit says, Blessed and to be blessed be his name. Our Papa said, He answers, Amen. They are not really at variance. The one speaks of the case where he found them saying, Let us say grace, and the other where he found them saying, Blessed if he found them saying, Let us say grace. He answers, Blessed and to be blessed if he found them saying, Blessed he answers, Amen. One buried the taught one who answers, Amen. After his own blessings is to be commended, while another taught that this is. Reprehensible, there is no contradiction. The one speaks of the benediction who buildest Jerusalem, the other of the other benedictions Abbe used to give the response in a loud voice so that the workmen should hear and rise. Since the benediction who is good and does good is not prescribed by the Torah, Arashi gave the response in a low voice so that they should not come to think lightly of the benediction who is good and does good. Talmud, Masbirako, they are zero once was ill. Arabad went to visit him and made a vow saying, If the little one with scorched legs recovers, I will make a feast for the rabbis. He did recover and he made a feast for all the rabbis. When the time came to begin the meal, he said to our zero, Will your honor please commence for us? He said to him, Does not your honor accept the dictum of our Yohan and that the host should break bread? So here Arabad broke the bread for them. When the time came for saying grace, he said to him, Our zero, Will your honor please say grace? For us he replied does your honor not accept the ruling of Arhuna from Babylon who said that the one who breaks bread says grace whose view then did Arabah accept that expressed by our Yohanan in the name of our Simeon Biyohi the host breaks bread and the guest says grace the host breaks bread so that he should do so generously and the guest says grace so that he should bless the host how does he bless him may it be God's will that our host should never be ashamed in this world nor disgraced. In the next world Rabbi added some further items may he be very prosperous with all his estates and may his possessions and ours be prosperous and near town and may the accuser have no influence either over the works of his hands or of ours and may neither our host nor we be confronted with any evil thought or sin or transgression or iniquity from now and for all time to what point does the benediction of Simeon extend our nom and says up to the conclusion of let us bless our she's hate says up. To the conclusion of who sustains may we say that there is the same difference between Tanaim for one authority taught the grace after meals is either two or three benedictions while another has taught either three or four now we assume that all agree that who is good and does good is not scriptural is not then the difference between the two authorities cited this that the one who says two or three holds that the benediction of Simeon extends up to who susta
may know that the benediction who is good and does good is not scriptural from the fact that it commences with blessed but does not conclude with blessed for so it has been taught all benedictions commence with blessed and close with blessed except the blessing over fruits the blessing said over the performance of precepts one blessing which joins onto another and the last blessing alter the recital of the shema some of these commence with blessed but do not close with blessed talmud mas Birakot be while some close with blessed but do not open with blessed and who is good and does good opens with blessed but does not close with blessed this shows that it is a separate blessing our nomin be isaac said you may know that who is good and does good is not scriptural from the fact that it is omitted in the house of a mourner as it has been taught what blessing is said in the house of a mourner blessed is he that is good and does good our Akiva says blessed be the true judge and does one according to the first authority say blessed be he that is good and does good and not blessed be the true judge read he says also blessed be he that is good and does good marzitra visited arashi when the latter had suffered a bereavement and in the grace after meals he began and uttered the benediction who is good and does good god of truth true judge who judges in righteousness and takes away in righteousness who is sovereign in his universe to do as pleaseth him in it for all his ways our judgment for all is his and we are his people and his servants and for everything it is incumbent upon us to give thanks to him and to bless him he who closes up the breaches of Israel will close up this breach in Israel granting life where does he commence again Arzibit says in the name of Abay at the beginning the rabbis say at the place where he left off the law is at the place where he left off said the eggs large to our hate although you are venerable rabbis yet the Persians are better versed than you in the etiquette of a meal when there are two couches in the set the senior guest takes his place first and then the junior one above him when there are three couches the senior occupies the middle one the next to him in rank takes the place above him and the third one below him Arshis hate said to him so when he wants to talk to him he has to stretch himself and sit upright to do so he replied this does not matter to the Persians because they speak with gesticulation are She's hate asked the eggs large with whom do they commence the washing of the hands before the meal he replied with the senior one is then the senior one to sit still he exclaimed and wash his hands until they have all washed he replied they bring a table before him immediately with whom do they begin the washing after the meal he asked him he replied with the junior one present and is the senior one to sit with greasy hands until all have washed he replied they do not remove the table from before him till water is brought to him Arshis hate then said I only know a very in which it is taught what is the order of reclining when there are two couches in a set the senior one reclines first and then the junior takes his place below him when there are three couches the senior takes his place first the second next above him and then the third one below him washing before the meal commences with the senior one washing after the meal if there are five commences with the senior end. If there are a hundred, it commences with the junior until five are left, and then they start from the senior one. The saying of grace is assigned to the one to whom the washing thus reverts the supports Rab for our high. Be as she said in the name of Rab, whoever washes his hands first at the end of the meal has the right to say grace. Rab and our high were once dining with Rabbi. Rabbi said to Rab, Get up and wash your hands. Our high saw him trembling and said to him, Son of princes, he is telling you to think over the grace our rabbis taught. We do not give precedence to others either on the road or on a bridge. Talmud, Masbirko, they were in the washing of the greasy hands at the end of the meal. Once Rabin and Abbe were on the road, and the ass of Rabin got in front of Abbe, and he Rabin did not say to him, Will your honor proceed? Said Abbe, Since the student has come up from the west, he has grown proud when he arrived at the door of the synagogue. He said, Will your honor please enter? He Said to him, Was I not your honor up to now? He replied, Thus said, Are you and one gives precedence only in a doorway in which there is a mezuzah? You say only where there is a mezuzah, but not where there is no mezuzah. If that is so, then in the case of a synagogue in Beth Hamid Rash, also where there is no mezuzah, we do not give precedence. What you must say is in a doorway which is suitable for a mezuzah. Our Judah, the son of our Samuel, Bishalaf said in the name of Rab, the guest may not eat anything. Until the one who breaks bread has tasted our saffir sat and stated the statement was may not taste. What difference does it make in practice? It teaches that one must repeat the exact words of his teacher. Our rabbis taught to wait for one another before commencing on the dish, but three need not wait. The one who has broken bread stretches out his hand first, but if he wishes to show respect to his teacher or to anyone senior to himself, he may do so. Rabbi Barhana made a marriage feast for. His son in the house of our Samuel, son of Arkatna, and he first sat down and taught his son the one who acts as host may not break the bread until the guests have finished responding. Amen. Arhista said the bulk of the guests, Rabbi Bihama said to him, Why should this be the case only with the majority? Presumably it is because the benediction had not yet been completed. The same should apply also to a minority, for the benediction has not yet been completed. He replied, What I say is that whoever draws out the response of Amen longer than necessary is in error. Our rabbis taught the Amen uttered in response should be neither hurried nor curtailed nor orphaned, nor should one hurl the blessing as it were out of his mouth. Benazay says, If a man says an orphaned Amen in response, his sons will be orphans. If a hurried Amen, his days will be snatched away. If a curtailed Amen, his days will be curtailed. But if one draws out the Amen, his days and years will be prolonged once Rab and Samuel were sitting. At a meal and our Shimei Bihai joined them and ate very hurriedly said Rab to him what do you want to join us we have already finished said Samuel to him if they were to bring me mushrooms and pigeon to Abba would we not go on eating the disciples of Rab were once dining together when Araha entered they said a great man has come who can say grace for us he said to them do you think that the greatest presence says the grace one who was there from the beginning must say grace the law however is that the greatest says grace even though he comes in at the end one who had eaten Dime etc but this is not a proper food for him if he likes he can declare his possessions hefker in which case he becomes a poor man and it is suitable for him for we have learned Dime may be given to the poor to ear and also to billeted soldiers and Arhuna said Atana taught Batsham I say that Dime is not given to the poor and to billeted soldiers to eat or first tithe from which Teramah has been removed. This is obvious this had to be stated for the case in which the Levi came beforehand and thus obtained the first tithe in the year and he separated the teramah of the tithe but not the great teramah and the rule stated follows Arabab for Arabab said in the name of Reshlakish first tithe for which the Levi has come beforehand and obtained in the year is not liable to great teramah since it says ye shall offer up an eve offering of it for the Lord even a tenth part of the tithe. Bid you offer a tithe from the tithe not the great teramah plus the teramah of the tithe from the tithe said our Papa Juabe if that is so the same should be the case even if he anticipates it at the heap he replied it was in anticipation of your question that the text says Talmud, Mos Birakoth be out of all your tithes ye shall offer but still what reason have you for including corn in the year and not grain one has been turned into corn the other has not second tithe or food belonging to. The sanctuary that has been redeemed this is obvious we are dealing here with a case where for instance he has given the principal but not the additional fifth and he teaches us here that the fact that the fifth has not been given is no obstacle or if an attendant who has eaten as much as an olive etc this is obvious you might object that the attendant does not sit through the meal this teaches therefore that this is no objection to and may be included in the three why so wherein is he better than an amhyres and it has been taught an amhyres is not reckoned in for Ximian Abbe replied it refers to a kutian who is a haber rabbi said you may even take it to refer to a kutian who is an amhyres the passage cited referring to an amhyres as defined by the rabbis who join issue in this matter with armeir for it has been taught who is an amhyres anyone who does not eat non sacred food in ritual cleanness so armeir the rabbis however say anyone who does not tithe his Produce in the proper way now these Kutians do tithe their produce in the proper way since they are very scrupulous about any injunction written in the Torah for a master has said whenever the Kutians have adopted a Mizwa they are much more particular with it than the Jews are rabbis taught who is an Amhyar as anyone who does not recite the Shema evening and morning this is the view of our Eliezer our Joshua says anyone who does not put on Tefillin Ben says anyone who has not a fringe on his garment our Nathan says anyone who has not a Mizuza on his door our Nathan B. Joseph says anyone who has sons and does not bring them up to the study of the Torah others say even if one has learned scripture and Mishn
that it is as indicated by the letters answer second tithe etc. This is obvious it is required for the case in which the tithe etc. has been redeemed but not properly redeemed second tithe for instance if it has been redeemed for bar silver since the all-merciful said thou shalt bind up wizard of the silver in thy hands implying silver on which a form zura is stamped as to food belonging to the sanctuary if for instance it has been rendered profane for its equivalent in land but has not been redeemed for money whereas the all-merciful laid down he shall give the money and it shall be assured unto him or the attendant who has eaten less than an olive this is obvious since the first clause states the rule for the quantity of an olive the second clause states it for less than an olive a gentile may not be counted this is obvious we are dealing here with the case of a proselyte who has been circumcised but has not yet made ablution for our zera said in the name of our Yohanan one does not become a proselyte until he has been circumcised and has performed ablution and so long as he has not performed ablution he is a gentile women slaves and children are not counted in the three our Jose said an infant in the cradle may be counted for Ximian but we have learned women slaves and children may not be counted he adopts the view of our Joshua B. Levi for our Joshua B. Levi said although it was laid down that an infant in the cradle cannot be counted for Ximian yet he can be counted too. Make up ten our Joshua B. Levi also said nine and a slave may be joined to make up ten the following was cited in objection once our Eliezer entered a synagogue and not finding their ten he liberated his slave and used him to complete the ten this was because he liberated him otherwise he could not have done so he really required two and he liberated one and one he used to make up the ten but how could he act so seeing that Rab Judah has said if one liberates his slave he transgresses a positive. Precept since it says they shall be your bondmen forever if it is for a religious purpose it is different but this is a religious act which is carried out by means of a transgression a religious act which affects a whole company is different our Joshua B. Levi also said a man should always rise early to go to synagogue so that he may have the merit of being counted in the first ten since if even a hundred come after him he receives the reward of all of them the reward of all of them say you. Say rather he is given a reward equal to that of all of them are who said nine and the ark joined together to be counted as ten said our to him is the ark of man I mean said Arhuna that when nine look like ten they may be joined together some say this means when they are all close together others say when they are scattered RMI said two and the Sabbath may be joined together said our to him is the Sabbath of man what RMI really said was that two scholars who sharpen one another. In the knowledge of the Halacha may count as three for Simeon our Hisda gave an example for instance I and Arshis hate Arshis hate gave an example for instance I and Arhisda are Yohanan said a boy who has reached puberty before his years may be counted for Simeon it has been taught similarly a boy who has grown two hairs may be counted for Simeon but if he has not grown two hairs he may not be counted and we are not particular about a boy now this seems to contain the contradiction you first say. That if he has grown two hairs he may count and if not he may not and then you say we are not particular with a boy what case does this include is it not Talmud, Masbirko to include a boy who shows signs of puberty before his years the law however is not as laid down in all these statements but as in the statement of our nominee boy who knows to whom the benediction is addressed may be counted for Simeon Abay and Rabba when boys were once sitting in the presence of Rabba said Rabba. To them to whom do we address the benedictions they replied to the all merciful and where does the all merciful abide Rabba pointed to the roof Abay went outside and pointed to the sky said Rabba to them both of you will become rabbis this accords with the popular saying every pumpkin can be told from its stock Rab Judah the son of our Samuel B. Shalaf said in the name of Rab if nine persons have eaten corn and one vegetables they may combine our Zara said I asked Rab Judah what of eight what of Seven and he replied it makes no difference certainly if six were eating corn I did not need to ask said our Jeremiah to him you were quite right not to ask what was the reason there in the first case because there is a majority eating corn here too there is a majority he however thought that perhaps an easily recognizable majority is required King Janay and his queen were taking a meal together now after he had put the rabbis to death there was no one to say grace for them he said to his spouse I wish we had someone to say grace for us she said to him swear to me that if I bring you one you will not harm him he swore to her and she brought Simeon Bishay to her brother she placed him between her husband and herself saying see what honor I pay you he replied it is not you who honor me but it is the Torah which honors me as it is written exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her he Janay said to her you see that he does not acknowledge any authority they gave him a cup of wine to say grace over he said how shall I say the grace shall I say blessed is he of whose sustenance Janay and his companions have eaten so he drank that cup and they gave him another and he said grace over it our Abba the son of our high B Abba said Simeon Bishay in acting thus followed his own view for the said our high B Abba in the name of Yohanan a man cannot say grace on behalf of others until he has eaten at least the size of an olive of corn food with them even as it was taught our Simeon B Gamaliel says if one went up on the couch and reclined with them even though he only dipped a little bit with them in brine and ate only one fig with them he can be combined with them for Simeon now he can be combined with them but he cannot say grace on behalf of others until he eats the quantity of an olive of corn food it has also been stated our Hanabi Judah said in the name of Rabbi Talmud Masbirakoth B even though he only dipped a little bit with them in brine or ate with them only one fig he can be combined with them but for saying grace on behalf of others he is not qualified until he eats the quantity of an olive of corn food with them our Hanabi Judah said in the name of Rabbi the law is that if he ate with them a vegetable leaf and drank a cup of wine he can be combined but he cannot say grace on behalf of others until he eats with them the quantity of an olive of corn food our said Moses instituted for Israel the benediction who feeds at the time when manna descended for them Joshua instituted for them the benediction of the land when they entered the land David and Solomon instituted the benediction which closes who buildest Jerusalem David instituted the words for Israel that people and for Jerusalem thy city and Solomon instituted the words for the great and holy house the benediction who is good and bestows good was instituted in Jabna with reference to those who were slain. In Bethar for our Matina said on the day on which permission was given to bury those slain in Bethar they ordained in Jabna that who is good and bestows good should be said who is good because they did not putrefy and who bestows good because they were allowed to be buried our rabbis taught the order of grace after meals is as follows the first benediction is that of who feeds the second is the benediction of the land the third is who buildest Jerusalem the fourth is who is good and bestows good on Sabbath the third blessing commences with consolation and closes with consolation and the holiness of the day is mentioned in the middle of this blessing our Eliezer says if he likes he can mention it in the consolation or he can mention it in the blessing of the land or he can mention it in the benediction which the rabbis instituted in Jabna the sages however say that it must be said in the consolation blessing the sages say the same thing as the first ten they differ in the Case where he actually did say it in some other place our rabbis taught where is the saying of grace intimated in the Torah in the verse and thou shalt eat and be satisfied and blessed this signifies the benediction of who feeds the Lord thy God this signifies the benediction of Simeon for the land this signifies the blessing for the land the good this signifies who buildest Jerusalem and similarly it says this good mountain and Lebanon which he has given thee this signifies the blessing of who is good and bestows good this accounts for the grace after meals how can we prove that there should be a blessing before food you have an argument before she arrive if when one is full he says a grace how much more so should he do so when he is hungry rabbi says this argument is not necessary and thou shalt eat and be satisfied and blessed signifies the benediction of who feeds the responses of Simeon are derived from O magnify the Lord with me for the land this signifies the blessing of the land. The good this signifies who buildest Jerusalem and so it says this goodly mountain and Lebanon who is good and bestows good was instituted in Jabna this accounts for the grace after meals whence do I learn that a blessing must be said before food because it says which he has given thee implying as soon as he has given thee our Isaac says this is not necessary for see it says and he shall bless thy bread and thy water read not you barak and he shall bless but you barak and say a blessing and when is it called bread before it is eaten our Nathan says this is not necessary for see it says as soon as ye become into the city ye shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat for the people will not eat until he come because he doth bless the
is not necessary for see it says the good where it need only have said good good signifies the Torah and so it says for I give you a good doctrine the good signifies the building of Jerusalem and so it says this good mount and Lebanon it has been taught if one does not say the words a desirable good and extensive land in the blessing of the land and does not mention the kingdom of the house of David in the blessing who buildest Jerusalem he has not performed his obligation Nahum the elder says he must mention in it the second blessing the covenant our Jose says he must mention in it the Torah Palamo says he must mention the covenant before the Torah since the latter was given with only three covenants Talmud Masbirakoth the Talmud Masbirakoth but the former with thirteen our Abba says he must express thanksgiving at the beginning and end of it or at the very least once and one who omits to do so at least once is blameworthy and whoever concludes the blessing of the land with who giveth lands in inheritance and who buildest Jerusalem with the word Savior of Israel is a bore and whoever does not mention the covenant and the Torah in the blessing of the land and the kingdom of the house of David and who buildest Jerusalem has not performed his obligation that supports our Allah for our Allah said in the name of our Jacob Biaha in the name of our teacher whoever omits to mention covenant and Torah in the blessing of the land and the kingdom of the house of David and who buildest Jerusalem has not performed his obligation there is a difference of opinion between Abba Jose Bidos Tai and the rabbis one authority says that God's kingship must be mentioned in the blessing who is good and bestows good the other says it need not be mentioned the one who says it must be mentioned holds that this blessing has only rabbinic sanction the one who says it need not be mentioned holds that it has scriptural sanction our rabbis taught how does one conclude the blessing of it Building of Jerusalem, our Jose, son of our Judah, says Savior of Israel, Savior of Israel, and not builder of Jerusalem, say rather Savior of Israel. Also, Rabbi Barhana was once at the house of the Exilarch. He mentioned one at the beginning of the third blessing, and both at the end. Our Hisdah said, Is it a superior way to conclude with two? And has it not been taught? Rabbi says that we do not conclude with two. The above text stated, Rabbi says that we do not conclude with two in objection to. This Levi pointed out to Rabbi that we say for the land and for the food, it means he replied, A land that produces food, but we say for the land and for the fruits, it means a land that produces fruits, but we say who sanctifies Israel and the appointed seasons, it means Israel who sanctify the seasons, but we say who sanctifies Israel and new moons, it means Israel who sanctify new moons, but we say who sanctifies the Sabbath, Israel and the seasons. This is the exception. Why then? Should it be different in this case it is one act and the other two each distinct and separate and what is the reason for not concluding with two because we do not make religious ceremonies into bundles how do we decide the matter our sheesh hate says if one opens with have mercy on that people Israel he concludes with savior of Israel if he opens with have mercy on Jerusalem he concludes with who buildest Jerusalem our and however said even if one opens with have mercy on Israel he concludes with who buildest Jerusalem because it says the Lord doth build up Jerusalem he gathereth together the dispersed of Israel as if to say when does God build Jerusalem when he gathereth the dispersed of Israel our Zara said to our Hisdal let the master come and teach us grace he replied the grace after meals I do not know myself and shall I teach it to others he said to him what do you mean once he replied I was at the house of the exilarch and El said grace after the meal and our sheesh hate stretched out his neck at me like a serpent, and why? Because I had made no mention either of covenant or of Torah or of kingship, and why did you not mention them? Asked our Zerah because he replied, I followed our Hanael, citing Rab for our Hanael said in the name of Rab, if one has omitted to mention covenant Torah and kingship, he has still performed his obligation covenant because it does not apply to women Torah and kingship because they apply neither to women nor to slaves, and you he exclaimed abandoned. All those other Tanaim and Amram and followed Rab, Rab Bar Hanna said in the name of our Yohanan, the blessing who is good and bestows good must contain mention of God's kingship. What does he tell us that any benediction which does not contain mention of God's kingship is no proper blessing? Our Yohanan has already said this once our Zerah said he tells us that it requires kingship to be mentioned twice, once for itself and once for the benediction who buildest Jerusalem, if that is so we should require three times once for itself once for who buildest Jerusalem and once for the blessing of the land hence what you must say is why do we not require one for the blessing of the land because it is a benediction closely connected with the one which precedes it and who buildest Jerusalem should also not require it being a benediction closely connected with the one which precedes it the fact is that strictly speaking the blessing who buildest Jerusalem also does not require it but since the kingdom of the house of David is mentioned it is not seemly that the kingship of heaven also should not be mentioned our papa said what here you had and meant is this it requires two mentions of the kingship of heaven besides its own our zero was one sitting behind our and our was sitting facing our and as he Argidal said he said if one forgot and did not mention in the great sabbath he says blessed be he who gave sabbaths for rest to his people Israel in love for a son and a covenant blessed is he who sanctifies the Sabbath. Yerhuna said to him who made the statement. He replied, Rabbi. Then continued, if one forgot and did not mention the festival, he says, Blessed is he who gave holy days to his people Israel for joy and for remembrance. Blessed is he who sanctifies Israel and the festivals. He again asked him who made the statement, and he answered, Rabbi. Then continued, if one forgot and did not mention the new moon, he says, Blessed is he who gave new moons to his people Israel for remembrance. But said Arzera, I do not know whether he also said that he must add for joy or not, whether he concluded with a benediction or not, or whether he said it on his own authority or was repeating the words of his teacher. Once when Arghidal Bimenumi was in the presence of Arnam and Arnam made a mistake in the grace Talmud, Masbirakoth B, and he went back to the beginning. He said to him, What is the reason why your honor does this? He replied, Because Arshila. Said in the name of Rab, if one makes a mistake, he goes back to the beginning. But Arhuna has said in the name of Rab, if he goes wrong, he says, Blessed be he who gave, etc. He replied, Has it not been stated in reference to this that Armina Shiabi Tahilafa said in the name of Rab, this is the case only where he has not commenced who is good and bestows good. But if he has commenced who is good and bestows good, he goes back to the beginning. Redb Avin said in the name of Aramrum, quoting Arnaman who had it from Samuel, if one by mistake omitted to mention new moon in the Tefila, he is made to begin again. If in the grace after meals, he is not made to begin again. Said Redb Avin to Aramrum, why this difference between Tefila and grace? He replied, I also had the same difficulty, and I asked Arnaman, and he said to me from Mar Samuel, personally, I have not heard anything on the subject, but let us see for ourselves. I should say that in the case of Tefila, which is obligatory, he is made to begin again but in the case of a meal which he can eat or not eat as he pleases he is not made to begin again but if that is so said the other in the case of sabbaths and festivals on which it is not possible for him to abstain from eating i should also say that if he makes a mistake he must go back to the beginning he replied that is so for arshila said in the name of rab if one goes wrong he goes back to the beginning but has not arhuna said in the name of rab that if one goes wrong he says blessed is he who gave etc has it not been stated in reference to this that this is the case only if he has not commenced who is good and bestows good but if he has commenced who is good and bestows good he goes back to the beginning how much must one have eaten to count etc this would seem to show that our Meir's standard is an olive and our is an egg but we understand the opposite since we have learned similarly if one has left jerusalem and remembers that he has in his possession Holy flesh, if he has gone beyond Zophim, he burns it on the spot, and if not, he goes back and burns it in front of the temple with some of the wood piled on the altar. For what minimum quantity do they turn back? Our Meir says, in either case, the size of an egg. Our Judah says, in either case, the size of an olive. Our Yohanan said, the names must be reversed. Abbe said, there is no need to reverse in this case of Ksimian. They differ in the interpretation of a scriptural text. Our Meir holds that thou shalt eat. Refers to eating, and thou shalt be satisfied to drinking, and the standard of eating is an olive. Our Judah holds that, and thou shalt eat and be satisfied signifies an eating which gives satisfaction, and this must be as much as an egg. In the other case, they differ in their reasoning. Our Meir considers that the return for a thing should be analogous to its defilement, just as its defilement is conditioned by the quantity of an egg, so is the return for it
Yet the Lord who is blessed Gemara Samuel said a man should never exclude himself from the general body we have learned if there are three beside himself he says blessed Talmud, Masbira Kotharit he may also say blessed but all the same to say let us bless is preferable for our Adabi Ahabah said the school of Rab say we have learned that a company consisting of from six to ten may divide now if you say that let us bless is preferable we can see a reason why they should divide but if you say that Bless is preferable why should they divide you must therefore conclude that let us bless is preferable and so we do conclude it has been taught to the same effect whether he says bless or let us bless no fault is to be found with him for this but those who are punctilious do find fault with him for this and from the way a man says the benedictions it may be recognized whether he is a scholar or not for example rabbi says if he says and by his goodness he is a scholar if he says and from his goodness he shows himself an ignoramus set of a to our but it is written and from thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed forever in a petition it is different but of a petition also it is written open thy mouth wide and i will fill it that was written with reference to words of torah it has been taught rabbi says if one says and by his goodness we live he shows himself a scholar if he says they live he shows himself an ignoramus the scholars of Nihar will state the opposite but the law is not as stated by the scholars of Nihar Bilar Yohanan says if one says let us bless him of whose bounty we have partaken he shows himself a scholar if he says let us bless the one of whose bounty we have partaken he shows himself an ignoramus said Araha the son of Rabba to Arashi but do we not say we will bless the one who wrought for our ancestors and for us all these miracles he replied there the meaning is obvious for who performs miracles the holy one blessed be here Yohanan said if one says blessed is he of whose bounty we have eaten he shows himself a scholar if he says for the food which we have eaten he shows himself an ignoramus Arhuna the son of Arjashua said this is the case only where there are three since the name of heaven is not mentioned in the Ksimian but if there are ten since the name of heaven is mentioned it is clear what is meant as we have learned corresponding to his invocation the others respond blessed be the Lord our God the God of Israel did. God of hosts who dwells among the cherubim for the food which we have eaten it is the same whether there are ten or ten myriads there seems here to be a contradiction you say it is the same whether there are ten or ten myriads which would show that they are all alike then it states if there are a hundred he says so and so if there are a thousand he says if there are ten thousand he says our Joseph said there is no contradiction the one statement expresses the view of our Akiva the other of our Jose. The Galilean since we have learned our Jose the Galilean says the formula of invocation corresponds to the number assembled as it says bless ye God in all assemblies even the Lord ye that are from the fountain of Israel said our Akiva what do we find in the synagogue etc and what does our Akiva make of the verse cited by our Jose the Galilean he wants it for the following lesson as it has been taught our mayor used to say once do we learn that even children yet unborn in their mother's womb chant today. Song by the Red Sea because it says bless ye the Lord in full assemblies even the Lord ye that are from the fountain of Israel what says the other our Jose to this he derives the lesson from the word fountain Rabbah said the Halachah is as laid down by our Akiva Rabbah and our Hamabib once dined at the house of the Exil Arch and our Hamabib got up and commenced to look about for a hundred said Rabbah to him there is no need for this for thus said Rabbah the Halachah is as stated by our Akiva Rabbah said when we take a meal at the house of the Exil Arch we say grace in groups of three why not in groups of ten because the Exil Arch might hear them and be angry but could not the grace of the Exil Arch suffice for them since everybody would respond loudly they would not hear the one who says grace Rabbah Tosfaya said if three persons had a meal together and one said grace for himself before the others his Simeon is effective for them but theirs is not effective for him since Simeon cannot be said. Out of its place, our Ishmael says Raphram B. Papa once attended the synagogue of A.B. Igobar. He was called up to read in the scroll and he said, Bless ye the Lord, and stopped without adding who is to be blessed. The whole congregation cried out, Bless ye the Lord who is to be blessed. Rabbah said to him, You black pot, why do you want to enter into controversy? And besides, the general custom is to use the formula of our Ishmael Mishnah. If three persons have eaten together, they may not separate for grace. Similarly, with four and similarly with five, six may divide and higher numbers up to ten between ten and twenty. They may not divide if two groups eat in the same room as long as some of the one can see some of the other. They combine for Ksimian, but otherwise each group makes Ksimian for itself. A blessing is not said over the wine until water is put in it. So our Eliza the sages, however, say that the blessing may be said tomorrow. What does this tell us? We have already learned it once three persons. Who have eaten together must say Simeon. This teaches us the same thing as was stated by our Abba in the name of Samuel. If three persons have sat down to eat even though they have not yet commenced, they are not at liberty to separate. Another version our Abba said in the name of Samuel. What is meant is this if three persons sit down to eat together even though each eats of his own loaf, they are not at liberty to separate. Or it may teach us the same as Arhuna for Arhuna said if three persons from these groups come together, they are not at liberty to separate. Arhista said this is only if they come from three groups of three men. Each Rabba said Talmud, Mosbirakoth be this applies only if the groups had not already counted them for Simeon, but if they had reckoned upon them where they were, the obligation of Simeon has departed from them. Said Rabba once do I derive this rule because we have learned if the half of a bed has been stolen or lost or if a bed has been divided by brothers or Partners, it cannot receive uncleanness if it is restored to its original state. It can receive uncleanness thenceforward, thenceforward it can, but not retrospectively. This shows that from the time it was divided, uncleanness no longer attached to it. So here, once they had used them for Ksimian, the obligation of Ksimian no longer attached to them. Two groups, etc. A tenant taught if there is an attendant waiting on both the attendant combines them. A blessing is not said over wine. Our rabbis taught if wine has not yet been mixed with water, we do not say over it the blessing who creates the fruit of the vine, but who creates the fruit of the tree, and it can be used for washing the hands once water has been mixed with it. We say over it the blessing who creates the fruit of the vine, and it may not be used for washing the hands. So our Eliza the sages, however, say in either case, we say over it the blessing who creates the fruit of the vine, and we do not use it for washing the hands whose view. Is followed in the statement of Samuel. A man may use bread for any purpose he likes. Whose view that of our Eliezer, our Jose, son of our Hannah, said the sages agree with our Eliezer in the matter of the cup of wine used for grace. That a blessing should not be said over it until water has been added. What is the reason our Ashai said for a religious ceremony? We require the best and according to the rabbis for what kind of drink is undiluted wine suitable? It is suitable for mixing with karyotis. Our rabbis taught four things have been said with reference to bread. Raw meat should not be placed on bread. A full cup should not be passed along over bread. Bread should not be thrown, and a dish should not be propped up on bread. Amimar and Marzitra and Arashi were once taking a meal together. Dates and pomegranates were served to them, and Marzitra took some and threw them in front of Arashi as his portion. He said to him, Does not your honor agree with what has been taught that eatables should not? Be thrown, he replied that was laid down with reference to bread, but it has been taught that just as bread is not to be thrown, so eatables should not be thrown. But he replied it has also been taught that although bread is not to be thrown, eatables may be thrown. But in fact, there is no contradiction. One statement refers to things which are spoiled by throwing the other to things which are not spoiled. Our rabbis taught one can be run through pipes before the bridegroom and the bride and roasted. Ears of corn and nuts may be thrown in front of them in the summer season, but not in the rainy season, while cakes may not be thrown in front of them either in the summer or the rainy season. Rab Judah said if one forgot and put food into his mouth without saying a blessing, he shifts it to the side of his mouth and says the blessing one buried the taught that he swallows it, and another taught that he spits it out, and yet another taught that he shifts it to one side. There is no contradiction where. It says that he swallows it the reference is to liquids where it says that he spits it out the reference is to something which is not spoiled thereby and when it says that he shifts it the reference is to something which would be spoiled by being spat out Talmud, Masbirakotha but why should he not also shift to one side anything which would not be spoiled and say the blessing our Isaac Kiskesa gave the reason in the presence of our Jose son of our Avin quoting our Yohanan because it says my mouth
Nothing he is forbidden to drink new wine but permitted to drink old wine. This proves that we are dealing with old wine. Our rabbis taught six things were said with reference to asparagus. It is only taken when the wine is undiluted and from a full cup it is received in the right hand and held in the left hand. When drunk one should not talk after drinking it nor stop in the middle of drinking it and it should be returned only to the person who served it. One should spit after drinking it and he should take immediately after it only something of the same kind but it has been taught he should take immediately after it only bread there is no contradiction the one statement applies to a brew of wine the other to a brew of beer one authority teaches it is good for liat and bad for ramat while another teaches that it is good for ramat and bad for liat there is no contradiction one statement speaks of a brew of wine the other of a brew of beer one authority teaches that if he spits after it he will suffer another that if he does not spit after it he will suffer there is no contradiction the one statement speaks of a brew of wine the other of a brew of beer are as she said now that you say that if he does not spit after it he will suffer he should eject the liquid even in the presence of a king or ishmael be elisha said three things were told me by Suriel, the officer of the divine presence do not take your shirt from the hand of your attendant when dressing in the morning and do not let water be poured over your hands by one who has not already washed his own hands and do not return a cup of asparagus brew to anyone save the one who has handed it to you because a company of demons according to others a band of destroying angels lie in wait for a man and say when will the man do one of these things so that we can catch him or Joshua B. Levi says three things were told me by the angel of death do not take your shirt from your attendant when dressing in the morning and do not let water be poured on your hands by one who has not washed his own hands and do not stand in front of women when they are returning from the presence of a dead person because I go leaping in front of them with my sword in my hand and I have permission to harm if one should happen to meet them what is his remedy let him turn aside four cubits if there is a river let him cross it and if there is another road let him take it and if there is a wall let him stand behind it and if he cannot do any of these things let him turn his face away and say and the Lord said unto Satan the Lord rebuked thee O Satan etc until they have passed by our Zerah said in the name of our vow according to others it was taught in the very the ten things have been said in connection with the cup used for grace after meals it requires to be rinsed and washed it must be undiluted and full it requires crowning and wrapping it must be taken up with both hands and placed in the right hand it must be raised a hand breadth from the ground and he who says the blessing must fix his eyes on it some add that he must send it round to the members of his household are Yohanan said we only know of for rinsing washing undiluted and full eight and a taught rinsing refers to the inside washing to the outside are Yohanan said whoever says the blessing over a full cup is given an inheritance without bounds as it says and full with the blessing of the Lord possess thou the sea and the south are Jose son of Arhanan says he is privileged to inherit two worlds this world and the next crowning rab judah crowned it with disciples are his da surrounded it with cups and undiluted arshis hate set up to the blessing of the land wrapping our papa used to wrap himself in his robe and sit down to say grace over a cup arsi spread a kerchief over his head it is taken in both hands our high papa said what is the scriptural warrant for this lift up your hands in holiness and bless ye the lord and placed in the right hand are high b abba said in the name of our yohanan the earlier students asked should the left hand support the right arashi said since the earlier students inquired and the question was not decided talmud mas birakothi we will follow the more stringent view he raises it a hand breadth from the ground arahabi hanan said what scriptural text have we for this i will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the lord he fixes his eyes on it so that his attention should not wander from it he sends it round to the members of his household so that his wife may be blessed. Allah was once at the house of Arnaman they had a meal and he said grace and he handed the cup of benediction to Arnaman. Arnaman said to him please send the cup of benediction to Yalfa. He said to him thus said are Yohanan the fruit of a woman's body is blessed only from the fruit of a man's body since it says he will also bless the fruit of thy body. It does not say the fruit of her body but the fruit of thy body. It has been taught similarly once do we know that the fruit of a woman's body is only blessed from the fruit of a man's body because it says he will also bless the fruit of thy body. It does not say the fruit of her body but the fruit of thy body. Meanwhile Yalfa heard and she got up in a passion and went to the wine store and broke four hundred jars of wine. Arnaman said to him let the master send her another cup. He sent it to her with a message all that wine can be counted as a Benediction she returned answer gossip comes from headless and vermin from rags RC said one should not speak over the cup of benediction RC also said one should not speak over the cup of punishment what is the cup of punishment our nomin B Isaac said a second cup it has been taught similarly he who drinks an even number should not say grace because it says prepare to meet thy God O Israel and this one is not fitly prepared our vow said according to others it was taught in the very the one who eats as he walks says grace standing if he eats standing up he says grace sitting if he eats reclining he sits up to say grace the law is that in all cases he says grace sitting chapterbii mission these are the points of difference between Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel in relation to a meal Beth Shammai say that the benediction is first said over the day and then over the wine while Beth Hillel say that the benediction is first said over the wine and then over the day Beth Shammai say that washing the hands precedes the filling of the cup while Beth Hillel say that the filling of the cup precedes the washing of the hands Beth Shammai say that after wiping his hands with a napkin the diner places it on the table while Beth Hillel say that he places it on the cushion Beth Shammai say that after the meal the floor is swept before the washing of the hands while Beth Hillel say that the diners wash their hands and then the floor is swept Beth Shammai say that the proper order is like grace spices and havdalah while Beth Hillel say light spices grace and havdalah Beth Shammai say that the blessing over light concludes with the words who created the light of the fire while Beth Hillel say that the words are who is creating the lights of the fire a benediction may not be said over the lights or the spices of idolaters or over the lights or the spices of dead or over the lights or the spices of idolatry and a blessing is not said over the light until it has been utilized if one has eaten and forgotten to say grace. Beth Shammai say that he must return to the place where he ate and say the grace while Beth Hillel say that he should say it in the place where he remembered until when can he say the grace until sufficient time has passed for the food in his stomach to be digested if wine is served to them after the food and that is the only cup there. Beth Shammai say that a blessing is first said over the wine and then the grace over the food. While Beth Hillel say that a blessing is first said over the food and then over the wine one says amen after a blessing said by an Israelite but not after a blessing said by a Kutian unless the whole of it has been heard. Gemara our rabbis taught the points of difference between Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel in relation to a meal are as follows. Beth Shammai say that the blessing is first said over the sanctity of the day and then over the wine because it is on account of the day that the wine is used and moreover the day has already become holy before the wine has been brought Beth Hillel say that a blessing is said over the wine first and then over the day because the wine provides the occasion for saying a benediction another explanation is that the blessing over wine is said regularly while the blessing of the day is said only at infrequent intervals and that which comes regularly always has precedence over that which comes infrequently the halachah is as laid down by Beth Hillel what is the point of the other explanation should you say that there in explanation of Beth Shammai's view two reasons are given and here in explanation of Beth Hillel's only one we reply there are two here also the second one being that the blessing over wine is regular and the blessing of the day infrequent and that which is regular has precedence over that which is infrequent and the halachah is as stated by Beth Hillel this is self-evident for the bath coal went forth and Proclaimed so if you like I can reply that the statement was made before the bath call had issued forth and if you like I can say that it was made after the bath call Talmud, Mas Birakote and that it represents the view of our Joshua who said that we pay no attention to a bath call but do Beth Shammai hold that the blessing over the day is more important seeing that it has been taught when one goes into his house on the outgoing of Sabbath he says blessings over wine and light and spices and then he says the Havdalah benediction if he has only one cup he keeps it for after the meal and then says the other blessings in order after it but how do you know that this represents the view of Beth Shammai perhaps it represents the view of Beth Hillel do not imagine such a thing for it mentions first light and then spices and
That it should not seem to be a burden on us, but do Bet I hold that grace requires a cup of wine, seeing that we have learned if wine is served to them after the food and that is the only cup there. Bet I say that a blessing is first said over the wine and then the grace over the food does not this mean that he says a blessing over it and drinks it. No, he says a blessing over it and puts it aside, but a master has said after saying the blessing one must taste it, he does taste it. But a master has said if he tastes it, he spoils it, he tastes it with his finger, but a master has said the cup of benediction must have a certain quantity and he diminishes it. We must suppose that he has more than the prescribed quantity, but it says if there is only that cup, there is not enough for two, but more than enough for one. But our high taught I say that he says a blessing over wine and drinks it and then says grace to Tanaim report Bet Shammai differently, Bet Shammai. Say etc. Our rabbis taught Bet Shammai say that washing of the hands precedes the filling of the cup, for should you say that the filling of the cup comes first, there is a danger lest liquid on the back of the cup will be rendered unclean through one's hands and it in turn will render the cup unclean, but would not the hands make the cup itself unclean? Hands receive uncleanness in second degree and that which has received uncleanness in the second degree cannot pass on the uncleanness to a third. Degree in the case of non-sacred things save through liquids Beth Hillel however say that the cup is first filled and then the hands are washed for if you say that the hands are washed first there is a danger lest the liquid on the hands should become unclean through the cup and should then in turn make the hands unclean but would not the cup make the hands themselves unclean a vessel does not make a man unclean but would not the cup render unclean the liquid inside it we are here dealing with a vessel the outside of which has been rendered unclean by liquid in which case its inside is clean and its outside unclean as we have learned if the outside of a vessel has been rendered unclean by liquids its outside is unclean Talmud, Mos Birakothi while its inside its rim its handle and its haft are clean if its inside has been rendered unclean it is all unclean what is the point at issue between them Beth Shammai hold that it is forbidden to use a vessel the outside of which has been rendered unclean by liquids for fear of drippings and consequently there is no need to fear that the liquid on the hands will be rendered unclean by the cup Beth Hillel on the other hand hold that it is permitted to use a vessel the outside of which has been rendered unclean by liquids considering that drippings are unusual and consequently there is a danger lest the liquid on the undried hands should be rendered unclean through the cup another explanation is so that the meal should follow immediately the washing of the hands what is the point of this other explanation Beth Hillel argued thus with Beth even from your standpoint that it is forbidden to use a vessel the outside of which has been rendered unclean by liquids for fear of drippings even so our ruling is superior because the washing of the hands is immediately followed by the meal Beth say that after wiping his hand with the napkin etc our rabbis taught Beth say that the diner after Wiping his hands with the napkin places it on the table for if you say that he places it on the cushion there is a danger lest liquid on the napkin may be rendered unclean through the cushion and then in turn render the hands unclean but will not the cushion make the napkin itself unclean one vessel does not render another unclean but will not the cushion make the man himself unclean a vessel does not render a man unclean Beth Hillel however say that he puts it on the cushion for if you say that he puts it on the table there is a fear lest the liquid on the napkin should be rendered unclean through the table and should in turn render the food unclean but will not the table render the food on it unclean we are dealing here with the table which is unclean in the second degree and that which is unclean in the second degree does not pass on uncleanness to a third degree in the case of non-sacred things save through the medium of liquids what is the point at issue between them Beth? Shammai hold that it is forbidden to use a table which is unclean in the second degree for fear lest it may be used by persons eating terimah while Beth Hillel hold that it is permissible to use a table which is unclean in the second degree since persons who eat terimah are careful to avoid such another explanation is that washing of hands for non-sacred food is not prescribed by the Torah what is the point of the other explanation Beth Hillel argued thus with Beth Shammai should you ask what reason is there for being particular in the case of food and not being particular in the case of hands even granting this our rule is better since washing of hands for non-sacred food is not prescribed by the Torah it is better that hands the rule for which has no basis in the Torah should become unclean rather than food the rule for which has a basis in the Torah Beth Shammai say that the floor is swept etc our rabbis taught Beth Shammai say the floor is swept and then they wash there Hence, for should you say that the hands are washed first, the result might be to spoil the food. Bet Shammai do not hold that the washing of the hands comes first. What is the reason on account of the crumbs of bread? Beth Hillel, however, say that if he the attendant is a scholar, he removes the crumbs which are as large as an olive and leaves those which are smaller than an olive. This supports the dictum of our Yohanan, for our Yohanan said it is permissible to destroy willfully crumbs of bread. Smaller than an olive, what is the ground of their difference? Beth Hillel hold that it is not permissible to employ an attendant who is an Amhirez, while Bet Shammai hold that it is permissible to employ an attendant who is an Amhirez. Our Jose Bihanan said in the name of our Hunan in all this chapter, the Halachah is as stated by Beth Hillel, save in this point where it is as stated by Bet Shammai. Our Ashai, however, reverses the teaching, and in this point also the Halachah follows Beth Hillel. Bet Shammai say like grace etc. Our Hunabi Judah was once at the house of Rabbah and he saw Rabbah say the blessing over spices first he said to him let us see Bet Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ with respect to the light that it should come first as we learned Bet Shammai say the order is like grace spices and Havdalah while Beth Hillel say that it is light spices grace and Havdalah Rabbah answered after him these are the words of our Meir but our Judah said Bet Shammai and Beth Hillel agreed that grace comes first and Havdalah last where they differed was in respect of light and spices Bet Shammai maintaining that light comes first and then spices while Beth Hillel held that spices comes first and then light and our Yohanan has stated the public have adopted the custom of following Beth Hillel as reported by our Judah Bet Shammai say who created etc. Rabbah said all are agreed that the word bar refers to the past where they differ is with respect to the word or Bet Shammai. Maintain that poor means who will create in the future while Beth Hillel hold that poor can also refer to the past. Our Joseph cited in objection to Beth Shammai the verses I form the light and create poor darkness he formeth the mountains and create poor the wind he that created poor the heavens and stretched them forth rather said our Joseph both sides are agreed that both bara and poor can refer to the past where they differ as to whether moderate or me or lights should be. Said Beth Shammai are of the opinion that there is only one light in the fire while Beth Hillel are of the opinion that there are several it has been taught to the same effect said Beth Hillel to Beth Shammai there are several illuminations in the light a blessing is not said etc there is a good reason in the case of the light of idolaters because it has not rested but what reason is there in the case of the spices Rab Judah said in the name of Rab we are dealing here with spices used today. Banquet of idolaters because ordinarily a banquet of idolaters is held in honor of idolatry but since it is stated further on or over the light or the spices of idolatry we may infer that the earlier statement does not refer to idolaters our Hanan of Surah replied the latter statement is explanatory what is the reason why a blessing is not said over the light and the spices of idolaters because ordinarily a banquet of idolaters is in honor of idolatry our rabbis taught a blessing may be said over a light which has rested but not over one which has not rested what is meant by which has not rested Talmud, Mos Birakotha shall we say that it has not rested on account of work done by it even permissible work but it has been taught a blessing may be said over a light used for a woman in confinement or for the sake of a sick person our and B Isaac replied what is meant by rested that it rested from work which is a transgression on Sabbath it has been taught to the same effect a Blessing may be said over a lamp which has been burning throughout the day to the conclusion of Sabbath. Our rabbis taught we may say the blessing over a light kindled by a Gentile from an Israelite or by an Israelite from a Gentile but not by a Gentile from a Gentile. What is the reason for barring a light kindled by a Gentile from a Gentile because it may not have rested but a light kindled by an Israelite from a Gentile also may not have rested. Perhaps you will say that the prohibited flame has vanished and the light is now a different one and is reborn in the hand of the Israelite. What then of this which has been taught if one carries out a flame to the public way on Sabbath he is liable to a penalty. Why is he
George in a tense he makes inquiries about it if it is an Israelite child he may say the benediction but if it is a Gentile he may not why does it speak of a child the same applies even to a grown-up Rab Judah said in the name of Rab we suppose this to happen immediately after sunset in the case of a grown-up it is obvious that he must be a Gentile in the case of a child I can suppose that it is an Israelite child who happened to take hold of the light or rabbis taught if one was walking. Outside the town at the termination of Sabbath and saw a light if it is thick like the opening of a furnace he may say the benediction over it otherwise not one authority states a benediction may be said over the light of a furnace while another says that it may not there is no contradiction one speaks of the beginning of the fire the other of the end one authority teaches a benediction may be said over the light of an oven or a stove while another says that it may not and there is no contradiction one speaks of the beginning of the fire the other of the end one authority teaches a benediction may be said over the light of the synagogue or the Beth Hamidrash while another says it may not and there is no contradiction one speaks of a case where an eminent man is present the other of a case where no eminent man is present or if you like I can say that both speak of where an eminent man is present and there is no contradiction one speaks of where there is a beetle and it other of where there is no beetle or if you like I can say that both speak of where there is a beetle and there is no contradiction one speaks of where there is moonlight the other of where there is no moonlight out rabbis taught if people were sitting in the Beth Hamidrash and light was brought in at the termination of the Sabbath Beth Sham I say that each one says a blessing over it for himself while Beth Hillel say that one says a blessing on behalf of all because it says in it Multitude of people is the king's glory Beth Hillel at any rate explain their reason but what is the reason of Beth Shammai it is probably to avoid an interruption of study it has been taught similarly the members of the household of Rabban Gamaliel did not use to say good health in the Beth Hamidrash so as not to interrupt their study a benediction may not be said over the lights or the spices of the dead what is the reason the light is kindled only in honor of the dead the spices are to remove the bad smell Rab Judah said in the name of Rab wherever the person buried is of such consequence that a light would be carried before him either by day or by night we do not say a blessing over the light if he is buried on the termination of Sabbath but if he is one before whom a light would be carried only at night we may say the blessing Arhuna said a blessing is not said over spices used in a privy or oil used for removing grease from the hands this implies that wherever spice is not used for scent no blessing is said over it an objection was raised to this if one enters a spice dealer's shop and smells the fragrance even though he sits there the whole day he makes only one blessing but if he is constantly going in and out he makes a blessing each time he enters now here is a case where it is not used for smell and yet one makes a blessing in fact it is used for smell the object being that people should smell and come and make purchases thereof are rabbis taught if one was walking outside the town and smelled an odor of spices if the majority of the inhabitants are idolaters he does not say a blessing but if the majority are israelites he does say a blessing our jose says even if the majority are israelites he does not say a blessing because the daughters of israel use incense for witchcraft do all of them use incense for witchcraft the fact is that a small part is used for witchcraft and a small part for scenting garments with the result that the Greater part of it is not used for smell, and wherever the greater part is not used for smell, a blessing is not said over it. Or high be Abba said in the name of our Yohanan, if one was walking on the eve of Sabbath in Tiberias or at the conclusion of Sabbath in Sephoris and smelled an odor of spices, he does not say a blessing because the probability is that they are being used only to perfume garments. Our rabbis taught if one was walking in a street of idolaters and smelled the spices willingly, he is a sinner. Talmud, Mos Birakoth be a blessing is not said over the light till it has been utilized. Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, this does not mean literally till it has been utilized, but it means a light which can be serviceable if one stands near enough to it, and then even those at a distance may say the blessing. So too said our Ashi, we have learned that it serves for those at a distance. An objection was raised if one had a light hidden in the folds of his dress or in a lamp, or if he could see a flame but could not use its light or if he could do something by the light but saw no flame he should not say the blessing he must both see a flame and be able to use the light we understand the statement he can use its light but sees no flame this can happen when the light is in a corner but how can it happen that he sees the flame and cannot make use of the light is it not when he is at a distance no it is when for instance the flame keeps on flickering our rabbis taught we may say the blessing over glowing coals but not over dying coals how do you define glowing arhista reply this means coals from which a chip if inserted between them will catch of itself the question was asked is the proper form omoth or omoth come and here for our history of dimi quoted the verse the cedars in the garden of god could not darken amamu would rab however said that the mission means literally utilize it how near must one be said near enough to distinguish between it as and a Dupontium Hezekiah said near enough to distinguish between the Malazma of Tiberius and one of Sephoris Rab Judah used to say the blessing over the light in the house of Adah the waiter Rabbah said the blessing over the light in the house of Uriah Biham Abbe said it over the light in the house of Bar Rab Judah said in the name of Rab we do not go looking for a light in the same way as we do in the case of other commandments Arzara said at first I used to go looking for a light but since hearing the statement of Rab Judah reporting Rab I also do not look for one but if one comes my way I say the blessing over it if one has eaten etc Arzibit or as some say Ardimi B Abbe said opinions differ only in the case where one forgot but if he omitted willfully he must return to his place and say grace this is obvious the mission says has forgotten you might think that the rule is the same even if he did it purposely and the reason why it says has forgotten is to show you how far Beth Shammai are prepared to go therefore we are told that this is not so it has been taught Beth Hillel said to Beth Shammai according to you if one ate at the top of the temple mount and forgot and descended without having said grace he should return to the top of the temple mount and say grace Beth Shammai replied to Beth Hillel according to you if one forgot a purse at the top of the temple mount is he not to go up and get it and if he will ascend for his own sake surely he should do so. All the more for the honor of heaven there were once two disciples who omitted to say grace one who did it accidentally followed the rule of Beth Shammai and found a purse of gold while the other who did it purposely followed the rule of Beth Hillel and he was eaten by a lion Rabbi Barhanna was once traveling with a caravan and he took a meal and forgot to say grace he said to himself what shall I do if I say to the others I have forgotten to say grace they will say to me say it here. Wherever you say the benediction you are saying it to the all-merciful I had better tell them that I have forgotten the golden dove so he said to them wait for me because I have forgotten the golden dove he went back and said grace and found a golden dove why should it have been just a dove because the community of Israel are compared to a dove as it is written the wings of the dove are covered with silver and her pinions with the shimmer of gold just as the dove is saved only by her wings so Israel are saved only by the precepts until when can he say the grace how long does it take to digest a meal are you and said until he becomes hungry again Reshlakish said as long as one is thirsty on account of the meal said Aryamar Bishalim Yatamarzitra or according to others Aryamar Bishesh Bajamarzitra can Reshlakish have said this has not RMI said in the name of Reshlakish how long does it take to digest a meal long enough for one to walk for meal there is no contradiction one Statement refers to a light meal, the other to a heavy one if wine is served, etc. This implies if an Israelite says the grace, even though one has not heard the whole of it, he responds, Amen. But if he has not heard, how can he have performed his duty by doing so? Hayabi Rab replied, This applies to one who has not joined in the meal. Similarly, said Arnaman in the name of Rabbi Abba, it refers to one who has not joined in the meal, said Rab to his son, Hi, my son, snatch the cup of wine and say grace. And so said Arhuna to his son, Rabbi, my son, snatch and say grace. This implies that he who says the grace is superior to one who answers, Amen. But it has been taught, Ar Jose says, Greater is he who answers, Amen, than he who says the blessing, said Arnira to him, I swear to you by heaven that it is so. The proof is that while the common soldiers advance and open the battle, it is the seasoned warriors who go down to win the victory. On this point, there is a difference between ten amazes. Has been taught both he who says the blessing and he who answers Amen are equally implied. Only he who says the blessing is more quickly rewarded than he who answers Amen. Samuel inquired of Rab should one respond Amen after a blessing
Idolatry from our land on witnessing shooting stars, earthquakes, thunderclaps, storms, and lightnings. One should say, Blessed be he who strength and might fill the world on seeing mountains, hills, seas, rivers, and deserts. He should say, Blessed be he who wrought creation. Arjuna says, If one sees the great sea, one should say, Blessed be he who made the great sea. That is, if he sees it at considerable intervals for rain and for good tidings, one says, Blessed be he that is good and bestows good for evil tidings. One says, Blessed be the true judge, one who has built a new house or bought new vessel. Says, Blessed be he who has kept us alive and preserved us and brought us to the season over evil. A blessing is said similar to that over good and over good. A blessing is said similar to that over evil. But to cry over the past is to utter a vain prayer. If a man's wife is pregnant and he says, God grant that my wife bear a male child, this is a vain prayer. If he is coming home from a journey and he Hears cries of distress in the town and says, God grant that this is not in my house. This is a vain prayer. One who in the course of a journey goes through a capital city should say two prayers, one on entering and one on leaving. Ben is a says for two on entering and two on leaving. He gives thanks for past mercies and supplicates for the future. It is incumbent on a man to bless God for the evil in the same way as for the good as it says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, etc. With all thy heart means with thy two impulses, the evil impulse as well as the good impulse with all thy soul means even though he takes thy soul life with all thy might means with all thy money. Another explanation of with all thy might meetica is whatever treatment he meets out to thee, one should avoid showing disrespect to the eastern gate because it is in a direct line with the holy of holies. A man should not enter the temple mount with his staff or with his shoes on or with his wallet or with his feet dust stained nor should he make it a shortcut cap and area and spitting on it is forbidden before she arrived at the conclusion of the Benedictine said in the temple they used at first to say simply forever when the Sadducees perverted their ways and asserted that there was only one world it was ordained that the response should be from everlasting to everlasting it was also laid down that greeting should be given in God's name in the same way as it says and behold Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers the Lord be with you and they answered him the Lord bless thee and it also says the Lord is with thee thou mighty man of valor and it also says and despise not thy mother when she is old and it also says it is time to work for the Lord they have made void thy law or Nathan says this means they have made void thy law because it is time to work for the Lord tomorrow whence is this rule derived Yohan and said because scripture says and Jethro said Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you, etc., and is a blessing said only for a miracle wrought for a large body, but not for one wrought for an individual. What of the case of the man who was once traveling through every Yemen when a lion attacked him, but he was miraculously saved? And when he came before Rabbah, he said to him, Whenever you pass that place, say, Blessed be he who wrought for me a miracle in this place. There was a case too of Mar, the son of Rabbah, who was once going through the valley of Araboth and was suffering from thirst, and a well of water was miraculously created for him, and he drank. And another time he was going through the manner of Mahosa when a wild camel attacked him, and at that moment the wall of a house just by fell in, and he escaped inside. And whenever thereafter he came to Araboth, he used to say, Blessed be he who wrought for me miracles in Araboth and with the camel, and when he passed through the manner of Mahosa, he used to say, Blessed be he who wrought. For me miracles with the camel and in Arabo the answer is that for a miracle done to a large body it is the duty of everyone to say a blessing for a miracle done to an individual he alone is required to say a blessing our rabbis taught if one sees the place of the crossing of the Red Sea or the fords of the Jordan or the fords of the streams of Arnon or hailstones Abney Elgabish in the descent of Beth Haran or the stone which our king of Bashan wanted to throw at Israel or the stone on which Moses sat when Joshua fought with Amalek or the pillar of Saul the Blot's wife or the wall of Jericho which sank into the ground for all of these he should give thanksgiving and praise to the Almighty I grant you the passage of the Red Sea because it is written and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground also the fords of the Jordan because it is written and the priests that bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan while all Israel passed over on dry ground until all the nation were passed clean over the Jordan but whence is the title derived for the fords of the streams of Arnon because it is written wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord Eth and heaven the rear in explanation of which it had taught Eth and heaven the rear were two lepers who followed in the rear of the camp of Israel and when the Israelites were about to pass through the valley of Arnon the Amorites came Talmud, Mosbirik of B and made cavities in the rocks and hid in them saying when Israel passed by here we will kill them they did not know however that the ark was advancing in front of Israel and leveling the hills before them when the ark arrived there the mountains closed together and killed them and their blood flowed down to the streams of Arnon when Eth and Heb came they saw the blood issuing from between the rocks and they went and told the Israelites who thereupon broke out into song and so it is written and he poured forth the streams from the mountain which inclined toward the seat of Ar and leaned upon the border of Moab hailstones Abney El Gabish what are Abney El Gabish Atan taught stones Abney which remained suspended for the sake of a man El Gabish and came down for the sake of a man they remained suspended for the sake of a man this was Moses of whom it is written now the man Moses was very meek and it is also written and the soldiers and hail ceased and the rain poured not upon the earth they came down for the sake of a man this was Joshua of whom it is written take the Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom there is spirit and it is written and it came to pass as they fled from before Israel while they were at the descent of Beth Haran that the Lord cast down great stones the stone which our king of Bashan wanted to throw at Israel this has been handed down by tradition he said how large is the camp of Israel three parts I will go and uproot a mountain of the size of three parts and cast it upon them and killed them. He went and uprooted a mountain of the size of three parts and carried it on his head. But the Holy One, blessed be he, sent ants which bored a hole in it so that it sank around his neck. He tried to pull it off, but his teeth projected on each side and he could not pull it off. This is referred to in the text Thou hast broken the teeth of the wicked, as explained by Arsimian Belakish. For Arsimian Belakish said, What is the meaning of the text Thou hast broken the teeth of the wicked? Do not red shiver to thou hast broken, but sherbopta thou hast lengthened the height of Moses was ten cubits. He took an axe ten cubits long, left ten cubits into the air and struck him on his ankle and killed him. The stone on which Moses sat, as it is written, but Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat there on Lot's wife, as it says, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt and the wall of Jericho which sank into the ground as it is written and the wall fell down flat we understand why this blessing should be said over all the others because they are miracles but the transformation of Lot's wife was a punishment one should say on seeing it blessed be the true judge yet the Beretha says thanksgiving and praise read for Lot and his wife two blessings are said for his wife we say blessed be the true judge and for Lot we say blessed be he who remembereth the righteous are Yohan and said even in the hour of his anger the holy one blessed be he remembers the righteous as it says and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow and the wall of Jericho which sank into the ground but did the wall of Jericho sink into the ground surely it fell as it says and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the horn that the people Shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat since its breadth and its height were equal, it must have sunk into the ground. Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, there are four classes of people who have to offer thanksgiving those who have crossed the sea, those who have traversed the wilderness, one who has recovered from an illness, and a prisoner who has been set free. Whence do we know this of those who cross the sea? Because it is written, they that go down to the sea in ships. These saw the works of the Lord, he raised the stormy wind, they mounted up to the heaven, they went down to the deeps, they reeled to and fro, and staggered like a drunken man. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distresses. He made the storm a calm, and were they glad because they were quiet? Let them give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Whence for those who traverse the desert? Because it is written they wandered in the wilderness in a desert way they found no city of habitation and they cried unto the Lord and he led them by a straight way let them give thanks unto the
Judah said three persons require guarding, namely a sick person, a bridegroom, and a bride. In a very vain was taught a sick person, a midwife, a bridegroom, and a bride. Some add a mourner and some add further scholars. At night time, Rab Judah said further, there are three things: the drawing out of which prolongs a man's days and years, the drawing out of prayer, the drawing out of a meal, and the drawing out of easing in a privy. But is the drawing out of prayer a merit? Has not our high B Abba said in the name of our Yohanan Talmud, Masbirato, if one draws out his prayer and expects therefore its fulfillment, he will in the end suffer vexation of heart, as it says, hope deferred make the heart sick. And our Isaac also said three things cause a man's sins to be remembered on high, namely passing under a shaky wall, expectation of the fulfillment of prayer, and calling on heaven to punish his neighbor. There is no contradiction. One statement speaks of a man who expects the fulfillment of his. Prayer the other of one who does not count upon it what then does he do he simply utters many supplications he who draws out his meal because perhaps a poor man will come and he will give him something as it is written the altar of wood three cubits high and he said to me this is the table that is before the Lord now the verse opens with altar and finishes with table our Yohanan and our Eliezer both explained that as long as the temple stood the altar atoned for Israel but now a man's table atones for him to draw out one stay in a privy is this a good thing has it not been taught ten things bring on piles eating the leaves of reeds and the leaves of vines and the sprouts of vines and the rough parts of the flesh of an animal and the backbone of a fish and salted fish not sufficiently cooked and drinking one leaves and wiping oneself with lime potters clay or pebbles which have been used by another some add to strain oneself unduly in a privy there is no contradiction one Statement refers to one who stays long and strains himself, the other to one who stays long without straining himself. This may be illustrated by what a certain matron said to our Judah B.R.I. Your face is red like that of pig breeders and usurers to which he replied on my faith. Both occupations are forbidden me, but there are twenty-four privies between my lodging and the Beth Hamadrash, and when I go there I test myself in all of them. Rab Judah also said three things shorten a man's days. And years to be given a scroll of the law to read from and to refuse to be given a cup of benediction to say grace over and to refuse and to assume heirs of authority to be given a scroll of the law to read from and to refuse as it is written for that is thy life and the length of thy days to be given a cup of benediction to say grace over and to refuse as it is written I will bless them that bless thee to assume heirs of authority as our Hamma Behanna said why did Joseph die before his brethren? Because he assumed heirs of authority, Rab Judah also said in the name of Rab, there are three things for which one should supplicate a good king, a good year, and a good dream. A good king, as it is written, a king's heart is in the hands of the Lord, as the water course is a good year, as it is written, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. A good dream, as it is written, wherefore cause thou me to dream and make me to lie, our Yohanan. Said there are three things which the Holy One, blessed be he himself, proclaims, namely famine plenty and a good leader. Famine, as it is written, the Lord hath called for a famine plenty, as it is written, I will call for the corn and will increase it. A good leader, as it is written, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel the son of Uri, our Isaac said, We must not appoint a leader over a community without first consulting it, as it says, See, the Lord hath called by name. Bezalel the son of Uri the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses do you consider Bezalel suitable he replied sovereign of the universe if thou thinkest him suitable surely I must also said God to him all the same go and consult him he went and asked Israel do you consider Bezalel suitable he replied if the Holy One blessed be he and you consider him suitable surely we must our Samuel be Naman he said in the name of our Yohanan Bezalel was so called on account of his wisdom at the time when the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses go and tell Bezalel to make me a tabernacle and ark and vessels Moses went and reversed the order saying make an ark and vessels and a tabernacle Bezalel said to him Moses our teacher as a rule a man first builds a house and then brings vessels into it but you say make me an ark and vessels and a tabernacle where shall I put the vessels that I am to make can it be that the Holy One blessed be he said to you make a tabernacle and ark and vessels Moses replied Perhaps you were in the shadow of God and knew Rab Judah said in the name of Rab Bezalel knew how to combine the letters by which the heavens and earth were created it is written here and he hath filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and it is written elsewhere the Lord by wisdom founded the earth by understanding he established the heavens and it is also written by his knowledge the depths were broken up our Yohan and said the Holy One blessed be he gives wisdom only to one who already has wisdom as it says he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding our Talafah from the west heard and repeated it before our Rabbah he said to him you learned it from there but we learn it from this text namely in the hearts of all that are wise hearted I have put wisdom our Hista said any dream rather than one of a fast our Hista also said a dream which is not interpreted is like a letter which is not read our Hista also said neither Good dream nor a bad dream is ever wholly fulfilled. Arista also said a bad dream is better than a good dream. Arista also said the sadness caused by a bad dream is sufficient for it, and the joy which a good dream gives is sufficient for it. Our Joseph said, Even for me, the joy caused by a good dream nullifies it. Arista also said a bad dream is worse than scourging, since it says God hath so made it that men should fear before him. And Rabbi Barhanna said in the name of our Yohanan, this refers to a bad dream. A prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What hath the straw to do with the wheat? Saith the Lord, what is the connection of straw and wheat with a dream? The truth is said, Our Yohanan, in the name of our Simeon, be that just as we cannot be without straw, so there cannot be a dream without some nonsense. Our Birkia said, While a part of a dream may be fulfilled, the whole of it is never fulfilled. Whence do we know this? From Joseph, as it is written, and behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars bowed down to me and Talmud. Masbirakoth, be at that time his mother was not living. Our Levi said, A man should await the fulfillment of a good dream for as much as twenty-two years. Whence do we know this from Joseph? For it is written, These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being seventeen years old, etc. And it is further written, and Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh. How many years is it from? Seventeen to thirty. Thirteen. Add the seven years of plenty and two of famine, and you have twenty-two. Arhuna said, A good man is not shown a good dream, and a bad man is not shown a bad dream. It has been taught similarly. David during the whole of his lifetime never saw a good dream, and he fell during the whole of his lifetime never saw a bad dream. But it is written, There shall no evil befall thee. And Arhista said, In the name of our Jeremiah, this means that you will not be disturbed either by bad. Dreams or by evil thoughts, neither shall any plague come nigh thy tent, i.e., thou shalt not find thy wife doubtfully menstruous when thou returnest from a journey, though he does not see an evil dream, others see one about him, but if he does not see one, is this considered an advantage? Has not Rzeira said, if a man goes seven days without a dream, he is called evil, since it says he shall abide satisfied, he shall not be visited by evil, read not Sabe satisfied, but seven sheba, what he means. Is this he sees, but he does not remember what he has seen, Arhunabi, am I said in the name of our Pedath, who had it from Aryohan, and if one has a dream which makes him sad, he should go and have it interpreted in the presence of three, he should have it interpreted, has not Arhista said, a dream which is not interpreted is like a letter which is not read, say rather than he should have a good turn given to it in the presence of three, let him bring three and say to them, I have seen a good dream, and they should say to him good it is and good may it be may the all merciful turn it to good seven times may it be decreed from heaven that it should be good and may it be good they should say three verses with the word half of turn and three with the word put a redeem and three with the word shalom peace three with the word turn namely thou didst turn for me my morning into dancing thou didst lose my sackcloth and gird me with gladness too then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance and the young men and the old together for I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow three nevertheless the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee three verses with the word redeem namely I he hath redeemed my soul in peace so that none came nigh me too and the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion
So turn all my dreams into something good for me. He should conclude his prayer along with the priest so that the congregation may answer Amen. If he cannot manage this, he should say, Thou who art majestic on high, who abidest in my power, peace and thy name is peace. May it be thy will to bestow peace on us. The second commands and said, If a man on going into a town is afraid of the evil, I let him take the thumb of his right hand in his left hand and the thumb of his left hand in his right. And and say I so and so am of the seed of Joseph over which the evil eye has no power as it says Joseph is a fruitful vine a fruitful vine by a fountain do not read a lion by a fountain but a lion overcoming the evil eye are Jose B are Hannah derived it from here and let them grow into a multitude wage you in the midst of the earth just as the fishes the gym in the sea are covered by the waters and the evil eye has no power over them so the evil eye has no power over the seed of Joseph if he is afraid of his own evil eye he should look at the side of his left nostril the third commands and said if a man falls ill the first day he should not tell anyone so that he should not have bad luck but after that he may tell so when Rabba fell ill on the first day he did not tell anyone but after that he said to his attendant go and announce that Rabba is ill whoever loves him let him pray for him and whoever hates him let him rejoice over him for it is written rejoice not when thine enemy Falleth and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. When Samuel had a bad dream, he used to say the dream speak falsely. When he had a good dream, he used to say do the dream speak falsely, seeing that it is written, I God do speak with him in a dream. Rabba pointed out a contradiction. It is written, I do speak with him in a dream, and it is written, the dream speak falsely. There is no contradiction in the one case. It is through an angel and the other through a demon. Our business Abda said in the name of our Akiba who had it from our Panda who had it from our Nahum who had it from our Biryam, reporting a certain elder and who was this Arbana. There were twenty-four interpreters of dreams in Jerusalem. Once I dreamt a dream and I went round to all of them and they all gave different interpretations and all were fulfilled, thus confirming that which is said all dreams follow the mouth is a statement that all dreams. Follow the mouth scriptural yes as stated by our Eliezer for our Eliezer said once do we know that all dreams follow the mouth because it says and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was Rabbah said this is only if the interpretation corresponds to the content of the dream for it says to each man according to his dream he did interpret when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good how did he know this our Eliezer says this tells us that each of them was shown his own dream and the interpretation of the other one's dream our Yohanan said if one rises early and a scriptural verse comes to his mouth this is a kind of minor prophecy our Yohanan also said three kinds of dream are fulfilled in early morning dream a dream which a friend has about one and a dream which is interpreted in the midst of a dream some add also a dream which is repeated as it says and for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice etc our Samuel bin Amani said in the name of our Jonathan Amen is shown. In a dream only what is suggested by his own thoughts as it says as for the O king thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed or if you like I can derive it from here that thou mayest know the thoughts of the heart Rabba said this is proved by the fact that a man is never shown in a dream a date palm of gold or an elephant going through the eye of a needle Talmud, Mos Biratotha the emperor of Rome said to our Joshua B. Our Hananiah you Jews profess to be very clever tell me what I shall see in my dream he said to him you will see the Persians making you do forced labor and despoiling you and making you feed unclean animals with a golden crook he thought about it all day and in the night he saw it in his dream king Shaper I once said to Samuel you Jews profess to be very clever tell me what I shall see in my dream he said to him you will see the Romans coming and taking you captive and making you grind date stones in a golden mill he thought about it the whole day and in the knight saw it in a dream bar he was an interpreter of dreams to one who paid him he used to give a favorable interpretation and to one who did not pay him he gave an unfavorable interpretation Abbe and Rabba each had a dream Abbe gave him a Zeus and Rab did not give him anything they said to him in our dream we had to read the verse thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes etc to Rabba he said your business will be a failure and you will be so grieved that you will have no appetite to eat to Abbe he said your business will prosper and you will not be able to eat from sheer joy they then said to him we had to read in our dream the verse thou shalt beget sons and daughters but they shall not be thine etc to Rabba he interpreted it in its literal unfavorable sense to Abbe he said you have numerous sons and daughters and your daughters will be married and go away and it will seem to you as if they have gone into captivity they said to him we were made to read the verse thine. Sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people to Abbe he said you have numerous sons and daughters you will want your daughters to marry your relatives and your wife will want them to marry her relatives and she will force you to marry them to her relatives which will be like giving them to another people to Rabba he said your wife will die and her sons and daughters will come under the sway of another wife for Rabba said in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba reporting Rab what is it? Meaning of the verse thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people this refers to a stepmother they further said we were made to read in our dream the verse go thy way eat thy bread with joy etc to Abbe he said your business will prosper and you will eat and drink and recite this verse out of the joy of your heart to Rabba he said your business will fail you will slaughter cattle and not eat or drink and you will read scripture to allay your anxiety they said to him we were Made to read the verse, thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shalt gather little in for the locusts will consume it to Abbe. He interpreted from the first half of the verse to Rabba from the second half. They said to him, We were made to read the verse, thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy borders, but thou shalt not anoint thyself, etc. To Abbe, he interpreted from the first half of the verse to Rabba from the second half. They said to him, We were made to read the verse. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that the name of the Lord is called upon thee, etc. To Abbe, he said, Your name will become famous as head of the college and you will be generally feared to Rabba. He said, The king's treasury will be broken into and you will be arrested as a thief and everyone will draw an inference from you. The next day the king's treasury was broken into and they came and arrested Rabba. They said to him, We saw a lettuce on the mouth of a jar to Abbe, he said, Your business. Will be doubled like a lettuce to Rabba. He said, Your business will be bitter like a lettuce. They said to him, We saw some meat on the mouth of a jar to Abbe. He said, Your wine will be sweet and everyone will come to buy meat and wine from you to Rabba. He said, Your wine will turn sour and everyone will come to buy meat to eat with it. They said, We saw a cask hanging on a palm tree to Abbe. He said, Your business will spring up like a palm tree to Rabba. He said, Your goods will be sweet like dates. They said to him, We saw a pomegranate sprouting on the mouth of a jar to Abbe. He said, Your goods will be high priced like a pomegranate to Rabba. He said, Your goods will be stale like a dry pomegranate. They said to him, We saw a cask fall into a pit to Abbe. He said, Your goods will be in demand according to the saying, A PUI has fallen into a well and cannot be found to Rabba. He said, Your goods will be spoiled and they will be thrown into a pit. They said to him, We saw a young ass standing by our Pillow and praying to Abbe, he said, You will become a king, and an will stand by you to Rabba. He said, The words the firstborn of an ass have been erased from your tefillin. Rabba said to him, I have looked at them, and they are there. He replied to him, Certainly, the bob of the word hammer ass has been erased from your tefillin. Subsequently, Rabba went to him by himself and said to him, I dreamt that the outer door fell. He said to him, Your wife will die. He said to him, I dreamt that my front end. Back teeth fell out. He said to him, Your sons and your daughters will die. He said, I saw two pigeons flying. He replied, You will divorce two wives. He said to him, I saw two turnip tops. He replied, You will receive two blows with a cudgel on that day. Rabba went and sat all day in the Beth Hamidrash. He found two blind men quarreling with one another. Rabba went to separate them, and they gave him two blows. They wanted to give him another blow, but he said, Enough, I saw in my dream only two. Finally, Rabba. Went and gave him a fee. He said to him, I saw a wall fall down. He replied, You will acquire wealth without end. He said, I dreamt that Abbe's villa fell in and the dust of it covered me. He replied to him, Abbe will die and the presidency of his college will be offered to you. He said to him, I saw my own villa fall in and everyone came and took a brick. He said to him, Your teachings will be disseminated throughout the world. He said to him, I dreamt that my head was split open and
in the palace and they brought the keeper of the wardrobe in order to put him to death. He said to them, Why execute me? Bring the man who knew and would not tell. So they brought Barhidiya and they said to him, Because of your Zeus, the king's silken garments have been ruined. Talmud, Mosbirakoth, they tied two cedars together with a rope tied one leg to one cedar and the other to the other and released the rope so that even his head was split. Each tree rebounded to its place and he was decapitated and his body fell into Bandama. The son of Arishmael's sister asked Arishmael, I dreamt that both my jaws fell out. What does it mean? He replied to him, Two Roman counselors have made a plot against you, but they have died. Barkabur said to Rabbi, I dreamt that my nose fell off. He replied to him, Fierce anger has been removed from you. He said to him, I dreamt that both my hands were cut off. He replied, You will not require the labor of your hands. He said to him, I dreamt that both. My legs were cut off. He replied, You will ride on horseback. Dreamt that they said to me, You will die in Adar and not see And he replied, You will die in all honor at and not be brought into temptation. This and a certain man said to Arishmael, I saw myself in a dream pouring oil on olives. He replied, This man has outraged his mother. He said to him, I dreamt I plucked a star. He replied, You have stolen an Israelite. He said to him, I dreamt that I swallowed the star. He replied, You have sold an Israelite and consumed the proceeds. He said to him, I dreamt that my eyes were kissing one another. He replied, This man has outraged his sister. He said to him, I dreamt that I kissed the moon. He replied, He has outraged the wife of an Israelite. He said to him, I dreamt that I was walking in the shade of a myrtle. He replied, He has outraged the betrothed damsel. He said to him, I dreamt that there was a shade above me and yet it was beneath me. He replied, It means unnatural intercourse. He said to him, I saw ravens keep on coming to my bed. He replied, Your wife has misconducted herself with many men. He said to him, I saw pigeons keep on coming to my bed. He replied, You have defiled many women. He said to him, I dreamt that I took two doves and they flew away. He replied, You have married two wives and dismissed them without a bill of divorce. He said to him, I dreamt that I was shelling eggs. He replied, You have been stripping the dead. He then said to him, You are right in all of these except it. Last of which I am not guilty. Just then a woman came and said to him, This cloak which you are wearing belonged to so and so who is dead and you have stripped it from him. He said to him, I dreamt that people told me your father has left you money in Cappadocia. He said to him, Have you money in Cappadocia? No, he replied, Did your father ever go to Cappadocia? No, in that case he said, Kappa means a beam and Dika means ten go and examine the beam which is at the head of ten for it is full of coins. He went and found it full of coins. Our Hannah said, If one sees a well in a dream, he will behold peace since it says, And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of living water. Our Nathan said, He will find Torah since it says, Whoso findeth me findeth life and it is written here a well of living water. Rabbi said, It means life literally. Rabbi Hanan said, There are three kinds of dreams which signify peace, namely about a river, a bird, and about a river for it is written, Behold, I will extend. Peace to her like a river, a bird, for it is written as birds hovering, so will the Lord of hosts protect Jerusalem, a pot, for it is written, Lord, thou wilt establish peace for us at our Hannah, but this has been said of a pot in which there is no meat, for it says they chop them in pieces as that which is in the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. Our Joshua B. Levi said, If one sees a river in his dreams, he should rise early and say, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river before another verse occurs to him, this for distress will come in like a river. If one dreams of a bird, he should rise early and say, As birds hovering, so will the Lord of hosts protect before another verse occurs to him, this as a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. If one sees a pot in his dreams, he should rise early and say, Lord, thou will establish Tishpoth peace for us before another verse occurs to him, this a on the pot, set it on if one sees grapes in his dream. He should rise early and say, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness before another verse occurs to him, is there grapes or grapes of gall? If one dreams of a mountain, he should rise early and say, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger of good tidings before another verse occurs to him, before the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing. If one dreams of a horn, he should rise early and say, And it shall come to pass in that day that a great horn shall be blown. Before another verse occurs to him, is blow yet the horn of Jabia. If one sees a dog in his dream, he should rise early and say, But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog let his tongue before another verse occurs to him, is yet the dogs are greedy. If one sees a lion in his dream, he should rise early and say, The lion hath roared who will not fear before another verse occurs to him, is a lion is gone up from his thicket. If one dreams of shaving, he should rise early and say, And Joseph shaved himself and changed his raiment before another verse occurs to him, as if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. If one sees a well in his dream, he should rise early and say, A well of living waters before another verse occurs to him, as a cistern welleth with her waters, so she welleth with her wickedness. If one sees a reed, he should rise early and say, A bruised reed shall he not break before another verse occurs to him, as behold, thou trusteth upon the staff of this. Bruce reed, our rabbis taught, if one sees a reed can in a dream, he may hope for wisdom, for it says, Get can wisdom. If he sees several reeds, he may hope for understanding, since it says, With all thy getting kanyan, could get understanding. Our Zara said, Pumpkin kara, pom hard koro wax kira, and a reed kanyan are all auspicious in a dream. It has been taught, Pumpkins are shown in a dream only to one who fears heaven with all his might. If one sees an ox in a dream, he should rise early. And say his first lingual majesty is his before another verse occurs to him as if an ox or a man or rabbis taught there are five sayings in connection with an ox in a dream if one dreams that he eats of its flesh he will become rich if that an ox has gored him he will have sons who will contend together in the study of the Torah if that an ox bit him sufferings will come upon him if that it kicked him he will have to go on a long journey if that he rode upon one he will rise to greatness but it has been taught if he dreamt that he rode upon one he will die there is no contradiction in the one case the dream is that he rides on the ox and the other that the ox rode upon him if one sees an ass in a dream he may hope for salvation as it says behold that king cometh unto thee he is triumphant and victorious lowly and riding upon an ass if one sees a cat in a dream if in a place where they call it an a beautiful song shire and a will be composed for him if in a place where they call it and he will undergo a change for the worse shin we are a if one sees grapes in a dream if they are white whether in their season or not in their season they are a good sign if black in their season they are a good sign not in their season a bad sign if one sees a white horse in a dream whether walking gently or galloping it is a good sign if a red horse if walking gently it is a good sign if galloping it is a bad sign if one sees Ishmael in a dream his prayer will be heard and it must be Ishmael the son of Abraham but not an ordinary Arab if one sees a camel in a dream death has been decreed for him from heaven and he has been delivered from it Arham Abihan and said what is the scriptural text for this I will go down with thee into Egypt and I will also surely bring thee up again Arnam and B Isaac derives it from here the Lord also hath put away thy sin thou shalt not die if one sees Phineas in a dream a miracle will be wrought for him if one sees Elephant pill in a dream wonders Pelath will be wrought for him if several elephants wonders of wonders will be wrought for him but it has been taught all kinds of beasts are of good omen in a dream except the elephant and the ape there is no contradiction Talmud, Mosbirakoth of the elephants are of good omen if saddled of bad omen if not saddled if one sees the name Hunai in a dream a miracle will be wrought for him if one sees the name Hanan Hanani or Jonathan miracles will be wrought for him if one dreams of a funeral oration Hest mercy will be vouchsafed to him from heaven and he will be redeemed this is only if he sees the word in writing if one in a dream answers may his great name be blessed he may be assured that he has a share in the future world if one dreams that he is reciting the Shema he is worthy that the divine presence should rest upon him only his generation is not deserving enough if one dreams he is putting on tefillin he may look forward to Greatness for it says and all the peoples of the earth shall see that the name of the Lord is called upon thee and they shall fear thee and it has been taught our Eliezer the Great says this refers to the tefillin of the head if one dreams he is praying it is a good sign for him provided he does not complete the prayer if one dreams that he has intercourse with his mother he may expect to obtain understanding since it says yet thou will
Pomegranate, if they are split open, if he is a scholar, he may hope to learn more Torah as it says, I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate. If he is unlearned, he may hope to perform precepts as it says, thy temples are like a pomegranate split open. What is meant by thy temples, Rakatech, even the illiterate reckoning among the air full of precepts like a pomegranate. If one sees olives in a dream, if they are little ones, his business will go on fructifying and increasing like an olive. This is if he sees the fruit, but if he sees the tree, he will have many sons as it says, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Some say that if one sees an olive in his dream, he will acquire a good name as it says, the Lord called thy name, a leafy olive tree, fair and goodly fruit. If one sees olive oil in a dream, he may hope for the light of the Torah as it says, that they bring unto thee pure olive oil eaten for the light. If one sees palm trees in a dream. His iniquities will come to an end as it says the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished O daughter of Zion our Joseph said if one sees a goat in a dream he will have a blessed year if several goats several blessed years as it says and there will be goats milk enough for thy food if one sees myrtle in his dream he will have good luck with his property and if he has no property he will inherit some from elsewhere Ola said according to others it was taught in a very though this is only if he sees myrtle on its stem if one sees citron in his dream he is honored hater in the sight of his maker since it says the fruit of citron's branches of palm trees if one sees a palm branch in a dream he is single hearted in devotion to his father in heaven if one sees a goose in a dream he may hope for wisdom since it says wisdom crieth aloud at the street and he who dreams of being with one will become head of an academy Arashi said I saw one and was with one and I was elevated to it. High position if one sees a cock in a dream he may expect a male child if several cocks several sons if a hen a fine garden and rejoicing if one sees eggs in a dream his petition remains in suspense if they are broken his petition will be granted the same with nuts and cucumbers and all vessels of glass and all breakable things like these if one dreams that he enters a large town his desire will be fulfilled as it says and he led them unto their desired haven if one dreams that he is shaving his head it is a good sign for him if his head and his beard for him and for all his family if one dreams that he is sitting in a small boat he will acquire a good name if in a large boat both he and all his family will acquire one but this is only if it is on the high sea if one dreams that he is easing himself it is a good omen for him as it is said he that is bent down shall speedily be loose but this is only if he did not wipe himself in his dream if one dreams that he goes up to a roof he will attain a high position if that he goes down he will be degraded Abay and Rabbah however both say that once he has attained a high position he will remain there if one dreams he is tearing his garments his evil decree will be rent if one dreams that he is standing naked if in Babylon he will remain sinless if in the land of Israel he will be bare of pious deeds if one dreams that he has been arrested by the police protection will be offered him if that he has been placed in neck chains additional protection will be afforded him this is only if he dreams of neck chains not a mere rope if one dreams that he walks into a marsh he will become the head of an academy if into a forest he will become the head of the collegiates our papa and Arhuna the son of Joshua both had dreams our papa dreamt that he went into a marsh and he became head of an academy Arhuna the son of our Joshua dreamt that he went into a forest and he became head of the collegiates some say that both dreamt they. Went into a marsh, but our Papa, who was carrying a drum, became head of the academy. While Arhuna, the son of our Joshua, who did not carry a drum, became only the head of the collegiates. Arashi said, "I dreamt that I went into a marsh and carried a drum and made a loud noise with it." A tanner recited in the presence of Arnam and B. Isaac, "If one dreams that he is undergoing bloodletting, his iniquities are forgiven, but it has been taught his iniquities are recounted. What is meant by recounted, recounted, so as to be forgiven." A tanner recited in the presence of Arshi's hate. If one sees a serpent in a dream, it means that his living is assured. If it bites him, it will be doubled. If he kills it, he will lose his living. Arshi's hate said to him, "In this case, all the more will his living be doubled." This is not so. However, Arshi's hate explained us because he saw a serpent in his dream and killed it. A tanner recited in the presence of Arjohan, and all kinds of drinks are a good sign in a dream, except one sometimes. One may drink it and it turns out well and sometimes one may drink it and it turns out ill sometimes one may drink it and it turns out well as it says wine that make glad the heart of man sometimes one may drink it and it turns out ill as it says give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto the bitter in soul said are you hanan unto the tan to teach that for a scholar it is always good as it says come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled Talmud, Moss. Birakoth B. Are said if at the moment of rising a text occurs to one this is a minor kind of prophecy our rabbis taught there are three kings who are important for dreams if one sees David in a dream he may hope for piety of Solomon he may hope for wisdom if Ahab let him fear for punishment there are three prophets of significance for dreams if one sees the book of kings he may look forward to greatness if Ezekiel he may look forward to wisdom if Isaiah he may look forward to Consolation if Jeremiah let him fear for punishment there are three larger books of the hagiographer which are significant for dreams if one sees the book of Psalms he may hope for piety if the book of Proverbs he may hope for wisdom if the book of Job let him fear for punishment there are three smaller books of the hagiographer significant for dreams if one sees the songs of songs in a dream he may hope for piety if Ecclesiastes he may hope for wisdom if lamentations let him fear for punishment and one who sees the scroll of Esther will have a miracle wrought for him there are three sages significant for dreams if one sees Rabbi in a dream he may hope for wisdom if Eliezer be Ezra he may hope for riches if Arish may be Elisha let him fear for punishment there are three disciples significant for dreams if one sees Ben in a dream he may hope for piety if Ben he may hope for wisdom if Ahir let him fear for punishment all kinds of beasts are a good sign in a Dream except the elephant, the monkey, and the long tailed ape. But a master has said, if one sees an elephant in a dream, a miracle will be wrought for him. There is no contradiction in the latter case, it is settled. In the former case, it is not settled. All kinds of metal implements are a good sign in a dream except the hoematic and a hatchet. But this is only if they are seen in their haps. All kinds of fruit are a good sign in a dream except unripe dates. All kinds of vegetables are a good sign in a dream except turnip tops. But did not Rab say, I did not become rich until I dreamt of turnip tops when he saw them? It was on their stems. All kinds of colors are a good sign in a dream except blue. All kinds of birds are a good sign in a dream except the owl, the horned owl, and the bat mnemonic. The body, the body reflects, restores self esteem. Three things enter the body without benefiting it. Mellow date berries and unripe dates. Three things benefit the body without being absorbed by it. Washing. Anointing and regular motion three things are a reflex of the world to come Sabbath sunshine and Tashmish Tashmish of what shall I say of the bed this weekend it must be then Tashmish of the orifices three things restore a man's good spirits beautiful sounds sights and smells three things increase a man's self esteem a beautiful dwelling a beautiful wife and beautiful clothes mnemonic five six ten five things are a sixtieth part of something else namely fire honey Sabbath sleep and a dream fire is one sixtieth part of Gehinnom honey is one sixtieth part of mana Sabbath is one sixtieth part of the world to come sleep is one sixtieth part of death a dream is one sixtieth part of prophecy six things are a good sign for a sick person namely sneezing perspiration open bowels seminal emission sleep and a dream sneezing as it is written his sneezing flash forth like perspiration as it is written in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread open bowels as it is written if lie that is Bent down hasteneth to be loose he shall not go down dying to the pit seminal emission as it is written seeing seed he will prolong his day sleep as it is written I should have slept and should I have been at rest a dream as it is written out it's cause me to dream and make me to live six things heal a man of his sickness with a complete cure namely cabbage beat a decoction of dry poly the mob an animal the womb and the large lobe of the liver some add small fishes which not only have this advantage but also make fruitful and invigorate a man's whole body ten things bring a man's sickness out again in a severe form namely to eat beef fat meat roast meat poultry and roasted egg shaving and eating cress milk or cheese and bathing some add also nuts and some add further also cucumbers it was taught in the school of Ishmael why are they called kishuaim cucumbers because
Proselytes, as it says, for then will I turn to the peoples of pure language. Arham Hunna said in a discourse, if one sees the wicked Babylon, he should say five benedictions on seeing the city Babylon itself. He says, Blessed be he who has destroyed the wicked Babylon on seeing the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. He says, Blessed be he who destroyed the palace of the wicked Nebuchadnezzar on seeing the lion's den or the fiery furnace. He says, Blessed be he who wrought miracles for our ancestors in this place on seeing the statue of Hermes. He says, Blessed be he who shows long suffering to those that transgress his will on seeing the place from which dust is carried away. He says, Blessed be he who says and does who decrees and carries out wrath when he saw asses carrying dust used to give them a slap on the back and say, Run your righteous ones to perform the will of your master. When Mar the son of Robin came to the city of Babylon, he used to put some dust in his kerchief and throw it out to fulfill it. Text I will sweep it with the besom of destruction. Arashi said, I had never heard the saying of Arhamana, but of my own sense I made all these blessings. Talmud, Mosbirko, they are Jeremiah B. Eliezer said, When Babylon was cursed, her neighbors were also cursed, but when Samaria was cursed, her neighbors were blessed. When Babylon was cursed, her neighbors were cursed. As it is written, I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. When Samaria was cursed, her neighbors were blessed. As it is written, therefore I will make Samaria a heap in the field, a place for the planting of vineyards. Arhamana further said, If one sees a crowd of Israelites, he should say, Blessed is he who disconnects secrets. If he sees a crowd of heathens, he should say, Your mother shall be ashamed, etc. Our rabbis taught, If one sees a crowd of Israelites, he says, Blessed is he who disconnects secrets, for the mind of each is different from that of the other, just as the face of each is different from. That of the other Benzoma one saw a crowd on one of the steps of the Temple Mount he said blessed is he that disconnects secrets and blessed is he who has created all these to serve before he used to say what labors Adam had to carry out before he obtained bread to eat he plowed he sowed he reaped he bound the sheep he threshed and winnowed and selected the ears he ground them and sifted the flour he kneaded and baked and then at last he ate whereas I get up and find all these things done for me and how many labors Adam had to carry out before he obtained a garment to where he had to shear wash the wool comb it spin it and weave it and then at last he obtained a garment to where whereas I get up and find all these things done for me all kinds of craftsmen come early to the door of my house and I rise in the morning and find all these before me he used to say what does a good guest say how much trouble my host has taken for me how much meat he has set before me how much wine he has set before me, how many cakes he has set before me, and all the trouble he has taken was only for my sake. But what does a bad guest say? How much after all has my host put himself out? I have eaten one piece of bread, I have eaten one slice of meat, I have drunk one cup of wine. All the trouble which my host has taken was only for the sake of his wife and his children. What does scripture say of a good guest? Remember that thou magnify his works whereof men have sung, but of a bad guest it is written, men do therefore fear him. He regardeth not any that are wise of heart. And the man was an old man in the days of Saul, stricken in years among men, Rabbah, or as some say, Arzibit, or again as some say, Arashi said, This is Jesse, the father of David, who went out with a crowd and came in with a crowd and expounded the Torah to a crowd. Ola said, We have a tradition that there is no crowd in Babylon. It was taught a multitude is not less than sixty myriads. Our rabbis taught on. Seeing the sages of Israel, one should say, Blessed be he who hath imparted of his wisdom to them that fear him. On seeing the sages of other nations, one says, Blessed be he who hath imparted of his wisdom to his creatures. On seeing kings of Israel, one says, Blessed be he who hath imparted of his glory to them that fear him. On seeing non Jewish kings, one says, Blessed be he who hath imparted of his glory to his creatures. Or Yohanan said, A man should always exert himself and run to meet an Israelitish king, and not only a king of Israel, but also a king of any other nation, so that if he is deemed worthy, he will be able to distinguish between the kings of Israel and the kings of other nations. Arshis was blind once. All the people went out to see the king, and Arshis arose and went with them. A certain Sadducee and came across him and said to him, The whole pitchers go to the river, but where do the broken ones go to? He replied, I will show you that I know more than you. The first troop passed by. And a shout arose, said the Sadducee, and the king is coming, he is not coming, replied Arshis hate a second troop passed by, and when a shout arose, the Sadducee and said, Now the king is coming, Arshis hate replied, the king is not coming, a third troop passed by, and there was silence, said Arshis hate, now indeed the king is coming, the Sadducee and said to him, How did you know this? He replied, Because the earthly royalty is like the heavenly, for it is written, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice when the king came, Arshis hate said the blessing over him, the Sadducee and said to him, You say a blessing for one whom you do not see what happened to that Sadducee and some. Say that his companions put his eyes out, others say that Arshis hate cast his eyes upon him, and he became a heap of bones. Arshila administered lashes to a man who had intercourse with an Egyptian woman. The man went and informed against him to the government, saying, There is a man among the Jews who passes judgment without the permission of the government. An official was sent to summon him when he came. He was asked, Why did you flog that man? He replied, Because he had intercourse with a she-ass. They said to him, Have you witnesses? He replied, I have Elijah thereupon came in the form of a man and gave evidence. They said to him, If that is the case, he ought to be put to death. He replied, Since we have been exiled from our land, we have no authority to put to death. Do you do with him what you please? While they were considering his case, Arshila exclaimed, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power. What are you saying? They asked him, He replied, What I am saying is this blessed is the all. Merciful who has made the earthly royalty on the model of the heavenly and has invested you with dominion and made you lovers of justice, they said to him, Are you so solicitous for the honor of the government? They handed him a staff and said to him, You may act as judge when he went out. That man said to him, Does the all-merciful perform miracles for liars? He replied, Wretch, are they not called asses? For it is written, Whose flesh is as the flesh of asses? He noticed that the man was about to inform them that he had called them asses. He said, This man is a persecutor, and the Torah has said, If a man comes to kill you, rise early and kill him first. So he struck him with the staff and killed him. He then said, Since a miracle has been wrought for me through this verse, I will expound it. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. This refers to the work of creation, and so it says, Who doth great things past finding out and the power? This refers to the exodus from Egypt, as it says, And Israel saw the great work. Etc. And the glory this refers to the sun and moon which stood still for Joshua as it says and the sun stood still and the moon stayed and the victory Neza this refers to the fall of Rome as it says and their lifeblood Nisham is dashed against my garments and the majesty this refers to the battle of the valleys of Arnon as it says wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord behave in Sukkah and the valleys of Arnon for all that is in heaven and earth this refers to the war of Caesar as it says they fought front heaven the stars in their courses fought against Caesar thine is the kingdom O Lord this refers to the war against Amalek for so it says the hand upon the throne of the Lord the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation and thou art exalted this refers to the war of Gog and Magog and so it says behold I am against the O Gog chief prince of Meshech and Tubal as head above all Arhan and Birabba said in the name of Aryohan and even a waterman is Appointed from heaven, it was taught in the Beretha in the name of our Akiba. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. This refers to the cleaving of the Red Sea and the power. This refers to the smiting of the firstborn and the glory. This refers to the giving of the Torah and the victory. This refers to Jerusalem and the majesty. This refers to the Temple Talmud. Mosbirko, be our rabbis taught on seeing the houses of Israel when inhabited. One says, Blessed be he who sets the boundary of the widow when uninhabited. Blessed be the judge of truth on seeing the houses of heathens when inhabited. One says, The Lord will pluck up the house of the proud when uninhabited. He says, O Lord, thou God to whom vengeance fell and get thou God to whom vengeance fell and get shine forth. Once when Ula and Arhista were walking along the road, they came to the
inhabited state so will he restore the houses of the righteous to their inhabited state observing that he was still not satisfied he said to him enough for the servant that he should be like his master our rabbis taught on seeing israelitish graves one should say blessed is he who fashioned you in judgments who fed you in judgment and maintained you in judgment and in judgment gathered you in and who will one day raise you up again in judgment mar the son of rabbinic concluded thus in the name of our nomin and who knows the number of all of you and he will one day revive you and establish you blessed is he who revives the dead on seeing the graves of heathens one says your mother shall be sore ashamed etc our joshua will believe i said one who sees a friend after a lapse of 30 days says blessed is he who has kept us alive and preserved us and brought us to the season if after a lapse of 12 months he says blessed is he who revives the dead rab said the dead is not forgotten till after 12 months as it says I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind I am like a lost vessel our papa and our Huna, the son of our Joshua were once going along the road when they met our hand and the son of our Ikea they said to him now that we see you we make two blessings over you blessed be he who has imparted of his wisdom to them that fear him and that has kept us alive etc he said to them I also on seeing you counted it as equal to seeing sixty myriads of Israel and I made three blessings over you those two and blessed is he that disconnects secrets they said to him are you so clever as all that they cast their eyes on him and he died our Joshua believe I said on seeing pockmarked persons one says blessed be he who makes strange creatures an objection was raised if one sees a negro a very red or very white person a hunchback a dwarf or a drop cycle person he says blessed be he who makes strange creatures if he sees one with an amputated limb or blind or flathead or lame or smitten with boils or Pockmarked he says blessed be the true judge there is no contradiction one blessing is said if he is so from birth the other if he became so afterwards a proof of this is that he is placed in the same category as one with an amputated limb this proves that our rabbis taught on seeing an elephant an ape or a long-tailed ape one says blessed is he who makes strange creatures if one sees beautiful creatures and beautiful trees he says blessed is he who has such in his world overshooting stars. Zekin what our Zekin Samuel said a comet Samuel also said I am as familiar with the paths of heaven as with the streets of Nihardia with the exception of the comet about which I am ignorant there is a tradition that it never passes through the constellation of Orion for if it did the world would be destroyed but we have seen it pass through its brightness pass through which made it appear as if it passed through itself or who not the son of our Joshua said while and was torn asunder and rolled up. Showing the brightness of Rikia Arash, he said a star was removed from one side of Orion and a companion star appeared on the other side and people were bewildered and thought the star had crossed over Samuel contrasted two texts it is written who make the bear Orion and the Pleiades and it is written elsewhere that make the Pleiades and Orion how do we reconcile these were it not for the heat of Orion the world could not endure the cold of Pleiades and were it not for the cold of Pleiades the world could not endure the heat of Orion there is a tradition that were it not that the tail of the scorpion has been placed in the stream of fire no one who has ever been stung by a scorpion could live this is what is referred to in the words of the all-merciful to job canst thou bind the chains of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion what is meant by Kamah Samuel said about a hundred Kamiya stars some say they are close together others say that they are scattered what is meant by Ash the Bear Rab Judah said Jutha what is Jutha some say it is the tail of the ram others say it is the hand of the calf the one who says it is the tail of the ram is more probably right since it says Aish will be comforted for her children this shows that it lacks something Talmud, Masbirakothe and in fact it looks like a piece torn off and the reason why she follows her is because she is saying to her give me my children for at the time when the Holy One blessed be he wanted to bring a flood upon the world he took two stars from Kamah and brought a flood upon the world and when he wanted to stop it he took two stars from Aish and stopped it but why did he not put the other two back a pit cannot be filled with its own clods or another reason is the accuser cannot become advocate then he should have created two other stars for it there is nothing new under the sun our and said the Holy One blessed be he will one day restore them to her as it says and Aish will be. Comforted for her children and over earthquake Zewayoth what our Zewayoth Arkatna said a rumbling of the earth Arkatna was once going along the road and when he came to the door of the house of a certain necromancer there was a rumbling of the earth he said does the necromancer know what this rumbling is he called after him Katna Katna why should I not know when the Holy One blessed be he calls to mind his children who are plunged in suffering among the nations of the world he lets fall two tears into the ocean and the sound is heard from one end of the world to the other and that is the rumbling said Arkatna the necromancer is a liar and his words are false if it was as he says there should be one rumbling after another he did not really mean this however there really was one rumbling after another and the reason why he did not admit it was so that people should not go astray after him Arkatna for his own part said God clasps his hands as it says I will also smite. My hands together and I will satisfy my fury. Our Nathan said, God emits a sigh as it is said, I will satisfy my fury upon them and I will be eased. And the rabbi said, He treads upon the firmament as it says, He giveth a noise as they that tread grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. Our Ahabi Jacob says, He presses his feet together beneath the throne of glory as it says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool and over thunders. Re am I am what are re am I am. Clouds in the world as it says, The voice of thy thunder was in the world when the lightning lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. The rabbis, however, say, The clouds pouring water into one another as it says, At the sound of his giving a multitude of waters in the heavens. Our Ahabi Jacob said, A powerful lightning flash that strikes the clouds and breaks off hailstones. Our Ashi said, The clouds are puffed out and a blast of wind comes and blows across the mouth of them and it makes a sound like. Wind blowing across the mouth of a jar, the most probable view is that of our Ahabi Jacob for the lightning flashes and the clouds rumble and then rain falls and over storms Ruhat what our Ruhat Abbe said a hurricane Abbe further said we have a tradition that a hurricane never comes at night but we see that it does come it must have commenced by day Abbe further said we have a tradition that a hurricane does not last two hours to fulfill the words of scripture trouble shall not rise up. The second time but we have seen it lasting as long there was an interval in the middle over lightnings Birakim one says blessed is he who strength and might fill the world what our Birakim Rabbah said lightning Rab also said a single flash white lightning blue lightning clouds that rise in the west and come from the south and two clouds that rise facing one another are all signs of trouble what is the practical bearing of this remark that prayer is needed to avert the omen this is only. The case by night, but in the daytime there is no significance in them. Our Samuel B. Isaac said those morning clouds have no significance as it is said your goodness is as a morning cloud said our Papa Juebe, but there is a popular saying when on opening the door you find rain as driver put down your sack and go to sleep on it. There is no contradiction in the one case the sky is covered with thick clouds and the other with light clouds. Our Alexandria said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi thunder was created only to straighten out the crookedness of the heart as it says God hath so made it that men should fear before him. Our Alexandria also said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi one who sees the rainbow in the clouds should fall on his face as it says as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud and when I saw it I fell upon my face in the West Palestine they cursed anyone who did this because it looks as if he was bowing down to the rainbow but he certainly makes a blessing what blessing. Does he say blessed is he who remembers the covenant in a very that it was taught our Ishmael the son of our Yohan and Bibarakah says he says who is faithful with his covenant and fulfills his word for mountains and hills etc. Do all the things we have mentioned hitherto not belong to the work of creation is it not written he make the lightnings for the rain Abbe said combine the two statements Rabbah said in the former cases he says two blessings blessed be he whose strength fills the world and who has wrought the work of creation in this case there is ground for saying who has wrought creation but not for whose strength fills the world our Joshua believe I said if one sees the sky in all its purity he says blessed is he who has wrought the work of creation when does he say so Abbe said when there has been rain all the night and in the morning the north wind comes and clears the heavens and they differ from Raphram B. Papa quoting our Histah for Raphram B. Papa said in the name of our Histah since the day. When the temple was destroyed there has never been a perfectly clear sky since it says I
Because they indulge in sexual intercourse in the daytime, the reason why their eyes blink is because they live in dark houses for the rain, etc. is a benediction for rain who is good and does good as not our Abba said. Some say it has been taught in a Beretha from when do they say the blessing over rain from the time when the bridegroom goes out to meet his bride? What blessing do they say? Our Judah said we give thanks to thee for every drop which thou hast caused to fall for us and our Yohanan. Concluded thus if our mouths were full of song like the sea, we could not sufficiently give thanks unto thee, O Lord our God, etc. Up to shall prostrate itself before thee, blessed art thou, O Lord, to whom abundant thanksgivings are due, is it abundant thanksgivings and not all thanksgivings, Rabba said, say the God to whom thanksgivings are due, our Papa said, therefore let us say both to whom abundant thanksgivings are due and God of thanksgivings, but after all there is a contradiction, there is no contradiction, the one blessing is said by one who has heard that it has been raining, the other by one who has seen it, but one who hears of it hears good tidings, and we have learned for good tidings, one says, blessed is he who is good and does good, in fact, both are said by one who sees it, and still there is no contradiction, the one is said, if only a little falls, the other if much falls, or if you like, I can say that both are said for a heavy fall, and still there is no contradiction, the one is. Said by a man who has land, the other by one who has no land, does one who has land say the blessing who is good and does good has it not been taught? One who has built a new house or bought new clothes says, Blessed is he who has kept us alive and brought us to the season if it is for himself along with others. He says, Who is good and does good? This is no contradiction. The one blessing is said if he has a partnership, the others if he has no partnership, and thus it has been taught in a word for his own things. He says, Blessed is he who has kept us alive and preserved us for things which belong to him in conjunction with this neighbor. He says, Blessed is he who is good and does good, and if no one is associated with him in the ownership, does he never say the blessing who is good and does good has it not been taught? If a man is told that his wife has born a son, he says, Blessed is he that is good and does good, in that case too his wife is associated with him because she is glad to have a Son come and hear if a man's father dies and he is his heir first he says blessed is the true judge and afterwards he says blessed is he who is good and does good there too it is a case where there are brothers who inherit with him come and hear over a new kind of wine there is no need to make a blessing but if one goes to another place he must say a blessing again and our Joseph B. Abba said in the name of our Yohanan although they said that over a fresh kind of wine there is no need to make a blessing still he says blessed is he who is good and does good there too it is a case where there are other members of the company who drink with him one who has built a new house or bought new vessels etc. Our Huna said this is the rule only if he does not possess similar things but if he has similar ones he need not say the blessing our Yohanan however says even if he has similar ones he must make the blessing Talmud Masbirko we infer from this that if one bought things and then bought some more all agree that he need not say a blessing. Some say Arhuna said this rule applies only where he does not buy again after already buying. But if he buys again after already buying, he need not say the blessing. Our Yohanan, however, says even if he buys again after already buying, he must make a blessing. We infer from this that if he buys a kind of thing which he has already all agree that he has to say a blessing. An objection was raised if one builds a new house not having one like it already. He must say a blessing if he already has any like them. He need not say a blessing. So Armadir Arjuda says in either case he must make a blessing. Now this accords well with the first version. Arhuna following Armadir and Arjuna following Arjuda. But if we take the second version, it is true that Arhuna follows Arjuda. But whom does Arjuna follow? It is neither Armadir nor Arjuda. Arjuna can reply. The truth is that according to Arjuna, also if one buys again after already buying, he must make. A blessing and the reason why they join issue over the case of his buying something of a kind which he has already is to show you how far Armadir is prepared to go since he says that even if he buys something of a kind which he already has he need not make a blessing and all the more so if he buys again after already buying he need not make a blessing but should they rather not join issue over the case of buying again after already buying where there is no need to say a blessing to show how far he or Judah is prepared to go he prefers that the stronger instance should be a case of permission over evil a blessing is said etc how is this to be understood for instance if a fresh flooded his land although it is eventually a good thing for him because his land is covered with alluvium and becomes more fertile nevertheless for the time being it is evil and over good etc how can we understand this if for instance he found something valuable although this may eventually be bad for him because if the king hears of it he will take it from him nevertheless for the time being it is good if a man's wife is pregnant and he says may God grant that my wife bear etc. This is a vain prayer our prayers then in such circumstances of no avail our Joseph cited the following in objection and afterwards she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah what is meant by afterwards Rab said after Leah had passed judgment on herself saying twelve tribes are destined to issue from Jacob six. Have issued from me and four from the handmaids making ten if this child will be a male my sister Rachel will not be equal to one of the handmaids forthwith the child was turned to a girl as it says and she called her name Dinah we cannot cite a miraculous event in refutation of the mission alternatively I may reply that the incident of Leah occurred within forty days after conception according to what has been taught within the first three days a man should pray that the seed should not Putrify from the third to the fortieth day he should pray that the child should be a male from the fortieth day to three months he should pray that it should not be a sandal from three months to six months he should pray that it should not be stillborn from six months to nine months he should pray for a safe delivery but does such a prayer avail has not our Isaac the son of Aram I said if the man first emits seed the child will be a girl if the woman first emits seed the child will be a boy. With what case are we dealing here if for instance they both emitted seed at the same time if he was coming from a journey our rabbis taught it once happened with Hillel the elder that he was coming from a journey and he heard a great cry in the city and he said I am confident that this does not come from my house of him scripture says he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is steadfast trusting in the Lord Rabbi said whenever you expound this verse you may make the second clause. Explain the first or the first clause explain the second you may make the second clause explain the first thus he will not fear evil tidings why because his heart is steadfast trusting in the Lord you may explain the second clause by the first thus his heart is steadfast trusting in the Lord therefore he shall not be afraid of evil tidings a certain disciple was once following our Ishmael son of our Jose in the marketplace of Zion the latter noticed that he looked afraid and said to him you are a sinner because it is written the sinners in Zion are afraid he replied but it is written happy is the man that feareth always he replied that verse refers to words of Torah our Judah be Nathan used to follow our hand under once he sighed and the other said to him this man wants to bring suffering on himself since it is written for the thing which I did fear is come upon me and that which I was afraid of hath overtaken me but he replied it is written happy is the man who feareth always he replied that is written in connection with words of Torah one who goes through a capital city our rabbis taught what does he say on entering may it be thy will O Lord my God to bring me into the city in peace when he is inside he says I give thanks to the O Lord my God that thou hast brought me into the city in peace when he is about to leave he says may it be thy will O Lord my God and God of my fathers to bring me out of the city in peace when he is outside he says I give thanks to the O Lord my God that thou hast brought me out of the city in peace and as thou hast brought me out in peace so mayest thou guide me in peace and support me in peace and make me proceed in peace and deliver me from the hands of all enemies and liars in wait by the way our Matina said this applies only to a city where criminals are not tried and sentenced but in a city where criminals are tried and sentenced this is unnecessary some report our Matina said even in a city where criminals are tried and sentenced for Sometimes he may happen not to find a man who can plead in his defense. Our rabbis taught on entering a bathhouse. One should say, May it be thy will, O Lord my God, to deliver me from this and from the like of this, and let no humiliation or iniquity befall me. And if I do fall into any perversity or iniquity, may my death be an atonement for all my iniquities. Abbe said, A man should not speak thus so as not to open his mouth for the Satan. For Rush Lakish said, And so it was taught in the name of our Jose. A man should never open his mouth for the Satan. Our Joseph said, What text proves this? Because it is written, We should have been as Sodom, we should have been like unto tomorrow. What did the prophet answer them? Hear the word of the Lord,
and go what he should say is preserve me preserve me help me help me support me support me till I have entered and come forth for this is the way of human beings when he comes out he says blessed is he who has formed man in wisdom and created in him many orifices and many cavities it is fully known before the throne of thy glory that if one of them should be improperly opened or one of them closed it would be impossible for a man to stand before thee how does the blessing conclude Rab said Blessed art thou that he lists the six said Samuel Abba has turned the whole world into invalids know what he says is that he lists all flesh are she's hate said who doest wonderfully are Papa said therefore let us say both who he lists all flesh and doest wonderfully on going to bed one says from here O Israel to and it shall come to pass if ye hearken diligently then he says blessed is he who causes the bands of sleep to fall upon my eyes and slumber on my eyelids and gives light to the apple of it. I may it be thy will O Lord my God to make me lie down in peace and set my portion in thy law and accuse me to the performance of religious duties but do not accuse me to transgression and bring me not into sin or into iniquity or into temptation or into contempt and may the good inclination have sway over me and let not the evil inclination have sway over me and deliver me from evil hap and sore diseases and let not evil dreams and evil thoughts disturb me and may my catch be flawless. Before thee and enlighten mine eyes lest I sleep the sleep of death blessed art thou O Lord who givest light to the whole world in thy glory when he wakes he says my God the soul which thou hast placed in me is pure thou hast fashioned it in me thou didst breathe it into me and thou preservest it within me and thou wilt one day take it from me and restore it to me in the time to come so long as the soul is within me I give thanks unto thee O Lord my God and the God of my Father sovereign of all worlds Lord of all souls blessed art thou O Lord who restores souls to dead corpses when he hears the cock crowing he should say blessed is he who has given to the cock understanding to distinguish between day and night when he opens his eyes he should say blessed is he who opens the eyes of the blind when he stretches himself and sits up he should say blessed is he who looseneth the bound when he dresses he should say blessed is he who clothes the naked when he draws himself up he should Say blessed is he who raises the bow when he steps onto the ground he should say blessed is he who spread the earth on the waters when he commences to walk he should say blessed is he who makes firm the steps of man when he ties his shoes he should say blessed is he who has supplied all my wants when he fastens his girdle he should say blessed is he who girds Israel with might when he spreads a kerchief over his head he should say blessed is he who crowns Israel with glory when he wraps himself with the fringed garment he should say blessed is he who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to unwrap ourselves in the fringed garment when he puts the tefillin on his arm he should say blessed is he who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to put on tefillin when he puts it on his head he should say blessed is he who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning the commandment of tefillin when he washes his hands he should say blessed is he who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning the washing of hands when he washes his face he should say blessed is he who has removed the bands of sleep from mine eyes and slumber from mine eyes and may it be thy will O Lord my God to habituate me to thy law and make me cleave to thy commandments and do not bring me into sin or into iniquity or into temptation or into contempt and bend my inclination to be subservient unto thee and remove me far from a bad man and a bad companion and make me cleave to the good inclination and to a good companion in thy world and let me obtain this day and every day grace favor and mercy in thine eyes and in the eyes of all that see me and show loving kindness unto me blessed art thou O Lord who bestowest loving kindness upon thy people Israelite he is incumbent on a man to bless etc what is meant by being bound to bless for the evil in the same way as for the good shall I say that just as for good one says the benediction who is good and bestows good so for evil one should say the benediction who is good and bestows good but we have learned for good tidings one says who is good and bestows good for evil tidings one says blessed be the true judge Rabbah said what it really means is that one must receive the evil with gladness Araha said in the name of our Levi where do we find this in the scripture I will sing of mercy and justice unto thee O Lord will I sing praises whether it is mercy I will sing or whether it is justice I will sing our Samuel be Naman he said we learn it from here in the Lord I will praise his word in God I will praise his word in the Lord I will praise his word this refers to good dispensation in God I will praise his word this refers to the dispensation of suffering our tantum said we learn it from here I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord I found trouble and sorrow but I called upon the name of the Lord the rabbis derive it from here the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away blessed be the name of the Lord Arhuna said in the name of Rab citing Armair and so it was taught in the name of Arakiba a man should always accuse Tom himself to say whatever the all merciful does is for good as exemplified in the following incident Arakiba was once going along the road and he came to a certain town and looked for lodgings but was everywhere refused he said whatever the all merciful does is for good and he went and spent the night in the open field he had with him a cock and ass and a lamp a gust of wind came and blew out the lamp a weasel came and ate the cock a lion came and ate the ass he said whatever the all merciful does is for good the same night some brigands came and carried off the inhabitants of the town he said to them did I not say to you whatever the all merciful does Talmud Mosbirko is all for good Arhuna further said in the name of Armair a man's words should always be few in addressing the holy one Blessed be he since it says be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart be hasty to utter a word before God for God is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words be few arnam and be are his dot expounded what is meant by the text and the Lord God formed W A Yizer man the word W A Yizer is written with two yods to show that God created two inclinations one good and the other evil arnam and be Isaac demurred to this according to this he said animals of which it is not written W A Yizer should have no evil inclination yet we see that they injure and bite and kick in truth the point of the two yods is as stated by our Simeon Bepa for our Simeon Bepa he said woe is me because of my creator Yizer woe is me because of my evil inclination Yizer or again as explained by our Jeremiah B Eliezer for our Jeremiah B Eliezer said God created two countenances in the first man as it says behind and before hast thou formed me and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made Woman Rab and Samuel explained this differently one said that this rib was a face the other that it was a tail no objection can be raised against the one who says it was a face and so it is written behind and before hast thou formed me but how does he who says it was a tail explain behind and before hast thou formed me as stated by RMI for RMI said behind he last in the work of creation and before I he first for punishment we grant you he was last in the work of creation for he was not created till the eve of Sabbath but when you say first for punishment to what punishment do you refer do you mean the punishment in connection with the serpent surely it has been taught Rabbi says in conferring honor we commence with the greatest in cursing with the least important in conferring honor we commence with the greatest as it is written and Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eliezer and to Ithamar his sons that were left take the meal offering that remained etc in cursing we Commence with the least first the serpent was cursed and even then Adam I must say then that the punishment of the flood is meant as it is written and he blotted out every living substance which was upon the face of the ground both man and cattle no difficulty arises for the one who says that he was created from the face for so it is written W A Yizer with two yards but he who says it was a tail what does he make of W A Yizer as explained by our Simeon Bepa for our Simeon Bepa said woe is me because of my creator Yizri woe is me because of my evil inclination Yizri no difficulty arises for one who says it was a face for so it is written male and female created them but he who says it was a tail what does he make of male and female created them as explained by Arabab for Arabab contrasted two texts it is written male and female created them and it is also written for in the image of God made he man how are these statements to be reconciled at first the intention was to create two but in the end only one was created no difficulty arises for him who says it was a face and so it is written he closed up the place with flesh instead thereof but he who says it was a tail how does he explain he closed up the place with flesh instead thereof our Jeremiah or as some say our Zebit or again as some say our Nam and B Isaac replied these words are meant to apply only to the place of the cut no difficulty arises for the one who says it was a tail for so it is written and God built but he who says it was a face what does he make of the words and God built as explained by our Simeon Bimanasia for our Simeon Bimanasia
Gazing at her even if he can be in Torah and good deeds with Moses our teacher he shall not escape the punishment of Gehinnom as it says hand to hand he shall not escape from evil he shall not escape from the punishment of Gehinnom Arnaman said Manoah was an Amhira since it is written and Manoah went after his wife Arnaman be Isaac demurred to this according to this he said in the case of Elkanah when it says and Elkanah went after his wife and in the case of Elisha when it says and he rose and went after her are we to suppose that this means literally after her no it means after her words and her advice so here in the case of Manoah it means after her words and her advice said Arashi on the view of Arnaman that Manoah was an Amhira he cannot even have known as much of scripture as a schoolboy for it says and Rebecca rose and her damsels and they rode upon the camels and followed the man after the man and not in front of the man are Yohanan said better go behind a Lion than behind a woman better go behind a woman than behind an idol better go behind an idol than behind the synagogue when the congregation are praying this however is the case only when he is not carrying a load if he is carrying a load there is no objection and also this is the case only when there is no other entrance but if there is another entrance there is no objection and again this is the case only when he is not riding on an ass but if he is riding on an ass there is no objection and again this is the case only when he is not wearing tefillin but if he is wearing tefillin there is no objection rap said the evil inclination resembles a fly and dwells between the two entrances of the heart as it says dead flies make the ointment of the perfumers fed it and putrid samuel said it is like a kind of wheat as it says in had a couch it at the door our rabbis taught man has two kidneys one of which prompts him to good the other to evil and it is natural to suppose that the good one is on his right side and the bad one on his left as it is written a wise man's understanding is at his right hand but a fool's understanding is at his left our rabbis taught the kidneys prompt the heart discerns the tongue shapes the words the mouth articulates the gullet takes in and lets out all kinds of food the windpipe produces the voice talmud mas birakoth be talmud mas birakoth be the lungs absorb all kinds of liquids the liver is the seat of anger the gall lets a drop fall into it and lays it the milk produces laughter the large intestine grinds the food the maw brings sleep and the nose awakens if the awakener sleeps or the sleeper rouses a man finds a way a tanna taught if both in do sleep or both awaken a man dies forth with it has been taught our Jose the Galilean says the righteous are swayed by their good inclination as it says my heart is slain within me the wicked are swayed by their evil inclination as it says transgression speak to the Wicked thinks there is no fear of God before his eyes. Average people are swayed by both inclinations, as it says, because he standeth at the right hand of the needy to save him from them that judge his soul. Rabbah said, People such as we are of the average said, Abay to him, the master gives no one a chance to lie. Rabbah further said, The world was created only for either the totally wicked or the totally righteous. Rabbah said, Let a man know concerning himself whether he is completely righteous or not. Rabbah said, The world was created only for Ahab, son of Omri, and for our Hannah, Abidosa, for Ahab, son of Omri, this world, and for our Hannah, Abidosa, the future world, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God, etc. It has been taught. Our Eliezer says, If it says with all thy soul, why should it also say with all thy might? And if it says with all thy might, why should it also say with all thy soul? Should there be a man who values his life more than his money for him? It says with all thy soul, and should there be a man? Who values his money more than his life for him? It says with all thy might. Our Akiva says with all thy soul. Even if he takes away thy soul, our rabbis taught once the wicked government issued a decree forbidding the Jews to study and practice the Torah. Pupus Bijuda came and found our Akiva publicly bringing gatherings together and occupying himself with the Torah. He said to him, Akiva, are you not afraid of the government? He replied, I will explain to you with a parable. A fox was once walking alongside of a river and he saw fishes going in swarms from one place to another. He said to them, From what are you fleeing? They replied, From the nets cast for us by men. He said to them, Would you like to come up onto the dry land so that you and I can live together in the way that my ancestors lived with your ancestors? They replied, Art thou the one that they call the cleverest of animals? Thou art not clever, but foolish. If we are afraid in the element in which we live, how much more in the Element in which we would die, so it is with us if such is our condition when we sit and study the Torah of which it is written, for that is thy life and the length of thy days. If we go and neglect it, how much worse off we shall be. It is related that soon afterwards our Akiva was arrested and thrown into prison, and Papus Bijuda was also arrested and imprisoned next to him. He said to him, Papus, who brought you here, he replied, Happy are you, our Akiva, that you have been seized for busying yourself. With the Torah, alas, for Papus, who has been seized for busying himself with idle things, when our Akiva was taken out for execution, it was the hour for the recital of the Shema, and while they combed his flesh with iron combs, he was accepting upon himself the kingship of heaven. His disciples said to him, Our teacher, even to this point, he said to them, All my days I have been troubled by this verse with all thy soul, which I interpret, even if he takes thy soul, I said, When shall I have the opportunity? Of fulfilling this now that I have the opportunity shall I not fulfill it he prolonged the word Ihad until he expired while saying it a bath coal went forth and proclaimed happy art thou Akiva that thy soul has departed with the word Ihad the ministering angel said before the holy one blessed be he such Torah and such a reward he should have been from them that die by thy hand O Lord he replied to them their portion is in life a bath coal went forth and proclaimed happy art thou our Akiva that thou art destined for the life of the world to come one should avoid showing disrespect to the eastern gate because it is in a direct line with the holy of holies etc Rab Judah said in the name of Rab these rules apply only to the side of Mount Scopus and to one who can see the temple it has also been recorded our Abba the son of our high B Abba said thus said our Yohan and these rules apply only to the side of Scopus and to one who can see Jerusalem and when there is no fence intervening and at the time when the divine presence rests on it, our rabbis taught one who consults nature in Judea should not do so east and west, but north and south in Galilee, he should do so only east and west. Our Jose, however, allows it since our Jose said the prohibition was meant to apply only to one inside of the temple and in a place where there is no fence intervening. And at the time when the divine presence rests there, the sages, however, forbid it. The sages say the same as the first tanda they differ with. Regard to the sides, it has been taught elsewhere one who consults nature in Judea should not do so east and west, but south and north and in Galilee, north and south is forbidden, east and west is permitted. Our Jose, however, permits it since our Jose used to say this prohibition was meant to apply only to one who is inside of Jerusalem. Our Judah says when the temple is in existence, it is forbidden. When the temple is not in existence, it is permitted. Our Akiva forbids it in all places. Our Akiva says it. Same as the first tanah they differ in the matter of outside of Palestine Rabbah had bricks placed for him east and west Abbe went and changed them round to north and south Rabbah went in and readjusted them he said who is this that is annoying me I take the view of our Akiva who said that it is forbidden in every place Talmud, Mas Birakoth it has been taught our Akiva said once I went in after our Joshua to a privy and I learned from him three things I learned that one does not sit east and west but north and south I learned that one evacuates not standing but sitting and I learned that it is proper to wipe with the left hand and not with the right said Ben Eze to him did you dare to take such liberties with your master he replied it was a matter of Torah and I required to learn it has been taught Ben Eze said once I went in after our Akiva to a privy and I learned from him three things I learned that one does not evacuate east and west but north and south I also learned that one Evacuate sitting and not standing. I also learned it is proper to wipe with the left hand and not with the right. Said Arjuna to him, Did you dare to take such liberties with your master? He replied, It was a matter of Torah, and I required to learn. Arkahana once went in and hid under Rab's bed. He heard him chatting with his wife and joking and doing what he required. He said to him, One would think that Abba's mouth had never sipped the dish before. He said to him, Kahana, are you here? Go out because it is rude. He replied, It is a matter of Torah, and I required to learn why should one wipe with the left hand and not with the right. Rabba said, Because the Torah was given with the right hand, as it says, at his right hand was a fiery law unto them. Rabbi Hannah said, Because it is brought to the mouth. Ar Simeon B. Lakish said, Because one binds the tefillin on the left arm with it. Arnaman B. Isaac said, Because he points to the accents in the scroll with it. A similar difference of
Immediately and if the olives remain clean for the sake of ritual purity they made a concession come and hear how far can one go without affecting the cleanness of the olive press any distance as long as he can still see it the case of foodstuffs prepared in purity is different as the rabbis made a concession for the marashi said what is meant by the words as long as he cannot be seen by anyone used by Isibi Nathan as long as the exposed part of his body cannot be seen but the man himself may be seen a certain funeral orator went down in the presence of Arnaman to deliver an address and said this man was modest in all his ways said Arnaman to him did you ever follow him into a privy so that you should know whether he was modest or not for it has been taught a man is called modest only if he is such in the privy and why was Arnaman so much concerned about it because it has been taught just as the dead are punished so the funeral orators are punished and those who Answer Amen after them are rabbis taught who is a modest man one who eases himself by night in the place where he eased himself by days that so has not Rab Judah said in the name of Rabbi Man should always accustom himself to consult nature in the early morning and in the evening so that he may have no need to go a long distance and again in the daytime Rabbi used to go as far as a mile but at night he said to his attendant clear me a spot in the street of the town and so too our Zara said to his attendant see if there is anyone behind the seminary as I wish to ease myself do not read in the place but read in the same way as he eases himself by day or as he said you may even retain the reading place the reference being to a private corner the above text states Rab Judah said in the name of Rabbi Man should always accustom himself to consult nature morning and evening so that he may have no need to go a long distance it has been taught similarly Ben said go forth before Done and after dark so that you should not have to go far feel yourself before sitting but do not sit and then feel yourself for if one sits and then feels himself should witchcraft be used against him even as far away as Aspamia he will not be immune from it and if he forgets and does sit and then feels what is his remedy when he rises he should say thus not for me not for me not to him nor taught him not these nor any part of these neither the sorceries of sorcerers nor the sorceries of sorceresses Talmud, Mosbirak of B it has been taught Ben says lie on anything but not on the ground sit on anything but not on a beam Samuel said sleep at dawn is like a steel edge to iron evacuation at dawn is like a steel edge to iron bar used to sell sayings for denarii while thou art still hungry eat while thou art still thirsty drink while thy pot is still hot empty it out when the horn is sounded in the market of Rome do you O son of the fixed seller sell thy fathers Fix Abbe said to the rabbis when you go through the lanes of Mahosa to get to the fields do not look to the side or to that for perhaps women are sitting there and it is not proper to gaze at them our Safra entered a privy our Abba came and cleared his throat at the entrance he said to him let the master enter when he came out here Abba said to him you have not yet been turned into a satyr but you have learned the manners of a satyr have we not learned as follows there was a fire there and a superior privy its superiority lay in this if one found it locked he could be sure that someone was in there but if he found it open he could be sure that there was no one there we see therefore that it is not proper for two to be in a privy here Safra however was of opinion that it was dangerous to keep him waiting as it has been taught our Simeon Begamaliel says to keep back the fecal discharge causes dropsy to keep back the urinary discharge causes John our Eliezer once entered a privy and the Persian came and thrust him away. Our Eliezer got up and went out, and a serpent came and tore out the others. Got our Eliezer replied to him the verse, Therefore will I give a man for thee. Read not Adam a man, but Edom and Edomite. And he bade to kill thee, but he spared thee, and he bade it should be, and I bade, and he spared it should be, and I spared. Our Eliezer said, David said to Saul, According to the law, you deserve to be slain, since you are a pursuer, and the Torah has said, If one comes to kill, you rise and kill him first. But the modesty which you have shown has caused you to be spared. What is this? As it is written, and he came to the fences by the way where was a cave, and Saul went in Elihasek to cover his feet. It has been taught there was a fence within a fence, and a cave within a cave. Our Eliezer says it the word Elihasek teaches that he covered himself like a booth and David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe. Privily, our Jose, son of Arhanan, said, Whoever treats. Garments contemptuously will in the end derive no benefit from them for it says now King David was old and stricken in years and they covered him with clothes but he could get no heat if it be the Lord that hath stirred thee up against me let him accept an offering our Eliezer said said the Holy One blessed be he to David thou callest me a stir up behold I will make thee stumble over a thing which even school children know namely that which is written when thou takest the sum of the children of Israel according to their number then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul into the Lord that there be no plague among them etc forth with Satan stood up against Israel and it is further written he stirred up David against them saying go number Israel and when he did number them he took no ransom from them and it is written so the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed what is meant by the time appointed Samuel the elder the son in law of our Hanan answered in the name of Our Hanan from the time of slaughtering the continual offering until the time of sprinkling the blood. Our Yohanan said right up precisely to midday, and he said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Rab Our Eliezer said, The Holy One, blessed be he said to the angel, Take a great man, Rab, among them, through whose death many sins can be expiated for them. At that time there died a Bishai son of Zeruiah, who was singly equal in worth to the greater part of the Sanhedrin. And as he was about to destroy the Lord, beheld, and he repented him. What did he behold? Rab said, He beheld Jacob, our ancestor, as it is written. And Jacob said, When he beheld them, Samuel said, He beheld the ashes of the ram of Isaac, as it says, God will see for himself the lamb. Our Isaac Napaha said, He saw the money of the atonement, as it says, And thou shalt take the atonement money from the children of Israel, and it shall be a memorial, etc. Our Yohanan said, He saw the temple as it is. Written in the mount where the Lord is seen, our Jacob Beity and our Samuel be Naman, he differed on the matter. One said that he saw the atonement money, the other that he saw the temple. The more likely view is that of him who says that he saw the temple, since it is written as it will be said on that day in the mount where the Lord is seen, a man should not enter the temple mount with his staff, etc. What is the meaning of Capendary Rabba said a shortcut as its name implies our Hannah Beata said in the name of our Sama, the son of our Mary. It is as if a man said instead of going round the blocks, Machina I will go in here, our Naman said in the name of Rabba. If one enters a synagogue not intending to use it as a shortcut, he may use it as a shortcut. Our Abab said if there was a path there originally, it is permitted. Our Helbo said in the name of our Hunna, if one entered a synagogue to pray, he may use it as a shortcut, as it says, but when the people of the land shall come before the Lord in the Appointed seasons he that entereth by the north gate shall go forth by the south gate, etc. And spitting on it is forbidden. A forci or be said in the name of our Simeon be Lakish. If one spits in these times on the temple mount, it is as if he spat into the people of his eyes, since it says, And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Rabbi said it is permitted to expect or in the synagogue this being on the same footing as wearing a shoe, just as wearing a shoe is forbidden on the temple mount, but permitted in the synagogue. So spitting is forbidden in the temple mount, but permitted in the synagogue, said our Papa to Rabbi. According to others, Rabbi has said to Rabbi, while others again report that our Abbe Matina said it to Rabbi instead of learning the rule from the analogy of a shoe, why not learn it from that of a shortcut? He replied, The tanner derives it from a shoe, and you want to derive it from a shortcut. What is this reference as it has been taught a man should not? Enter the temple mount either with his staff in his hand or his shoe on his foot or with his money tied up in his cloth or with his money bag slung over his shoulder and he should not make it a shortcut and spitting on it is forbidden a force from the case of the shoe seeing that regarding a shoe the wearing of which does not show contempt the Torah has said put off thy shoes from off thy feet must not the rule all the more apply to spitting which does show contempt our Jose B. Judah said. This reasoning is not necessary for see it says for none might enter within the king's gate clothed in sackcloth now have we not here an argument the force if such is the case with sackcloth which is not in itself disgusting and before an earthly king how much more so with spitting which is in itself disgusting and before the supreme king of kings he or papa replied to him Rabba what I mean is this let us be stringent in both cases and reason thus Talmud,
To Gideon come and hear therefore the other text despise not thy mother when she is old and it says it is time to work for the Lord they have made void thy Lord said the first clause of this verse can be taken as explaining the second and the second can be taken as explaining the first the first clause may be taken as explaining the second thus it is time to work for the Lord why because they have made void thy law the second clause may be taken as explaining the first thus they have made void thy law why because it is time to work for the Lord it was taught Hillel the elder said when the scholars keep in the teaching of the Torah do thou disseminate it and when they disseminate it do thou keep it and if thou seest a generation which is eager for the knowledge of the Torah spread it abroad as it says there is that scattereth and yet increaseth but if thou seest a generation which takes no interest in the Torah keep it into thyself as it says when it is time to work for the Lord, they make void thy law. Barkabra expounded when goods are cheap, collect money, and buy in a place where there is no man, there be a man. Abbe said, You may infer from this that in a place where there is a man to teach the Torah, there you should not be a man. This is obvious. It required to be stated for the case where the two are equal. Barkabra expounded what your text is there upon which all the essential principles of the Torah depend in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Robber remarked, Even for a matter of transgression, Barkabra further expounded, A man should always teach his son a clean and not laborious trade. What, for example, are his dust at needle stitching? It has been taught, Rabbi says, A man should not invite too many friends to his house, as it says, There are friends that one hath to his own herd. It has been taught, Rabbi says, A man should not appoint a steward over his house, for had not Potiphar appointed Joseph as steward over his house. He would not have fallen into such trouble as he did. It has been taught. Rabbi says, Why does the section of the Nazi right follow immediately on that of the unfaithful wife to teach you that anyone who sees an unfaithful wife in her evil ways should completely abstain from one? Hezekiah, the son of our Parnak, said in the name of our Yohanan, Why does the section of the unfaithful wife follow immediately on one dealing with Thurumath and tithes to teach you that if one has Thurumath and tithes and does not give them to the priest in the end, he will require the priest's services to deal with his wife? For so it says, Every man's hallowed thing shall be his, and immediately afterwards it says, If any man's wife go aside and later is it written, and the man shall bring his wife, etc., and nay more in the end, he shall be in need of them. As it says, Every man's hallowed thing shall be his, Arnaman B. Isaac said, If he does give, he will eventually become rich. As it says, Whatever a man giveth the priest, he shall. He shall have much wealth, Arhunabi Berkia said in the name of our Eliezer Hakapper, whoever associates the name of heaven with his suffering will have his sustenance doubled, as it says, and the Almighty shall be in thy distress, and thou shalt have double silver. Our Samuel be Naman, he said, his sustenance shall fly to him like a bird, as it says, and silver shall fly to the earth. Tabi said in the name of our Josiah, whoso is faint in the study of the Torah will have no strength to stand in the day of trouble, as it says, if thou art faint in the study of the Torah in the day of adversity, thy strength will be small. Our Mib Mahana said in the name of Samuel, even if only in the performance of a single precept, as it says, if thou faint in any case, our Safra said, Arabab used to relate that when Hanani, the son of our Joshua's brother, went down to the diaspora, he began to intercalate the years and fix new moons outside Palestine, so they the sent after him two scholars, our Jose B. Kipper. And the grandson of our Zechariah Bikabut, when he saw them, he said to them, Why have you come? They replied, We have come to learn Torah from you. He thereupon proclaimed, These men are among the most eminent of the generation. They and their ancestors have ministered in the sanctuary, as we have learned. Zechariah Bikabut said several times, I read to him out of the book of Daniel. Soon they began to declare clean what he declared unclean and to permit what he forbade. Thereupon he proclaimed, These men are worthless, they are good for nothing. They said to him, You have already built and you cannot overthrow, you have made a fence and you cannot break it down. He said to them, Why do you declare clean what I declare unclean? Why do you permit what I forbid? They replied, Because you intercalate years and fix new moons outside of Palestine. He said to them, Did not Akiba, son of Joseph, intercalate years and fix new moons outside of Palestine? They replied, Don't cite our Akiba, who left not his equal in. The land of Israel, he said to them, I also left not my equal in the land of Israel. They said to him, The kids which you left behind have become goats with horns, and they have sent us to you, bidding us go and tell him in our name if he listens well and good, if not, he will be excommunicated. Talmud, Mosbirko, be tell also our brethren in the diaspora not to listen to him if they listen to you well and good, if not, let them go up to the mountain, let him build an altar, and let Han and I play the harp, and let them all become renegades and say that they have no portion in the God of Israel. Straightway all the people broke out into weeping and cried, Heaven forbid we have a portion in the God of Israel. Why all this to do? Because it says, For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. We can understand that if he declared clean, they should declare unclean, because this would be more stringent, but how was it possible that they should declare clean what he Declared unclean, seeing that it has been taught if a sage has declared unclean, his colleague is not permitted to declare clean. They thought proper to act thus so that the people should not be drawn after him. Our rabbis have taught when our teachers entered the vineyard at Jabna, there were among them our Judah and our Hosea and our Nehemiah and our Eliezer, the son of our Hosea the Galilean. They all spoke in honor of hospitality and expounded texts for that purpose. Our Judah, the head of the speakers in every place, spoke in honor of the Torah and expounded the text. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it without the camp. Have we not here? He said an argument of Forshio seeing that the ark of the Lord was never more than twelve mil distant, and yet the Torah says everyone that sought the Lord went out unto the tent of meeting. How much more is this title applicable to the disciples of the wise who go from city to city and from province to province to learn Torah? And the Lord spoke unto. Moses face to face our Isaac said the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses Moses I and thou will propound views on the Halachah some say that the Holy One blessed be he said thus to Moses just as I have turned upon thee a cheerful face so do thou turn upon Israel a cheerful face and restore the tent to its place and he would return to the camp Arabah said the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses now they will say the master is angry and the disciple is angry what will happen to Israel if thou will restore the tent to its place well and goods but if not Joshua son of Nun the disciple will minister in thy place therefore it is written and he would return to the camp Rabbah said all the same God's word was not uttered in vain since it says but his minister Joshua the son of Nun a young man departed not out of the tent our Judah spoke further in honor of the Torah expounding the text the tent hasket and hear O Israel this day thou art become a people unto the Lord thy God now was it on that day that the Torah was given to Israel was not that day the end of the forty years of the wandering. It is, however, to teach thee that the Torah is as beloved every day to those that study it as on the day when it was given from Mount Sinai. Our tent on the son of our high man of Farako said the proof is that if a man recites the Shema every morning and evening and misses one evening, it is as if he had never recited the Shema. The word Haskat implies make yourselves into groups. Kitith. To study the Torah since the knowledge of the Torah can be acquired only in association with others, as stated by our Jose B. Hanan. For our Jose B. Hanan said, What is the meaning of the text? A sword is upon the boast of Badam, and they shall become fools. A sword is upon the enemies of the disciples of the wise who sit separately bad, bad and study the Torah. What is more, they become stupid. It is written here, and they shall become fools, and it is written elsewhere for that we have done foolishly. What is more, they are sinners, as it says, and we have sinned. If you prefer, I can learn the meaning from here. The princes of Zoan are become fools. No ALU, another explanation of the tent hasket, and here Israel cut yourselves to pieces. Catatur, for words of Torah, as was said by Resh Lakish, for Resh Lakish said, Once do we learn that words of Torah are firmly held by one who kills himself for it, because it says, This is the Torah when a man shall die in the tent. Another explanation of the tent end. Here, O Israel, be silent, has and then analyze Catat, as stated by Rabba, for Rabba said, A man should always first learn Torah and then scrutinize it. They said in the school of Arjane, What is meant by the verse for the churning of milk bringeth forth curd, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood, so the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. With whom do you find the cream of the Torah with him who spits out upon it the milk which he
Expounding the verse, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother, Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land, have we not here an argument, a fortiori, if such was the reward of the Egyptians who befriended the Israelites only for their own purposes, as it says, and if thou knowest any able men among them, and make them rulers over my cattle, how much more will it be for one who entertains a scholar in his house, and gives him to eat and drink, and allows him it? Use of his possessions are Eliezer the son of Arhose the Galilean began to speak in praise of hospitality, expounding the verse, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his house because of the ark of God. Have we not here an argument of fortiori if such was the reward for attending to the ark which did not eat or drink, but before which he merely swept and laid the dust? How much more will it be for one who entertains a scholar in his house and gives him to eat and drink and allows him the use of his possessions? What was the blessing with which God blessed him? Obed-Edom are Judah but it says this refers to Hamoth and her eight daughters-in-law who each bore six children at a birth Talmud. Mos Birakoth, as it says, Bulathai the eighth son, for God blessed him, and it is written, All these were of the sons of Obed-Edom, they and their sons and their brethren, able men in the strength for the service, threescore and two of Obed-Edom are of and the Levites said, Whoever tries to force his good. Fortune will be dogged by ill fortune, and whoever foregoes his good fortune will postpone his ill fortune. This we can illustrate from the case of Rabbah and Arjoseph. For Arjoseph was Sinai, and Rabbah was an uprooter of mountains. The time came when they were required to be head of the academy. They the collegiate sent there to Palestine to ask as between Sinai and an uprooter of mountains which should have the preference. They sent answer Sinai because all require the owner of wheat. Nevertheless, Arjoseph would not accept the post because the astrologers had told him that he would be head for only two years. Rabbah thereupon remained head for twenty-two years, and Arjoseph after him for two years and a half. During all the time that Rabbah was head, Arjoseph did not so much as summon a cupper to come to his house. Arab and the Levi further said, "What is the point of the verse? The Lord answered thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob set thee up on high. The God of." Jacob and not the God of Abraham and Isaac this teaches that the owner of the beam should go in with the thickest part of it Arab and the Levite also said if one partakes of a meal at which a scholar is present it is as if he feasted on the effulgence of the divine presence since it says and Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses father-in-law before God was it before God that they ate did not they eat before Moses this tells you however that if one partakes of a meal at which a scholar is present he is as if he feasted on the effulgence of the divine presence Arab and the Levite also said when a man takes leave of his fellow he should not say to him go in peace but go to peace for Moses to whom Jethro said go to peace went up and prospered whereas Absalom to whom David said go in peace went away and was hung Arab and the Levite also said one who takes leave of the dead should not say to him go to peace but go in peace as it says but thou shalt go to thy father's in Peace are Levi Behai said one who on leaving the synagogue goes into the house of study and studies the Torah is deemed worthy to welcome the divine presence as it says they go from strength to strength every one of them appeareth before God in Zion are high be as she said in the name of Rab the disciples of the wise have no rest either in this world or in the world to come as it says they go from strength to strength every one of them appeareth before God in Zion are Eliezer said in the name of R. Hannah the disciples of the wise increase peace in the world as it says and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children read not beneath thy children but boneyeth thy builders great peace have they that love thy law and there is no stumbling for them peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces for my brethren and companions sake I will now say peace be within thee for the sake of the house of the Lord our God I will seek thy good. The Lord will give strength unto his people the Lord will bless his people with peace.